uh, stuff there. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, most EFAP streams are on good old Mauler channel. And, and then yes. you don't have any of the live archives on. Uh, uh, there yeah. we go. Hello. We are live. Hello. Hello. On Hello. Oh my goodness. I will, I will start on my end. Hold on. On the old Twitch, oh. huh? Yeah, but also on Kick. Ooh. Twitch and Kick. Yeah. Have you got yourself a hundred million dollar deal by any chance? No. Aww. <laughs> no. I don't Adam, have that pull with streaming. Damn it. Adam works too hard. <laughs> I mean, I would like to just kind of, you know, watch YouTube videos and leave the room and make money a bit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yeah, I assume, I think I've seen you tweeting a bit about it, but that that got itself a new chapter recently. I just, I have, there's very few people on the internet that I will just publicly say, like, I don't have any intellectual respect for at all, and XQC is one of them. <laughs> what? What about the time he said that, at, well, there, well, that one time. <laughs> I think he streamed Overwatch at some point, so there you go. He, he yeah, yeah, he, yeah, but he played Winston. <clears throat> oh, well. Even we I, even I know. That that does mm -hmm. not mean much. <laughs> so oh, I can just... jump in and click, and then I could leave. Ooh, wow! Look at me. We're not covering the yeah. XQC debate yet, chat. Not yet, okay? Gosh, you have to wait for that. Yeah. Though it is rather amusing. Did you did you happen to check that out? Good old Mr. Klein. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I caught probably forty minutes worth of it, but I. Like based on how it was, like I'd imagine like, the entire thing was just like I, I don't know if I had to watch the whole thing. <laughs> to, yeah, to know that, how the entire thing the went. highlights where he yells um, at Ethan yeah. that he's bald and the he crawls on the floor doing the web. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a weird one. Cause it seemed like well, I guess I'll hold my thoughts on that for now if we want to talk about that later. Um I mean, you know, I don't mind talking about it now if you want, as a sort of while we wait for yeah. people come in. People so are you... sort of filing in, yeah. He, he has, it's really unfortunate because it seems like when people are bringing up legitimate criticisms, even if he doesn't find them legitimate, in his mind, he doesn't see it as criticism. He sees it as an attack. And so that's why and I, I, I'm doing like a psychoanalysis here <laughs> without any degree, but it feels like that's why um, his immediate response is to just go like, well, You've done bad things too, right? It's you're insecure, like you're that, jealous of my success. Your content sucks. Yeah, yeah. So so when you see what he's doing, it's kind of a reflection of how he's perceiving what Ethan is doing, essentially. You know, like he feels as though he's being attacked in that way, so he's levying it back at him when Ethan is not really <laughs> doing that. <laughs> Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. it was funny because it was crossfire with Ethan's criticism with Hassan and as well in that like this podcast he has with him. Like Hassan was highlighting, like I I mm -hmm. do stuff like this, and Ethan just being like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> just being like, yeah, yeah, we all know, we all know. My all know. my impression is that he kind of gave uh, Hassan some shit at least recently yeah, he did. for it. Um, yeah. he did apologize for it though. Um, I guess because he felt like he came on too hard, but. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it goes. And it's... also, yeah, he's got like a fucking podcast with him. Yeah, I, Ethan just came out swinging with the whole thing and then sort of looked back after it like, oh shit, I probably should have said nicer things. I think he really hates people abusing, um, I guess, transformative content considering all the shit that he's had to go through legally. Makes yeah. Sense. Makes yeah. Sense. It kind of, it kind, kind of delegitimizes people's honest efforts, you know? XQC immediately, as soon as he's on kick, he streams like the Dark Knight. Yeah. And he wonders why they got pissed at him. <laughs> like, what? I what? I should just be allowed to... Do... Sorry, I'm, I, that's a bit too... I was going to say, I understood everything oh, you just said. What the fuck? I, 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 that's and, that's and, more like it. There you yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. Because I was, I was about to say, you were doing like a Quebecois accent, but not even an XQC is like... He doesn't I'm sound cool. like other... Other cool. Quebec people. He has his own weird thing. He doesn't sound like any other people. He doesn't sound like people. It is. It is mm -hmm. a very unique voice, uh, and it's funny very because whenever we, 
sort of see him in his natural state. You've got tens of thousands of people that are all chill with it, but then you put him on like a platform where people are unfamiliar, and they're all like, "What the fuck is he saying?" It's like, yeah, I know. I mean, you, you, I. The first couple times that I saw any kind of XQC on the internet at all. I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying. At this point, I understand most of what he's saying. I think you just kind of have to get used to it. You do it's eventually like, become an, a bit of an XQC accent on its own. whisperer. Um, the crazy thing yeah. is that if you have like about five people, then one of them is going to understand the sentence and then they can share with the rest. And it's sort of, it's like a translation system then at that point. Have you ever heard those words? Sometimes Twitter shares these videos where it's like a word is said, but if you read one or the other or think about one or the other, you'll hear that word because it is the way it's said. It can sound like two different words. It's kind of like how he speaks mm -hmm. all the time. And so if you're not thinking about what he's actually saying, then it's really hard to figure it out. But hey, you know, communication. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a weird one. He is, and, and he's just the next chapter. It's going to happen again in years from well, every year. I think that all the major players of trying to point this stuff out, like Jack Films or Mudahar or um, the Dark Viper guy, mm -hmm. is, is, it's all very um, depressing. Like, it's not going to get fixed. I mean, it's going to get fixed when it ends in a lawsuit. Yeah, I feel like it takes one company with enough umph. Yeah, and, or individual. Like, you know. Yeah, to to really be to really set that precedent. Where it's like, yeah, you yeah. can't just steal shit. No one wants to be that guy, but I think, in, like, I mean, it's it's not as if it isn't really case law already. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not as if we don't have other legal examples to point to as to why that's not fair use. Like Ray William Johnson lost his oh yeah uh, fair use case, right? So, and and his commentary was more transformative than XQC's, but it was still, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, people were watching Equals 3 to get a compilation of new internet videos. They weren't really watching for Ray William Johnson's commentary as much as some people pretend they were. Um, you know, his commentary was just like, oh, wow, check out this cool internet video that's blowing up. Wow, that was what happened in the video. It's like basically what Sniper Wolf's doing if right I now. If I narrate what's happening, I can claim it as my own. Put it in a exactly. compilation on YouTube yeah. and have a million views. Yeah, yeah. And especially when it's like not even live streamed, you know, like th these are, <laughs> this is you All creating yeah. something that should, you know, supposedly be transformative, but the commentary the just isn't there. Polished product. This is their creative yeah. vision. Yeah. Well, I think I think that there's like an inherent nature to live streaming and reacting to content that like you don't know how much commentary you're going to be able to provide as you're doing it. But then, yeah, the big argument is just, OK, so then when you upload it on YouTube, you either get your editor to cut out, you know, the giant chunks of time where you're not adding commentary where context isn't needed to understand the rest of the criticisms or you just don't upload it. <laughs> As you're streaming and you're like, oh, I haven't said anything in four minutes. Maybe this isn't the best video for me to react to and I should do something else. Yeah. Yeah. But people hide behind that. People hide behind a lot of things. People people just want to steal shit. <laughs> uh, where where Tib is saying Ray William Johnson only lost for one video out of five in the court case. I mean, that's... Okay. Uh, he still <laughs> he still lost, right? Yeah, and 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 you're right. For as long as there's no repercussions, then why would they stop? They're going to get more and more bold. Yeah. Uh, the fact that he could really stream funny. like a season of anime, and then I guess the kick people like, "Hey, don't do that," and then he's like, "Okay, delete the vods, whatever." Like it's weird because mm -hmm. you'd have to pay me to watch anime, but some people get paid for watching anime. What? So I'm it's just it, like... it's a strange world. Strange world. Man. It's so it's crazy to to think that like even streaming the Dark Knight to like a hundred thousand people, you're not going to get enough. Sued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like crazy. that's a that's a company like Warner Brothers could one easily have sued him for that, right? Yeah, they're one of the big. You know, they're one of the big ones. It's crazy. It's crazy that they he got away with it because like if you want to set a precedent. You know, it's it's not like money. oh, you downloaded a torrent and then you don't even know how many people like it seeded to, or yeah, yeah, you know, all these other uh, clear questions about like damages and like how many people downloaded the movie from this person, all that shit. Like, 
it's a pretty direct like you streamed it to this many people this is how many people watch the movie for free <laughs> like it's pretty it's pretty easy to determine yeah and you'd think it's pretty straightforward it'd be like the guy streamed to tens of thousands he got a shit ton of money and it was all with content that doesn't belong to him what do you guys want to do about it mm -hmm. Um, well, we know he's rich. We could sue his ass. Part of it could just be that they don't know, I guess, and that it's all deleted now. Maybe. You do um, wonder about I the people know. who run these companies and what they know and how tuned in they are. They've got uh, yeah, know. I, I think know, a lot I don't of know it. How much longer I'm going to buy the old, old boomers run these companies thing. I mean, I, I think a lot of um, where they get their info about it is just through like automated systems like Content ID, and if Twitch doesn't have, or sorry, if Kick doesn't have that then it might be more difficult for it to get to them because then like what who, how, how are people going to get to it they're either going to have to be like active on twitter and following the types of people that would be talking about xqc or they're going to have to like have some sort of direct email chain or dm system that they answer that someone sent to them of x's stream before it got deleted right so yeah. i don't know who knows if they saw it well i mean it's it'll an be embarrassing interesting mess. To see what happens and the big mm -hmm. thing that gets people incensed about it is just seeing those screenshots where they, they, they're in the search results as well. Um, especially when it's videos like yeah. Lanos. Um, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that one. I mean, it's probably done promotion yeah. for Lamino at least. All this crazy shit. Especially with oh, the drama well. around it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the controversy that did it, not the thing itself. I think um, yeah. he hasn't spoken about it at all, though. Uh, he hasn't said anything. Makes you wonder what his thoughts are. Yeah. All of it. I wonder. Sometimes you want to ask. And I mean, anyway. it doesn't, yeah, like if. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, no, if you go somewhere else, go ahead. I was just going to add, like, it doesn't matter if there are some YouTubers or streamers that are okay with it and find it to be a good thing. Like, you can, you can pirate an entire movie and then the creator of that movie could be like, oh, well, I like you. I, you know, this is fine. But that doesn't mean that it was like a legal thing to do. That doesn't mean that that's like the process that you should be doing and just like, oh, because a, nothing happened this time. It was, there was know? a comment, I think it was the Discord that was like, why did they have the copyright protection and sort of uh, fair use stuff for the dissent when the director was with them? Surely he gave them permission. Oh, well, you <laughs> sweet like, summer uh, child. Oh, mm. That's how that works. No. I made it, damn it. It's my movie. That's not no, what he sounds like. You don't own anything in the studio system. Um, alrighty. Well, uh, that that about sums up the horrors of the React stuff that's going to, like I said, have another chapter. Mm -hmm. We will, uh, on the next EFAP, we're going to check out the XQC uh, Ethan debate. We're going to have Dark Viper on. I'm afraid that is uh, an impossibility now. So we're going to have to do it mm. next week, more than likely, what? with... Uh, uh, I'm not sure who's going to come on for it, but I'll sort it out. No worries. The reason this why is, is happening... Oh, Don't impossible. worry, Mahler, I'll come on. I'll, I'll, come I'll bring on Rex screen. on. Um, I'll well, come on to our podcast and talk about it. Scheduling issues and things getting in the way. You know how oh. it goes. Um, unfortunate, but uh, the reason this is happening Excuse today, me. as opposed to tomorrow... Well, I'll probably upload this tomorrow, so it kind of counts as a Saturday if I is simply again because of scheduling. That's just how things work. Different people mm -hmm. available at different times. You know what's funny? I yeah. when I told you I could do it today, I didn't realize I had my Patreon hangout today, so I had to change it because I didn't oh. want to be like, "Oh, oops, sorry, I forgot about this." So I moved it. Well, you're all, yeah. we're we're here now. We've nailed it. It's all done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fuck those. You're guys. welcome. Thank you. Of course. And you know what? We should probably get started because <laughs> your time is precious, sure. as is everyone's. I'm sure. The... I well, I assumed that this would take a while, so I, I've got a bit of time. Today. Oh, it'll be like five minutes. I uh... got it blocked. I've got it blocked off. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, I was just minding my own business on the interwebs, and then I got a couple messages being like, Oh my god, Mewchly, what, what, what have you got to say about YMS absolutely mm -hmm. destroying Drinker? And I was like, what? What's going on? And I actually thought for a second you made like a mainline video, and I was like, oh shit. Why? But then it was uploads, Retro. highlights. And then it got interesting too, because I think the initial one had uh, editing flaws in it or something, got taken down, so people like um, speculated yeah, immediately. It was, uh, yeah, it was miss. So I was coming back, I was on a flight from like Montreal to Toronto, um, and I was listening to it on two times speed just because the video was published, just making sure like it's all good. 
or whatever, or like, you know, just kind of also refreshing myself just on the discourse, just, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm at an airport, it's when I have the most free time basically. <laughs> and, uh, then I, there was a part of the video where I was like about to talk about the sound of freedom controversy and explain like some of the Twitter clips and stuff. And then that was missing. I was like, uh Oh, and so then, yeah, Olivia, uh, fixed it. There was basically, uh, like a BRB screen for a while that needed to be cut out, but, uh, she accidentally selected the whole previous like fucking half hour. So there was a huge chunk missing. And so we just decided to re-upload it. Fair enough. But a lot of people were like, why did he do it? Did someone force him to take it down? Or is he, did he make a mistake? I was just like, I don't fucking know. Copyright like... claimed. And, and then because I'm, I'm a clever boy, I was just like, I think it's taken from Twitch. Mm -hmm. Just go to Twitch and that's where it will be. Mm -hmm. uh, well, did you people... sub? Did I? No, I don't go on Twitch. I'm sorry. It's a scary place these Me days. Either. I, uh, that's fine. So... I'm just curious if you had to watch a billion ads while you watched through the VOD. I, uh, I think so, but I don't really mind. It's okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna check it out today with YMS and see if uh, any any discussion can come of this huge war between film review titans on YouTube just fucking yeah. destroying each other. I'm trying to make it sound Boom. a little bit more interesting than epically destroyed. Yeah, with facts and logic. Yeah, um, you got to watch together link on. there. If, I think one of us isn't in here. All right, hold on. Beep, 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 beep. Hold on. Let me do this. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, uh, should be able to have some fun talking about films and all that, and all that jazz industry. Good old join the room. Club. There you right. go. I'm in the room. Uh... Oh my god, he's calling from in the room. Okay, never mind. <laughs> calling from never inside mind. the room. Oh. Okay. Well, there you are. So we're gonna have past YMS. Two and a half hours with pausing. <laughs> yes. You know what you signed up for. This is normal, okay? And then yeah, we got future YMS, then we got past drinker, <laughs> future me, past Russell Brand, future rags, current, and future fringy. Look at current that. Current rags? I don't know. Present rags. No, 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 right no, 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 no. We We've got, got future. He's on the way. Joe oh, Biden. my God. Oh, my God. What is happening? I have booked all four of us <laughs> to be talking minutes from now. It's crazy. It's going to come true, I swear. But, uh... But, uh, uh oh, okay, okay. Yeah, see, there you go. So, do I... Do I... Which... <laughs> which so one I am I now? <laughs> present you, or do I talk to future you? Oh, to future me. You'll be I'm here losing, in a sec. I'm, I'm... I'm... Every day of my life, I'm talking to future people. That's crazy, man. It's one of them philosophical What I've things. noticed is that everything I do future rags complains about so that guy he needs to fucking chill he needs to calm the fuck what i've down. noticed what i've noticed is that every beach turns you old if you think about it oh my god it's the to the beach that turns you old i haven't seen <laughs> old. That's every beach is old good i suppose so. all beaches it's very old... it's very bad it's bad enough that <laughs> i've held off on reviewing it because i wanted to give it a proper treatment I want to oh, do a you're oh, Shyamalan the, the arc M. Night at some point. Shyamalan. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Is, it's really, is really, that a good really video? bad. Is it a good movie? No, you just said no. Oh, it's, it's bad. It's a very bad. Very what? bad. What? Wait, from M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah, apparently he's done a well, bad one. Well, I guess... I guess. And it came out the same year happened. as Saw Spiral. Saw Spiral was worse, though. Yes, Ooh, that was... Saw Spiral was really bad. Is that what it's called? Saw Spiral? Yeah. Rather than just Saw Spiral? Saw Spiral. It's from the uh, Book of Saw. Spiral from, from the Book of Saw. Saw. Yeah, Hi, Fringy. Hello. Hey, Fringy. Hi, everyone. Hi, Fringy. Hello. Hello. Hi, Fringy. You made Fringy. it. Okay. You like Saw I, Spiral? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. I didn't either. Um, so, I like how so, uh, Rock is like, I'm so a shitty Saw movie. Your clicking play will influence things on my end. Yes. If oh, I wait. click play, would but it influence it on I your end? I should have, yes, would, I should have warned you though. You haven't shown the uh, the URL or anything, have you? No, I don't have anything on my screen. Good. If you want to get just, the screen... I just had my webcam. If you want to get the screen shown, uh, just make sure to only show the screen. And yes, if you pause, it pauses us. Sure. If we pause, it pauses you. Yeah, I mean, it's all audio anyway. I don't need to show the screen. Okay. He uh, probably remembers it. Yeah. By, you, know, you know, he probably remembers it. It was in the old July of 26. It's an old time away. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want any context Adam before is, we hit play? Adam is by not way? bald. 
just so we're clear. He's Context? Not um, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, this was the night before Christmas. my flight to Montreal for Fantasia Film Festival, which I recently got back from. Mm. It was fun. Oh. Um, oh. Typically, the day before uh, I leave somewhere, I do like some trailer reactions and just make sure that there's like enough uh stream highlights content to give to Olivia just to make sure that there's like constant um uploads on that channel. Um this particular so the critical drinker is someone that has been mentioned quite a bit in like various communities that I've seen or on like Reddit or like someone in like my Sardonicast subreddit was like, hey, you should have him on the podcast. But then a bunch of other people were like, no, and blah, 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 blah. And it seemed like the discourse was like really divisive around yeah. him. And um, I I watch a lot of like political commentary channels and I, um, I'm really interested in like US politics and, um, you know, a lot of political pundits, some grifters, et cetera, et cetera. And so when in my recommended feed, I saw Critical Drinker on Russell Bla Bla Russell Brand. Brand. Um, that immediately piqued my interest. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'll go over this, thinking that the length of the video was reflective of what was on YouTube and not understanding that it would be like a much longer video. But um, going in with, you know, some preconceptions, but generally an open mind, um, mm -hmm. not... You know, I didn't I didn't go into it thinking like oh, I'm making a hit piece, but like, you know, let's see what see what he says, see if it matches up with um, my uh, slice of the pie, my my limited perspective on what his channel is, which, you know, anybody's perspective on any channel is going to be relatively limited to some degree. So, um, yeah. Already, well, and that's that's what this video is. Obviously, our perspective is more so very familiar with both of you guys, and so mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting to see what may be said here and there about uh, him with with a passing familiarity, as well as I thought it was interesting that you said like it's you know the idea of floating him to be a guest on Sardonicast would have been shot down. Uh, you would probably make for a pretty good guest, I'd imagine, and I I feel like it'd be an even. Uh, possibly better experience with there being plenty to disagree about, you know, at least in theory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we're doing a bunch of like reorganizing on the podcast. So, you know, I'm not going to write it off. Like we'll see what happens. I just have to like discuss it with, you know, the others. Um, uh, <laughs> you guys able to talk about yourselves for a minute? My fucking alarm clock's going off, which up, late, by up, the way, taller. is it wake up? Wait, is it one of those time. alarm clocks that takes a minute to shut off? It's it, no, wow. it's just a minute away. <laughs> like that's all. No, it's not on my it's phone. It's, it's a, it takes a minute to get a. How where okay, is go. this? It's a minute go away. Get it. I don't know. I, I, get, I gave an average amount of time. It's probably going to take less than that. The microphone. He's, he's go, go but the idea is to give me enough time phone. to return and maybe have like a twenty second. You can buffer. go do it. You know, I, I'm going to be back right by now. I'm going to go do it. What's the timer for? Uh, well, that's the thing. Cool. Going off now, it's like it's a bit late. Alarm clock. I don't know what your business is there, but yeah, okay. One right thirty-five. Um, it's an odd time Thanks for it to go off for the sub the box guy. All right. Well, Mauler's up for the podcast. That was his timer that goes off in case he's late. That's his emergency backup timer. Wow, that's a uh, a lot. That's like half an hour off the. Yeah, yeah. If, I, I told him earlier, if you're going to have a backup uh, timer, you might as well have it just set to the same time as your, your regular timer. There's no real reason for your backup timer to be half an hour after the first one is supposed to go off. Uh, but... Well, unless you snooze. Like, you snooze and then then you wake lose. up later, you know? Well, you do lose, but not with a you backup alarm. Time. That's the idea, right? I use my phone as my timer. You see that? It didn't take me a minute, what? but I gave myself a minute. You must have really uh, okay. sprinted. It was a minute away. He took off like a shot. I mean, like, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty powerful and fast, so I can achieve yeah. those sorts of things. Anyway, shall we get started? I think the format here is literally just sure. going to be listening to old YMS and then talking to new YMS about old YMS. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. All right, here's one. Um... 
<sighs> July 26th. I have not oh, commented on the critical drinker publicly, but there's been a lot of talk from people on like the Sardonicast subreddit and like he's definitely Wait, before Is there an option to do 1.25 or 1.5 speed? Uh I think so. Yeah. I actually don't know. Cuz I I think we I think we could save yes, a lot of can. time without yes. Playback necessarily. Speed. Yeah, we can go to 1.25 just in anyway. case we don't want to go too fast. Sure. Also, I mean, over two we... two and a half hours, like we're saving, like fucking <laughs> minutes, forty five minutes. minutes, literal minutes, thirty minutes. Um, the before we progress too far because of recent drama, just want to make sure. YMS, do we have your permission to react to your video? Uh, I mean, we're it's you don't need my permission because we're. Providing substantive uh, commentary and criticism over top of it, and thanks, transforming uh, going, the use of it. Thanks for uh, going with the meme, uh, <laughs> but you are correct. I was yes, expecting we just go correct. no, we and then we move on. We don't. We don't actually. Yes, that is true. Yeah. We don't well, need your, the permission of the copyright holder to friends. That is true. That is. I correct. like responding to questions with serious correctly. Answers. Yes. Yeah, rags. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's that's great. All right. He he's definitely a subject of conversation. When it comes to online film reviewers, because he seems to embody this sort of, I, if you want my full perspective of like art and viewing art and your experience with art, it's it's really just like anybody can have their own experience, right? And so I've always been open to this idea of like, you know, even if somebody comes at a film from a completely different perspective as me, for is that Russell Brand's icon, a, the the purple corvid there, the little bird? It's just is a thing, thing at the beginning. Just I don't a know. Thing. It's, an official oh, icon. Right. The the fucking the logo <laughs> on his show is like a big fucking COVID ball. <laughs> like I thought it was that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my like goodness. A... It's, it's, uh, he uh, we'll get he into it. He's down yeah. with the sickness. Oh no. Yeah. You know, various art you know, various artistic reasons or even political reasons. Like I'm kind of interested in that. I'm kind of interested in, you know, especially why the critical drinker has like such a large audience, you know, why it's relating to so many people. Um, he got like a Russell Crowe interview. Like Russell Crowe loves his shit. Oh my god! Got a, two interviews got with two Russells. It's true. He That's needs true. To complete the trifecta now. I think it's a fetish to make sure it was Russell Crowe and not somebody else. Hold on. Yeah, like Russell Crowe, like well, you know, just flat out watches his shit, which is like really interesting. And so, like, I think it, after a certain point, okay, nearly... like they're having like a full on interview here, right? Uh, he looks more and more like Gabe Newell. As the years go by, I think um, it's his final form. <clears throat> Didn't yeah. Guillermo del Toro put out a tweet saying, "As the days go by, uh, Russell Crowe looks more and more like me," or something? <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> it's like his dream. He'll they'll they'll reach equilibrium. Brother, it's Russell Crowe, man, and he's right here. That's that's kind of interesting, right? And so, at a certain point, regardless of how much a lot of people might not like the critical drinker. I think it's important to try and understand why he's connecting with people. To try and understand what it is about him that is speaking to people in such a particular way. Where the fact that like, he's got like almost two million. Sales. Absolutely. The one thing I'm curious about though is why would you want to look at an interview with Russell Brand rather than watch, say, like two or three of his videos? Because I, because a lot of what people will um, post in on like Reddit and all this other stuff is just like clips from those videos um and i've seen a few of them and a lot of the times he'll say something and people will be like oh but he's like playing a character um and i don't know i wouldn't begin to know like which exact videos to watch to get like the best sort of like representative pie of what he is right whereas in an interview um again i didn't go into this with the premise of like let me try to understand everything about Critical Drinker. I was mostly just interview, uh, sorry, interested about this uh, interaction between him and uh, Russell Brand and just wanted to provide like a little bit of context before clicking on it about what my thoughts on Critical Drinker are or what my expectations or, you know, relative degrees of like familiarity or unfamiliarity are just to give some context before I start the video, right? So, um... Yeah, I mean, I've seen a few of his videos, but I just, I don't know. 
So if you like click on my channel, like a lot of I don't I don't know what is even representative of my content in terms of like by volume, like maybe by frequency. It's a lot of like in theater reviews that I don't really put a lot of like heavy amount of like research or uh time spent editing or constructing or jokes into but they're just you know recommendations for things in theaters but you know the selling point of my channel would be like the full yms reviews right yeah um like i would would, I would, would you say that like the selling that. point of his channel would be his um why modern movies sucks videos would you say that that no, it's got to be like the, the coverage of sort of the mainstream successes and failures of uh, Hollywood, I would argue. So, like, if you watched his yeah. Dial of Destiny video combined with uh, maybe, like, a Dead Reckoning and then something like The Whale, that would probably give you mm -hmm. a good selection of how he praises, how he criticizes, and then when he goes off <clears throat> the beaten track slightly. I know it's an Oscar winner, but it, I think he covered it before that, so is that at the very least? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I will say um before we even get to it like the one thing that i'm definitely giving you guys a point on is like um when i made this video uh i was under the impression that like his recommendations were purely limited to the ones with uh recommends in the title and then between you know you messaging me and me uh being on this stream you know i scrolled down the channel a bit you know, trying to see if I can maybe get in like one or two more videos before having this conversation. And I noticed that there's other, you know, there's other uh, videos where he's like recommending other films that are just not, you know, I scrolled down the list using the search term recommends because I thought that that's how he categorized right. his videos, but there are a bunch more. And also, I will also say this. Um, I read the title of Boiling Point, but I got it confused with the movie Hard Boiled. And Boiling Point is a lesser known movie that I haven't seen yet that I would like to. A brilliant film that I highly recommend. Yes. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a, a one point. right? Yes. And like it's a pretty shot. impressive one, I yeah. think. Yes. Very impressively shot. Yeah. Yes. Everyone go see Boiling Point. I'll probably point. watch that yeah. soon. Yeah. Highly recommended. Really good stuff. Um, but yeah, so if someone was to say, like, ask a lot of questions about your career slash what you offer slash why are you popular, I probably would point to them funnily. Um, it depends how much time they have, of course. If they're like, I got half an hour, I'd be like, hmm, maybe half an hour of the Lion King video um, would quite mm -hmm. capture what they can get from you, at least why I would argue you're popular compared. Like, it's not that people don't like your, um, your uh, quickie reviews, but I don't think people think of that at your best. No, no, I, I would say that, like, um, the stuff that gets the views and the stuff that, like, sells the channel is uh, a lot of what is on the most viewed tab for me. Um, but there's also stuff that I personally really, like, I, I really value the, like, yearly list videos. I think that those yeah. are very useful for people and, uh, like, well presented generally. I haven't done one in a while but I'm trying my best to catch up on that. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like, certain analysis series, like Synecdoche, New York, again, got to catch up on it, but just been fucking... Hey, that's deliberate. It's once. thematically relevant. It is It is deliberate and thematically relevant. Um, so, is, yeah. Uh, I guess all I'm trying to say here is that I would have advised against checking out his interview with Russell Brand if you wanted to understand Drinker, because uh, this is going to be... As you'd expect, several questions delivered by someone who doesn't know who he is, not really looking for him to answer them, as opposed to just having him say stuff and then moving on. So, so would you? Are you like? Do you share my perspective that perspective that Russell Brand is kind of like a grifter? Um, I'm not going to go that far. I just because uh, I'm not familiar enough with his stuff, I just okay. wouldn't recommend this as a good dive into. If me and Drinker did an interview, maybe I would recommend that because I would be desperate to get all the information out of him. But even then, I'd probably just come mm -hmm. for his actual videos, you know, like three of them. Yeah, they're okay. fairly short, his typical videos. Yeah, they, that's why I'm saying that. It's like they're like 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. What <laughs> I, I, people like, are I question know, I like, I don't so know. I don't know anything about Russell Brand. At the Brand, end really. of the, at the end of the, um, 
you know, at the end of the stream on that day, uh, I'm trying to imagine like the alternate universe where I was like, oh, I'm going to go through like four or five of Critical Drinkers videos or something, right? I feel like that, I, well, you know, maybe, maybe it would be this way, maybe it wouldn't be, but like my, my feelings about it is like, I feel like that would appear as more of like a, like kind of a deliberate, like searching for a particular um, outcome sort of thing. Whereas like my understanding of like just a full interview, even if it is with Russell Brand, um, you know, like you're kind of just given, it's like a podcast format where you're given like any number of, and a free form. opportunities and time to just kind of like ex explain your positions on things and based on what he explained in this interview and uh i guess i guess we'll just keep playing the video but like based mm -hmm. on what he explained in this video it's like i don't know there's uh there's some things where if he didn't if he didn't mean that then he didn't say it <laughs> you know and if it's if there's somewhere else on his channel that he meant something different then i would like to be pointed towards it but yeah Okay, we'll get we'll get to it when we get there. It's, yeah, sure. all I'm saying is that Russell Brand's not. Uh, uh, no offense to him. Again, don't know much about him. Um, I don't think he's listening that hard. He he's like it's a guest. I asked to ask them sort of basic questions as well as stuff that relates to mm -hmm. Russell's interest in him to some extent. But I think you even notice like there's some answers Drinker gives that you could easily ask him more, but Russell Brand just moves on because he's an interviewer. He's just like, mm -hmm. all right, time to do this, time to do this. Even to the extent I'm not sure he notices whether or not his question was fully answered sometimes, because it's just presented I as mean, you speak now. There's at least one question where he, like, he he asked him again, like, later in the interview, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that's the thing. I do but think he kind of just he, provided the same answer, too. He not only pays somewhat attention, but he also seems to actually have some level of investment in Drinker's channel. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's just that mm -hmm. there's a dynamic happening, and they've got to keep things moving. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. okay. He's got almost two million subs. Like the guy's doing fucking great, and most of what he's talking about is essentially just like Hollywood's woke, right? And my so it's, is is it not strange that you said that while also conceding you haven't really seen any of his videos other than maybe did you say like three or four? From I mean, yeah, from the sample size that I have checked, and when I say that I have checked out, like I don't mean like oh I clicked on a video that uh, in a thread of people dunking on him or something like. I've just I've I've clicked on his some of his videos out of curiosity. Uh, I've went to his channel and clicked on some random ones, and you know maybe not finished every every one of them because it's not really my thing. But um, the perhaps perhaps we find some disagreement uh, with me using the term woke. Um, but I think that I, I I don't know if we're going to disagree that much that we're kind of talking about the same thing, right? Like he has an entire video on how men are improperly uh used in film and you yeah know, same you for have, women you can't have men doing like yeah 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 um, um if you were asking me though because I, I i've pretty much seen all of his videos the uh if you ask me what does he focus on i'd say oh it's pretty much writing you'll always uh in every one of these mm -hmm. videos primarily talk about the stories and uh, being told the, you know, sometimes you'll talk about filmmaking in a little bit more depth, but I mean, it's 10 minutes, so you, you get what you'd understand you'd get. Do you, do you feel like, even even with writing as the focus, do you feel like there's like kind of a political slant or angle to it? Not necessarily like a, a nefarious one or like a, uh, like a dishonest one, but just one that, you know, att attracts an audience of, of people that might want to hear um you know i'm not saying he's grifting but like just invariably yeah his so his uh, thing is that um there's a sort of point of view in hollywood that's uh, way too popular that gets uh, primarily focused before writing does and that he thinks that it like as a core as a foundation that goal will uh, destroy a lot of what you can create with stories because you'll automatically prevent yourself from doing particular things um, for like sterile yeah. examples, it would just be like the Doctor Strange wasn't allowed in one division because Kevin Feige said you can't have a white man saving the day when it's uh, about Wanda's it's Wanda's story. You don't need to phrase it like that to argue storytelling. Yet they mm. did. You uh you have like the boys. Maeve wasn't allowed to die even though she clearly should have died because she was uh, bisexual. 
They're like, we can't you so, know, bury gays, that sort of stuff. Like, basically, um, concerns about meta or societal issues that bleed into your writing so hard that they, like, they just create contradictions and fuck-ups. So, so would you agree that we're essentially talking about the same thing, even if... Um, like, we are. Like, it's just I, that uh, I wouldn't describe Drink as... That's what he primarily does. I would say he reviews films from a point of view of oh. writing quality yeah, or entertainment first. Okay. Do, um, so would you say that the majority of his content doesn't like reflect that at all, but the, the majority of what gets talked about of his content is that? Yes, in the same way that everyone says what Mola does is talk about how objectively correct he is. Like, it's, it's a complete mm -hmm. fuck-up. It, it just represents the people who... Like, it's unfortunate how many people don't watch the channel at all, be it me or Drinker, or yourself, and they'll have, mm -hmm. they'll ta they'll have this takeaway that's fact. absolutely fucking alien. It's like, that's not at all what yep, gets talked I'm, about. I'm familiar with that. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's why I think uh, I said to you that um, I don't find your... I, I, I completely understand why you would have said what you said, because it makes sense that people would have told you over and over again that this is the case. Like the, that's that's okay. I, I still I, I I I do still have like criticisms in that yeah realm though. Uh, but we'll I guess we'll get to them. My biggest crit the critical drinker as a person that has not watched all of his videos, obviously. Um, but as as a person that's seen, you know, like I've clicked on a fair amount of things and maybe not recently, but I've clicked on a fair amount of things. Uh, and have essentially just walked away with the idea of like okay. You're a person creating film reviews for, like, the average audience member, but not, like, one that's, like, really into film as, like, an art form? If, is that, like, a, an incorrect thing to say? Like, Yes. Uh, he's very invested in the art form. Yes. Okay. But I guess I, I, I would also, I would also, I guess, clarify that there's different thresholds of what people would consider to be, like, art form versus you know, like film is entertainment. Um, and sure, entertainment is an art form. Um, and I'm not saying like, oh yeah, like everybody has to fucking enjoy Synecdoche in New York or something. Um, but, you know, I got I got like a good amount of comments from people that watch both of our channels, or mine and Drinker's, um, that, you know, are fans of the both of us uh, agreeing with that sentiment at least that like, um, my channel is more focused on, uh, like art house films, uh, or like film as an art form and exploring that. Um, whereas the drinkers channel, although, you know, talking about writing, writing is a part of the art form. Um, it is for a much more broad audience, uh, of average film goers, not saying that as an insult, I guess, but you know, that helps to describe, uh, the amount of people connecting with it too out of curiosity yeah, would, would you say that most other channels would you say that we do or do not care about the art form as opposed to the entertainment i don't i i didn't make that claim i don't think I'm asking that you. that's the case i don't i don't believe so you don't believe wait sorry wait, I, mean, I mean no i mean i don't believe that you don't care about film as an art form to clarify what i'm asking is you seem to have concluded that he doesn't uh care for the art form versus the entertainment factor would you say the same of our uh, channel i i i think that that is a rephrasing of what i said i don't I, I don't think i said that he doesn't care we can go let's go if you want to rewind we can i said doesn't care compared to the entertainment factor no i but well care, care is a very strong word because that implies a level of intent Okay. Whereas I, I've never, I didn't attribute that. So, I, I, I just think that invariably, like someone's tastes, right? A, a lot of people can, a lot of people don't want to watch a lot of the movies that I'm interested in, right? Uh huh. Um, and Critical Drinker does have a mass appeal by, you know, a lot of what he focus on focuses on is like owned by Disney, right? Um, and that's not to say. Oh, he doesn't care at all about film as an art form. I'm just saying, like, comparatively towards, you know, a lot of other. Well, you might be right. Other channels, um, but a, I might have misunderstood what you said. If you, uh, we'll play one more time, just okay. to be sure. It's member, but not like yeah. one that's like really into film as like an art form. But people who are not into film as an art form. Well, 
into is it can can describe like a pretty big range, you know. So like into comparatively. So to better understand, like if, I, if I'm comparing view, it to like my channel. Okay, but does that mean then you would say like Efap and Mola are not really into movies as an art form or film? I wouldn't say not really into. I, I would say like from from my limited perspective of like the types of movies being covered across everyone's channels. Um, I would say that that there is more of an entertainment value focus on channels that primarily, um, you know, that that ta the more of the more of a slice of a pie that a channel makes up of focusing on, you know, like Disney mm -hmm. <laughs> movies and like just in your face, like this is what's advertised to you. So everybody's already kind of having discussion on it. Um, I would say that there is more of a like an art form focus on channels that you know talk talk about more subversive or artistic or uh, challenging or against the grain or because because to me that's what art is is like you know but showing I assume some, you'd, somebody um... something new right like if 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 there's so much familiarity in in an art form it's it's not it's not really art anymore for me not and i'm not saying that as like a, a an absolutist statement i'm just saying that as like a comparative statement like you put an incredible amount of weight in sort of how things push the bounds or do something that is new yeah because otherwise what's the point what's the fucking point of art like it i don't want to well, see the same shit visions. over and over again like it's not it's not art if it's if you're just consuming the same thing over and over again right so this is this is like kind of Partially like, like a philosophical uh, kind of conversation, right? But well, I feel uh, like, so like there's a, a, a question. Do you believe that like basically all movies are arts and that they vary in terms of being I mean, bad or well, not? Well, here I, like, I, I could say, at, I, go for it. I think every like you, if we're if we're talking about like definitions. Or the philosophical definition that I would have, I would say everything's art. I would say life's fucking art, right? Uh, so when I say that something's like more or less art, it's in the same vein as saying, you know, there's no there's no true objectivity, but something can be more or less objective, right? You can you can have someone uh, in the jury for uh, like a crime, and it's like, okay, they know the victim. That's less objective than someone who doesn't know the victim sitting on the jury although no one is truly objective right so there's varying degrees of scale without being absolutist about it i think that i think that no. an, anything and everything can be considered art but i i would argue that the more artful uh pieces of media that exist are the ones that are not showing us things that have already been shown before um, how would you um how would you define art if somebody was to ask you what you think art really like is if someone's asked what is art what would you what would you say just as a broad sort of you know casual thing to say to him um it's whatever it's whatever someone makes of it right so if if it it, it is whatever um someone experiences that can have them think about something in a different way right like uh, this conversation's art mm. like it literally is like we're, pre we're producing video content um and it doesn't even necessarily have to be but like a conversation in a real room with someone can be art uh something that can can influence or alter your experience on this planet and uh have you think about something i, I think that's you that's um... art and so so then yeah i mean like it it holds true to my um statements that you know, the less, <laughs> the, the more familiar and the more recycled something is, I feel like that's less artistic because it doesn't make you think about anything because it's just, it's just the same shit over and over, right? So, but just, I don't know, I don't know if we should get, I don't know if we should get stun locked on this though. Uh, I don't do the, the, we're the two whole minutes through the stun locked video. to one guide thing. I fucking hate Twitch culture for that. We're just talking about what we talk about, okay? So, the critical okay. drinker, would you I'm say? Just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't want it to be twelve hours. <laughs> you can, uh, obviously. You feel free to uh, spend as much time or as little as you want, but I was just going to say, the okay. drinker, from what you said, do you think the audience takeaway is that he doesn't really concern himself very critically about the art form, from what you said? Um, I, I don't think that his audience feels that way. 
but I think that there's a lot, I think his audience, I think there's a higher percentage of people in his audience that don't care about film as an art form in the way that I would, yeah. uh, compared to my audience, which is, I think, a very fair thing to say, so... I think that he very much does, but that those who watch movies just to be entertained are very much going to gravitate toward his channel as well. So I think that's fair. Yeah, because it's a very... Uh, the types of media that he talks about generally are very, like, widely well-known and appealing. And also, also, like... And this is not to say that this therefore means his content is bad or that he's grifting, mm -hmm. but there is... there There's a a big portion of his well i don't know how big but there's you know larger than channels that don't talk about uh like i guess culture war kind of things or at least have the uh lens of it reflected in in the content there's a um, there's a higher percentage of people in that audience that are not necessarily interested in film so i talk i we'll wait for it in the video but i i talked anecdotally about um, somebody that I know that kind of fell down like a conspiracy rabbit hole in like the content, like they get their news from like BitChute basically, and pr the only film channel that they even knew about was the Critical Drinker, and they're like, oh yeah, I like his videos, and it's not because they care about film as as an art form, it's because there's kind of a uh, implied, whether intentional or not, by the drinker, whether intentional or not. There is kind of like an implied uh, level of intent uh, from this, we could say the filmmakers, we could say the studios, we could say corporations, we could, you know, some people might even imply like the government or something. But there's this overarching sort of like, um, you know, we talk about how men can't be presented in this way. There are people that watch his channel. I'm assuming this, but I, I don't think that it's an unfair assumption. I think that there's a, there's a good chunk of people that watch his channel that probably that that are t the type of person that think that uh, there's like a nefarious plot to try and like feminize men, right? Like there's people that believe that, and I'm not saying that Critical Drinker is the reason why they believe it, but that there's enough of that sort of conspiracy shit going on on the internet. Um, that his channel is not through any necessarily any intent of his own, but his channel is kind of like reaffirming those beliefs in a way without directly saying it. And again, I'm not saying he's being like sneaky or manipulative or, or like crypto, but I'm saying that like, just because those things exist, uh, those, those different beliefs because they exist and because they essentially complement each other in terms of, how uh the the what what's the word the uh like perspective of the channel the the premise of a, like a, some of the content on the channel it seems to complement uh itself in that oh. way like the, those two types of demographics i mean to draw us back though uh because what you've said now about the con context of what you're talking about here Sounds way more reasonable and and accurate. The only other trouble I'd have now is that you, I assume you'd agree that this applies to ninety nine point nine percent of YouTube film reviews channels. Ninety nine point nine. Sure. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Like the I'm talking about a very specific. Like we're talking about like. Uh, I'm not talking about people... the feminizing stuff. I'm talking all the way back about what you said, focusing uh, audiences that are drawn in for entertainment. Oh sure, yeah. For inter yeah, there's people that watch my videos for the memes. Yeah, I'm 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 not as much concerned about like, um, you know, like we could, uh, Jeremy fucking Johns talks about only popular movies. You know, like it's it the 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 premise of what I'm talking about. The the only reason why uh, the critical drinker is like a subject of conversation for me and it makes it interesting is not just like oh he covers popular movies uh most of the time and doesn't go to film festivals or whatever it's that it's that through the lens of which him covering those films it's not just oh there's people uh that are looking for entertainment it's that there are people that have this uh very bizarre conspiracy theory of how the world works and that there's someone trying to change culture in a way uh for nefarious reasons and again i'm not saying that critical drinker believes those things or is even aware 
uh, that he's his content is necessarily complementing those things. But you know, like the 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 the. the a lot of the takeaways of his videos or a lot of the lens through which he uh, creates his content is essentially like, okay, like male characters can't be presented like this because, you know, they're trying to, uh, they're trying to correct a perceived uh, problem of how male characters have been represented. Um, and, and since there's a lot of it that, that does talk about that, I, I feel like those types of people are getting what they want out of his content. And again, it doesn't mean that uh, he's doing anything like dishonest. That doesn't mean that he's <clears throat> I'm not like trying to play towards them. I'm but, just you know. trying to stay squarely within the context of introducing the channel as a channel for people who aren't really into the art form, more so into the entertainment. And that if that's true yeah. with what you've said, I just want to clarify that that is the vast, overwhelming majority of channels on YouTube. Arguably, if, including if we were, my own. If we were to simplify it without the context of that other conspiracy stuff that I'm talking about, then yes. Okay. But as even... as the as the video go as the yeah we can we can tackle on, it all one by I, I do one. Clarify and talk talk about it more. If is that like a, an incorrect thing to say? Like, I know people personally that don't know anything about movies, but they know who the can I pee now is. while. It, while the video is just me saying yeah, yeah. what I just said. <laughs> okay, I'll be right uh, back. You yeah, can keep sure. playing. I'll and be like right. everything, like there's people. So one of my friends has a sibling who is, uh, who has fallen down kind of like a conspiracy rabbit hole and gets their news from like bit shoot. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> you know? it's like an echo. And, and are like concerned about like how George Soros is going to make people eat bugs or something. And like I, I talked to her and her boyfriend trying to like, have like a common group because like you know i'm not i'm not gonna confront people directly about these sorts of things like i'm more interested in like learning who they are and understanding them and like even if they're like they have wildly different beliefs and are insane you know i i just i tried to relate to him and just you know her boyfriend and just being like you know what sort of things do you watch on youtube do you, you know like film stuff and he's like oh i watch i watch the critical drinker and that will always leave an impression on me the fact that like this guy who well i not sure. Well, I don't know how much we should say while he's gone, but because the critical drinker has such broad appeal, many many people will be in that, you know, in that in that group of all kinds of walks of life and of interest. Like my my dad, my dad watches Critical Drinker. It's just there's a huge amount of like he's just very easily digestible content. Not that it's bad or anything like that, but it you know because of the size of it, because of the you know, I think of Drinker's talents and the way that he talks about videos and or movies, and because he does have a passion for it, all sorts of people can watch his videos and be, you know, satisfied and, and learn things and I'm back. you know, consider it hey. insightful. So, um, so you've just mentioned this uh, a friend of a friend or whatever that um has a lot of sort of conspiracy brain sort of things, but also happens to mm -hmm. watch Critical Drinker. Um, do you think that's a fair thing to bring up before we've seen anything to do with Drinker yet? Um, I mean, if I was trying to present it as anything other than just an anecdotal experience, but I, I didn't, I made it pretty clear and I even used the word anecdotal and I, yeah, I mean, it's more about going well, through the video and seeing, you, right. sorry, you did say that it, it, it stuck with you. That yeah, because are, that's you know, a very that's... bizarre thing to hear from from someone well, but did you I, ask I was like is it they didn't even know about your channel watch? i asked i <laughs> i was i thought that they would have known about your shit because you're like associated with but like if you, he did they didn't even know about your stuff if he did i doubt you'd say at the beginning of checking out my channel like by the way there's a friend of a friend who knows about conspiracy shit that watches Muller. it's like okay well no but i mean because i if he did it would be through critical drinker maybe but i guess i guess you're saying hypothetically if he brought if he brought you up, I mean, like, that would give me something to think about. I'm not sure I would come away with the same, like, uh, I'm not going to say conclusion, because I didn't really make a conclusion, but same uh, preconceived notions. But I, I guess I'm trying to, could you see someone reviewing your channel and just starting up the review with, like, I know someone who's essentially kind of crazy who watches YMS, and that's always stuck with me? Well, I mean, if my content was frequently criticized for being like really culture war kind of sort of thing like wh whether or not we're going to say like critical drinkers content 
is that like it 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 aligns with like a, a larger public perception right so that's why it's relevant for me to bring up if um is this the thing if the content in critical drinkers videos was just one to one with everything that friend believed and then you showed that that would be you'd nail it um obviously the problem is that there are things people say about all of us here and if you open your video with that or an anecdotal experience that matches that yeah no we we shouldn't treat it like that was my like opening statement of like a thesis though like we should like i'm just i i was just provi I, again i was just saying what i knew of critical drinker and my own personal anecdotal experiences i've i've had saying that i clicked on a couple of videos that some people in the subreddit were mad about him and i just i it would be yeah i, I felt like that was worthy of mentioning especially with the frequent caveats and clarifications that i make throughout this entire stream trying to you know, very delicately insist that I that I am not trying to misattribute any sort of like anecdotal experiences as fact. And mm -hmm. I'm trying, you know, I, I bring up like things that I preconceived ideas that I have about his audience. And I, you know, constantly clarifying throughout the video that I that I uh, am not necessarily attributing the beliefs of his audience even to him. So, I, yeah, I, I think. You know, I, I don't. I don't know what else I could have done. <laughs> I probably in terms um, of like like if it were me, the, I would, the overall fairness that I'm trying to present to the conversation and open mindedness. Probably I think that I did a you know hold on to it until way it's better prompted than most people. Probably the the way to go, right? Because the the bigger problem what? as well is that your um your audience, as you've already mentioned, is quite ready to believe a lot about Drinker and what he's up to. In fact, they would have told you a lot of stuff that some. Some people in my audience, mostly from the Sardonic S subreddit. Okay. That's, which that, is a combination but, of my audience and two other people's audience. To give you an example, if um, um if for the it, first time ever we were to cover Vorsch reviewing a film, our audience would be mm -hmm. incredibly inclined against him just from different things that have happened in the past. Uh same for a lot of creators. If we were to cover, let's say, uh, you know, a friend of drinkers, everyone would be inclined mm -hmm. toward them, more than likely. Just natural biases. So, you know, yeah, I'm saying your audience. I assume you agree is inclined against a drinker, a uh, critical drinker. Uh, not, not, you, not. I mean, the, maybe half. Like, if you look, look at the top comments on the the video right now. The number one is like, um, on the the highlight video. The number one is like this. Here's an unbiased, uh, summary for people uh, that didn't have the time, and it's it's like a very fair like. Oh, Adam ag agrees with Drinker on this and critical. Sure. Blah, blah, blah. It's not like you know, like that's 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 like the most representative sample of my audience is that I you know me and as you can see through that stream and as you can see through this conversation, um, the type of thoughts that I put out into the world are ones where I'm uh, constantly encouraging. Uh, trying to understand other people, trying to be fair, and trying to, uh, you know, even if I have biases, saying those biases, recognizing those biases, and seeing if being open to having those biases contradicted, or being open to uh, new information, even if I have a preconceived idea about somebody else. I feel like that is more representative of my audience singularly. Um, and let's think about this for a second too even with a lot of people that you know as soon as you make a video criticizing someone else on the internet it's gonna be flooded with people that are just like you know already don't like the person and they're just looking for more justification to Absolutely. Not, so not like the point i'm not just so they can add to the the whole thing right i'm not trying like, to prove to even you even with that like the comment section is very fair and reasonable for the most part um it's, I'm not trying to know, prove to like you it's... that your uh, audience is even unreasonably going in any particular direction. All I'm highlighting is that it's not the greatest idea to put something like that before covering anything to do with Drinker with an audience that's already arguably inclined against him. I don't believe that that... I, well, mm, I would say over half of my audience is probably not, like... Even neutral, fans, but I would like, say it's a, not a good a idea. There's a huge chunk for... but... Okay. I mean, I, I would we'll want to do the same. We'll agree to disagree. <laughs> I'd want to do the same for you and for anyone else. If I was like, we're going to cover some yeah, rags yeah. videos today, and then I like just reference how someone crazy likes rags, it just seems unnecessary. Yeah, that'd be weird. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, it's reflective of my uh, like it, it's it's me being honest about my bias. 
right? It's me. It's me giving more information and context about my frame of mind going into it, so that if I say something potentially unfair, or if I have, um, you know, a, a direction that not my mind is going, that it could be influenced by something like an anecdotal experience that I had with someone. And I want that information to be out there, so that if, let's say, something happens in my brain where I'm being uh, led by that belief in a certain way, or led by like, if I wouldn't want to start the video being like. I have no thoughts about Critical Drinker. I haven't heard anything about them. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to like pretend like I'm a completely neutral subject. I think that it makes more sense and it's more fair to to share my biases before starting a video. So, is it not possible to simply say um I've heard a lot of negative things about the channel and what it gets up to, what it argues, and so today we're going to check out something he says, see what happens. Well, I mean, based on your issues with what I'm saying, I don't know how it's any better to just be vague about it. Like because if when you is that I said something negative before sure, I started um, the stream, I don't know how it's better to be vague. If you talk about someone who believes in like crazy shit and then says that they're a fan of Drinker, the the connection is that Drinker supports the crazy shit. No, I because I I made very clear to make clarifications in my stream that I, that's not what I was saying. So, so you brought it up just yeah. as a random connect. It has nothing it, that that isn't the connection you're trying to draw. I didn't say random. I explained I explained two sentences ago why I brought it up. It's for context so that people have more information before going into it. But sorry. So you don't you wanted to bring up that he is a person who believes in like crazy stuff and that he watches the drinker but that those two facts are not connected. Hmm? You wanted no, to No. That that was that's my anecdotal experience. Is that is that there's people that exist in his audience at least one <laughs> right um that are conspiracy brained and have somehow found his channel despite their entire media diet being like rumble and bit shoot which you know more people from rumble are coming to his channel because russell brand just had like this interview that of russell brand the full thing was on rumble so there's going to be even more of those types of people Russell Brand is not a film channel, right? Like Russell Brand is is a person that that the entire reason why he's successful right now is because he was doing like a lot of like COVID conspiracy shit and you know stuff that wasn't all allowed on YouTube. Um, and he he kind of Russell Brand very, in my opinion, very consciously plays into uh, his own audience capture and knows what people want to hear and is essentially just grifting, making money off of doing that, right? Uh, and I'm not saying that that's what Critical Drinker is doing, and I make very clear in my stream that that's not what I'm saying. So my my bringing up the conspiracy person that I had a face to face conversation with in my life, um, my bringing up was just me being like, "Hey, my impression of Critical Drinker and his content and his audience, even though I haven't seen everything, is that there are some people." <laughs> a, a, a somewhat sizable portion compared to other people's audiences that are not necessarily listening to him for his perspective on film, but are uh, using his channel as a way to justify their preconceived ideas about how there's some sort of conspiracy trying to control society, that they're trying to feminize men, that they're trying to prevent, you know, make you eat the bugs, even though that's that one's a little bit further removed. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't. If if you don't understand uh, the you know why I would say something like that, like I hope you I hope you don't think that it was uh, you know malicious because I I didn't think it was, but if you do, I guess we're gonna have to agree to disagree. I think you said it entirely non maliciously, just casually. I just think okay. that strategically speaking, it um it's not fair to drink it. That's what I think. Okay. Who? Every single thing that he consumes online is just like purely conspiracy content. The only film channel he could name was the Critical Drinker, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I like you know, I I like the Critical Drinker," and that was it. And all he knew about movies was just that movies are woke now, and that I guess the powers that be, like some sort of like overarching force that's trying to like like they're trying to like make your kids trans or something. Like, and. Uh, <sighs> Sure, that's one person. I get it. Like it, it, it. Maybe it's not representative of every critical drinker fan. I get it. Um, but but there's some there's something about his content that just like so. It, it really... Actually, now I'm kind of confused because the statement mm. is I know a friend 
He doesn't know any movie reviewers other than Drinker, and he believes these things. Like, what is the conclusion from from that line, line of thought, you know? I, I explained it sentences ago. I'm sorry. I can't keep repeating myself. That, this, that's not a dis... I'm trying not to sound disrespectful, but uh, you can play back the stream later. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just... Well, it's... it's I, I don't know. It's just that um, if you didn't have that, like, just based on that sentence on its own, if you hear it, it's like, kind of leads you to a very... <laughs> place i i understand why you feel that way but i disagree and i've repeated myself more than once i'm sorry we have to move on this is okay. we're five minutes through a two hour and, this, and a half like video. this is this is the type of shit where you would you would expose people who don't really care about movies to only care about mu movies through like a purely political lens Right, like a lot of his videos are ju are just like, okay, movies are bad now because because there's woke things and woke people are doing it. Right, like that that you know, like I wish I wish that I could I wish that I could expose someone like this to more films. I wish that I could expose someone like this to like having a healthier media diet because it seems like the type of do you consider his media diet unhealthy? Um, um, I mean, it could be healthier if most of what he's watching is unhealthy in this but format, meaning varied, uh, cool. you know, but yeah, I mean, like I said at the beginning of the stream that that was one of my, um, misconceptions that I can easily give you a point on. He recommended a lot more things than what I scrolled through because it was categorized under a different title. Okay, so cool. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try to argue that like he doesn't check out things that are you know against the grain or uh you know smaller films that aren't explicitly disney films that, that was a misconception on my part so sure okay person that thinks that all movies are bad now like what is what is the name of your series right like why modern movies suck right like that's a series on the channel why modern movies suck you know it's not necessarily that modern movies suck it's that there's a handful of like popular studio modern movies that suck and if you go back in time you go back in time to like you know whenever you think that the golden age of movies is 90s 80s 70s 60s 50s whatever like you'll realize that there's a lot of things that were a financially successful and b nominated for a bunch of academy awards that were also shit <laughs> right and we're left with this sort of like i don't know how much we want to spend on this but um i am uh in agreement with drinker that we're in an unprecedentedly bad time for mainstream movies being of a quality that's lower than, in my experience, has ever been in any particular yeah. decade. Key keyword being mainstream. Sure. But I, I I think it's important to to recognize that like most movies from any decade are are just not worth watching. Like they're all a lot of them are just like really bad. Uh, sure. And um, of course, Drinker would only ever be referencing mainstream Hollywood. He wouldn't be referencing indie or the mm -hmm. market as a as an enormous whole. Yeah, um, I think I think something to keep in mind here is that, like, if if let's say we're going through this whole thing, we're having this whole conversation, and I am saying something like, okay, well, here's here's my misconception, and here's why. Um, I think that that is also like kind of a helpful way to learn why there are a lot of people with that same perspective uh on critical drinker because i don't think it just like comes from nowhere right so if i if i'm a person that doesn't want to watch through every single one of his videos mm -hmm. um and you know he's a part of public discourse or internet discourse or something right and people are you know always have opinions on things that they haven't like watched every video from um the series title why modern movies suck doesn't really you know it kind of <laughs> Unless he's making uh, clarifications in those videos saying like, oh, I don't mean modern movies, I mean specifically studio modern movies, which I don't think he, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't know if he makes that clarification often or at um, all in as that As much series. as but... I wouldn't say like he definitely does or doesn't, but like all of his references will come from modern big studio movies. Yeah, yeah. So I'm uh, saying that with that title, it's no surprise that one could be under the impression that he thinks that you know modern movies suck as 
like an entire generation of having movies not and not watched... just a, a generation of studio films, right? You mean like having not watched the videos though? Well, I mean, even with watching the videos, does he clarify? Like, so you you've the watched the videos? That, well, you... well, I said I, I, I'm not I sure if he does. I'm, say, I'm saying the title. The title says why modern movies suck. It doesn't say why modern studio movies suck, right? So I'm just saying. I'm not saying that that's what he's saying. I'm just saying I, I'm giving if, an explanation for why people sure. believe if, that. Sure. Um, right? If we were to go literal, though, he would still be accurate, right? He could have said why any particular era sucks. It wouldn't be an inaccurate statement because. They've always sucked in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, but the implication when you say why modern movies suck isn't why modern movies suck and also every other decade sucks. It's specifically why modern movies yeah, like that. What I'm saying is that very cl there's clear nothing phrasing. wrong with saying why modern movies suck. <laughs> if he said why all movies today suck, like that would be fair. But saying why modern movies suck, there are modern movies and some of them suck. He's talking about those. Like there's no reason not to infer it that way. I wouldn't be surprised if you made a video called Why Modern Movies Suck and you go I, over, like, I studio I practices. I think we're talking about different things, because you were talking about why it should be inferred that he's talking about modern movies, and I was talking about why people infer that he's talking specifically about modern movies independently from other generations, which are two different things, right? Um, like, it, mod you're, you're, you're saying it should be interpreted as modern movies suck without any context to any other generation. I'm saying that... The title very, you know, explicitly no, no, no. implies modern specifically without making any real, you know, think... even within the content of the video, like the the clip shows that he plays, you know, there's it's all. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I <laughs> just I think older films from like the, the base 50s interpretation for what he's why modern movies suck. I think that the base interpretation of that is he's going to be talking about movies from the last ten years at maximum, more than likely. You're saying that he's talking about all of the films more than likely. That you're, that's what you're inferring from that. Well, I would say if we're going uh... to take him literally, like why modern movies suck, meaning all of them, then I'd be like, well, he has every right to say they suck, just like he could with every generation. Like, we, I feel like it's we unnecessary. Are, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt, but we're, we we started talking about different things, and we have to <laughs> okay. we have to keep playing because it, it would be too much to try and untangle what we're both talking about here. A, financially successful, and B, nominated for a bunch of Academy Awards that were also shit, <laughs> right? And we're left with this sort of, like, bias of what we think the past is because we only remember what is the greatest, you know, most influential, memorable, classic things of, of the time period, right? So, you know, I think, you think that's of... a fair observation in terms of, like, mm -hmm. that, that people don't, you know, like, when you think about the films that you like from the past, you're not always necessarily going to be thinking about the ones that were shit. But, I mean, come on, look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now. It's awful. But, but that, that's, the terrible. answer is in within what you just said. It's within what you just said. Look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's not... I, I'm looking at the whole broader scope of films. You know it was a good fucking year for movies? 2014. You know it was a really good fucking year for movies? 2019. Okay? Yeah, 2019. Like, I agree. Still, like, there's still, like, yeah. fuck, there's, there's, you know, a lot of great shit coming out. I just, oh, like, well, I, I, I don't, I, the, I think the, One that of the it's... observations that I'm trying to make there is that, like, these films are really bad. Like, they're really, yes. really, really but, bad, and consistently it... to a degree that is shocking compared to yeah, and it wouldn't like matter if he's that, talking about like any... Marvel or not, if he's going to be referencing how Marvel used to, like 2008 to 2016 -ish, I know, but, were far better. but it is his... It's not, but his like, that's, that is... why Marvel movies suck. No, that's but that, not his series It's not about Marvel. <laughs> it's about how that's one of the prisms of many, that we can compare yeah, modern Marvel to past example. Marvel. We can compare modern Star Wars to yeah, past Star Wars. I... We can compare all the IPs that way, and that they've gotten staggeringly horrific you compared to their the older Disney versions. live action remakes to the Disney Renaissance it animated just... films. It, it it feels so incredibly Disney brained, and I'm just trying to I'm trying to encourage an oh, well, online you, discourse about film about, like, the that Terminator just like, or, like well uh, I mean yeah there's Predator, the... if you want to go for franchises that have a point of these are really good points of reference because you have films in those franchises that existed twenty yeah, thirty forty years like ago. The... The whole reused IP thing is like a particularly bad thing right now. Yeah, like that. Yes, and that is that's like that's one now, thing that's very specific that's to this generation, now, right? Exactly. Which yeah. I imagine yeah. I could believe that there's one of these videos in this series that is referencing yeah. the reuse of old. But I mean, that's not an unreasonable point, and it's not unreasonable no. to say like why modern movies suck. 
these franchises get dragged out, like the the grave gets dug up and then they parade the corpse around to make more money now. Like that that could be pointed to as a sort of uniquely modern, at least, you know, we're talking about the film industry right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, That's fair. And so, yeah, like, uh, just, just to clarify, do you think in terms of decades that we're in a pretty damn bad one overall compared to others or not? If we're talking about all film, no. No, we're not. It is easier for independent artists to create films than it ever has been before. People are shooting films with fucking iPhones, right? I think we're talking about like, like quality of film. Yeah, right. quality. Yeah, the quality is fucking well, fantastic right now. I, like, if, if if you if you haven't, this is exactly what I talk about in the video. Like, if your if your film diet is narrow wait. to the point where most of what you're talking about is just like franchise IPs. It's the same thing. Like, if you were to say, look at the fucking gaming industry. Right, every AAA studio right now is fucking dog shit, microtransactions, like greedy business practices, just so unethical, predatory bullshit. Right, and what's different about the gaming uh, culture versus the film culture is that some one random guy making Undertale or Minecraft or fucking you know like any sort of like indie game or whatever, you can publish it yourself on the internet you can market it yourself on the internet because True. gamers are all like internet people you can post post it on fucking reddit you have a successful game everybody knows about undertale everybody knows yeah. about minecraft the independent gaming scene is what i would like to see the film scene as but Gee. right now everybody's talking it, it, everybody's talking about the equivalent of triple a gaming for movies and my frustration is like damn there are all these fucking amazing indie movies that exist in the same way that there's all these amazing indie games that exist, but people don't talk about them in the okay. same way that they talk about indie games, right? It's you... it's less accessible to people because there's a higher barrier of entry for getting your film funded, for getting your film seen, for getting it seen legitimately. Like Joel Haber's releasing his own films on YouTube, and yep. those do decent for yeah. like a YouTuber, but... but they don't have the same legitimacy as like getting a, a studio back like professionally distributed film in a theater there's still a social stigma against just oh releasing your movie on youtube and it needs to you know there's a financial incentive you need but to make your money you back and it's more difficult to do that in in terms of the you're film you're not talking about quality you're talking about production options yeah I'm saying the quality is fucking amazing, and no, people aren't. No, you're saying it that loads don't. of people have access to create, and now we're getting plenty of options in terms of good things. Of course, more good things will be made if more things are being made. But now there is going to be an enormous sludge of terrible things as well. I know you'd agree with that. I mean, what? There are a lot of bad I'm indie games what you're that saying. get made, but there are also a lot of the good indie games as well, right? Like, look at Steam and all of those, like. The really torrent of terrible like video enemies. games are everywhere, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, well, then I, I guess if I were to try and, you know, quantify the entire scope of every movie and every game, like, my, my version of saying, oh, yeah, the year's fucking great, they're still, ma like, this decade's great, they're still making great shit, my my premise of saying that is based off of the media that I consume. No one can play every game. No one can watch every movie. No Correct. one has like an objective, true, firm yep. grasp over like what the overall slice of the pie of like bad to good is. So yeah, I think I think that by saying that like most movies are bad now in a way that is worse than other other generations is not not only not provable but like not accurate or helpful because it, it it's more reflective of the types of things you consume and less reflective of the overall landscape of what there is to consume. You are correct. We can't, any individual can't make a statement on the quality of all film as an average. The best we can do is go from every time we watch a movie, what is the likelihood we're going to come away saying, man, that was really awesome and good. And people feel, or at least... Dep depends people. how you're watching your movies. Depends what movies you're seeing. All right, well, right? what are most It depends if you know saying. what you're watching. If you go to a fucking film festival and you just watch random movies where you're like, ah, you know, it sounds kind of interesting, the description, or like, oh, this is based off of a true story, you're going to have a bad time because half of them are going to be shit. Maybe more than half of them are going to be shit. But if you go to a film festival and you're like, okay, I know this director, I like this uh, award that it won at this thing, that's been pretty consistent, and you actually know how to find things, you're going to have a great fucking time. I'm going to see all the best movies in the year in like a month at TIFF. Like I mean, I'm gonna, I'm about, so fucking hyped for that shit. So the vast majority of people, right, 
you know, who just go to movie theaters and who are exactly this is my problem. Exactly, their, exactly. I'm trying to help say? people. I'm trying to help people get the tools to help them have an experience with movies where they're not coming out of it saying like, ah, every movie sucks nowadays. I, you know, like why would they it, say that? It, it, why would they say that every movie sucks now? Why do you think that is? Because they're watching movies that are in theaters at the big chain theaters without knowing what movies to watch, without knowing okay. how to find small. We're almost things. there now. And so yeah, why we're getting there, yeah. is that a change? Why is it that they're saying because oh, studio I'm not because big big studio movies are generally bad? No, we've gotten to a point where they are now generally bad. They used to be relatively normal for entertainment for most audiences, but we're in an unprecedented yeah. time of unsatisfaction with Hollywood. But yeah, if if we're talking about studio movies, which is what I was saying, yeah, so right? like if, that if would be a if, fair paradigm, and that is representative of a change. I, it's it's well, yeah, but we're we're saying we're oh, man, because I thought that we had this understood. I'm talking about movies as a whole, right? I'm talking about like no, we both agreed. No one is talking about a, movies a as a whole because it's not possible. No, exactly. Neither of us are are able to quantify every single movie that exists in a year. Cool. But based on what your media diet is, if you are accurately um, being able to select the types of films that you think that you'll be interested in, in a way that aligns with your taste, in a like, there's movies out there for everybody, right? There's movies being made all the time that just don't have the same marketing budget, that aren't in as many theaters. There's some that you'll never be able to see until they're on digital because they're just like, it's difficult, especially with Disney controlling so many of the theaters, right? So that's why I'm trying to get people away from Disney movies, from studio movies, and to have not just like, oh, you know, talk about them if and I say get... that they're bad, but not feel obligated to watch them as a part of a cultural conversation, But you wouldn't need right? to do that like, if the movies they were watching was something like the animated Lion King. You wouldn't be like, guys, get away from that. That's the mainstream studio shit. Exactly, but that, but, but this is the unfortunate situation that we're in, and this is just, this is just the end result of greedy corporations, and then hiring people based off nepotism and not people that are actually passionate about you, the IPs that they're like sure. the same shit that's happening about like Indiana Jones and all that shit happened with Halo, right? Like three four three is making all this shit. They don't understand what made the first games good, but in the gaming sphere people can go on Steam and see a cool indie game and it's right there and it's easy and they can just get it right away, right? Like, they don't have to do any effort in terms of finding it. We don't have, like, a Steam for movies. Even on, like, fucking iTunes, like, you can't, you can't, you, you don't get exposed to this sort of thing. And so that's why my argument and my presence on the internet and my presence as a person talking about movies, that's part of my goal is to help people be able to use these tools and be able to help understand how to find the better movies. I understand, I just think, and I respect I, that a lot. You've recommended plenty of films that I never would have seen otherwise, and I appreciate it. What I'm trying to get at, simply, good. is that that same media diet, the one that you'd be critical of, and I think everyone could agree is not fantastic if you only watch hyper... Let's say you only watch films that come above a $100 million budget. That's awful, right? It's like, oh, that's not good. But rewind just 20 years, 30 years, 10 years, whichever one you want, if that same representative diet were being run, they would have more positive entertainment experiences. That's what's being appealed to. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree that studio movies have gotten worse in the same way that I don't disagree that AAA gaming is like completely fucked. Okay. Right? I don't I don't disagree with that. I'm just I you know, when the the again, the title is, you know, why modern movies suck, not why, you know, studio movies suck and you know, I'm glad that he is that he is recommending things like uh, like Boiling Point. I have yet to see it, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I feel like I, I think will you'll enjoy love that it. movie because mm -hmm. because I know enough about it that you know I have I have my own tools that I can use to determine what you know whether or not I think a movie will be like pretty pretty good. I just I I think that it's important not just to criticize Disney and criticize big studio movies, but I think it's important to move away from feeling obligated that we even need to be talking about them. The problem with Star Wars is that it's so big that people feel obligated to watch it to be a part of a cultural conversation, whether or not they think they're even going to enjoy it. I want to end that shit. I want people to be as excited for the new fucking Jim Cummings movie. <laughs> you know, like, I want people to be looking at 
artists created. I want people to know about Matt Johnson. I want people to be fucking hyped but, for the new Nirvana the Band movie, right? And stop thinking that like, oh yeah, because it says Marvel on it or Star Wars on it, that we all have to talk about it. We all have to see it. Like, why the fuck did anybody watch She Hulk? Like, pe- nobody should have even watched. I can explain that. that. Even we to, like it. criticize it. You know, it's just like, like it's so, just well, to it's it's. It, clarify, I, I right? wish that people didn't feel obligated. You know, no, I know, but that's that's very much wishful thinking. And the these a lot of people, and they're going to be in both of our chats right now. They have fallen yeah. in love with these IPs, and it makes them feel, you know, inspired, or it makes them feel any that's, particular that's way. That's how they got you. That's yeah, how they got but, you. You gotta. But you say that. You to break away from it. Yeah, you you that's say that as though thing, right? like a new version or a new mm-hmm. iteration wouldn't be equally as fulfilling. That that does happen. Every once in a while, we do get a new version of a particular IP that is incredible, and that's what everybody wants. But we don't get it. And so what's what's Drinker doing? What's many people doing? We're trying to be critical of it to push it back to get it in a different direction. When things I, like I think that that's a lost cause in the same way that like trying to get Halo to stop, you know, like, fuck, like uh, the, the industry is just so fucked. Like it's I think it's much more important and much more like uh, strategic to just support independent artists that are making the good things that, i don't see why we can't do you know, both. like you, you, you don't yeah disney's already well, I don't said know, there's like, back the amount you, of projects and the budgets do of these you want projects. more sequels so a move in like, the right direction um but, but I, I thought we we're all supposed to not like I, th- I thought we're all like sick of the whole sequelitis like when somebody announces something bad. it's like do we really need like a yeah exactly if they're bad but like yeah. i don't know yeah. for me the things that i love like i'm happy with the existing properties i don't need a fucking you know lion king four <laughs> you know like I absolutely no I i'm with you the original, I, well, I love, I love the original, if you yeah. wanted to I, focus in on like even if we wanted to keep talking about disney disney used to like make like original films <laughs> before they started well, making and, and, sequels just, all the time to give it, or at the very least yeah, it's adaptations bullshit. of older you know like fantasy stories and things like that so you could always say well, I mean, by talking about this, I'm trying to nudge Disney in the direction of not franchising every single thing that they have, and to go back. Yeah, but to, you know, light year fails. Ta- talking Maybe that does nothing. Well, I mean, it has talking to be does nothing. Right? Well, well, box talking can lead. Talking, talking can lead, lead to behaviors. To, yes, exactly. Obviously, because yeah, I mean, that's perhaps. the whole point well, of you, your channel. You no, no, not perhaps. Do. That's what you've well, been saying that you're trying to do, right? I mean, you would. Well, well I, I mean, I'm I'm talking about like. No, I mean, 100% talking does lead to behaviors. I'm just saying, like, the scope of, like, what makes a Disney movie make or break is... Okay, but, seems so to give you an example... heavily influenced when, by um, online co- when, commentary. When TLJ happened and Rise of Skywalker, you'll find plenty of sentiment throughout all of our sphere of YouTube about Star Wars needs to stop. Mm-hmm. Go away, just stop, it's done, leave it alone, it's dead, just stop. They bring out yeah. Andor, we talk about how this is a bad idea, it's it's gonna be shit, there's, there's no point. We watch it, it's really good. We fully recommend it to people, mm-hmm. and people are very happy with it. It's very much an yeah. inspirational show, and it's easy to get into for a mm-hmm. lot of people because it's Star Wars. I don't, like, I'm not, like, sad that happened, because we can't, like, accelerate on the whole hating of IPs. I'm actually really happy that they managed to find mm-hmm. someone to give this project to, and they give them enough freedom to make something good. And uh, we want to encourage more of that to happen in future. And how else do you do it? But saying, look at that. It's good. Go look at that. That's, you know what I mean? I, I know what you mean, but I, what we are doing essentially through uh, internet commentary is essentially just a, a hyper uh, extension of what exists as word of mouth, right? And so word of mouth can, you know, that's existed. Uh, that's great though, right? Throughout time. Of, oh yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good yeah. thing. Um. Yeah, I think we've kind of lost the plot of what we're even arguing about right no, now. No, so we're we totally on point because I was about to bring it back to Drinker. Okay, like, sorry. he's doing all of these kinds of discussions. <laughs> he's talking to well-known actors or even directors. He's, he's talking about the different mm-hmm. films that are good or bad from, obviously, his own paradigm, but at the same time, clearly appeals to a lot of people's points of view in the hopes that something mm-hmm. can be done, even if it is in a small way, right? Like, I don't... I, I'm not particularly moved by the... If, if like, a wizard told me you're going to make zero difference, except maybe one guy in your audience might be inspired to make a good movie someday. I'd be like, that's good enough. That's all I need. Yeah. And I assume, yeah, you'd have have to to be the same, same, right? Like, you've inspired loads of people. Exactly. And I I feel like we're all doing what we can. Like, the the issue I take with is people who either, like, lie about media to, you know, push their own preferences Mm -hmm. necessarily... Or that um, are just giving analysis that's absolutely fucking worthless, like absolutely shallow. Now, if you had that opinion of Drinker, I'm not saying you do at all, um, I wouldn't even, 
like take issue with it until I see what examples you have because I don't know what you would have seen mm -hmm. that sort of thing. I would entertain the idea in the okay. same way that I hope you'd entertain the idea if I had that opinion about any given uh, reviewer online. But I feel like we do good work, both you and myself and Drinker. And Rags of Free, of course. Mm -hmm. Hello. 70s music. You don't think of every single song that existed in the 70s that you heard on the radio. You think of, you know, the songs that still hold true this, to this day. Like, you know, I want to know, have you ever seen the rain? Like... What is that? CCR Good clearing? singing. I don't remember. Yeah, that's name. great. Yeah, there's there's copyright warning. <laughs> I think that it's, it's kind of a weird bias that human beings have in terms of how we think about media where, um, yeah, Credence, Clearwater Revival. That's such a long mouthful of a name. It's such a, an interesting, weird bias that we have about media. Your movie where sucks. Think, like, all music sucks now. Or all YMS, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Oh, and uh, sorry, I did mean to ask. It was. All, I'm trying to change my channel name to just YMS, but I got to figure out if I'll lose my uh, my check mark if I do that. I'm trying to figure out mm. if I can... on YouTube because I, I got the at. Yeah. So um, I already have the at YMS. Uh, so that's URL. Like that's thing. what shows up when you comment on a thing. It's at YMS. Yeah, and but then you go to the channel, and then it's a and it's a different name. Of yeah, shit. Like, like I created oh, the, the channel Austin? back no, when it was like. I created the channel when it was uh, normal to have a website. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask out of curiosity because you did seem adamant that like we should be moving away from the uh, the mainstream stuff. Like you do cover a lot of it, though, right? Uh, okay. Let's look at my channel for a second here. All right. So I did Barbenheimer. Obviously, that's like a big event sort of thing that I'm interested in. Uh, Asteroid City and Past Lives was my one before that. I would, you know, Wes Anderson's pretty big. Past Lives was an indie film from Sundance. Uh, my, the way that I cover videos at this point, like, it has to be... there. Ha there has to be a certain threshold that's held in terms of... I don't... I'm not just going to watch and or cover a movie just because it's popular and just because I know I'll get clicks and just because even if there's a billion people asking me to it has to be something that I either a think I'm going to enjoy b think I'm going to enjoy ironically or c know that I have some sort of passionate conversation uh about you know hopefully accurately before I see the movie you know I I, I inferred enough from the little mermaid trailers uh, and I also re wanted an excuse to rewatch the original and I wanted to do like a comparison. So I don't know. To me, um, yeah, there's uh, it, de it depends. It depends on what month it is, because, you know, I'm in the middle of making my Fantasia Festival review. That's 12 random film festival movies that are going to be dropped in the next like week. Uh, a month from now, it's going to be like 30 movies from TIFF, which are all festival movies. So. Out of out of all the major film review channels, I I'd say that I probably do the best job in terms of like covering smaller films. Like that's the reason why Fantasia invited me back to their festival. Uh, they gave me a fucking hotel room. That was pr pretty cool. Hmm. Um, is because I'm helping to like really promote uh these things, and I I think that with my goal being sharing smaller things that hopefully everybody enjoys or enough people enjoy or can connect with that they wouldn't have found without me. Part of that goal is having channel growth, which unfortunately, uh, you know, people click on things they're familiar with. Yeah, right? I, so, I, by um, every one of these points you've made, I completely agree. The Obviously, the only thing is that it would still further interest and attention to the mainstream movies, right? Hmm? Like, a, it, 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 would, it would damage your overall goal of trying to ignore and move past them if you're going to continue to cover them. Uh yeah, but I don't I don't cover it. that's that that makes up such a smaller percentage of like the the content on my channel, right? There's movies that I literally I'm I, like people are asking me to fucking cover Elvis, I'm like I'll only do it if it gets nominated for an Oscar, right? And I did because it, it was part of my Oscars video. I like covering the Oscars, I like clowning on the Oscars. It's a good series. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, like I'm not, I didn't, you know, there, there's a g gigantic handful of like Disney remakes that, you know, probably could have made content out of, but they just didn't seem that interesting. I didn't see Mulan 
You know, I had no interest in seeing it. it or trying to cover it. Um, most Star Wars movies, like I only saw seven through nine because <laughs> I I felt obligated out of like this whole cultural conversation thing, which is exactly what I'm trying to move away from. And so I'm like, okay, well now now I'm not just watching Star Wars things because people are wanting me to talk about Star Wars things. Like I I think I'm I'm pretty firm in my belief that it's not my type of media to be consuming. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I I would say I would say there's like a healthy a healthy mix on my channel. Like it's it's completely unavoidable to uh you know it's not possible for a channel to not talk about a popular movie because like even if you talk about an indie movie at a festival, there's a chance that it will become popular, like The Whale, you know, like yeah, other yeah. films that blow up. Um, so yeah, I, I don't I don't think that my uh, the overall landscape of my channel is contradictory to what I'm I'm saying or what my goals are. Or I wouldn't. What I, I was going to describe it as contradictory. Is. is more so that no, um, no, no. it's going to have a, a byproduct that's unfortunate considering your goals. I'd assume. Um. Well, I did. I waited like a long time before I even made my Lion King review. Like, I my my stance on the Lion King 2019 was: don't watch it. Don't even watch it. Ironically, stop asking me to see it. Don't give them money because, like, I fucking care about. You know, The Lion King is like one of my favorite movies ever. Um, and I love the original so much. And I didn't want to incentivize Disney to make more. And my my suggestion for people not to do that didn't make a fucking difference. It made a billion dollars right away. It became the most uh, the highest grossing animated film of all time, only to be beaten by the Mario movie uh, this year. Um, why do you and think, uh, do you think there's a reason why Disney films aren't making as much money anymore? compared to four or five years ago, where, like, they were, you know, dominating six, seven, eight out of the top ten highest grossing films of all time. What do you think changed? Uh, fatigue. People are seeing more of the same shit. It's not art anymore. You're not showing people a new experience. Uh, I think that there's enough people that, like, if you polled people coming out of the fucking theater, like, what, which is what CinemaScore does, which, you know, I don't think that there are, like, a great uh, website in terms of how to find good movies. But let's see what the CinemaScore... Lion King 2019 was because the general uh, do they even have it? Okay, I'm just gonna have to search for it better. The general consensus that my understanding of the general consensus of the Lion King 2019 is that people fucking liked it, right? Like it wasn't yeah, like pe- people right liked up. the movie, but now when it's like okay, you're doing the same shit over and over again, you know, first first film critics are gonna notice first people who watch like a huge uh, variety of films and have seen so many that it's already like, okay, you're kind of doing the same thing again already. You know, if, if they've seen it once or twice, then, you know, there's a certain portion of the population that's going to be like, okay, come off it. I already know what's happening. But then the more times it's done, then the more of a percentage of the population is going to be on board with like, Hey, haven't I seen this before? Or, Hey, you're just doing the same shit. Or like, Hey, you know, the, the first one that I tried watching, I didn't really love that much, but I try, gave it a shot. Now I won't give this one a shot. So, you know, if you just any genre, th- this has happened to like a lot of things, franchises, genres, studios, like if you're just producing the same shit over and over and over again, like the natural trend is down. Of course, it's going to be starting successfully. Otherwise, they wouldn't be trying to repli- replicate that formula if it wasn't massively successful. And then, of course, it's going to go down because they don't really. They're not doing anything new, right? You can't. Do you think you're that... trying to trying to replicate lightning in a bottle? Like, I would actually concede I, that I stuff that... like the Flash or Shazam can suffer when a bunch of other Marvel shit comes out that's not entertaining because they're too similar superhero stuff. But you really think that like people being like, "Oh my god, Lion King," I'm getting the same thing with Little Mermaid. I think I think people are more aware of. Uh, the Disney remake itis. <laughs> well, so I, <laughs> I was, point, and I I was actually going to agree with you. Um, my sister, I spoke to her about it because she's not watching them anymore. She used to watch them all, and I was like, "Why?" And then she was like, "They're all fucking terrible, and they're kind of gross." Like yeah, she finds them. It, the cultural conversation changes. Well, uh, I guess well, what we're trying to push is that um, it's the it's too bad for too long, as opposed to fatigue. Not necessarily the fatigue isn't a part of it, but the it's the. They, if they were really well executed, this probably wouldn't be anywhere near as bad. Well, actually, I, mean, I guess a question I would have is, do we think that the discourse surrounding these films online in parts spurred by, like, YouTube channels 
is a factor, I think that, even if it's not one hundred percent factor. Uh, yeah, well, it's a part of the it's a part of the cultural conversation. I guess here's a, the next thing would. But be, here's the here's think the th that if you know somebody somebody who mainly just watches mainstream films and feels like they're not getting what they want, that simply because of that they would start looking elsewhere for films that might interest them, including indie the indie sphere. You know, like smaller films. I, films from abroad, I would like that to be films. the case. Uh, well, I don't think I mean, the average person is doing it. Um, but, but that's, that's might, why right? that's where I try it. Like, some people might, and that's where I try to help. So when I was saying earlier that like it's a losing battle trying to get studios to correct themselves into making good movies, like even if we get a movie every once in a while where it's like, oh damn, they actually put faith in real artists and they did this thing, that's not their takeaway, right? There, what Barbie's success isn't going to be like, oh, we need to hire more young filmmakers like Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. They're going to be like, oh, people really like Barbie toys, right? Because they don't understand yeah. art. That's yeah, why I'm saying Mattel, it's a losing battle. Is because said, like we're going to make Hot Wheels movies. It's like, oh, okay, it's, yeah, like <laughs> that's why it's a losing battle, not because like you know they they not because the public can't uh eventually shift and be on your side about a cultural conversation not because they can't eventually lose money and try to understand why but because the the lessons are always going to be the wrong takeaway they don't understand the, the people in charge of funding art in giant studio environments they don't understand how to make art they're all fucking nepo babies they all have like way too much fucking control over the artists and they're like yeah i think i would Actually, like to see this thing and they always wind up ruining shit that's exactly what happened to triple a gaming right i so completely that's, agree that's in the, why i that say would it's be... a losing battle and that's why i think we should be supporting independent artists instead well, because that, they, yeah, what you well, just said is part of the, the argument directly. i would have made for why modern movies suck more than others what you just said like hits on one of the biggest factors which modern is a lot of people movies. yeah yeah that they've been inherited by a, a group of people that are either like they've been hired because of family connections or whatever else because like we, we've had commented on it here but like having control over a 200 to 300 dollar 300 million dollar movie like mom or quantum mania and it's given to writers that have zero history is absolutely insane, but it's being done. Yeah, or just like they don't care about the franchise, they don't care about they don't, they don't too, know yeah. what the fuck they're doing. Like it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they the 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 bad. formulas at Disney. Like there's a there's a reason why we keep seeing the whole like ugly ass realistic character design is because that's what their takeaway was from the Lion King 2019. <laughs> right? Like that's what they're they were like, oh, this made a billion dollars. What do we let's make everything else kind of look like this too? It's like okay, well. It made a billion dollars because you played the trailer music from the first film and people had a nostalgic reason to check it out and people weren't fatigued by all the other previous remakes so far. It wasn't exactly a part of the culture, cultural conversation in the same way. People were fucking hyped for The Lion King 2019 and I was trying yeah, to I remember, them, but couldn't do it. Do you think well, that the quality so of films plays into how much they get fatigued and how quickly? I mean, I would, I would argue that they were never good, just successful. And I think eventually people people start to see through the seams. And I think that even retrospectively, there's people that will look at The Lion King 2019 that loved it when it came out and be like, okay, wait, this is actually shit. Same thing happened with Suicide Squad, you know? Like, people fucking love that movie when it came out. Same thing happened with Amazing Spider-Man 2. A lot of people are just excited to... Yeah, yeah, those, those were part of why my channel got huge, is because it was considered to be a very controversial opinion. Uh, people were arguing about that well, shit see, over Reddit. I was and watching there were enough you, people so that were like my sphere just ordered. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I figured everyone hated that one as well, but okay. Yeah, no, there were there was the the reason why uh, my Suicide Squad video on Reddit is because it was a response to the people that were like fucking the, the crazy Snyder fans, whatever we want to call them, or DC fanboys. I'm sure you're well aware. Like there oh, was nice. enough people in that crowd and like angry Joe and people that are just like <laughs> hyping up this fucking thing, like the biggest piece of shit ever made. And people people were desperate to have someone just say, like, it's shit, right? Um, when a lot of reviewers were kind of tiptoeing around it because they didn't want to upset their audience. And they were like, yeah, you know, it's pretty. It's, I enjoyed it. I liked seeing the Joker. They were just waiting for someone to be fucking honest about it. And that's why that's part of why my channel's big. So just because I because uh, that um, for clarity's sake. So you don't think that quality has much of a role to play in terms of how quickly people get fatigued about these franchises and things like in an alternate uh, universe where the well, mcu no, is I mean, just banger after banger do you think that people would still be fatigued yeah eventually i think that like even if you're doing uh 
franchise or a formula that not that doesn't even necessarily betray what the audience wants. I think that eventually over time, the audience wants a different thing. Like Saw wound up giving up after seven, even though it was still profitable, even though like they were still making money, but they were just like, yeah, it's not as much. And people were the people, they saw the shift in the industry of like, okay, now paranormal activity is the new thing coming out. Right. Mm -hmm. Like people got fatigued of like Westerns. People got fatigued of like, you know, James Bond is still going, <laughs> right? But it seems like there's a big peak whenever it's the new actor, and then people are like, oh, I kind of like this, and it has the exact same slow drop-off, you know, not necessarily meaning, like, all of them are bad, although I guess with James Bond, a lot of them are bad, but... Yeah. In in an alternate universe where, like, every single Disney remake was good, then they would probably be doing more successfully, but I would argue that in order for them to be good they would have to inherently not be doing the same thing over and over anyway. So the fat the fatigue wouldn't e even be a factor because they would have to be changing things up and doing new things in order for them to be good. Which almost so, inextricably ties I think, I think, fatigue with quality. Yeah, like, yeah, part of the reason why they are bad is because they're doing the same shit. Yeah, because uh, we've talked about before. Even if but... the same shit they were doing was like slightly good at first, like if they're just doing the same shit over and over, then it becomes bad. The big thing that we thought that the MCU could have done in Phase 4 is to experiment like crazy and have like the kinds of films that you would never expect to be in the MCU because they can take those kinds of risks. And even if they fail, if they had like 10 million budgets given to very auteur directors that are given like a parameter on how far they can go in terms of any kind of world building, no necessary cameos, just like maybe a, a person that lives in the world after what's happened, that sort of stuff. I feel like the MCU could have evolved because uh, plenty of those would have, would have kicked off depending on how good they are, who you give them to sort of thing. Um, yeah. Which would satisfy both, right? It's not like the others, but it would also be of good quality, which means the fatigue would not have set in as early, if at all, um, at least for however long. Sure, but but the solution to that is is not like, oh, people stop watching the movies and then they start making other things. The solution to that is like to fire 75% of people in Hollywood. <laughs> you know? I'm inclined Which I, to agree, I don't yeah. think it's like, <laughs> yep. it's not, but like it's... I don't think that's going to happen. Like, it's, I think it's as fucked as the AAA gaming industry. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't even disagree with that. And that's why we've got to get yeah. as much as we can, where we can, getting people in, supporting different people. I completely agree with all of that. And um, yeah. I guess the thing that may come up is that uh, you're not sure that Drinker does enough in that regard, right? Uh, I said earlier that that's something I concede on. Oh, okay. Suck now. Because like, why. even even if he doesn't promote the exact same films that I do, I think that um, you know, if he if the main focus of his channel is you know like we're let's call him Disney or studio franchise whatever shit. You know, for him to be recommending anything outside of that realm is a good step in the right direction, and I'm glad that he's exposing people to that. So, yeah, well, obviously he is, and he's talking to different people who are from the industry that he wants to praise and direct yeah. people toward. But there's also, like, I don't know how aware you are of his um, short film is currently being created. Uh, I'm aware of him doing some. I think he he has like a book on Amazon too, but I haven't. Yeah, I'm. I have not consumed. I don't have any indication as to what the um level of quality might be for any of those things or what even of they course are. um it's just that it's it's very good in and of itself that he's looking to create something with people and promote it and uh try and build him even himself up as well as others on the indie circuit right mm -hmm. wow that's such a yeah, long I, i'm game. excited to see it yeah. okay it's such a, an interesting weird bias that we have about media where we think like all music sucks now or all movies suck now and here's why but in reality, it's like you, you just have to know what to watch. You just have to like have a healthy media diet and be willing to try <laughs> new things. No problem. Just I, I, no, only it's all watch good. I'm, I know about what it. is essentially just advertised to you and spoon fed to you through giant corporations. So it's it. I haven't watched this, but I found myself being interested enough to like do any kind of commentary on this guy, uh, even though I haven't done it before, because of the fact that he showed up on Russell Brand, which sort of kind of reinforces my initial thought about him is that he's showing up on what is really a political, you know, anti-vax conspiracy grifting platform. And he's showing up as this guy, like, so, th so this is the title. So this is why movies are shit now with the critical drinker. It's like, okay, well, you know, th this is kind this is kind of what I experienced anecdotally when I 
you know, met somebody who was essentially just eating up a bunch of conspiracy anti-vax content, like weird, like New World Order, George Soros, you know, maybe not explicitly saying it, but pretty much saying it content. Uh, this is not a movie review channel and he's being featured on it. And so that, I just thought that this was interesting enough to at least see what the fuck it is. So let's see what this is. Have to wait. Uh, is he back? I'm yeah, I would. Yeah, we'll wait. Uh, we can. Yeah, wait just a second for him. Uh, because I've yeah, I got a question to ask. Uh, oh, yeah, do you now? Uh, we see. I do. Yeah, I just have a. I, I do. You got a down back. in your little. Your little. Oh, like there he is. He's notepad. back. He's back. Go on, from, Rags. Yeah, ask yeah, a question. Know, Out of uh, where where um you you talked about Russell Brand here how. Uh, Drinker showed up on the you know Russell Brand. How Russell Brand is a conspiracy theorist and anti vax and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. This is weird. But uh, if Russell Brand reached out to you and said, "Hey, I want to talk to you about movies," would you uh, would you go on and talk to him about movies? I'm not sure. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. All right. So, but he has uh, <laughs> his interviews are very uh, very non confrontational and leading. He kind of like. You know, we'll we'll see as it we'll see as it goes along. Um, so do you, I'm actually do you shocked that, that he that he uh, asked some genuine questions at certain points, but oh, all right. There's like a part well, of him um, that comes through at points. Because I was, right. was going to say that if all Russell right. Brand invited me, I would totally go on. But if he was to be like, yeah, "Did absolutely. you know the the Earth is flat?" Yeah. I'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about, mate?" My I'd my, say, yeah, my criticism. <laughs> true. I I I want to make clear it's not a criticism of the critical drinker to have accepted going on to. Russell Brand's show. I I mm -hmm. was mentioning that it, it's a reflection of the audience crossover that he would be invited there in the first place, right? It's a um, it's a, a observation of the the uh, sort of audience. The same thing I was talking about earlier. Well, so obviously the only problem would be because I'm not familiar. Does Russell ever have people on that he doesn't necessarily align with? Uh. <sighs> Of I course. mean, I would have to watch every single Russell Brand video, but like he. I just, I don't even mean know, in that sense. Really, I just right? mean like, doesn't he have people that, theoretically speaking, he would uh, have a bit of a confrontation with? Maybe like he talks to them about their ideas. He that's with. not my understanding. My understanding is he's mostly just creating like a space for. He he knows what his audience wants to hear, and he kind of just. He kind of just facilitates um, that with. You know the it, types of conversations that he has. In case you didn't know, uh, Drinker himself he's been he's been interviewed now like on countless channels. I think he accepts a lot of mm -hmm. uh, invitations from anything from like zero subs to people like Russell Brand. I think that if um, not saying this for any particular reason, but if let's say uh, AOC was to ask him for an interview, I think he'd accept. Russell Brand or sorry, Critical Drinker. Yeah, Critical Drinker. Okay. He's yeah. Obviously, yeah, it, again, it's not it's not a reflection on critical drinker to to appear on the program it's to to even for russell brand to consider that to be something he wants on the program i'm saying that there's a, there's an audience alignment okay not you know not one to one or anything but enough crossover that it makes it made enough sense for him to bring him on Like, I don't Free think Russell preview? Brand's okay, yeah, we have to about, to, about to invite me on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch the fuck out of that. Yeah, whole well, fucking website or whatever. He might as well be on the Daily Wire, I guess. Hey, you awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on Stay Free that big with fucking Russell COVID Brand. Ball. I'm very excited <laughs> about today's show. The first he used to be. Oh, oh, that. That. oh, oh is that what that is? I, I, it's 100% that's, 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 that's what it is. Okay. It's, 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 it's a fucking crypto fucking COVID ball. All right. He's doing. He's doing. He's. That's that's the whole reason why his thing fucking blew up. It's because he was. Like I said, I know nothing whole, about like, his stuff. I don't. Yeah, I, don't I, don't know. I know more about him as an actor he, than he, I do as did, anything else. He did movies right before, yeah. but does he do that? He hasn't stuff? been acting for a while. Okay. He's well, then, a fucking. Yeah, I, he's he's like. Uh, he's somewhere between Joe Rogan and Gwyneth Paltrow. He's somewhere in between. Okay. Be okay. On uh, YouTube, and that's going to be relevant to you, six point five million awakening wonders over there. Awakening. Awaken it's funny that he uses the term awakening because like if a leftist or left leaning person or even like someone even someone <laughs> like Joe Biden said awakening, they would be like, it means woke. 
because you surely love the critical drinker, a man who has analysed and critiqued contemporary cinema with a perspective that you're unlikely to see in the mainstream. I, I think uh, we, we are definitely stuck in a rut as a culture when it comes to just... Um... See, this, this is something that I take a bit of an issue with, is like prioritising the idea of like, ah, oh, my culture, right? Like, I, I don't know if I give too much of a shit of it. Like, I... I'm an individual, you know, I'm an individual. Like I, I like movies that I like, and I like movies from a variety of cultures. Like if America decides to go in certain trends about movies, like I'm going to call it out, right? I'm going to call out America mostly for not being exposed to different cultures. But like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of fear mongering when it comes to like, oh, uh, movies are getting like too feminist or movies are like getting too, like, I don't know. It seems like weird fear mongering shit. Maybe I'm reading a bit too far into it. He's barely said anything. That's what I was going to say. Is he's, like, I'm not even sure what he said yeah, yet. I, I I figure I'd address most of the criticisms we would have like within the stream itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I will, I will add more commentary in a bit. Also, I want to point out, also I want to point out, after thoroughly seeing a lot of like back and forth about people that hate the Critical Drinker on like my subreddit or the Sardonicast subreddit um, and other subreddits, you know, like obviously he's met with a lot of criticism. I do want to point out that I've seen a bunch of criticism against him that I thought was like a little unfair. We're like, oh, he didn't like, oh, you know, like, you. he didn't think. I mean, that that goes for YMS on other places. That goes for to... us on other places. It's it's insane and it sucks, but there's not much any of us yeah, can really do about it. Uh, um, but I'm glad you pointed should. it out. That's cool. I am glad. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't. Um, of like the right name of a movie. Yeah. Of like the right name of a movie at a time where he like, you know, didn't have the right word when he said, like he was on a live stream or whatever, like, Sometimes people are a, lit too, a little too, like, overly critical or jumping the gun when it's like, ah, oh, this guy's, like, right-leaning. It's like, okay, you know, whatever. Like, I don't hate anybody just because they're conservative, right? Like, but I'm at least going to have a conversation about what I find disagreeable about them. Mm. Relying on the past. As you say, the motivation behind these... I find that funny because he's, he's... Sorry, we barely started. Uh, we, we are definitely stuck in a rut. It sucks because I'm reacting to, just... to something that I don't know is just, like, a little fucking preview at the beginning <laughs> it's like a little um, compilation practice, just past, practice for Damn, later hearing that when the real thing is comes so out. interesting because the content yeah. that i've consumed from him and again i have not watched all his content what i've seen is like literally what he's describing right like oh we're stuck in a rut where we're, we're all the content is relying on the past when all i hear him talk about is like why can't we have movies like they were in the 80s oh uh is there anything you want to add because of course like the this feels like a misunderstanding of what he's saying. Yeah, no, I, I, I can, I can see where the miscommunication is, but I think it, I think it goes back to the earlier point of like media diet, right? Where it's like, if, if it is studio movies, then yeah, you would inherently want to go back to a period where studio movies were better, where the average movie in a theater you could watch, you know, would be something that you know, not inherently right, that would be Just enjoyable. The quality but... of. Yeah, you there's know, just because of quality. There's production elements and technology advancements now that Drinker would likely cite to you that are really bad that people are relying on, be it the overuse of CG or the volume screen or different kinds of like attempts at de aging people in this like and everything looks fake and plasticky and rubbery versus what he loves, which is like a primary area. He would probably argue to you like this this appears in all eras, but that it was very prominent to him from his perception in like the 80s, 90s maybe, or 70s, wh wherever he would particularly choose of filmmaking that was really nuts and bolts, and whenever you watch it, it looks gritty and real and awesome sort of thing. Mm -hmm. that's, just, that's pretty much all the point he's making, because of course, as you're, you're pointing out, he hates the idea of digging up the corpses of the past and parading them up in today, and so the means of communication is just that, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't I, I think I mentioned to you, he doesn't want Indiana Jones, he wants films made in the same vein that Indiana Jones was created, that, that would be the simplest way to put it. Yeah. Like, every single video I've seen from him is like, oh, I wish movies were like they were from the past, but now they're different and bad. So that's kind of interesting, actually. As you say, the motivation behind these um, IPs and these franchise, these franchise movies is no one's willing to take a risk. What they lack with these modern characters. See, that's not untrue, what Russell Brand just said. Like, I want to see more risk-taking in um, franchise... Agreed. ...big-budget movies. Yeah, There's that's more artistic. That they're not willing to take that step of having As I've fear heard. and be vulnerable. And this is not untrue. He's saying... Yeah, it's so, it's so frustrating because it seems like they're setting themselves up to fail every time that they try that every once in a while. They're like, okay, we're gonna... We're gonna do fucking Bo is Afraid. I'm like, you... 
can't have expected that to make money. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, that was only like thirty million Dude, I, or something. I, I guess still. I wasn't. Like, that was like a twenty four's highest budget, but I wasn't sure that Oppenheimer was going to be able to make it. But uh, I guess I'm glad it did. Um, I, I mean, God, Christopher Nolan's a safe bet. Well, Tenet oh. fell apart because of COVID. I guess right is what you'd say. That that was the only reason that it wasn't successful was COVID. Yeah, I think I think Christopher Nolan is a selling point, but then there is the fact that the film had to overcome being a three hour long R rated biopic. Like I think that's a that seemingly yeah that seems like it would be a harder sell than a lot of other things, but it really does seem like the Barbie Oppenheimer like jewel sort of screening thing like that really helped both of those films. I'd also I think I've seen people argue really... that Tenet is not anywhere near as good as Oppenheimer. Well, I mean, I really like Oppenheimer, and I, Me too, I, don't, yeah. think, I don't think I want to see Tenet. <laughs> I have no wow. In Tenet. I, don't, I don't think I want to. You well, saw it. Uh, Adam, what did you think of Tenet? It's uh, really annoying. <laughs> That's the way to describe it. Well, now it. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, now I love so... annoying movies. Those are my favorite movies, are the annoying ones. I've had a lot of practice lately. It's uh, Tenet. Tenet is what you would make if you were trying to parody a Christopher Nolan film. Wow. Okay. Oh, my God. We're gonna talk about. Oh, wait. Sorry. Wait. What? Okay. Wait. I thought he was talking about the actual production, not characters. These franchise movies is no one's willing to take a risk. What they like with these modern characters that they try. Oh, he's talking purely about characters. Okay, this is this is one that I have to think about more. I was I was talking about funding. I was talking about like, oh yeah, we want movies with ideas and scripts that take more risks. He's talking about like characters that are like flawed. I don't know if I necessarily. So yeah, agree these are with that snippets a trend, of a conversation without a full context Dude, that yeah, I shouldn't have even been commenting on, but I didn't realize we're oh, sorry. just the editing. Willing to take that step of have them fail and be vulnerable and have flaws and weaknesses. We're going to talk about Sound of Freedom. Why is this movie causing so much controversy? Oh, I would love to hear the critical drinker talk about Sound of Freedom. See, I'm also going to start referring to the critical drinker by his actual human mm -hmm. name, and I'm going to ask you to remove them aviators. Not yet, not while we're still, not while we're. Are we getting a face reveal? Still on YouTube. <laughs> oh, we, have to, we have to go to the website to get the face reveal. Oh God! Stay free with Russell Brand. See it first on Rumble. It, it... Oh Rumble! Oh Rumble! Where well, we can be a bit more explicit about our anti-vaccine nonsense. He's the critical drinker. Dr drinker, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, man. I can't believe it. I'm sandwiched right between Tucker Carlson and Ron DeSantis. They doxed his name. <laughs> Is he on Tucker Cal Carlson and Ron? Sorry. Oh, he's sandwiched as in was that who Russell Brand had on before and after? <laughs> you better come. Oh my god, he held them up as like idols. That's fucking... are we still watching 1.25 speed? It's it or... doesn't feel like it. I'll make sure, but uh, so I assume it was just caught there that uh, you said you're surprised he sees Ron DeSantis and Tucker Carlson as uh, idols. I don't know if if I said surprise, but yeah, I, I don't necessarily. Oh, that... <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is that he he doesn't. He's saying that he has to live up to them as entertainment. Okay. Because I don't even know that he watches anything from Tucker Carlson, nor do, I don't think he knows anything about Ron DeSantis. I'd be surprised if he did. I don't know, but I. So here's here's something that I'll point out, um, and we'll see as the interview goes along. But I feel as though, and this is not to suggest that you know critical drinkers doing this for like money or or whatever. I think that it's a very real like kind of psychological phenomenon that we all go through like if we're interacting with a certain type of person and you know that that person wants to hear like a certain type of thing i think that most people kind of gravitate towards um you know like uh i guess like changing their phrasing or or even sort of yeah, like nudging right. into things that they want to hear um and i feel i feel like i feel like there's moments in this interview where critical drinker does that maybe not consciously um, where, you know, I, I think he understands like being on the Russell Brand program and him having those guests. I, I think that, you know, kind of being like, oh, I have to live up to that. That is like kind of like a, you know, uh, maybe not direct, but mild praising of those two. I think he may have ended up saying the Why? same thing, to, even if like Russell had said I had Trump on previously and I'm Biden on next week, he would be like, holy fuck, mm -hmm. I've got a lot to live up to because that's huge. Yeah. Just because they're big names. Yeah. Yeah. That's the impression that I makes get. Sense. Is that it's Yeah, I think that so, yeah. By by comparison, drinker is not as well known as Tucker. He's Thompson. a YouTube film reviewer. Oh, so yeah. yeah, he does not strike Here's me as a, a Ron DeSantis fan. Here's a question. Since we're clarifying that, would there 
Is there an issue if he did idolize Tucker Carlson and Ron DeSantis? Um, it wouldn't necessarily be an issue in and of itself. It would be an issue if it were misrepresentative of how he uh, has stated otherwise. Like I said, if he may, I don't actually know. But my impression from okay. this is that he's just saying they're big figures and that I think you misunderstood, that's all. Okay. Um, as for, like, you know, the, the nature of someone's idolization of any particular person could be good or bad or neutral. It, really, it just depends on what they say, right? Mm-hmm. And was that who Russell Brand had on before and after? <laughs> you better come. Oh, my God. He held them up as, like, idols. That's fucking fascinating. This is amazing. Drinker, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, man. I can't believe it. I'm sandwiched right between Tucker Carlson and Ron DeSantis. I've got a lot to live up to on this one. Damn, like, even I feel like even if I were, like, conservative Republican, like, to hold Ron DeSantis up is like a... like a... like a, a, a person to, like, have to live up to. Yeah, that's like praising Ted Cruz. Ron DeSantis is as lame as Ted Cruz. Like, he's as pathetic and as much of a loser. Like, Ron DeSantis is only a name now because he's made like he's been popular in Florida and people are well, seeing him as like the Florida, only alternative so. to Trump when in reality mm -hmm. like he's going to get Yeah, but not just the governor but making like huge fucking news stories of of his state and being as uh what's the word provocative as possible in in his uh political governance. He fucking crushed in the primaries. Like Ron DeSantis has zero chance. <laughs> like this is insane. <laughs> you better come like nobody's gonna even know Ron DeSantis' name after a while. Up with some pretty powerful right wing ideology right now. It better be slide it into your reviews somehow if you can. Otherwise you simply will not fit in with the roster. Thanks for joining us, mate. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on, man. One of your most recent What was that? Was that like an ironic say I was kinda confused what he was trying to get at there videos that I enjoyed watching was your joke, uh, analysis and review of the yeah. latest Indiana mm -hmm. Jones movie. It seems you kind of reached a, in a sense, uh, a zenith of your analysis in itself. See, Russell Brand didn't even like believe in any of this shit politically until it got him views. Like he's such a fucking grifter. He's as much of a grifter as like who's, God, who's that? Who's the woman who does goop? <laughs> Oh, Gwyneth <laughs> Paltrow, Paltrow, yeah. Paltrow. Like, it's literally just like, follow the money are we, shit. So right? are we on 1.25 speed or no? I changed it again, but I, I don't know if it's ignoring Can me. Can we do 1.5 and see if it's still yeah, watchable? Yeah, sure. I'll put it to that. Thank you. Like, Russell Brand is the male Gwyneth Paltrow. You know, maybe Joe Rogan is a bit. But Joe Rogan, I at least believe that he believes what he's saying. Whereas Russell Brand, I don't believe that he believes what he's saying or what Lynch might call the duck's eye, the point within the point. It seemed to me that what you were saying is that our culture is incapable of coming up with new and novel and innovative content, and it's kind of like a, a, a tomb raider dragging cadavers from the soil, reanimating them, and then not even respecting them. I, I, is that the essence of your perspective on sort of mainstream movie franchises, and what do you think that tells us more broadly? If so, like, we have to be asking ourselves, why is Russell Brand? <laughs> a guy who literally only does, like, conspiracy shit now. And like literally just like I'm going on Rumble and I'm going to be very critical of vaccines in a way that is not allowed on YouTube. Right? Like that's that's his whole shtick. For him to have on like the critical drinkers, like what does that tell you? Right? I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say like, oh, that means critical drinkers content. What is does that. that tell you? But like a lot of it kind of feeds into the same audience, you know? It's that indeed that is your perspective. Yep. Exactly just, what I was saying. Um as much as uh, that may they, they may be crossover and everything, it's just like but isn't there an equal reason in a cynical sense that Russell Brown would bring on big figures that are willing to come on? Uh, yeah, but if they can't have a conversation about the same, like, kind of culture war so stuff that he regularly talks about, then there's really no point. Just kind of what I was getting at. I mean, they don't talk about He's anything. Not, he doesn't really... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he has many conversations that aren't kind of explicitly aiming towards just doing things that his audience wants to hear but like he he had i access. could be wrong i could be wrong but he, he had an avenue in this conversation being an actor right he does bring it up at some points like he's talking to drinker about the nature of yeah the he doesn't really of... do that much anymore no of course but he talks to drinker about like even the arthur remake right and how that went very bad and that the, the he they talk for a little bit about how that's like almost part of the course with a lot of projects these days mm-hmm like, I feel like there's an avenue here that he would bring Drinker on for both uh, monetary benefit, exposure, and for, uh, he can talk to him. He, he knows what Drinker's talking about. He's familiar with the industry. 
And I think he is a fan of his channel. Okay. He's at least seen his videos. I'm just saying that there's a lot of explanations for why he would be. I, I don't even know. It. I'm I'm not even confident Russell Brand has ever heard of him before. I that, feel like that he's could got be the case, but that he did at least could watch be. some of his videos. So there's something he yeah, has to like on a couple. Like if um, he was at least he at least knows what kind of questions to ask him about of his content in a way that feeds into both of their demographics at the same time. If I had like a um. A person setting up interviews and stuff, and they were emailing different people, and they got access to a five million uh, YouTube reviewer person that I'd never heard of or seen the videos of. I might, you know, jump in briefly and then find out what do they mainly talk about, and then I can ask them about that. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, there can be a lot more of a disconnected reason for him to come on. It doesn't have to be that the this big crossover with their audience in relation to conspiracies. Yep. Respected drinker. I think that's wildly wrong because that metaphor you just gave me would have at least been entertaining, unlike this movie. Uh, no, like I, I think uh, we, we are definitely stuck in a rut as a culture when it comes to just um, relying on the past and just like... Hey, man, I, I can't believe that he said that because isn't that all of his content just saying like movies in the past were better? Digging up old ideas, like you say, uh, bringing back old characters, yeah, old actors. And... I think that's well, we, right. We went over it. It's, it's the... It, it depends. Yeah, it depends if you're if you're uh, media landscape is studio movies or all movies is really just the well it could be both studio movies and all movies and that you're making the commentary about studio movies yeah um and at the same time like i said he he misses the days of old for creation of movies not for uh he wants to see more of luke and indiana jones and stuff just um kind of humiliating mm -hmm. them on screen i try i mean like i think the critical drinker and i agree on this that like they're rehashing old ips and you need to have new ideas, and it would be better if risks were taken. Like, I, I think that there are some basic things that we could agree on for sure. Maybe we have, like, different political leanings and different interpretations of things in the long run, right? To use them as this weird springboard to launch, like, a new generation of characters, but they're never any good. They're always unlikable idiots who just um, bore people to tears. They're never any good. They're always unlikable idiots that just bore people to tears. Like, I, I think that that's a... <sighs> Man. Like... It's not untrue what he's saying, but it just, it reflects like a very narrow media diet, you know? It reflects a very narrow consumption of films, which is always, like, that, that's, that's like most of the issue I have with, like, you know, the, the types of reviews that the critical drinker makes are kind of like the types of reviews that, like, Ben Shapiro makes, where it's like, you're, you're subjecting yourself to, like, very few films in a year. Like, of course you're going to be mad at them. And that's, that's... and that's when you, do you feel the same way about, or did you say that you, uh... No, I, I can see he exposes himself okay. to more films than I previously thought. Like you're not you're not really going outside of your what what is it called like a, your purview your peripherals. You know you're not really like trying to experience the best films in a year. If all you're gonna we'll say um, I know this sounds a bit weird, but if there were if you maybe feel there are particular movies that you've come across that you'd love to get more of a spotlight because you think they're incredible, um, I can of course pass them on. Okay, so things that I think he would like. Um, theoretically, yeah, but like, if, if it's something that you're not even sure he would like, but you just think it's so fucking good, it needs to be seen more, then I can, you know, you can try it with him, sort of thing. Okay. I'm gonna watch is like, the new Indiana have Jones. You seen, have you stuff. seen The Raid? The, the Raid, did you say? The Raid? The Raid I'm Redemption. Sure, oh, yeah, yeah. You seen the raid. Okay, good. You yeah. said The that Raid. One, that one's got a, a lot of people know about that at this point. Yeah. Star Wars and, you know a problem we, we've lost the ability to create new innovative stuff what we do and i'm sure he would argue and say like he saw the whale right but that's also like a big internet known movie right it's just reiterate the things that have been done before and you i think he loved free guy also you can apply it to uh, movies TV hey we all like movies you like shazam too right <laughs> yeah but i didn't i mean <laughs> oh, i made did? a review of it so, it's mean, okay it's okay overall okay. Yeah. it's fine it's fine yeah yeah TV shows, music, like anything. I think he did love RRR. Freak? I think he actually recommended that. He loves Free Guy and RRR. Like, we're just, uh, we're, we're just recycling the same things we've done so many times Arr. already. It's such a sad thing to look back on. Like, pre ne generations from now, they're going to look back on this time and just think of it as the time when everyone just uh, lost their imagination. They lost their spirit of creation. I disagree because I think it's only going to get worse. I disagree with what he's saying of like, oh, generations are going to look back at this time and, you know, be like, oh, this is when they lost their imagination. Like, it's going to get a lot. The trend is going in one direction. I could buy it as a potential that it could get worse. Um, I'm, Maybe. I'm not sure. Cause I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I feel like there's arguments you can make one way or the other. Um, the the way of things getting worse would probably be, well, I mean, I don't know. Like, the AI you stuff. look at the future with AI and, yeah. and just general trends. But at the same time, a lot of these films that you could say are... 
you know, computer generated before computer generated, right? These factory assembly line, like, big budget films. A lot of them are struggling this year. And last year, too, actually. So, like, and they can't keep losing money forever, right? Something's gotta change. Um, I mean, damn, has, has Disney had, like, a film that could honestly be considered successful this year except for Guardians? Or is it just Guardians? Uh, oh, Ant-Man, I don't know, good. you can't, you, Ant-Man, you can't say, was successful. Little Mermaid, maybe, broke even, maybe, but is that even good it enough? It depends how you define, because if, the Little Mermaid, you can't just count the sales of the film, you have to count the sales of the original, the but this film, as well. this film served as an advertisement too, yeah, they have Disney stores and all the fucking uh, Little Mermaid shit at Disneyland, like, that- the so, only thing you could use as a point of reference is Lion King made like 1.56 billion and Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast made like 1 billion, 1.1. 1. 1, yeah, it was not as made successful. Half that. So, yeah. And then of course, yeah. it's, it's like their po- their post covid's not doing too well. Mm-hmm. Pixar hasn't had a successful film at the box office since Toy Story 4. Post covid Disney's not doing good. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the point being that, um, given that, like, what do you what do you kind of anticipate in terms of shifts at these? Because it's not just them, right? It's like Warner Brothers in terms of like DC films. <laughs> it's, um, it's not been a great year for them. What do you think? What do you think changes in the next? I mean, year? well, uh, the Mario movie was a huge hit. It was, <laughs> so but Fast X we're going to see did some not video make game a shit. lot of money. Fast X didn't make a lot of money compared to its no, budget. I'm, anyway, I'm. I'm just saying, I'm saying when something explodes like the Mario movie, that's the studio uh, big and the last looking at that. Really successful too, so. And they're, yeah. they're going to they're gonna look at that and just be like, ooh, what do we do that's like the Mario movie? So, well, like, we'll, so... we'll see. We'll see some video game adaptations. Maybe we'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll we're going to get into a different trend. You know, it might not be superhero shit. Who knows? Um yeah, well, it, we're we're kind of in a transitionary period, so we kind of just have to see what what's going on. There's a lot of mm-hmm. weird, like, the making of biopic kind of like origin story movies coming out right now, but they're all like direct to streaming. They're like, this is the origin of Beanie Babies or <laughs> Flaming Hot Cheetos. Oh, bl- a like... Blackberry, right? That's that's another one. And then but there was Tetris. Blackberry. I I I want to take issue with Blackberry being lumped in that because Matt Johnson's a real artist that created something before it was a trend, and then unfortunately, all these yeah, he, <laughs> he, his his film got got made before it started being a trend, and I just want to Did point you out that Tetris? that's a really no. I would I would recommend Tetris. Yeah, I was just Apple thinking. Oh now, yeah, you'd like. Subject of, uh, yeah. You'd very yeah. much like Tetris. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I think it so. is informative and entertaining. It's not like okay. it, I think it, I, I think I saw the trailer and thought it looked worth checking out. Yeah, it's a lot. It, it, it's kind of a correctly. a movie that you know you, you'd be like, oh, good luck with that one being successful because it's going to take a lot of people promoting it to get it. Well, anyway. that was Apple. Yeah. That was Apple TV. I think that one. Yes, um, that's why no one knows about it for. Well, it's it's strange because Apple TV. I think has been gone for like three, four years, and they've made a lot of stuff, and I think there's a lot of money behind it, but like. Feels like nobody really talks about anything. That yeah, making. I don't know what's up. It's also bullshit. It's, it's anyway. also a fucking bad streaming service. They refuse Is to it? make an Android app because they're, you know, because they're <laughs> Apple. You know. Yeah, like so you can't even watch it on a plane if you have an Android because you can only <laughs> access it through browser. <laughs> I don't think any of their shits in 4K. If it is, it certainly didn't look like it. Their frame rates all fucked on my TV. Yeah, I got it for free with Your like a phone fucked. thing, and so. Yeah, like what? I don't know what the fuck. It's a terrible streaming service. Well, oh. I mean, some of these streaming services have got to die, right? Like they they can't all they can't all last forever. We're we're entering the age of people going back to piracy, which is fine. Well, it's just seemingly each of these streaming services is struggling to become profitable. Even the most successful, like Disney Plus, isn't profitable. Do you and that's one of the most successful ones? That- you're saying Disney Plus is not profitable? I believe Disney Plus loses them a lot of money each quarter uh, because of... Do we well, have their, their subscriptions are down 7.5% from last quarter. I can't remember. I remember I'm sure. I'm sure their subscriptions are down. I don't know if I buy it's not profitable. Well, uh, damn. I, I remember reading I an article don't think it is. Uh, All I hear is that it's having big trouble oh, and problems. This is this is something that I've, that uh, Disney expects it to be profitable by the end of 
the fiscal year 2024. Oof. So it's not... Oh. The, 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 I well, believe I mean, the strategy for a lot of streaming services is growth, 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 growth. And then sometime down the yeah. line when you already have hundreds of millions of people subscribed, you need to find a way to transition it into being profitable. You got to pay for the infrastructure and then you got to pay for like contracts for the content. And it and costs then... money to develop these services too. The services exactly. themselves are expensive to run. Yeah, so. The infrastructure. Yeah. Which, which I, Disney again, Plus is like a better running service than Apple TV Plus. So, well, I, I, I guess the point being that if you have, because it's Netflix, there's uh, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Peacock, Apple TV. What's the other one? Yeah, Peacock, oh, Max, I think, is Max. really hurting. Well, it's I, I, I wonder, I wonder if it's got because do people understand that that's universal? Like, do people understand that Peacock is universal, or do they associate it more with NBC? Well, I exactly. just learned what it was a second ago. So. Ah, okay. I think they had a, on video game adaptations, a Twisted Metal TV show, I think, came out. Yeah, that. that's right. Yeah. Uh, and all right, let's, get, let's keep watching. <laughs> not, to, not to tangent at all. It's just Metal just said message saying apparently XQC lost a million dollars in gambling. Like, what? Just like, now. Just, just it's recently. a Tuesday. Like, I was about cares? to say, it actually does doesn't matter to him, but fucking it's fucking lost crazy. A million... It literally doesn't was... matter. He loses a million dollars fucking... Opening his mouth. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I, I lose a million. He loses money gambling. You know, it's funny. I still understood what you were saying. It's not, it's not going back. Yeah. It's very interesting that you take it to something as essential as the spirit of creativity. We're going to get AI art in the next, like, five years. We're going to get, like, competent AI-generated movies in the next, like, ten years. Right. Itself. I've got young daughters. They're five and six. Their favorite band is the Spice Girls. Like, we listen to the Spice All Girls. Right, can you like, pause here? Kids. Yep. So this, this is something um, where, from my interpretation, when uh, you DM'd me, that I think that you misinterpreted what was said here. So I just want to, I want the, okay. I, want, I want us to pay close attention to the words here. And also, this is, this is a question that he asks later again uh, in the interview. Uh, and Critical Drinker says two things, one of them a bit more explicitly the second time. I didn't have the timestamp. I didn't have the time to figure yeah, out what the timestamps were, but so we can just keep that in our memory. Kids were getting dropped off at the school, like similar age. They were listening to the Spice Girls. It doesn't even, even something in the culture, which I think at the time I would have certainly regarded as a sort of a commodity, even though it had a great deal of spirit. And there's aspects of the Spice Girls I like that. Details I certainly won't be going into right now. What I'd like to say is that it's odd that even something that's commercial, you know, we're not talking about like Joan Jett, we're talking about the Spice Girls. You can, I mean, okay, I understand what you're saying. You Not can say this that yet. I, I've generation. said that too early. Depending on what culture you're in, depending on, like, what you're exposed to. Like, there's still new things that, like, newer generations are being exposed to, right? Like, you know, the Spice Girls wasn't, like, the cutoff point for creativity in music or, like, even catchiness in music, right? Like, me as a child, my brother as a child, like, we were exposed to, like, what my dad listened to. Like, he listened to a bunch of 70s music, right? So for you to say, like, oh, my daughters listen to the Spice Girls because I showed them the Spice Girls, and also their friends listen to the Spice Girls because their parents showed them the Spice Girls, that's just uh, indicative of you being from a generation that listened to the Spice Girls and also other generations of parents having children that listen to the Spice Girls, right? Like, there were plenty of kids my age when I grew up and my brother's age that listened to 70s shit because their parents showed them that, right? That doesn't mean that they didn't listen to new shit, right? Even by Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Russell, sure, yeah. There's plenty of reasons why they might be listening to the Spice Girls. Those kind of commodities aren't being replaced. And also with like Glastonbury, Elton John being the sort of closing act, it makes you wonder, well, where is it going to go? Now, do you think this is because of economics? Do you think it's because of technology? All right. For example, I thought he was leading into a question in... <laughs> that, okay. that I was familiar with. New raft of movie stars coming through. Oh, you know like that that. Is that because of... There isn't a new raft of movie styles coming in? What the fuck are you talking about? You're not watching the right movies is the problem. This is what pisses me off about this. This is the same... So uh, before... Listen, so your understanding of saying there aren't movie stars, do you take it to be a strict definition of very popular actors? I'm, right now, I'm confused as to him saying stars or styles. Uh, On my stream, I, I responded as if he said styles. And now lis listening to this multiple times, I think he meant stars, but he says it in a way that's like his accent. It's kind of difficult to tell, but I, th I think he meant stars. And Critical Drinker responds as though he... Uh, was talking about stars. Yeah. So my actual ans my actual commentary on this is after Critical Drinker talks because I heard Russell Brand say something else, and I'm talking okay. about styles and not stars. The reason I was pissed off, like when people were acting like crazy rich Asians, was like, oh yeah, finally we can have Asian people in a movie. I'm like, I've been trying to recommend like fucking Korean movies this entire time, like telling people to watch this shit. You know, like, uh, like I get it, it's different. It's like Asian American, whatever. Like, I I've updated my perspective on that, but it's it is frustrating as a person that is actively seeking out 
art and like trying to find experiences that are meaningful and like purposeful to me. And then people are acting as if those those experiences don't exist when they just like they don't even make the effort and they don't even try to like seek these things out. Like, you know, thank fucking Christ Parasite got as popular as it did, you know, like. It, but part of the problem is like it literally takes the movie being such a big hit and like winning best picture for like people to see it like it has to spread so vigorously through not only word of mouth but through like heavy advertising right whereas like people just like i don't know why people are so scared to like go to a film festival why people are so scared to like watch i mean uh, as much as i am pr i want to agree with you completely like there is a fairness of understanding the average person doesn't treat movies this way they treat them as like in the same way we treat a lot of things in life which like sort of go in go out and do other things not like living it. I'll, I'll agree there, but I think I think that there's a large amount of people that want something more out of a movie, that yeah. are looking for more out of a movie, and if if the the if the barrier towards accessing uh, smaller independent films was the same degree as the barrier towards accessing smaller independent video games, then we'd see a very different landscape. We'd see very different conversations, and more people would be getting what they want. But like um, the average person looks to someone like Drinker, or at times someone like, uh, I was going to say, like, pretty much anybody, and they want advice because they don't want to spend time looking. They want people to tell them where to go. And of mm -hmm. course, mainline theaters are going to have all the mainstream movies. Uh, the, fun, something like The Whale, I think I wanted to see that the second you recommended it. And I was like, how do I see this? It's like, you won't be able to for like a year. I was like, oh, cool. But obviously, I could go yeah. theoretically to unless a film you festival. Go to, unless you go to film festivals. Yeah, um, I, I just yeah. Uh, this is something that I think makes a lot more sense for my sort of area. But the average person, I just I don't really. Uh, film festivals are publicly available. No, Anybody I know, but can like, buy a ticket. I'm trying to say, like, do you think the average person is like, yeah, I'll go? Because how many films do you watch on average per day in a film festival? As many as you want, but okay. for me personally, like three. But you, right. can, you, you can watch one movie and then leave. But, <laughs> you, you of course, just, no, of course, but like, like, oh, the there's a lot of factors, then... right? Like, there's the, the travel, the cost, the time for any normal person. There's film festivals happening fucking everywhere. People act as if, like, they're not all over. Like, it, it really, there's a, there's a London film festival. There's, there's fucking Atlanta film festival. There's Vancouver film festival. There's, like, Seattle. Fil Every major city has a film festival, pretty much. Uh, they they don't all have the exact same lineup, but there's a surprising amount of good shit that you can find at like most uh, film festivals. Yeah, um, but like it just sounds like you 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 find it like hip, hypocritical. But you would you buy the argument if they said to you that they're not they're not doing that? They've not got the time and patience for it. That they want to get recommendations from someone else. Uh, I'm not sure that question is what we were. T I'm I'm not I'm not sure what that question is. I'm confused. At, at it doesn't the necessarily contradict anything you've said previously. I'm just assuming that would be a position you'd agree with. Wait, I'm sorry. We got to go back. Okay, we wait. Go back, back in the video or back on? Because like, what so I just you said. were saying, uh, no, just like wait. I so need let's you just to repeat the question. Uh, would you be? Would you understand a person that tells you they love film, but they're not spending any time on discovering it? They're going to look at recommendations instead. Um. Yeah, which is which is something that I acknowledge and part of why my channel exists. When I say I don't know why people are so afraid to go to a film festival, that's not a statement directed at the critical drinker specifically. That's a statement directed at like the general audience. I wish it, yeah. part of what I try to do to my, you know, that's part that's part of what I do on my channel is to help people get more comfortable with the idea of doing something like that and help to legitimize it and popularize it and have it become a normal part of film conversations instead of Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, uh, I assume you'd agree that a healthy media diet would also include maybe reading some books, playing games, uh, watching TV shows here and there, trying to spread out a bit in all forms of media. And in the same vein, I doubt people who love books go to, so to speak, book fairs or video game conventions necessarily. They could, and you could encourage them to, to discover more, but they you wouldn't necessarily, you know, compel them to. No, 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 no. But but movie, movies are particular here because, again, with books are the exact same way as video games are and the exact same way where, like, music is, where self-publishing is, like, the easiest fucking thing in the world. You can p put your own, like, Critical Drinker publishes book on Kindle or Amazon or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and you can just share it to your audience and people can find it that way, right? 
it's a different barrier with movies and that's why i feel like film festivals are beneficial and necessary at least for now maybe they won't have to be forever but right now that's how you expose yourself to interesting new subversive challenging artists and you know actual creators that aren't just doing whatever the studio thinks will be the most profitable thing at any given point in time right so that's why I talk about that way with film. Uh, and I, I don't think that that really applies to uh, video games, music and books. Like no one's, oh. no one's saying like, ah, oh, all books are, why modern books are bad. Right. Cause we don't have that same issue when it comes to the barriers for people to access them and people to get exposed to them. Um, so that conversation, well, I assume that's exist. the case because movies just tend to be the most talked about cultural event, even though video games seem to be the ones that have the most engagement, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's it's not it's not to do with how much it's talked about. It's it's to do with the barriers that are put up by studio in interests and ownership of movie theaters. Like when you play a game, it's on your computer. You don't. It, it, there's no gigantic. Like you, you don't have to go to the fucking AMC uh, gaming room where they get to decide which fucking games you play, right? There's It's entirely different barriers of entry and accessibility. So that that's... Oh, and it's worth mentioning why, uh, Drink I, is I, not self-published. Yeah. Um, He's not? But it doesn't change your point. Um, the... Yeah. The, the 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 nature of it to me though I I would assume is uh, could you argue the other direction that the fact that you can have so much access to all kinds of video games, music, and books without having to go to film festivals necessarily is probably part of the explainer why people are uh, much more ready to engage in something like that, and, and reasonably speaking. It, uh, that's exactly what I'm saying, yeah. Well, th that's why I'm saying it's reasonable. Which is why I'm trying to make people more comfortable. Yeah, I'm trying to make it less stigmatized and less, like, you know, the the taking the first step into doing something is the hardest part of doing it, right? Sure. The the whole idea of like building it up, it, what you were saying earlier, like you know, the travel, the time, the blah, 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 blah. A lot of those things you don't really have to consider depending on which festival you go to or how you do it, um, you know, location or like you can make it a part of another trip anyway. If you want to like, if you're thinking of visiting Vancouver because you think like, oh, I would like to visit Vancouver someday, maybe plan it around the film festival or something. If the film festival thing doesn't fucking work out, you can just have a nice vacation if you if you you know fuck that up. But there's really not you know is you could there's subreddits for like there's a TIFF subreddit where people ask each other questions on like you know like should I buy this type of ticket pack or like what should I expect for this you know like there is a know how to certain festivals, but really the barrier of entry is not. Um, it's 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 more intimidating than it actually is. I, uh, and I'm going to say I, I don't like to help break down that. Personally, I don't think it's about stigma. discomfort or intimidation. I assume it's almost explicitly just I'm not doing that. I, I ain't got time for that. Apathy. Yeah. I think that's a part of the same thing. Doing... I think that's a part of the same thing. If if people if people don't see a good enough reason to do it, they're not going to be interested in it, right? Part of that is is Let's... to say like, hey, you could get you could see the whale fucking six months early if you just see it at fucking vancouver film festival there's still tickets i tried to get fucking charlie <laughs> moist critical to come to vancouver for that but then he's he's scared of planes so oh couldn't do it well um yeah which i didn't know before and then he's made videos about so i just uh for me i guess what i'm trying to get at is i i wouldn't see it as a problem if someone said i adore film but i ain't going to film festivals if I if I went to London Film Festival, I don't know where how close you are, but <laughs> if I went to London Film Festival and I picked out some movies or whatever with you, would you go with me? Um, we could talk about it, maybe. <laughs> it sounds like okay. it could be fun. Watch an indie movie, that's... all right? But you understand the main reason I'd want to do that is to do it with you, not because I'm going there in general. Oh, yeah. And if and if that's if that's what it takes for you to show up and be like, oh, this is actually pretty cool and not intimidating and there's some good shit here and, you know, you might want to do it again the next year. Mm -hmm. You know, be more engaged and more interested in, in, in the type of media you consume. Like, why are people so scared? Like, it seems like nobody fucking talks about the shit that's interesting to me and that's part of what's frustrating about this, you know? Of the culture, is that because of technology? And of course, I know those two things are inextricably linked, but what do you put it down to? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the, the last movie star that we have still active really now that's Tom Cruise? is Tom Cruise. Ah, he's he's impossible coming out soon. That's probably going to do really well this summer. Top Gun Man. What do you mean by movie star? Do you mean action star? So uh, what I'll give you here is that he's not been asked by Russell to explain exactly what he means, but 
my assumption. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even I don't know if he's uh, necessarily made this explicit in videos, but obviously I talk to him for like a good five hours per week uh, about all these subjects. I believe he's specifically referring to uh, actors that are able to sell a movie on their acting sort of uh, reputation alone, that they are a guarantee of entertainment on their own and that that's gone. Um, I, I, I go into further detail about this in the stream, so I guess I'll hold off on my comments yep. until that point. Tom Cruise isn't the last movie star. Maybe he's the last person. Like, I, uh, I think, I feel like that's a real generational bias when you say that Tom Cruise is the last movie star. Like, Ryan Gosling is going to be, like, pretty fucking famous by the time he's, like, 50, 60 something, right? Like, if he isn't all... I've noticed Ryan. that my, you, you mentioned Ryan Gosling. I've noticed that my mom... For whatever reason, has taken quite an interest in watching a lot of Ryan Gosling movies on like Netflix he's, and streaming services. He's been big for a while. He's like a well, he's a hunk. He's got, I find he's this one an interesting list. point because Tom Cruise has been, you could say, like a movie star since he was in his twenties. Ryan Gosling is in his forties, so but then you also say like, well, yeah, maybe when he's fifty, he'll be one. Almost, it's, it kind of sounds like that's what you're saying. I find that strange. I feel but like, I, but uh, I also sorry. Go for it. Go for it. I also I also think that there's like a bit of a disconnect between how we view the term movie star, because I think a lot of people uh, that uh, might be brought up as examples by Critical Drinker or anyone else uh, making this argument would be people like Tom Cruise, Jackie Chan, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger. like a lot of these a lot yeah. of these people aren't necessarily just movie stars, but like they also come with the. Uh, the the whole package of like ooh they do their own stunts or ooh like they're like this huge bodybuilder sort of thing so I get that in the sense of like this weird uh, parasocial celebrity star power like we're not I don't know if we're gonna see another Michael Jackson in the music industry I don't know if that means that music's getting worse right I think that let people over time are becoming less uh, uh, tricked <laughs> or less um, I think people over time are learning a bit more about uh, celebrities and culture in a way where they're not like attached to it in this weirdly parasocial way. Or uh, I think that maybe celebrity culture is like dying down at least to the average person. I don't know if average is the right word. Maybe it's I think been that replaced. it's becoming more popular to not care as much about celebrity culture. Think I think that that is a growing thing. Well, I think it's more become like influencer based and internet based and in that kind of thing. Maybe that's pulled away some of the attention from what it used to be, which was, you know, movie stars. But now that, you know, technology and social media and the way that we interacted with those things socially, it's become more of the um, the, the TikTok, YouTube, uh, internet influencer, that kind of celebrity sort of thing. Well, I don't. Yeah, kind of. A question it depends on, on the that. generation and it depends on the demographic. Maybe we're just more split. What do you, if, if, uh, if the movie star as a selling point for movies is going away, what do you think it's being replaced with? I don't, I don't think that it's gone away entirely. Like, I don't know. What is the well, rock? No, I mean, I mean, like going away, what do you think it would be? Like, if it's decreasing, what do you think is increasing then as a selling point for movies? I, I don't think that it necessarily has to be or is uh, being replaced by anything. I think I say at some point in this stream that people are becoming more director conscious, which is a good thing. And I think that that is a thing that is happening in terms of why someone would, would watch a movie. There are more... Uh, the average audience member has a higher understanding of uh, directors' names. Like, there's a higher pool of directors' names that can sell a movie than there was in the past. I think that's a good thing because I think that directors are the most responsible for what their film turns out to be. Um, I don't See, think that's I, entirely being replaced, but I mean, like, the reason people saw Oppenheimer, sure, maybe not everybody, but big reason why studios trust Christopher Nolan is because people will see it because of his name on the film, right? Uh, the thing is, I'm not, I'm not convinced by the, the idea that directors are getting more well-known. I feel like there's specific people, sure, but, like, if you ask the average person to name 10, I think, I think... I'd be curious to see what their list would be and if they could well, get to Well, if if let's say if let's say the average person had a list of 5, I would argue that 
fucking 20 years ago their list would have been three <laughs> you know? uh, i think would have been i Steven think that Spielberg and uh maybe george lucas uh who else would they yeah would they Scott, james cameron and... but but again yeah. like a, a lot of a lot of those names even are not like the we're we're talking from like a perspective i know that a, a lot of us that talk about movies on the internet are like film nerds or like science fiction fans in that respect you know like yeah i don't think the average person watching a fucking ridley scott movie throughout his career was like oh yeah the new ridley scott i don't think the the average person i don't even think he's like a big enough name that the average person is aware of that whereas i think like i think more people might be aware of like wes anderson at this point i don't know i'm not convinced (laughs) by that yeah i don't know maybe as a name uh Wes Anderson's a fucking TikTok meme right now. Like people are like, "Ooh, I'm doing sure with like style. the the AI stuff and everything." Right? I guess me maybe I'm speaking relatively, right? Like the equivalent director of his time back then would have likely the equivalent notoriety, but maybe not, and maybe this is an anomaly because There's of more... the memes. Well, you know, here's, like the here's old the AI thing. Wes Anderson film... stuff. Conversation about film is a part of internet culture and discourse and is naturally spreading to people in a way that, you know, people that might not even be looking up things about film uh, will inevitably find. I think that I think that conversations about directors are getting more popular and I think that well, people are becoming more aware of people, you know, controlling behind well, the scenes and shit. I guess the Wes Anderson one is in because Asteroid City, that's Wes Anderson, right? And that's made mm-hmm. forty seven million dollars. And it yeah. came out I mean, you can know of his name without wanting to watch one of his movies. Then, but I thought the context was <laughs> that's, uh, that's, names that's as selling point points. The, yeah, the conversation about movie stars is that you know them and you're interested. Like, Will Smith, right, was... He was, yeah. for what, two decades? He had every film debuted at number one. That's like... That's, what, that's probably what people mean when they say movie star. No matter what film he's attached to, people are gonna... There's gonna be some interest in it, whereas... I don't know if I mean... Cool. It it can increase your likelihood of of selling a film for sure. I think people are more aware of directors' names, not more than movie stars, not not by a long shot. I'm just saying it's mm-hmm. becoming a bigger slice of the pie than it was before, and that that's not necessarily like oh, because I know a director's name, that means that I'm you know the average person is going to watch every one of those movies. Like there's some things that people get excited for and some things that other people don't get excited for. Wes Anderson's got a lot of fucking haters too, right? Like what is, there's tons right. of viral posts of people being like, wow, he just does the same thing. Yeah, like, yeah. So there's, a, it, so it's not necessarily like that, that translates to money in the same way that like you can have a, somebody, a star that everybody knows fucking after earth bombed, you know, Will Smith was in that. Well, that, well wasn't that yeah, the special that thing about it though? The trajectory that, of that was what was special though. It ended his streak. Um, that was unexpected. Yeah, exactly. Whereas so now, in the same way I that can... like a, di- a director being known doesn't necessarily translate to that, an actor doesn't necessarily either. Well, sure, um, the... I think it's fine if we break away from that. Yeah, but but the, the the idea with the label of movie star was you could say that up until After Earth, like Will Smith was just guaranteed to make you money with like maybe one or two exceptions. Whereas now, I don't know, I don't know like what actor um, you could attach. Because Scarlett Johansson was in Asteroid City. She's one of the highest paid actresses in the world. It's like, well, mm-hmm. that didn't get that film above like 100, 200 million, which maybe it was never going to. Yeah, and The Rock and like Black Adam. Thing, right? like Black people... Adam you also, like, you have... also have to understand with Wes Anderson movies is that the the studio strategic approach when it comes to releasing them is very, very different uh, than mainstream films, right? Like. Sure. Um, you have like a big Universal Disney Warner Brothers movies. Like they'll they'll be putting their films in fucking like ultra uh, Sony whatever blah D box and like all the big theaters or whatever. But then you get a uh, like a more more indie ish artist like Wes Anderson who still works with studios and production companies like Fox Searchlight, which is now owned by Disney. And mm-hmm. what they've done, even before they were owned by Disney, what essentially their strategy with his films was put it in a small amount of theaters, have a small release, and then base whether or not they're going to expand the release on how uh, how many seats are filled within those smaller theaters. Asteroid City is a is a film that, you know, a lot of his fans checked out. I'm sure it had like a pretty good uh, seat filled ratio at the beginning. But I'm pretty sure it dropped off too because it's pretty inaccessible. It's not like it's not an it's not a Wes Anderson film 
that you'd immediately go to someone else and be like, oh, you got to watch this new one. Whereas like a lot of his other films, the, the studio approach, the Fox Searchlight approach is just see which one's spread by word of mouth to the point where we can put enough faith in it to put it everywhere. Like the, the, this, it's, it's a problem with distribution that has been a long time issue with Wes Anderson films and a lot of, uh, you know, not huge Disney, Marvel, blah, blah, blah properties. Mm hmm. Is they're they're not willing to they're not willing to uh, put a lot of faith in the distribution unless it proves itself, and sometimes that's just a self fulfilling prophecy of like okay well nobody saw a trailer for this it wasn't in it was barely in any theaters like of course like you know didn't reach a huge audience right so my, my yep. explanation for that would be very much included in a lot of the stuff you just said but also because i don't believe wes anderson would be able to sell a movie to mainstream audiences just on his name alone anyway like i don't know how much that really truly would add uh, meanwhile it felt like once upon a time audiences had faith in in being entertained by individual actors and that we moved away from that what does that mean definitively i think there's a whole bunch of conversations to be had there i i don't, I don't know how much we have moved away from it because the rock like he's Except had like Black maybe Adam. one or two flubs, right? Like Black Adam and Baywatch. The rest of his movies are like Wasn't that again other? like Will Smith one was like the what rest of his movies thing? are like guaranteed to make jungle fucking cruise. hundreds of yeah. millions of dollars. Exactly. Like that made money, didn't it? Uh, it? No, I don't think it did. No, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, and obviously, he was on a streak for a while though. And DC's League of Super Pets, he had his big his name and big yeah, bold letters on the poster, and that that wow. But I mean, still, doesn't that speak to like they're advertising Dwayne Johnson and then DC, you know, League of Super Pets and Tidy Text? They thought he'd sell the movie and it didn't, didn't work. Yeah, but I, Even, I feel um, like he has a like it's a more modern example of Will Smith in terms of like yeah, it's not a one hundred percent guarantee, but there, you know, he has a big streak. He has a big streak, and he's not, you know, I don't know what else to call The Rock other than a movie star. Uh, well, I guess that's the the interesting thing is that people, you know, if you ask somebody who's like modern movie star, people would point to The Rock and it's like, uh oh, waning a little bit, you know. And I mean, Mission yeah, Impossible, but Dead maybe we'll and, and just to clarify, so just like I imagine, uh, Drinker would agree with this as well. Like, there are plenty of very famous and talented actors and actresses that like that's not really got anything to do with it necessarily. Also, this is very uh, America centric. Because there's tons of. I think they are talking uh, about America, though. Parasocial, yeah, yeah. And I guess United Kingdom, like that wasn't Europe. necessarily a criticism. It was yeah, just yeah. a reminder. No, so, yeah, you're right. Already, like, star of the Barbie movie, star of like so many the Drive and all this shit. Like, I'm sure you love Drive. You know, like, I'm sure Drive. Drive is a very easily accessible movie to like even people like critical drinker, right? Like Ryan Gosling is, you know, maybe not like action star like Tom Cruise. Like, I don't know. Like we're we're, we're t I I understand what you mean I understand what you're saying but I also feel like Tom Cruise has been along like around way longer than current generation stars in the, in the sense that like maybe we'll see movie stars that are just as big but they're not from America maybe we'll see movie stars that are just as big but they're not necessarily known for action right like I don't know if I'm comfortable saying that it's like the last we're ever gonna see Chris Pratt that's a good example Chris Pratt's like probably fucking huge yeah see that's, I, that's, that's, that's the one I actually kind movie. of agree with I think Chris Pratt's the closest yeah. beyond Tom Cruise which to be fair yeah, Tom, Tom Cruise did not yeah. sell Dead Reckoning enough did he no Dead Reckoning is not not doing as also well. they decided to release it during Barbenheimer like yeah, fucking, but what, I, what I don't know why people, I, I don't know why people keep saying this I think that it like you Mission Impossible 4 that made eight hundred million dollars. It's a big franchise. Mm -hmm. It's got a bunch of actors in it, and Tom Cr and Top Gun Maverick last year made like one point three billion dollars. I don't know yeah. why people keep saying they should have moved. It's like they thought they were going to make more well, money, and it wasn't unreasonable. I, they, yeah, they didn't I mean, it, understand it, the hype culture. I'm willing to agree that Bob and Heimer is drawn from it, but I also yeah. really like Probably. controversially want to say that I'm pretty sure it's partly to do with. It's poor quality. Dead Reckoning is yep. nowhere near as good as Fallout. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. I mean, yeah, maybe maybe if people were shouting from the heavens that it's the best movie ever, then it would have helped it out. But yeah, I think, I think so. that, like it's also the long... average person the average person watching like two movies in a weekend is <laughs> yeah, already a huge I mean, part ask, of, especially when one of them is three hours, right? Part of a movie's so big no success uh, would be the legs, right? And like a lot of them need repeatability uh, or at least recommendations. And I just don't think Dead Reckoning had much of any of that. As much as people would say, like, what do you mean everyone recommended? It's like, yeah, but I wonder yeah. how much. I wonder how much that reflected like uh, hey. conversations between friends and people being like, oh, you gotta go see Dead Reckoning. You gotta go see it. As opposed to other films that were out at the time. Yeah. 
I wonder. I mean, and it's, it's. I just I don't. Mean, many, I don't think many people resaw it too. I think they were like, no, one was enough. I think. I, well, everybody's yeah. moved on. I think everybody's already moved on. Everyone it's not, has moved on. Yeah. It's not something that people want to talk about anymore. Whereas a lot of the films that proved successful are the films that people were talking about weeks and even months later. My my autistic cousin re saw it. What do you think? And what did he what did he think? It was a joke. I'm sorry. Oh, there's a play on there. Was a, <laughs> a, autistic cousin re saw, so it was a... Oh, oh, I uh, see. Me and Free was setting up a, totally, an additional joke. It. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. In so many places, right? And you fell I for it last year. <laughs> um, yeah, like, uh, I'm so done. There, there's a problem now in movies particularly where we don't have movie stars anymore we have characters that people are excited to see you know so it's it, it, particularly with comic book movies with all this superhero stuff it'll be this is not necessarily untrue it is an observation that i've definitely seen popular before again he said it um have fun no problem but yeah let's hear him out a case of hey we're gonna go and see the new captain america movie we're gonna see the new thor movie we don't care about the actor that's playing him really it's just like the character that we're going to see and so that then see, doesn't translate the, into the uh, amendment that i would probably add to what drink is saying is because i think if you appeal to character i think that that has more value than what it probably is which is that people are really invested in intellectual properties like they're in yeah. invested in a franchise more so than like, so people, it's not like, I'm invested in the character Ethan Hunt. It's like, I mean, it's probably more so like, oh, it's Mission Impossible, you know, and, and Tom Cruise, right? Compared to... Yeah. Because investment yeah. in character seems more like, you, it, that that's more rooted in the actual, like, material in the story rather than... Because, like, Robert Downey Jr., I guess, is probably the interesting one, right? Nobody saw Doolittle, even though he was... Yeah, like, nobody's going to watch uh, an Iron Man without him. It's like this interesting... Yeah, exactly. Where uh, people want to watch Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man specifically, uh, with an investment in Marvel as a broader IP, which is kind of like a fascinating sort of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it's a it's kind of an interesting little. I'm back, hello. We we're just talking about uh, actors plus character is what sells versus just the actor these yeah. days, or at least in particular my... spheres. Uh, a star. Did my chair yeah, provide movies. adequate commentary? <laughs> I'm sure it did. It was. It transformed the conversation. That's this is a weird one because it is kind of a trend, but I I don't necessarily like. I think what we're seeing, like I, I think we kind of agree, but we might phrase it in different ways. Where where it's like, we see a lot of actors that are going into superhero roles and reprising those roles, and so it's like Robert Downey Jr. for ten for like a fucking decade at least is not Robert Downey Jr. He's Iron Man, right? Um, Chris Pratt is still Chris Pratt. Like he's you know Chris Pratt's a really good example to kind of contradict this, isn't he? Like Chris Pratt is still getting so many roles that, like he was in the fucking mario movie right like why did he get cast for that um and he's doing very mm. well that's true um like i yeah. said chris pat is interesting to look at uh, in reference to all of this well outside of yeah uh, like no, people people Marvel don't stuff. see him as star lord <laughs> I don't see, and, well, and even even in the context of guardians of the galaxy it's not like people saw it because star lord's in it it's because chris pratt is playing star lord yeah um, well, I, I see that I as with all the characters. Like, I don't think Thor will do as well without Chris Hemsworth, and I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, was, yeah, I so can't make the same argument for Hulk. Depending actually, depending on how you see it, I think that yeah. the interesting thing with with you know and like oh, uh, Chris Pratt is a movie star. It's like oh yeah, the Tomorrow War. What was the name of the character who played? Uh, you know, John. Like, yeah. Jim, John Jim, something. No, Come on, John. <laughs> no. Uh, no, no, James. It's, James Knight. John Ham. Try again. Uh, You're wrong. It's not John. It's a different John, name. John, uh, Tim, Jeff, no, a Jacob, Jingle, so Chris, Irish Schmidt, Pratt. So, so the the character's name is actually Dan Forrest. Damn it, which Dan! Also, oh, I could have guessed that. A very, very Forrest. generic Daniel name. F. I'm yeah, sad that I didn't get it. I think they're making a sequel. Uh, I think they're making a sequel. They are making a sequel. What did you What did you guys think about that? Awful. That what a load of horse shit. Of, it's actually one of the worst movies I've seen. But it's ever. funny. Yes, it is funny. Yeah. It, it is funny, but it's terrible. And yes, they are making a sequel it. because it was, that was successful. That was an infuriating movie. That was an angry. <laughs> yeah. I hated it. That's an AI. Movie. Oh, I hated it. World. I mean, that's done, but still, you know, massively financially successful. Um. I don't I don't know if I necessarily wholeheartedly agree with the idea that there's no movie stars anymore. But I will say that I guess it feels kind of different with stars in general. So like you could say the same thing about music. You could say the same thing about like we'll never see a music star as big as Michael Jackson. And I think that has less to do with the quality of music that's available and more to do with people maybe like over time globally 
getting kind of more level-headed when it comes to the idea of like celebrity wor worship culture like maybe that has a bit something uh, more to do with it like i think people worship tom cruise in like a very obsessive like weird fucking way in the same way that like people did that recently with like i don't know kanye and kim kardashian like all these tabloid people like brad you could say the same thing about like brad pitt and like um fucking i don't know jennifer aniston and who's the other woman need tomb raider <laughs> you know like beyonce yeah. angelina jolie um, queen b that like you could say the same thing yeah. with a lot of people i think that maybe we've kind of like been more level-headed and gravitating award sorry away from celebrity worship culture in a way and that's not uh, do you think i'm not sure i feel I'm like the celebrities have just shifted from like the Perhaps. movie star to the tiktok influencer youtuber twitch streamer I, when i um, say shifting away i don't mean that most people don't do it i'm saying i'm just saying i'm just saying that there is from at least what i can notice which you know no one can do this accurately you kind of just see what you see in the world but it feels like enough people are shifting away in a way that is noticeable to me but i could be wrong i i, I was careful in this stream i i think i even said the word maybe yeah, yeah, because well, because I think like there's arguments in both directions, but my intuition says like we're in it's getting worse and worse with how crazy everyone's getting online with like worshiping individuals. But you know, I maybe. Don't know. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it'll be easier to tell in ten years. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily indicative of like the quality of the art that they're creating, or the quality of movies, or the quality of the actor, or the quality of the musician. Right? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I agree with what he's saying in terms of like there's been a notable trend in how people worship celebrities but like I, I don't know if that necessarily translate to translates to that means that you know like stars are worse or like actors are worse or something right and get people to go to the movie theater and see his latest film you know back when probably you and i were kids the the, the dominant forces at the box office were like oh i'm gonna go and see the latest arnold schwarzenegger movie gonna... you know what i kind of agree but i think that this is a step in the right direction because i would rather i would rather have people seeing the new movie made by the director and as we've seen recently you know, people saw the new fucking Christopher Nolan movie, right? Like, there's directors that have made themselves prominent enough to connect with people in a way where they know their name, and there's very few of them. Actors are the most obvious because they're the ones on the screen, and so many people would just be like, oh, I like Hugh Jackman, and they go see the new Hugh Jackman movie, right? I think that's a step in the right direction to not weigh so much in terms of actors, but think about more of directors, right? Like, I think that people are growing in that sense where they... If, um, if I completely believe that, that we'd move to respecting directors instead of actors, I think I'd be on board. Mm -hmm. I just don't know that we've done that at all. I think it's just, we've just do lost you, on the respect Do you think that actors. even... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's all good. Do you think that even if it's not replaced by directors, do you think that it's a bad thing that people aren't seeing movies because of the actors in it? I think it is a neutral thing until we figure out what the okay. context behind it is and what it means. And like I said, I think in yeah. Drinker's case, he doesn't I... get to say what he means by it. Yeah, because that's what's confusing to me about, um, I guess, this interview is because I, I, like, it just seems to be like a common sentiment among people, but it just seems to just kind of be one of those things where it's like, this is new, and it, you know, the implication is that it's bad. I but, think, you know, you take a step back and it's like, oh wait, so wait, if this is a trend, why is it bad? And that's where I'm confused. The what is probably better is that people are rooting their interest in things that they want to see based on the people who are creating it. Uh, just simply for the fact that it is focused on that creator side, which seems like it's going to be more and more relevant, right? As AI becomes more prevalent of like a focus and interest in the people who are behind uh, the thing that you enjoy. And to some extent, the actor, you know, obviously the director is in charge of the creative process uh, of making a film, but the actor, you know, lead actors play an important role in it too. And if it gets replaced with, oh yeah, new Ant-Man movie or something, and then nobody knows who's writing it or directing it, like, I don't know that that would be, and, and people aren't necessarily watching it because Paul Rudd's in it, but because, you know, how does it connect to, like, a future Marvel project? I don't know that it can yeah. be said that that's better, you know? That's the big, um, well, depressing element, is that writers are barely cared about it all. By... Nobody, yeah, like, how often no do you see, except it. for, like, Damn, Aaron Sorkin, maybe. Maybe. And the average person probably still doesn't know who Aaron Sorkin is. Yeah, using... yeah. If 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 it's being entirely replaced by just IP, mm. then yeah, that's a bad thing. I don't. I, I mean, I feel. I feel like although there are more IP focused movies now in terms of how they sell a movie, I don't know if I don't know if people's sensibilities have shifted in terms of if let's say 
in the 1990s, this this trend of remakes and blah, 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 if let's say it existed then, I don't know if people would be any less susceptible to it uh, in terms of like, oh, you know, just because whether or not Jackie Chan and Tom Cruise are a thing, I don't think influences how uh, susceptible people are to nostalgia uh, marketing. So I don't know if it's necessarily being replaced by that is what mm. I'm saying. Oh, nostalgia marketing is an interesting one because it seems to me like it's it's not working as much anymore. Remember Obi-Wan Kenobi? Remember how hyped everybody was getting with the uh, when they were playing Jewel yep. of the Fate? Dude, I was relatively hyped myself. I was so <laughs> hyped. I'm not even kidding, because I adore Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan, and that fucking shit was awful. I'm not going to say that I thought it was going to be good, because I didn't, but uh, wow. yeah. I was willing to give it a try, you know? And and if the people behind Andor were given full control of the Obi-Wan show, I guarantee you it would have ended up with something pretty strong. That would have been really exciting. But, oh, yeah. well, if only. They realize that no, just because it's and or buts. Oh. Nice. Actors oh, in a movie oh. doesn't necessarily mean oh. it's going to be good. So I, you know, I, I agree with this as being a trend in that direction where like just because an actor's in a movie doesn't mean it's going to sell. I think that's a good thing, personally. We're going to see the latest Stallone movie, the latest Bruce Willis movie. Uh, all people like that, they were stars that could sell films just on their star power. We don't have that anymore. And that's a fucking good thing, in my opinion. Um, and it, it's the same problem with the... Uh, you know, with, um... I would like. Okay, so here's my issue. So he's 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 explained this as an issue that he has. He goes, "You used to be able to sell movies on star power." Let me take a wild fucking guess and assume that by the end of this video, he's not going to explain why that's a bad thing. Because essentially, what he's doing right here, which is a lot of well, which is the content that I've seen from him, is he's kind of appealing to this like the past was great. Which I mean, you know, I'm I'm not saying that he has every belief that every conservative commentator that I've seen talk about things that are not movies. I'm not saying that they're all the same person, but it appeals to the same audience in the sense that like there's a lot of old people, there's a lot of people that are getting older. I'm fucking 32, right? Like I'm getting older, you know? Like I don't consider myself to be ancient, but a lot of things that people in my generation millennials are experiencing are based in nostalgia. They they're based in like, oh, you know, like I have good memories of these things in the past. It's a very like easy thing to get like sucked into. It's a very easy thing to just uncritically just accept and, and want, right? Um, but I think that there needs to be a bit more of an argument than just it was in the past and therefore it's good, right? Um, there's... The box office for uh, all people like that, they were stars that could sell... I, I want to hear him talk about why it's a bad thing that an actor doesn't draw box office numbers by being an actor alone. I want to hear him justify that, and I don't... I think in the shortest answer possible you give you is the audiences don't have as much faith in the actors being a part of something that's going to be entertaining. Which he sees as yeah, like a loss. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't see that as a bad thing. I, I, I think I, I agree with you that it would be a neutral thing, but the th the fact is, like the background, I would assume many would argue is that it's brought on by too many bad projects in a row involving all kinds of people. Like, there's no necessary pattern for the mainstream studio productions that, like, it it connects to a particular director, particular writer, particular actor. It's just all over. I mean. I'm speaking from the perspective of someone who has no issue uh, finding things that I think I will enjoy based on the people creating them. And again, it, this just goes back to like, I wish the tools are available. I have these tools. I know how to use them. I'm just trying to help people understand how That's they can also fine. use those tools to find what they want. But this still exists in, um, because mainstream is huge. There's loads of stuff going on. And the mm -hmm. idea that I could be like, I'm going to see the new James Cameron film and then be like, Jesus fucking Christ, that was terrible. Okay, Ridley Scott, what have you got? And then I see like Alien Covenant or something. It's like, oh God. And it's like, well, what else we got? Uh, you know, you run to someone and just like, okay, these aren't reliable anymore. I can't guarantee myself. Exactly. Yeah. But meanwhile, they may very yeah. well be even actors or writers or directors in uh, further indie markets that are much more reliable. And I think it's admirable 100%. to try and promote them. Absolutely. But that uh, this sentiment would still be true. Is probably what I would uh, argue what he's saying because the, the context of their conversation which, which, is all within mainstream. Okay, I don't think he's gonna do it by the end of this video. If he does, then I, you know, whatever. But like, I, I've, I've only ever heard people talk about that in the sense of this is something that doesn't happen anymore. And you know, without explaining further, we're supposed to think that that inherently because it doesn't happen anymore is why it's bad, right? But I, I you know, things change. Like, I'm sorry, like. There's, there's a lot of things that change, um, and I know change can be scary, uh, but we all have, you know, individually, societally, generationally, we all have kind of tests as to how we can accept change and how we can deal with change, how we can adapt to change, right? Like, adaptation is, you, you gotta adapt, you know, like, shit's gonna move on without you if you don't adapt, right? So, 
you can't, you, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if he ever explains why that's bad, but I've never heard an argument for it, which is why I'm not expecting it. Oh, film is just on their star power. We don't have that anymore. We don't have it anymore. Um, and it, it's the same problem with, uh, you know, with um, films in general. You know, we... we, we um, we don't want to take the risk now of inventing new things because one movies are massively expensive and so they don't want to take the risk of, of investing 200 300 million dollars on something that's completely unproven and so all they'll do is say well what's a surefire hit well i don't know star wars used to be popular let's do that indiana jones was popular let's i agree i completely agree with what you're saying right now do that you know let's just, let's just keep recycling the things that older people remember um and two we don't i've criticized this exact same thing have the, the talented writers with with really interesting life experience oh i i completely disagree we do have the talented writers in the mainstream is he ever clarifying that in in this video though all of this is in the context of the mainstream that's what russell brand introduced it as mm -hmm. okay and you with your two million almost two million fucking subscriber channel are not promoting them this is part of the and issue yeah, that i, I have i'm sorry like and to be fair he does promote mainstream writers that he thinks are good as well he doesn't yeah. like because obviously he's being hyperbolic he's not saying every single film made within you know over a 50 million budget or more uh, or 50 million uh, are all bad. He obviously, he's reviewed many that he thinks are very good and that he would promote the creators of those in those. He's just saying that the general trend that we're overwhelmingly in a bad place for mainstream writers, which, uh, you know, I, like, it's depressing, some of the stuff you discover. Like I was talking about earlier with the Marvel writers, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Um, I don't know if you've seen the comments mm -hmm. from, like, a lot of them when their projects come out and everyone hates them, like, what they end up saying. Um, the director of Secret Invasion said that... Uh, <laughs> people need to understand that when it comes to action scenes like those are mathematical there's no emotion in them and so they're kind of boring to film sometimes or straightforward anyway well yeah, absolutely yeah, batshit yeah, man. You, you don't you, <laughs> yeah. yeah what was the you thing you said about black the reception of it that like the film that because the show wasn't people didn't like it very much it was he said he's happy people don't like it because he prefer to create something that like has all kinds of reactions i think something like that yeah <laughs> Okay. But the thing is, nobody likes it. And if and if it was good, you'd say, yeah, this is a disappointing outcome because everybody likes it, and that wasn't one of yeah. I hate it when everybody want. approves of my work. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. That that that's like Lars von Trier. He's happiest when people are pissed at him. I you know what? Because Ryan Johnson said he wants troll. he wants all reactions. I see that validity to that. But the thing is, the Secret Invasion one is absolute cope because there's nobody talking about how good Secret Invasion. Nobody is. liked it. Everybody hated it. It didn't get watched by many people. It was. Complete failure and yeah. a waste of hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> a fascinating waste. Well, if and you were just like actively seeked out, like there's so many people writing so many different things, there's so many people directing so many different things. Like the type of media that you want to see exists, it's out there, and you would fucking love it. And all you would have to do is just like look for it, and you could use your platform on the internet to help to help promote it. Like I want to see Charlie Kaufman get his fucking next project out the ground. I want to see it have money. Like I want to be able to like promote whatever Kickstarter he has to do. Like. I want to see more films from the creators that I love. And I, man, like it's what he's talking about, like what he wants to see doesn't exist. And that's, it's frustrating. Like, oh man. Experiences that they can translate into to scripts. Uh, and so they don't have the ability to create new things that are really- He just says like writers are bad now. Like talent dis didn't disappear. Like whatever you think is good writing from the eighties or whatever, like, it's, it's not like people can't do that. Like you're just not promoting the people who can, right? Surely, you know, you got Russell Crowe on your channel, surely. For the record, he definitely does. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. he, like you have- enough exposure and connections to be able to promote the people that can, right? Like, you know, make your make make a fucking movie studio or something. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to do artistic. Well, yeah, and then of course it was it was a strange comic. I I assumed you may have known it. I don't know, but like he was in Canada, right? Like when you were streaming this uh, on set. I think he's just. I was not aware of that. Fair enough. Projects like my problem is time right now, and I'm trying to fix that. Um, I would like to do like actual writing shit, you know. Interesting and cool. It seems like Mark I'm trying. I'm trying to make steps towards doing that. Hamill has almost been trying to publicly. Do you have any ideas for what you want to make? Out of curiosity. I have yeah. fucking, fucking <laughs> hundreds of fucking. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. And the, the yeah. challenge is like just organizing them into a cohesive idea. I, mm. I, uh, yeah, I need to restructure what i'm doing in my life to move basically make more time for that because i i have i have like solid ideas of what i want to do and how i want to do it and i hit a roadblock of being like wait a minute but i'm trapped in this cycle of needing to do this other stuff to make money so i gotta increase the amount of money i'm making for like i've never done a sponsor right so i'm i have to start doing that basically sometime soon um so i can 
actually have enough time in my schedule to be able to properly focus on fleshing out a script and you know actually creating something okay yeah well good luck with that that's that's cool yeah yeah um yeah like what the franchise has done to the character of Luke Skywalker, that he personally feels offended and affronted by it. Sometimes it seems to me that you're driven uh, uh, by a kind of a love of narrative and story and almost like Joseph Campbell-like ideas of how a hero should function and what a story should do. Uh, I've got a few things I want to run by you. Like, I, I used to think, it's like a little hypothesis of mine, that American movie stars somehow embody how they regard, how that nation in particular, and let's face it, it's still the nation that defines our planet, uh, like how it sees itself at a particular time. Like when it was Schwarzenegger against Stallone, it was a kind of rebooted 1980s America with heft. And you realize Arnold Schwarzenegger is like not not American, really. Sorry, I mean, like he... I, I hard disagree with that. Arnold Schwarzenegger He's very American. is very American. As a, like an immigrant? He's an American citizen. He was the he governor was, of California. He, he was the governor. Of California. I know, but he's not. He couldn't. He couldn't be president. He wasn't like born there. So yeah, you're right. That the, the, the way I phrased that was improper. Well, it's just he. He's an American. Like he's an American citizen. I just. And he I. Was in I American I, political office. And he's I, hyper. I agree he, with you. In American. Okay. I agree yeah. with you. We're talking. We're doc, We're ta also talking about a period of time where he was like. Before, uh, way before I, well, he was governor, uh, right? It, like, in fact, I believe that he was an American citizen before even the first Terminator movie. I, He's been I believe he was a like years. Yeah, I believe. I, I agree that he was a citizen. I just think that it's it's a funny example with an accent that thick is what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, we're yeah, talking about like a, he has a he has an interesting accent, a very distinctive accent, but he he definitely. Yeah. But also, he, isn't he that is, awesome though? Like that he'd be seen as quintessentially American when he's so clearly not got an American accent. Like, I feel like that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Well, because he yeah. he would because uh, his uh, documentary on Netflix, which was really cool. Like he oh, talks yeah. strongly in the bodybuilding episode about how strongly he identified with American culture. Uh, that he needed to be in America. He wanted to be over in America. And I mean he. He got about as fully involved in being an American as uh, as you can get in terms of yeah. the impact on culture and, and being in political office. Governor of California, yeah, I mean, holy shit. The, the, if I were to think of like quintessentially American, I guess I would think more stereotypically American and not just an American immigrant. Uh, I get, well, about, it's like Mola said, right? Isn't that that's kind of interesting that Arnold Schwarzenegger could be considered American when in in some ways... He doesn't come across as like I guess what you would consider like a hyper stereotypical American action hero movie man. And he, um, it, though to some extent he influenced it, right, as a perception. Yeah, and as a man, he wanted to capture mm -hmm. America. He said like he's he considers himself Aus Austrian and American, and that they're like incredibly important to him as identities. And of course, what they're talking about, which I completely agree with, is he uh, the the stars of the times will represent like attitudes toward. Um, you know, from whatever particular point of view is representative of American culture, like it feels like it's um, it's self qualifies. We all we're all very familiar with him being at the top of American movies for a long time. Yeah, yeah. He he, he was the governor of Georgia eventually, but like he can't run for president. Georgia, <laughs> California, <laughs> but yeah, no, California. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, got yeah, like an insanely basically. Austrian accent, right? And Matt, That's you know, funny that I said that. Though. Uh, Adam Sandler, who I, I did a movie with, actually, and who I think is a really interesting and brilliant performer and comic. And he, like, at a time when we were starting to learn, for example, that there weren't actually weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, Adam Sandler had this kind of, oh, shucks, I didn't mean it, like, kind of mentality that aligns neatly with an America that's trying its best and erring sometimes. Now, perhaps what we have is an America... Man, it's so crazy. It's so cr A lot of the people that are doing, like, this weird, like, every, every unexpected death is caused by the vaccine shit. You know, a lot of people that are doing this are, like, using the same sort of, like feelings of like okay there were no weapons of mass destruction in, in iraq you know and it's like you're, you're taking true things where it's like okay the government wasn't you know being honest with us at this particular point in time and they're saying like okay therefore every single thing that has been approved by any sort of governmental agency is you know like bullshit like i don't know yeah I don't but know. they did put fluoride like, in our water so, so fucking watch weird. out but now my teeth the are vaccine great. is not safer than getting oh, than not that's getting how the they vaccine get you. if covid didn't exist but with COVID existing and the fact that it's so contagious that everybody is going to get it, the vaccine is safer than getting COVID. It's so insane that people are like, oh, yeah, like. Obviously, uh, we're here to talk about the <laughs> drinker and movie stuff. This is. Uh... It would it would be it would be too long to unpack if we were to it's, it's on this subject. No problem. Everyone's welcome to talk we'll as much it. about their own uh, COVID things wherever yeah. they want. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the antibodies you get, it's better if you just get COVID. It's like, but but what about what COVID does to your body? 
right? Like, it's, I'm, I can't, I can't, I can't do this right now. It's been so, it's so fucking, I can't believe how stupid the world got. COVID broke so many people's brains. COVID broke so many people's fucking brains. Like, people, people got sucked into conspiracy nonsense within the time of, like, apparently it was just such a large world event that everybody was, like, looking for some reason to consider every part about it a conspiracy. You know, like, there's some things where it's like, okay, yes, I can understand why you would believe this part about it or this part about it. But, like, the way that it's just so sucked into this, like, insane like right-wing conspiratorial culture like i just man there's it's frustrating it's frustrating and then someone's gonna look at me saying this and assume that i believe like x y and z and being like oh you're an npc you must believe this exactly and we'll say that's the part i agree about <laughs> everyone will assume your views on everything to do with anything if you say anything about anything mm -hmm. this exactly it's like you don't know my beliefs right I mean, you would if you watch my channel, because I'm very public about my beliefs, but yeah, a lot of people misrepresent those. America that doesn't know what it's trying to sell itself anymore. Trying to present a kind of ethical and moral face to the world while clearly being backed by commodity. As you say, the motivation behind these um, IPs and these franchise, these franchise movies is no one's willing to take a risk. You know, Matt Damon says... Matt Damon! Like, you know, you'd never get a Goodwill Hunting type Matt movies Damon. no more because no one will back a $30 million Matt movie like Damon. that. They need to have IP behind them. Yay. But what I want to get into just before, while we're still on YouTube... I mean, fucking Tar got funded, but... It Matt Damon actually talked about that, that like, that there was this sort of like middle ground between these massive, like, summer blockbusters and indie films. There was this sort of middle ground that is becoming harder and harder to survive and thrive in. It's like the, the destruction of the middle class. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's something that's been talked about in video, though I think, I, I think it's safe to say that the video game market is kind of rebounding in terms of a, a, a healthy middle market between big AAA yeah. games and smaller games. I was about to say, games the AA, like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, indie AA level stuff well, is really I mean, popular, there's a lot of great stuff out there. I haven't played Baldur's Gate 3, but Larian, right, they're, they're like not a huge studio, right? I don't think Larian's or, a huge well, studio, they but they're not AAA, um, but it's yeah. just like, um, it's just like Ghost Ship and Deep Rock Galactic. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, there's tons of that indie double A gaming experience that people love because they can do something and focus on making something really excellent that people you know, gravitate towards and find value in. And my drink is finished, but well, just... yeah, I like that. That's one of the reasons why I am I'm so like I am really optimistic about the gaming you know like environment. I'm very optimistic about gaming. Because it seems like it's so easy for everyone to pick up all of the, you know, the crumbly bits of where, you know, AAA level stuff is falling behind. Um, whereas, of course, as, you know, Adam has explained in the movie biz, that's not quite as well, how easy many people, and simple. How many people watched Air? Because Matt, you know, talking about, wait, Matt, oh my god, my brain, Matt, was Matt Damon in Air? I don't know why I'm thinking of that. I, I think, think he might have been right? exactly Ben Affleck, at least. Yeah, Ben Affleck was in it. Oh, yeah, Matt Damon was the lead. Sorry, my brain was yeah. frazzled there. It's Air. How many people saw Air? It was a cool movie, but I don't know how many people saw it, and that's definitely in that space. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like maybe streaming is the place where, like, those types of films can sort of end up having a place, but even then, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's, uh, but he put it pretty succinctly. It didn't make any money. <laughs> I don't, I don't, how much money did Tar cost? Ten million. What's the most expensive original IP that's been made in the past fucking like ten years? Like it sucks. I wish more original I ideas got funded. Oh, I don't know. I'd be curious to know the Speaking answer to that. Actually, yeah, twenty five yeah. million. Wow. Before we leave YouTube, so do, do bear that. That, that. that shouldn't have that shouldn't have gotten that much money because it was. I mean, maybe after thirty years you can make it back because like it got a four K Blu Ray. I'm gonna be pimping it out and I'm gonna be like talking about it and dissecting it. But I was afraid is not gonna make that money back. Tar is gonna for sure in mind drinker that we're still in a place where censorship is possible is over time how do we marry together the idea i'm sure okay this is on russell brand's official channel let's ignore the fact that we don't even get enhanced bitrate 1080p but listen to how shit the audio quality is it's like it's like 96 kilobits per second on youtube before we leave youtube so do, do bear that he's got the worst mic in mind drinker that we're it's funny he's using the mic i'm using uh yeah well however one, right? it's Maybe going it's through his thing. fucking the the out the output bit rate yeah, yeah. of his audio is shit. What's that? The Shure SM7B something like that. Yeah, I believe so. He's gonna be like honest. Me. Tar is kind of boring there in chat on your chat. True. Oh, oh, oh. Who's oh, chat? No, right? Your <laughs> chat on screen. In if the, uh, in if the I video. could just say, I'm gonna be <laughs> infinitely uh, yeah, more right. entertained okay. by Wyman's breakdown of Tar than Tar. I I agree. Sure, oh, that's God. totally fine. Oh, I, I would see here's the thing 
when I when I talk about like oh there's all these other artists creating things like I'm not just saying like the st- I know that my favorite movies are largely inaccessible to the average audience member. <laughs> uh, the types of things that I appreciate, I wouldn't recommend to everybody. It's fair. Um, yeah, it's fair. But but yeah. there's a lot of things that I watch that might not be my favorite thing. Well, you know, it would be like in my top twenty or thirty of the year. Where I watch mm-hmm. them, like, oh fuck, everybody would love this shit, you know? Like, so. By the way, I have no yeah. like big criticism of Tar. I just found it boring. I, I would actually probably defend yeah, it fine. as very well made. I, yeah, I think Tar was a really great movie, but I did find it incredibly boring and long, which uh, happens. Which, and to yeah, be fair, it just, it just flew it by for me. Flew by. Oh, I can watch it again right away. Elvis flew by. That movie flew by that's, real fast. Yeah. <laughs> that's a wacky movie. <laughs> that's a wacky movie, but I liked it. So essentially, He's if it's possible, is how do we marry together the idea that you don't want movies all to be big, buff, white movie stars? You want okay, this is the question I thought he was getting good, to. This is a good mm-hmm. question. Uh, For daughters, I want good, strong, fe- the strong female character. I'm, oh, I love how he has to like caricature that with the quotes too. I want it's worthy of caricaturing, um, though. I was gonna say, have you heard? But he means people? it sincerely, though. He means it sincerely, and he's ca- he's doing the quotes in a caricature way to kind well, of. Well, because like, the word his audience, where the word he, like, strong has been abused, right? Question. Like yeah, strong. So. When we say when we say a strong female character or male character, we're probably not referring to their physical strength in universe. Um, unfortunately, a lot of mm-hmm. people got that mixed up, and like, there's um. The newest one yeah, that I've come across. Yeah, superhero movies. <laughs> yeah, but fuck it, why not? Why can't they make, make them... We didn't have to do that before. It's not like anyone said, like, oh, yeah. Leia needs to be buff in Star Wars or that um, any of the... You know, like yeah, Black but Widow. Yeah, she also wasn't, like... like a, she was also kind of, like, the not really that important of a character in terms of, like, what she was doing in the movie. I don't know. Leia? Like, you don't think so? Leia, Wait, Leia Organa? I mean, she had, her, she had her own, like, fucking side quests and shit, but, like... Uh, what? <laughs> Side they, quest. Weren't really, um, they weren't really like. Um, yeah. I'm not a Star Wars buff. <laughs> Clearly, I know. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Um, because okay. what I was going to bring up is the uh, Quantum Mania is my next video, and behind the scenes shit like there's there's this character. Uh, I think her name was Jen Tora. She's just a like a spear wielding like tribal uh, sort of badass character in in the quantum realm. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is leading everybody and being awesome stuff, but there's like barely any character you can actually draw from here. And then the behind the scenes, she's talking about how she played a um, an Empire affiliated character in uh, Mandalorian, and of course uh, she was like, "Ah, oh, you know, it's nice to play uh, a strong female character that's on the good side." And it's just like, "Strong? Fe- Does she just mean that she's strong and she kills people? Because that's basically all you get." Which is such a fucking shame. And I'm with Russell. What can we do to fix this? How do we get the strong female characters that aren't the strong female characters? Because they can be strong. It's just like physically strong, but you prefer to be written strong. In movies, right? I do for my girls. I want them to watch films, and not always to be it's just guys and blokes. And you know, I want guys and blokes <laughs> to be diversity. But how do you marry that? What do you think is the concession that should be made to make? Mo- oh, this is a great question. I can't believe he's asking him this. Movies more, uh, for want of a better word, more diverse. Where do, where do, where do you stand on that, mate? Mike? Well, it, like, yeah, interesting point you've made there because, like, when you talk mate about the stars, of their different eras. Like the the seventies was like uh, De Niro, Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman. Like the the interesting character actors. You know, I don't know. I don't know if like saying those names is different than saying, like, Chris Pratt, you know, like, Ryan Gosling. I don't know if that's that different. Just because, like, we can look back at the 70s retrospectively Uh, and be like, yes, we know these names now because we're in, like... Is it really that different than just naming off, like... I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, Drink is about to go into talking about what those characters represented, not necessarily that they were uh, able to sell films on their own. That might be a yeah. I mean, like even so, like you, I would say Ryan Gosling and Joaquin Phoenix, and you know, there's there's tons of great character um, actors today too. Because I find this part really interesting in terms of what does it tell you about the state of what people want to see in like leading characters, and that um, a lot of mm-hmm. people make the point, and uh, I'm not sure where you stand on it, but that lately we feel a little identityless in terms of trends or preferences for cinema. Like we're all over the place. Uh, especially with the destruction of like the superhero dominance. Yeah, we're in a transitionary period. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily think that's a bad thing, though. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's fair. Big name actors of today, like that's such so weird. 
know, the 80s was the big buff muscle men. It was the time of like American confidence. We're going to kick ass. We're going to dominate. Uh, we're going to do awesome. The we're going to get this Aust Austrian man <laughs> to give us the American confidence. 90s. Yeah, yeah why not? Part of America. That's part of being American. Wow. Anyone can mm -hmm. even become like, American. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, ambiguous, like slightly more uh, vulnerable heroes. The 2000s was very much reflective of the war on terror. So there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, military themed stuff. There was a lot of uh, thrillers. There was a lot of uh, secret agent things going on. Uh, and then, yeah, you look at now, there's nothing. We just, I literally just said there ain't no movie stars. I don't know if he knows what question he was asked because I was very excited to hear him. Like, so Russell Brand clearly asked, like, hey, I want to see more representation in films. You're calling out things in a way where it's like, okay, there's clearly some sort of agenda being pushed on people and movies are bad now because there's no good characters, blah, 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 blah. What if, what if it's better that it's not just buff white men as stars in movies and I have two daughters and I want to see them represented in movies and I want them to grow up and know that they're represented and maybe it's not just white people. He's went on a giant tirade of just listing what was popular in each decade without having answered the question. Let's see if he does. Because... Because he does, right? Eventually, Drinker gets onto that question. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was going to say, like, I just have no idea what, what he was talking about. Well, so because, th this was prompted uh... by Russell talking about how Adam Sandler and characters like him represented that era, and Drinker's gone through seventies, eighties, nineties to now. Because he was, this is the thing. He was genuinely interested by what Russell said, and he wanted to build on it. That's all that happened. Okay. Like, the country doesn't even know what it is now. It's in a conflict of, of uh, identity. Uh, so I think, that's, yeah, it's a, a self-evident point of, like, it doesn't even know what it wants to be anymore. So that's that's kind of really sad to see because we always, you know, as a Brit, I always looked up to America as, like, the model of the world. Like, Okay, I, I thought that I was going to watch this whole thing should. and not, like, come off too hard on, on Critical Drinker. Like, I'm pretty open to, like, other political perspectives and other, like, I don't believe in free will. I believe that, like, both of these people, all of you watching at home, are just people that are products of your environment, right? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't have any like ill will towards anybody like you know like I I'm pretty loosey goosey easy going right <laughs> he didn't answer the question <laughs> this is the country that leads us the free world um but yeah when it comes to, to Marion what you talked about thank this, you go ahead or like the the um rather than just having straight white guys as like the movie stars how do we how do we include um people of different genders ethnicities all that stuff I guess what I would say hey we did it 20 30 40 years ago we just didn't make such a big deal out of it like we have Oh man. Like, okay, I get it. I get it. Like, it when when what was it? Jennifer Lawrence? Who who said this shit? Where like they were like, I am the first female. I'm glad you're aware of that quote because it was so fucking cringe. <laughs> it was so dumb. <laughs> Main character. Like, if you want to respond to stupid shit like that, yes, call, you know, bring up Ripley. Ripley from the Alien series. Like, everybody brings up Ripley. I get it. There are strong female characters. There are female directors who have been making movies for a while. There are, you know, female writers who have been writing uh, movies for a while. You know, like there there has been representation of different genders different races there has been that technically right but it seems like a lot of people are taking issue with that being like a little bit more representative of the actual population in the slice of the pie right where like yes you can take examples from history and say yes this has happened there are good examples of this you know it's not like this hasn't happened before i completely agree whereas like the the, the argument towards like oh including a bit more representation is saying you know there's it's women <laughs> women are actually the majority of society which i'm gonna i'm gonna have my like most fucking red pilled fucking sexist based take here and i'm gonna say like hey uh -oh. you can't complain about anything politically if you're the majority vote okay Canceled. yeah women put your shit together uh, yeah um, you are empowered what i will say uh, it sounds like the point you're making now in response is the okay sure we could have the ripley's and sarah connor's but don't you think we should have a hell of a lot more than just the selection people will reference it's it's not even it's not even to suggest that I want there to be more, but to try and uh, explain why there are attempts being made by people in the industry to include more, which seems to be, you know, depending depending on the reviewer, uh, depending on the person uh, talking about movies, a lot of criticism is not necessarily like oh the the representation was. Uh, included and it was also a bad movie a lot of it is under the lens of the representation in of itself being attempted in the film is the bad part um which is the impression i get from maybe not every critical drinker video but like it's it's uh we'll we'll hear him answer this question in this video and this is the question that he gets asked twice mm -hmm. and his his takeaway from it or at least what i remember and I, I listened to it like twice so i'm pretty sure i have a good memory of this is he, he phrases it in a way where he's essentially saying 
that it's a problem that needs not to be addressed and that uh, because there has been good representation of women uh, in the past and that uh, nobody made a big deal out of it when it happened, that therefore uh, attempts to try and make women or insert minority here, therefore attempts to make them more represented at all is uh, like a useless and not correct thing to do or uh, like a something that needs not to be fixed, which, you know, the more I think about it, like with him in that perspective, it, it, it seems kind of incompatible with his other content because true, uh, you know, the, the, yeah, because because the the way he it's not talks his about position. how well, but well, I I mean, if it's not, then but, fine. Um, I don't but, blame you I at mean, all. But let's, let's hear him. Let's hear him talk in the interview because that's what I'm basing sure. his so, position off. Sure. So so far, um, what I've gathered, and we can roll it back, but if you want, Russell asked him, "What's the solution then? If we're not going to be, if we're going to be critical of all these strong female women, you know, all the buff ones that don't have characters, what are we to do?" And Drinker says, we cracked this already. We know what to do. The formula is right over there. And he's referring to the strong characters that we've had before that are female. Obviously, there's a fucking laundry list. Now, the impression I got then from you was that you were like, yeah, sure, that's the formula. But don't you think we should be getting more of them? We don't have enough of them. Which I actually think is a fair thing to say in response. But that that's not necessarily something Drinker even disagrees with. He's simply saying... We don't need to solve the problem of better written female characters as some kind of new and innovative idea. We've got it already. We know how to do it. We've known how to do it forever. It's embarrassing that we've managed to regress somehow. And by the way, I think you would agree with this. We've regressed on male characters as well. Like, we've regressed on character writing as a whole. Yeah, in general. Uh, in Mainstream you know, studio, studio productions. Films, yeah. But um, I, I would like to... Um, I would like to if possible, uh, save the majority of, of this conversation for the second time that it's asked, because yeah. the critical drinker gets asked this exact same question closer to the end of the uh, video, because I, I guess uh, Russell Brand wasn't satisfied with his answer either. Yeah, um, no problem. And he, he does add like an extra bit to, to his answer that I, I feel is more reflective of why I uh, am interpreting his answer in that way um so yeah, yeah sure okay so i'm gonna give i'm gonna give one to the, i'm gonna give one to the mras here okay like women are the majority vote so you can't complain about anything that you vote on right <laughs> half serious but like come on i mean it's it's what i'm saying here is there's a difference between something existing in the past and having like clear examples of it versus the conversation of taking an issue with it because it's happening more often right let's see what he says have to do now and, and that's the thing that annoys people that's the thing that turns people off when you make the identity of the main character the main actor the sole focus of everything people are just like well why are you making such a big deal of this why, why should i care about this they used to just do it okay here's an interesting perspective you see how he, caught, he just said they used to and he's referring to how they used to write the characters instead of the, the fact that they exist at all yeah yeah what if what if we were to say that although it is stupid if the identity of the main character or you know, their inclusion in a film and, you know, like Disney goes like, this is the first gay character or whatever. Or like, I'm I'm a superhero. That's a woman. And like, this is why you should care about me. What if we agree that that's stupid? But we also say, but we also say that that is essentially also something that has happened in the past with white men, but you just haven't noticed it. What, what if we also what if we say that that's stupid, but we also say that, like, there are movies that are like if you found any examples of like characters from the 80s that are sort of celebrated just for being a white man or something like that i think drinker would agree with you that that's that's retarded mm -hmm. ridiculously white and ridiculously but like, wait, wait, like is it is it fair to say that like the you know a lot of like mainstream films that people don't really often attribute to in that way are just like a normalized version of that like you know, like what is you know what is James Bond, or like we were just talking about how you know Arnold was embodying this whole like American culture thing. Like he talked very heavily about like how stars and the media landscape was like supporting this type of identity and culture. Like, is that not like kind I of mean, American that? culture? Like, obviously, it spreads far further than any white man. Um, and I would go as far as saying that James Bond has an extensive character history that is part of why people don't like the new ones is that they're getting it wrong, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just about being well, a yeah, white I mean, man. Yeah, like specific generations of 
James Bond. Yeah, uh, but like, very... <laughs> as a James Bond enjoyer, <laughs> they're, like, they're I love the character, like and movies. I don't associate James Bond with, like, he's only good because he's a white man, or, or that he's, that's his characteristics, oh. you know? Yeah, when I, when I say, okay, I think it's important to recognize that in order to, in this generation of films, um, and perhaps this will get better as time goes on, as it gets more, uh, like, I guess, normalized, but in this generation of films, it's nearly impossible to include any kind of minority character in prominent ways without it feeling like it's being political. Um, whereas, like, you look further back in time in the, the landscapes of film, like, you could argue that it's just as political for there to have, <laughs> for a black person not to have even been allowed to be a main character, essentially, before, like, fucking, like, uh what was it night of the living dead was like a huge fucking con controversy it was like a stepping stone of just like oh you just have like a black main character who's not a the yeah, main if, character um... because he's black he was just like a regular guy right like in in the same sense that some that a decision in that direction can be considered political i would argue that it's also political to not have that decision made that it is inherently political in the other direction that we just don't consider it to be that so uh, obviously the, this would be something you could theoretically discuss with them, but I assume this is kind of the argument you would lay out. So we can have the motivation to create art and then the art itself. And of course, the he would tell you, or he believes fully, that when your motivations are so like, as they describe in a lot of these behind the scenes stuff, like, oh, we can't wait to have the first female villain in Star Wars, which is how they kept describing Captain Phasma, doesn't have characteristics yeah. at all. And in her interview, she keeps talking about how amazing her character is, and no one has any clue what it is. And it's like, it's such a shame, because they thought, first and foremost, that she's a woman, and that's good enough, and we're going to promote her that way. That's terrible. If we had the equivalent, where they said, uh, you know, in the 60s, 70s, whatever, that, like, we're going to have a whole cast of white men, and then they're like, don't, don't you think you should have characters? And then they're like, nope, they're white men, and that's going to be, that's going to be, we're going to celebrate it as a big cast of, that would be awful, too. But ultimately, I mean, that, that is essentially what happened for a long period well, of time. Well, so I was about to say the second <laughs> like, half of that, it was though, considered controversial for like black people to. Second half of that would be that the art itself could still be really strong. So the equivalent for that could be that that film full of white men, as they motivated in the like mm -hmm. shady rooms where they produce it all, turns out the film is amazing, and it's irrelevant to the fact that they're white men. It's all about mm -hmm. the writing that's amazing. And then in the same vein, uh, I think Drinker concedes in this interview at some point. There are films he may describe as woke, how he defines it, but also really strong. And I think Arcane was the example he gave, uh, where mm -hmm. someone could have been motivated behind the scenes of Arcane to be like, we need a lesbian main character, and we need several women main characters, and that's what I care about, and then someone else yeah. writes them. Do you, do you think that it is... Um, what, what, what is your perspective on like categorizing that as woke? Because I don't like, typically is it purely just because there's like a lesbian character in it, even if you're not saying that it's bad because it's woke, like a critical drinkers argument, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty sure it's accurate. He's saying it's good despite being woke. I'd Would have you to say that that's like at all. Like every time I come across anybody it, using that word, I have to ask them what they mean by it. I don't because like, yeah, it's yeah, so it fucking really buzzwordy been, at this point. I have no I, idea. I, <laughs> I, I, I get that, but I feel like in the, the context at, at which Critical Drinker has used it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, like for him, something woke appearing in a movie is essentially like, oh, you put this in for a political agenda or you put this in for representation politically, right? Um, I'm wondering if we could ever reach a point where a lesbian char a character could just be in a show without it being perceived as woke because they exist in a show, right? That's a part of my criticism. Is that makes a lot I, of sense. I feel and... like... I don't know what he would say to that necessarily, and he might say to you, because, like, um, we love a lot of media on, like, like I was going to say Bly Manor would be another one, right? That's a lesbian lead. Is, uh, mm -hmm. is that woke? Because you would automatically assume in this day and age that they would have pushed for that, and then the writing comes after it. If that's an assumption he has, or he has proof of it, either way, I would call it cynical. Um, because it mm -hmm. may be true, and you may be able to find proof of that being the case. Like, behind Arcane, they say, oh, we knew we had to have women at the forefront. We knew we had to have a gay woman at the forefront because that is what is important. And and then the writing came after. That would be unfortunate, and if that fits his definition, then I guess that fits his definition. And, and, and the, the, feel... where the despite comes in, I guess, would be that he's focused on trying to explain that that should not be your foundation for creating a story, in the same vein that... You shouldn't be like, we have to create set pieces for explosions. We have to create all these opportunities for white men to be on the screen. You know what I mean? Like any kind of 
uh, agenda, but he, he believes that that's the most prominent and uh, arguably like damaging one in Hollywood right now. Do you do you feel as though it's possible that uh, a wide variety of movies, especially historically, maybe not as much today, but that there are people and have been cre people creating movies where it is important for them for the main character to be white, but it's not seen as, as much of a political statement, and they might not even materialize those thoughts in their own consciousness because it's not seen as a subversion, and it's already kind of seen as like, oh, this is just a thing that I can do, right? Whereas, like, they never even wrestled with the idea of a character being a different gender or a different race. They just want the character to be white and male, not because of any sort of supremacist reasons, but because they it's important to them that that's the type of experience that they're trying to uh, reflect in their films, right? Like, I feel like that same thing does exist uh, for people of varying genders, races, gender, uh, you know, gender identities. Um, but it's the problem is like it's only necessarily seen as political if it's one that is <laughs> against what is traditionally known as the norm right and i feel i feel like i i want to push back against people that are trying to um or at least jumping the gun or uh, misattributing uh films that they shouldn't be as things that are trying to force like a political agenda when most people creating art you know if they're creating art, <laughs> that is, uh, are doing so because they want to express something, right? I don't know. Yeah, well, and as you know, I feel like we've gotten a plethora in this day and age of evidence that they are using non-normalized uh, race and gender, I suppose, to promote um, their films and media. And it's like gross and weird a lot of the time. It'd be like, you've got to see this because it's doing do this mean? and it has this. So like uh, a lot of the time with like Marvel films or even Disney films or whatever, in the promotional material, they'll be like, this film has uh, seven people of color in it. And that's why you should see it. It's just like, what the fuck? Like, wh why aren't you? Yeah, I, I don't think that that's like a good reason to. What I'm suggesting is that that's if, why unless, it would be. Like, the identity matters to you, I guess. But that's why it would be on people's minds compared to the times of old where I don't think you'd find many interviews where they're saying like, we've got them white men in there. So you've got to see it. Like, it's yep. much more prominent. I, I know exactly what you mean. I think that there's a handful uh, a non-zero, a notable amount of films that do exist that don't do that marketing bullshit, but still get incorrectly misattributed as being woke or political merely because of just the gender or race of a character or the prominence of the gender or race. Yeah, and or I think that would make for a character. really good question for Drinker. Is, uh, is it possible that Arcane isn't good despite being woke it's just good it doesn't have to have anything to do with what but it would depend on his definition yeah, it's not even woke <laughs> yeah exactly and Maybe. <laughs> like, obviously if russell asked it we may have got an answer but it's, it's a brief interview yeah. at best great and ridiculously male in a way where like it parades that as an identity but you haven't noticed it and you haven't criticized it what if we say that both of those things are stupid what if we say that both of those things are stupid without having to make a big deal out of it. When we talk about the great female characters in cinema, we have characters like Ellen Ripley. She was an alien from the seven. It's funny that I can, it's funny. <laughs> it's, I said Ripley before he did because it's like, it's the, ex it's, it's like one of the, exact. like there are so few that you know exactly which ones they're going to say. And this is like part of the, this is part of the argument, right? Like, it's like before he says anything, you can say Ripley, right? Like, you know, like, and it's not to say that Ripley. I thought you said it was a good example. It is, but there's very few, and so if it depends on it depends on how he's answering the question, and we're going to get clarification, more clarification for this the second time it's asked. So, in my perspective, uh, he's answering the question uh, in a kind of way to say, like, "Oh, yeah, well, this is an issue that doesn't need to be addressed because there's been Ripley, because there's been Sarah Connor, because there's been uh, Trinity, and all these examples that he lists from the past. Whereas I would argue against that saying like, okay, well, the issue isn't that there hasn't been any strong female characters. Um, it's just people are trying to make that more representative and it's not necessarily a bad thing if people are, if people creating art wish to portray uh, more women in films, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't take away from there being men in, you know, films, I guess like me maybe they're like if you look at the total number of projects i guess the number of men in films go down but like it's not like you can't watch the same types of things that you're you're looking for if there are more women in in films right so we have a disagreement on what his intentions are in terms of how he's answering this question and that's why i guess we're gonna have to wait for the second time because he, he 
he right. adds to it and he makes it a bit more to clear, run the so. um the alternate would be that russell says how do we solve the writing good characters he references one of the greatest female characters of all time is like we did this we cracked it all the way back in the 70s that would just be the simple I, I seriously think that's exactly what he's saying it's just the same formula the way she's written write all women characters take them seriously respect them have them be layered simple as that yeah yeah, I, I'm also kind of like anti formula. I don't think that that. I don't think one would one say that. Right, like a. It's not like all we're gonna get is exactly what Ripley is. He means like the approach, the discipline. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I just work. think that at no, like he, he doesn't. We'll we'll wait until the second time he's okay. he's answered the question because right. yeah, Ripley's a bad character. I love Ripley. She's she's logical. She's like commanding and like confident and like like she's a great like what Maternal. a great fucking character. I love Ripley. She's like something that I really love about the Alien franchise. But the fact that like you know when when people are having these conversations about like oh you know like maybe there should be some more women in movies and you're like Ripley like it, it, it's the top of every reddit thread like it's it's a really basic bitch thing to say like i'm sorry like it's it's like the most obvious thing it's the most obvious thing and like that's why i said it is because it's still a completely it's a valid popular example right? there's also just yeah. a completely valid answer that answers the question i don't think i buy into this whole like if you I... can't name more than ripley it somehow diminishes the answer when it's true no no because he's he's like the the it depends on what question you're answering which is why i said like yeah, well then it if, wouldn't be about if ripley question, if you're responding to if you're responding to Jennifer Lawrence saying, I am the first female hero or whatever, like, fuck that shit. Yeah, obviously, tell her about Ripley and all these other people. But if the question he's being asked is like, hey, I have two young daughters. What sort of, like, how, how do you reconcile with your beliefs about, um, you know, like, wokeness and inclusion in Hollywood? What sort of things would they be able to watch? And then you start listing movies from the 80s that are, like, almost exclusively horror science fiction that, you know... But I, so I don't, you, that doesn't really answer the question. Sorry, you genuinely that, believe we have a right now on what he's saying, I guess. You genuinely believe right now the drinker uh, believes himself. He's been asked to name what characters can inspire women, and he's like fucking Ripley from the seventies. There you go. Like, do well, you, he's kind of. Do you not think yeah, at mean, this it, point it, that it's already potentially possible that he's definitely not talking about that? Instead, talking about writing discipline. I. This is this is why I would like to wait for okay. a second. Uh, time he's asked this question because we have a, a we have a disagreement on how we're interpreting what they're talking about because like it's everybody everybody said it you know like that's a part of the conversation you know that's, that's before i was even born they, they got this right sexism is no more because ripley is existing yeah you know? that's not even i don't know it's what that yeah. no, i have pretty that. nuanced takes on gender, gender identity, and, you know, like, gender-related issues. I think that, like, each gender has their own struggles, you know? Like, there's no, like, oh, all men are bad or all women are bad. Like, you know, we're just people. Most people are shit. You know, if you have a bad experience with somebody, you know, if you have a bad experience with, like, the type of gender you're attracted to and you're not, like, socially involved with them all the time and your only interactions are your bad dates, then you might think all men are bad. Or you might think all women are bad. You know, like, turns out most people are just kind of shit. I don't know about that. You know, it's not, it's not exactly gendered. Turns out most people are kind of shit. Yeah. It, it, hey man, I mean, <laughs> like, no, that's just, your uh, I, I don't, experience. I don't know. I don't. I don't agree with that. Do you know most people? Oh my so god! You know they're shit. True. Surround yourself with no. good people. Surround yourself with people that you like. Surround yourself with people that get you. People that understand you. People that accept you. People that don't judge you. Right. Surround yourself with those people. Don't don't think that like an entire gender is like bad. You know. I get it. I get it. Or an entire race. You know. You've got Sarah Connor from the 80s. Again, fantastic. Damn, did I mention both of those before he did? <laughs> fantastic. Actually, is one of you in the comments mentioned Sarah Connor. I don't know if I said that out loud. Hero, fantastic. What? It's like it's like the most obvious. This is, oh man, like I'm trying. Don't you think there's value as well, oh, even dude. in your interpretation, that he's appealing to people people recognize, as opposed to if he started naming characters yeah. from things you don't even know about? Yeah. Yeah, but it but it all depends on what question he's answering and how he's answering it well, but you're like, right now taking to, issue with just, choosing ripley and sarah specifically not that you're that he's got two examples i mean yeah he he's listed the the obvious ones yes uh, yeah my suggestion is it, the, it, 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 and the, the the issue the issue comes with how we've interpreted the question and the answer but we're we're not going to be able to hash it out until okay. the second time i'm sorry not to be like a drama horse but we can we can listen to this whole thing and keep it all in like in my... uh, it's there i think there is some i think that a lot of criticism against the critical drinker is overblown i think that there's a lot of people that know that they want to hate him but can't articulate why and can't really articulate why they don't like him 
And I don't agree with it. I think there are legitimate criticisms to make against him. I don't think that he's like a bad person. I don't think he's a piece of shit. I think that he's a person just viewing media the way that he views media. And and like, you know, whatever makes sense to him is going to make sense to him. You know, I don't think that it's coming from any sort of malicious perspective. But I'm, you know, I'm going to say why I disagree at the very least. Or character really interesting. You had Trinity from the Matrix from the 90s. Like, they, they got all this stuff right. They just didn't feel the need to make that the sole focus of these characters. They were interesting characters, first and foremost. Whether they were female, whether they were women, or sorry, whether they were uh, black, white, whatever, it didn't matter. That the, the, the main focus was that they were a well-written character. That's the difference. That's what we can't do now. See? Isn't that it? He's, well, he, I mean... He said their main focus was they were well-written characters. We can't do that now. that's what we can't do now, and Russell Brand is, like, asking him, like, but surely yeah. that clarifies yeah, the confusion. Well, there, we'll we'll wait for the second time. We'll wait for the second time. I'm sorry. Do you do, okay? Here's my question. Do you think that like part of the perception of them making that a big deal is to do with how people are reacting to it? Because I think from a marketing perspective, I think that they were thinking like pretty much the exact same things in terms of representation, in terms of like you know like Mulan, like they were. They were trying to go for the Asian market. They were trying to go, for, you know, there, there's definitely stories where they created female characters and they were intention of the writers was to be, hey, let's make a story with female characters to try and, you know, make a movie for the female market. And that's going to be our selling point. That's going to be our advertising point. Right. It's not like that didn't exist in the 90s or the 80s or whenever you, you know, your idealist version of cinema is. It's that a lot of people didn't freak out about it as much. Right. Yeah, but I think part of it goes to the quality of how those characters and those movies were written, right? Well, that's going to be Drinker's point, but we're um, waiting for the clarification, I assume. Yeah. And so, so you look at, like, this weird backlash culture, and you, I think it's important not to mistake the amount of people criticizing it for the actual intent of the writers and the producers, right? Like, I think that that existed in the 80s, in the 90s, like, etc. Like, I, like, for sure, there were people in Hollywood and, and writers and directors that were trying to be representative of a culture. They were trying to be woke or whatever you want to call it, right? Like, it's not like that didn't exist. Like, like, this is such a weird thing to say, right? It's just there's more people talking about it in a not just critical way, but in a very narrowly critical way where people are essentially, like, parroting a lot of other talking points and people are essentially, you know, giving a lot of... Uh, it's like a feedback loop. Is, is that the term I'm looking for? Like, I think that that can cause people to believe that maybe it wasn't a thing that happened in the past, but, like, it's all there, right? Like, if the movie Mulan was, like, a, a thing that got released today, everybody would be like, oh, so you're trying to make a movie with an Asian female character and she's playing a man and it's trans or whatever. Like... Um, I don't disagree that there would be people reacting that way in many ways, but it's mm -hmm. worth keeping in mind, obviously, the new one came out, people despised it, and a lot of the videos were focused around how good it the was original was. It was also a remake. <laughs> no, yeah, but it could have been good. There's nothing stopping it from being good, necessarily. Like... Theoretically, I'm, I'm saying if the Mulan was released today independently of it being released, what I'm saying, like, I'm saying if Mulan didn't exist, I think right? that if I, Mulan, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that these people wouldn't also admit that Mulan was a good movie from the 90s. I just think that people perceive it differently because we have a, a warped perspective of like what intentions are. Whereas I, I'm saying the Disney Mulan film from the 90s is something that could very well have been just as political in its intentions, just as like, oh, we're trying to have more representation. We want to get this market. Uh, we want to see this people represented in this way. It, it very well could come from the exact same intentions as the filmmakers. I think what blows it out of proportion and why it's such a huge issue right now is not necessarily that it's a thing that's happening, but the fact that we have the internet and movie studios have really cringe marketing on the internet in a way, like, a lot of the times you don't see this shit in the trailers, right? Even for these current movies, like, the the way that these these uh, identities are paraded around is not even necessarily from, like, the primary marketing. It's coming from, like, the Twitter accounts. It's coming from, like, the news articles, right? right? So this is, this is, like, the whole clickbait culture is a very new thing. And I think that that's part of why it seems like it's happening more in this way from the intentions of the filmmakers. Whereas I'm arguing... This exact same thing could have been taking place and very well probably was, but we just didn't have fucking clickbait articles and we didn't have Twitter accounts. And so the 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 viral marketing aspect of it is mainly what to criticize and not necessarily the inclusion of characters in the film or the even the intentions of the writers as they inc include those characters in the film. So with regard to the original animated film, if it was to release today, brand new, no other context, 
there would be plenty of people saying it is woke and it is an allegory for trans stuff they're trying to shove, blah, 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 blah. But I actually think that it would be an easy win over for most of the culture to agree that Mulan is pretty damn good. And it would be because of the character writing. Mm -hmm. That's what people would argue. And then it's, yeah. I guarantee you Drinker would I have argued that in that alternate timeline, that it was really good. I think, I, th I think that most people, even if like there can be conversations on you know whether or not a movie is trying to be woke or whether or not the marketing is trying to be woke i think that most of the outrage just comes from like the marketing and even like before the movie's released for a lot of films like you know there, there's plenty of plenty of films that one would incorrectly attribute or perceive as woke that just wind up being good movies and then like it, it's you know most people just don't give a shit so or i just, don't know. Um, it just seems like an overblown i would reassure you kind of thing. somewhat that um there is cringe on, on every side in terms of a film comes out and everyone like runs wild with a particular yeah. interpretation of blah 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 but there's a oh, lot yes. of pushback within those spheres themselves like uh you know a lot of people thought arcane was absolute shit and drink would have been one of the people to push back on it you have the um mm -hmm. dead space which we got a big old blast of they made a woman look bizarrely older and breasts were reduced in size and people went fucking nuts saying it wasn't hyper woke they and made a woman what they reduced her breast size uh, from the What'd original to the remake. That? Oh, they, they made a woman older. Yeah, oh. they what they did, uh, they had a, <laughs> a, a... Well, they, they it's... um We're in the age of, like, mocap and stuff is becoming prominent, so they had a character in the game be played by her voice actress, uh, Tanya Clark, who was 51. Um, oh. And in the original, and... her character was uh, seemingly younger than Which that. Which character? And, Nicole? Nicole, yeah. Yeah, Nicole. Yeah. Wow. I never played the remake. You should. That's it's funny. really fucking good. Um, Play the remake. It's really good. Highly recommend it. And so you got that, and there's... there's uh, is it, like, is it, is it, like, a that much worth playing if I've played the first one? A it's bunch better of than the first one. I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I adore the first Dead oh, yeah. Space. The remake is better. Are there, like, more is... levels? Is it, like, the more... Ishimura the is one the big connected. interconnected yeah. ship now. It's really fucking cool. I mean, of course, no loading? Just, uh, lo uh, well, the soon. tram is the hidden loading. The tram. Yeah. yeah. Train, but, yeah. Okay. but like a lot but, more yeah, of it yeah. is interconnected than in the and original game. And then of course game. there's just yes. the vibe and atmosphere is uh, improved pretty considerably by new technology. It's got incredible lighting, amazing like yeah. visual. Atmosphere is top uh, notch. Great sound design. And uh, there's okay. a lot of cool additions to the story as well that improve it. Yes. Uh, Nicole gets a lot more material. The fact that Isaac can talk is really beneficial because we get to understand how he feels about the things that are going on and he gets to interact with the characters. Yeah, it's, Gunnar uh, Wright plays Isaac in the remake. It, so it's, 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 uh, it's whereas like Resident Evil 4 remake is a different game to the original uh, and there's value in playing both. I still think there's also value in playing both of the Dead Space games, but if you only mm -hmm. if you only had one to play, it would be the remake. I would recommend yeah. the remake. And uh, yeah, and so okay. the, the reason I bring it up, of course, is that's one of several examples, including stuff like, um, what were the, was, did Resident Evil 4 remake it hit for Woke as well? Uh, yeah, I think people, yeah, because they thought that Ashley wasn't attractive some enough. People, yeah. yeah, some people thought that Ashley wasn't attractive enough, which is fucking So they bizarre. turned her into a mouse. And so we've got that, True, mouse and yeah. God of War Ragnarok, and then, like I said, Arcane and uh, some other stuff, where uh, Drinker has come out and said, like, all of these are excellent, and that there's no need for criticism mm -hmm. of that regard, that's, like, ridiculous. And so what I guess I'm trying to say is that these kinds of fights against the more insane, sort of, like, jumping to conclusions, I think happens in literally all of these different communities that are currently popular for uh, seeing a film in a particular angle. And by the way, this applies to everyone. And so... Like, you know, uh, you don't need to be told this, because I know you're, you're aware of it from how people can speak about you or whatever, but just try to avoid lumping him in with, with any bigger group of maybe thinking something crazy about a particular piece of media. Yeah. Like yeah, Mulan, I, I, for example. I think I make a lot of... Yeah, I think I make a lot of clarifications or, you know, I, throughout the stream, I'm, like, trying actively not to, even if, mm -hmm. you know, it's not... Sure. 100%. It, it has more to do with the reaction, right? Than, I mean, it was a thing that got remade, did it? Yeah, 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 I know. But it has more to do, with, like, in terms of, like, what you're trying to claim is the intent of the filmmakers. It's not like that wasn't present in other films. Like, I you, could argue, you could argue Keep that playing. the films of the I'm 80s, fun. 70s, 90s, or whatever, any films that you love that were, like... How does he watch so many films that can if he's going to pee like, every hour? Have to I don't know. Go for all the short ones. I know, when I go to the theater, I do not, like, Buy a soda, bring a drink, anything like that. I'm like, nope, because I know I'm gonna have to get up and pee. Mm -hmm. 
Pro America. Oh, you, you just gotta schedule it better, right? Make sure you get one big old piss before you go to the theater. I always do, but still, you know, sometimes there's always one, you know, lined up. There's always a pee ready to go. Second string, uh, pissaroony. Well, sometimes I mean, that's just if, if you're worried that that's the case, when you get to the cinema, you just gotta go again, right? Just in case to get the last little. little sure, triplets. but like an hour, yeah. an hour and a half later, I might have to pee again because that's just. You know, that's how it works. I mean, yeah, I guess. Some bladders <laughs> some bladders are different. Some bladders are different. I just I drink a lot of water. I got I gotta pee, you know? Fair enough. Muscle. You know, like I'm muscle, I'm gun, police, whatever. Like, those are all equally politically and culturally and racially motivated in terms of like what the Sometimes, filmmakers decided was marketable. But, what they decided people wanted to see, right? Like, you could make the same arguments of like, oh, you're trying to represent this for political reasons. You can make those exact same arguments to the films that you love. Right? You can make those exact same arguments. There's going to be... Um, every, there's there's going to be something behind every decision that's made, for sure. But of course, the mm -hmm. categories of uh, how egregious those decisions might be is going to be different for everybody. Um, I, you know, like if someone or, said... Or how much how much it's noticed, right? Because I, I think it's easier to notice something when it's not considered the norm or it's not considered familiar, right? It's more of, it's inherently more of a political statement if it's going against the grain. Otherwise, you're just doing what people are doing. Um, sure, but right? of course, like the, as we went over before, it feels like that's just like absolutely and thoroughly plugged into the marketing now versus when it, before where I, I just, I didn't hear the equivalent of that for a lot of stuff growing up in the 90s. Yeah, because we didn't have fucking clickbait in Twitter. <laughs> they they had marketing. They it's they like, knew what what would they market oh, films I mean, on? It'd be like it would be like movie yeah, stars. Movies. It would be the events themselves. Let's, let's go get some fucking like microfiche newspaper slides or whatever. Let's go to the library and see if <laughs> we can find some articles about like them being like, oh, the diverse cat. You know, like they were celebrating the Lion King being like an African story. You know, they were celebrating that that portraying the culture of Africa in the marketing before that came out. Like it was. It existed. It existed for sure. I'm not going to say it's non-existent. It just wasn't it wasn't Twitter, and it wasn't like we don't have like this weird, like self-feeding uh, outrage culture, right? Like we we just we don't have algorithms that are incentivizing us. Uh, we we didn't in the '90s. We didn't have algorithms that were incentivizing us into just saying the most like fucking provocative thing or engaging with content that actively makes us angry, right? So like a lot of a lot of marketing nowadays, I feel is intentionally being provocative and intentionally being things that they think people will get mad at because people share it, right? I think that's the biggest difference in terms of like... Well, but you know, the, the wouldn't that still then be indicative of, of a like, change of time and that's why people are reacting to it? They Like, if it's all self-fulfilling? Yeah, but that's less to do with the movies and more to do with just the technology and the type of marketing that we have, right? I mean, the marketing's got to be considered alongside the studios that make the movies, and so it's all a big package. Even if it's caused by our jump in technology and... The interest in clickbait and exaggerations it's like well that would still all be a part of the culture of, that's worth criticizing from the point of view of several different people including drinker sure i i just think that you know i i i think that uh what we just discussed is a more uh detailed well because what you've uh, talked about is they have incentives to do so but that's still choices they are making yeah yeah i just don't think that that should be confused with like necessarily the movies themselves or even the intent of the writers creating the film because a lot of films a lot of films especially in the 70s and 80s and 90s were kind of propaganda and that's not to say that they're bad movies right like that's gonna go over really badly with a lot of people because the word is very spicy but um it really that's gonna be a semantics thing it just depends on how you define it and how it's used it's 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 literal it's true I mean, uh, depending on the film, I'd be inclined to completely agree, but it's such a... Like, I think that's going to come across really insane to a lot of people because they'd rather call it something like persuasive mind. storytelling as opposed to... Or some kind of, you know, some other word because propaganda is too closely associated with, like, war and way higher shit for a lot of people. Well, but I get what you're saying. I mean, we can pull up a definition, but I don't mind if people <laughs> think that that's a weird word to use because I, I don't think it's untrue. Well, like I said, I'm pretty much in agreement. I just think that semantically people okay. are going to get like, what?
Like a lot of these films were, you know, what? have you noticed like the, the trends of like what race the villains were? Have you noticed like when they- Well, yeah, so to make people understand it, you don't necessarily take issue with the presence of propaganda in film, correct? Yeah, it's just, I, I, I mean, it's a, it depends on the context, but I mean, it doesn't inherently make a film bad, I would say. All right. There's been a lot of conflict in American history with Russia. A lot of the villains would be Russians, right? Like the Holy Mountain made like a pretty apt uh, comparison metaphor uh, about this, where, you know, they were talking about like creating a comic book where uh, they indoctrinated children into to, to consuming this comic book. And they were like, the government has decided that we want to wage war against Peru. And so we made the, the main villain, the Peruvian monster, like all of the films that a lot of that are from this generation of films that this guy loves and a lot of people that make these same sort of media criticisms criticisms love like a lot of them have a lot of political propaganda in it and a lot of like gender propaganda a lot of race propaganda a lot of like gender identity propaganda and maybe we just didn't you know necessarily come to terms with what that was as it was happening but like a lot of it exists right um and maybe we're just more hyper aware of this conversation nowadays but that doesn't mean that it's not a thing that existed before and that, that, that this is some like new wave of like Movies didn't used to be political. Like, I, I don't know if I agree with that, you know? I don't think he'd say movies didn't used to be political. You would be, you would yeah. say it's a different I would, I, breed yeah. these days. That That's fair. I, uh, that was more of a statement on, that was more of a generalized of that statement to that like, crowd. The meme of game, I remember when games weren't political and it has pictures of like Bioshock, Metal Gear Solid, and Modern Warfare 2. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, I mean, like, there's a hyper, like, like the, the conversation surrounding media, it seems like there's a good chunk of people talking about media online that just, that are under the impression that, like, things didn't used to be political and now they are, or that things are inherently bad because there's anything political in it, which is also just, like, silly, right? So I'm I'm more speaking, trying to argue against that mindset, not necessarily saying that that is what Critical Drinker literally believes. But yeah, I could have clarified better. Yeah, it offends you because it's in a sense it hasn't got any art or care in it. Frosting a character like Ripley from Alien or Sarah Connor from the Terminator movie. It's always Ripley and Sarah Connor, like every single time. Every single time you talk about like female representation in a movie, it's always like we got right. Ripley and Sarah Great Connor. Examples. And I gotta to say, to say I, I will say, I don't like that uh, people are trying to almost rob people of the capacity to use those ones as, as examples because they're often cited, which is something here's, that I've noticed. Here's, here's, here's what I'll say about this. I think that it, it kind of proves that there is, <laughs> like, an issue. Uh, and I guess you would say that uh, Critical Drinker agrees that this, is, that is, this issue exists. And, you know, I, I actually recently watched his... I think it was called like women in film video i don't remember what it was called but yeah he does he does agree with this like the fact that the go-to examples are just science fiction movies from the 80s and it's been so long since then like that kind of sucks i you think know? that like that, 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 that makes me feel like the people that want more women representation in movies like they i can understand where they're coming from when when the our best example if you saw like his 40 50 years ago his video that related to women in film he had a laundry list of all kinds of great examples i doubt he would have said if yeah. he's lamenting on the fact that people use them as examples because it seems like there should be more that are prominent in the in the brain i would probably argue back to him it makes a hell of a lot of sense that those are prominent in the brain it celebrated as part of masterpiece films there's two of the greatest female characters of all time of course they're referenced why yeah. wouldn't they be referenced I, but, in the same then, vein, by the way, the, the fact that they're so old and that's our best examples is, I don't, is consistently by everybody that that reflects a problem. But like, right? if someone asked me, like, who's the greatest movie villain of all time, my head straight away goes to Vader, and then it's like, wow, Vader. Yeah, but and that's like, not everyone's answer. That's that's, <laughs> that's one of the most common. <laughs> I probably argue that is the most common answer in the film history for people. I don't know. You really do you don't think, think so? Like, Probably Darth Vader. Vader. Who do you think would be? I don't. Vader. I don't think that the most common answer for greatest villain is Vader. Who do you I think, think that would it, it, would, it would be in the Reddit thread for sure? Who do you think? Well, yeah, but that's the think, point. So would R Ripley and Sarah? I no, I but the the Reddit thread would include like two hundred different answers for male villains and you know female main characters. Would well, include, I didn't even like, say male villains. There's a ma uh, villains in general, which is like, it's yeah, going to be broader. Or whatever, right? But the, it's the same yeah. principle. We draw from some of the most prominent and remembered ones. It would be weird if yeah, I was to reference... it's not an issue that we draw from the most prominent. The issue is that the most prominent is a very small laundry list. 
compared to what you know if, if we're talking about male representation of characters in movies there's you, there's no point of even trying to list them because that's just like fucking most movies that are good right like every, the fucking imdb top 250 or whatever like just scroll down that or like whatever your metric for just judging a good film is it's just there right we don't it's not a challenge you don't have to come up with answers you don't have to try and make a list because like no one's even arguing about it right whereas when we talk about strong female characters it's it's not it's not a huge list or at least in terms of like the type of media that the average person consumes and what type of uh character would constitute as a strong female character for most people talking about films i think the how many do you think that one would have to list before you'd be like oh shit i guess there are a lot That's an interesting question because from my perspective, when I'm talking about the the grand scheme of like every movie and like all the movies that I haven't seen or like, you know, when we talk about strong female characters in films, I think what we're really talking about is like strong female characters in films that are accessible to the average person. Whereas like, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> movies from any country of any budget of like, any level like if we're including literally everything then the answer is infinite and they're being made forever like the answer is infinite for anything right like so that's a difficult question i'm not sure how to answer that yeah and so all i'm saying is that <clears throat> in terms of in terms of movies that people are aware of in terms of movies that like you know i i mean i i almost being... feel cynical about this that the true answer to this question could literally be that people just don't have the lists on their brain which is fine I mean the the I don't know. I I would you agree that there's less strong female characters than male characters for yes. media? Okay, well then we agree. Okay. Not good characters, but it's like it's always it's literally it's it's literally always those two examples, which kind of proves the point, right? Like I don't know. It's not like it's not to say that every movie within that generation is like therefore bad because it didn't include female characters, right? It's just it's just an argument that like hey, you know, you know, maybe Maybe there could be more characters like Ripley and Sarah Connor, you know, like maybe. Yeah, write them. You know, especially especially to people that really feel so emboldened by this sort of like America was great because we had muscle people in the 80s, like in the same way that you might feel happy about yourself being represented in that way. You know, like there's other people that might. I mean, you did cash. You went through each of the decades describing the general sort of outlook of different characters that were prominent in film. Like they weren't necessarily that he appeals to them as a person himself, just that that was the, the commonalities. Uh, okay, but I, I do, from the, the videos that I have watched on his channel, there does seem to be, like, a recurring theme of, like, nostalgia for those periods and those types of characters, Yeah, he, right? he enjoys the hell out of them, so but to be like fair, a, he also yeah. enjoys the hell out of Sarah Connor and Ripley and all the other women he's enjoyed in cinema, whoever they may be. Yeah, I'm not saying he doesn't enjoy them. Mm -hmm. See themselves represented in a different way that, you know, they might enjoy with, uh, say, an example off the top of my head, which I know will be go over well on these platforms, uh, Captain Marvel and the way that Captain Marvel was kind of presented as a hero. It offends you, I think, because uh, as I've said before, I'm a fan of your content, that you don't get to see a vulnerable a character evolve, mm. a vulnerable character learn lessons, a character that is flawed and has to overcome obstacles. In a sense, this is the function of story that precedes <sighs> the medium of cinema, that we need to see that a character in position A at the start... To me, it sounds like Russell's agreeing with him, that that's what's missing in the modern female characters, because Captain Marvel, I don't know if you saw it, but she's basically characterless. Yeah, yeah, I saw it for some reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why. He's unable to achieve something, but by, you know, they go through catharsis, challenges, uh, whatever, and at the other side, they're able, and you think that this new ideology that's about presenting figures or characters in a particular way is unable to serve story and function of story. Is that what you're saying, uh, Jinka? The, what's the fundamental thing, like you said, that, that gets you to identify with a character is you give a, a person that's somewhat likable, give them an obstacle to overcome and have them struggle to do it. They, they have them lots of things that get in their way, like they fall down, they pick themselves up, they eventually overcome. That is just the, the fundamental essence of what makes you like a character. In a very specific type of movie that is very crab pleasing, yes. Identify with them. It's so easy. It's it, it shouldn't even. It is not. It is not the rule for all films or characters. It need to be said. I will say you're talking to That's the people. A good template, right? On the yeah, but we, we would even concede that it really comes down to so many different cores that are really complicated in terms of like you wouldn't want to make any hard and fast yeah. rules definitively. Um, because no. could a character work when they have no characteristics? And someone might say like obviously no, and it's like hmm, that sounds like an interesting challenge. What There's... would they look like? 
yeah it, it's it's good to you know create your own limitations in terms of filmmaking and writing and seeing how you can work around that i would say that i think his so. recommendations and advice are pretty strong for broad as you've just said as well yes yeah but what they lack with these modern characters that they try to do is that they're not willing to take that step of have them fail and be vulnerable and have flaws and weaknesses, I, I, either because the, the writers don't know how to do it or because they've got this kind of uh, prickly defensiveness when it comes to writing things like female. Let's see, um, I'm going to keep, because I feel like these are all references to the point. He's talking about what we need to do and what they don't do with women these days, not that we don't need women at all because we've got plenty of examples already. I... Yeah, we'll we'll wait until he's asked the question a second time. I, I, I I'm not I'm not one hundred percent like ooh, this couldn't possibly but be what he's saying. I'm just I'm hung up on the phrasing of what he says at a certain point. They don't want them to be perceived as weak, and so the only alternative they have is well, they just have to be great at everything, and so they, they're they're brilliant at everything right off the bat. They have all the skills they need. They don't need to learn everything. They don't really have personalities because they don't have any like flaws or weaknesses. Um, and the arc basically becomes them being amazing and being up here, and the rest of the world having to learn to accept how awesome they are and like eventually come up and accept them. Th there's no character arc there. It's just a straight line. That, that's, that, that's what he's saying is not untrue. It's simplistic, but it's not untrue. I think that I think that in general, like a lot of these you know, Marvel of the day <laughs> films are just terribly written. And I do believe that, you know, if we were to look at human beings as statistics, you will probably see a higher number of writers writing larger projects that are probably more scared, you know, to, to write flawed female characters because of how they'd be perceived, right? I, I get it. That's not an untrue thing to say. Um, but it is, you know, again, the the takeaway as a whole is kind of like a very narrow view of filmmaking and cinema and just media diet in general where it's like you know it's not it's not like this is like it's not like you can't find movies <laughs> with like good female characters in it or anything it's not like you can't find well-written movies it's, it's just kind of like oh okay like if you're only watching marvel movies then yeah you know there's some there's some issues with it because it's a marvel movie but not necessarily because Obviously, he would argue that Patton goes uh, way further than Marvel films, but that at the same time, he's seen plenty of uh, yeah. Marvel. Marvel mainstream... is a generalization to describe. Yeah, you want to mainstream, mainstream studio films, films right? Oh shit! Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. I... Um, Who broke in? Uh, Go away. Sorry. What was I going to say? Was that, yeah, that the, the, he's also praised some mainstream films for even the writing of their females. Like it would have happened. He's just sort of doing broad statements. Mm-hmm of much more than that and people don't find that satisfying that's the problem that's why nobody watches these movies anymore that's why the box office returns just go down and down yeah because when we meet let's take the example of sarah connor we find her as a waitress live drifting through life listlessly but down the line we see that oh, this character is going to be a revolutionary figure that's sorry which character of sarah connor we find her as a waitress live drifting through life listlessly it's also kind of a horror movie where like okay the two examples sarah connor and ellen ripley they're both sci-fi horror movies right where they might not even be female leads if people didn't have this weird caveman brain protectionist mentality of like gotta protect the babies and the women right like how many horror movies do you like the final girl is a trope the i don't know that this has necessarily any weight on the discussion that they're having though I'm uh, well. I mean, like my argument is that you know not only are uh, strong female characters less represented, but they're more uh, they're more what's the word pigeonholed. They're more uh, what is it? They're, they're they're trapped in certain tropes uh, that uh, are not necessarily. So uh, the trope you're referring to is the last girl, right? The that they ended up in uh, those positions. Yeah, and I'm not saying. You know, I, I, I'm not saying I, I, that I, I, Alien and Terminator are, you know, like, oh, it's slasher movies or anything like that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I, that, like... I'm, I'm happy to say that they, they do qualify, but the, obviously they're so special. They rose above, they did some... Like, what was the key that made Alien, Aliens, T2, T1... Why are they so much more special? It's like, obviously, the, the incredible filmmaking and the scripts. So, yeah, they may have been put in place originally. The female character has been, the fact that they're like, we're going to have a girl at the end because that uh, makes the audience feel the most vulnerable for the character. If um, if you're going to have a, a burly guy or a, or a regular woman against an alien creature of any kind or a Terminator or whatever, then the, who do you think has the better chance? Like, I guess the guy does, but ultimately I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference when it's an alien or a Terminator. But I understand the appeal to the, uh, the audience and therefore that's why they ended up as women is, is part of what you're saying. But the thing is, like... They were written so well 
that now they are blatantly used because they are as as, as a great template for female characters. Yeah, I you could have I'm a man just, in a position for any that... kind of reason like that as well, right? I'm not yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm yeah. just saying I'm I'm not saying that the movies are worse because of it. I'm not saying the characters are worse because of it. I'm saying that it is kind of you know it's it's reflective of the greater point of like oh yeah there isn't that <laughs> all that much in terms of representing uh strong female characters when it's all just like oh like kind of this sci-fi horror movies from the 80s it, it's very narrow um i feel like they've evolved you know, past like that the, though that I, it's not i mean we have we have but it's no those still, characters like, like i don't think people see ripley as oh yes the sci-fi horror last girl they see her as Ripley. I mm -hmm. certainly don't, yeah. yeah I just see her as a well-written character. I, I mean, I don't see her that way, is what I meant to say. Okay. Because th th that's what I'm saying, is that's why they're like a beacon. They they've evolved past whatever original reason that they ended up the way that they are. Yeah, it's less, it's less about what those characters are specifically, and I'm just talking about the opportunities for, uh, like, roles, you know? For for women to appear in films and get roles, of yeah, good characters, women. It, it seems to be like more narrow, but um, it could be considered pretty subversive that those two ended up being part of a big pull to see the stories in these films, right? At the time, as in like Aliens, I think she managed to negotiate millions more yeah, on I'm her not, pay. I'm not trying to dismiss the achievements of those movies, and I'm not trying to dismiss those characters as being anything but good examples of. Uh, strong female characters. Okay. The word girl is in there because, like, to make people scared, you gotta have it a woman because they're more innocent because they're more defenseless, right? Like, that that's a part wow, of the trope. That's, that's a part of, like, though. the gendered sort of stereotype, right? And so when both of the examples are, like, Ripley sci-fi horror, right? Sarah Connor sci-fi horror. Thank you for the Raid Red Radius, right? Like, they're great characters, but they're the exception to the rule when it comes to the genre. But they might not be females if it weren't, like, a horror sci-fi genre, a horror genre. Yeah, I don't think that's relevant. Okay, specifically, um, you know, when we're talking about characters like overcoming obstacles, I agree that that helps you empathize with them, especially in like a mainstream film. You know, like we're going to go like watch a film like Drive, right? The guy barely speaks a fucking word, but you see him suffer a bit. You understand what he wants. You understand his goals. You understand what he cares about. And you understand what it means to him by the end of the film for him to achieve his goals. Those are important things if you're going to make like a mainstream, like goal oriented, like ABC plot sort of thing that appeals to a lot of people. Um, I agree with that. But like... I don't know if these, I don't know if, if Ripley and Sarah Connor are necessarily like the prime examples of writing female characters when they're both just, you know, sci-fi strong women characters that were down on their luck mostly because there's like a thing trying to kill them. <laughs> like, I have no clue what you're trying to say here. Yeah, me neither. I'm what I, if I phrase myself better, my argument is there's other examples of female characters that we could do that don't have to uh, adhere towards what they did with Sarah Connor and Ripley is that the the landscape of what is possible with writing a good female character is not necessarily a strong you know like a like leadership sort of like badass killing a sci-fi creature thing you know you don't think it's a little bit reductive Uh, it depends on what you think I'm saying, I guess. Uh, the, the writing discipline behind the two of them should be celebrated to hell and back for a hell of a lot more than just they turned what could have been seen as more of a timid female character into a warrior leader who's going to be doing all kinds of uh, agency it's not, things. It's not a criticism against the writing of those films at all. I'm, just, I'm saying that in the landscape of films between then and now, there's so much more opportunity to create strong female characters that where you don't have to copy that to get that i'm i'm saying that well you'll hear me say it soon i'm pretty sure like i, I talk about how you know a lot of uh women audience members you know relate to films that i don't necessarily relate to and the types of female characters that they want to see in a movie might be in something like ladybird or some shit right it, completely um, um, that's what i'm getting at i think there's a lot of miscommunication because like what i'm trying to get at is the say the main character in um I'm trying to think of just any romantic comedy that's super chill and, like, pick whatever one you want versus the writing for Ripley. I would say there's going to be, if it's a really good romantic comedy, 
I would likely connect them significantly on the writing discipline. They would likely be broad elements of how they've approached writing the characters that I would connect, even though they're completely different. And that's what we're supposed to take, I believe, from Ripley and Sarah, not that women can be action heroes. It's like, no, 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 it's, it's treating them very, very seriously, respecting their layers as characters, having the consequences of the actions in their lives reflect in their uh, experiences and values, that sort of thing. Okay, that's not an unfair thing to say. Mo mo like, most of their hardship was the fact that they're in a horror movie, right? Like, you write a character like Captain Marvel, it's not like, it, you know, it's it's not like she's got, like, an alien or a Terminator trying to get her the whole time. It's not like... Have you seen Captain Marvel? Yeah, he has. Hmm? Have you, you, you yeah. said you'd yeah. seen her, right? It yeah, she's got um, an alien race chasing her. Sorry, what did I just say in the video? You said it's not like Captain Marvel has, like, a robot or a monster chasing her. Um, I forgot half the fucking movie. It's okay. It's, it's literally just in my brain and out. I hate. Well, I hate. Fucking I assume like, the point you were making was the the her, uh, the the nature of having a creature like that after you will facilitate like losses in some way, and so the character will have to strive to overcome it, and so that's like a natural part of the genre. Yeah, it is possible to still flub that and fumble it in a movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I was going to say like uh, superheroes are fucking perfect for that not, sort of thing, yeah, right? It's not even. It's not really a sci-fi horror. You know, no, no, of course. A, it's just that it, there's this ample opportunity to provide her the same sort of growth options. You'd even expect them to be there. It's actually strange that there's not. A lot of the uh, superhero movie origin stories relate to like the all-time down points, right? Like Strange getting his hands completely crippled, Stark getting his heart blown out. Yeah. All that sort of I stuff. I know what you mean, and I think, again, I'm just going to say, like, Sarah Connor and, and Ripley are fucking great characters. Mm -hmm. And it sucks that it's difficult to imagine something that can be at that level without, like, essentially copying what they're doing. I think that that speaks to part of the problem. Is that when I'm thinking, like, you know, like, how do, how do we make a character that's as iconic and as likable and as respectable as yeah, those characters? Um... It's like, you almost just inevitably kind of go back to what are, I guess, now potentially considered tropes or, you know, like... How well, do you so, even do that? It's 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 part of the problem. Yeah, because I think it's a double-edged sword of bad, too, because a lot of writers, take, for example, the writers of Captain Marvel, might have said, like, oh, that Ripley and Sarah fully inspired Captain Marvel, and all they think about is, like, when she goes to attack the Queen in Aliens, and when Sarah is like, approaching whatever was, she is at the know, peak was, of her confidence. They don't think about everything that's to do with those characters. I was about to say, it feels to me like part of the problem is that, um, there's too much of a focus on... Uh, how competent somebody is to the exclusion of their vulnerabilities or their weaknesses or their flaws as an individual. But, like, the rough edges of characters can often be the most interesting thing about them. And what like, do you, Sarah you think of the heroism of uh, well, just, you know, Sarah Connor's got problems. Well, she's mentally unstable. Her, like Seeing her rise above those problems and succeed and prevail and reconnect with John, like, it's it's from, you know, that low to get to that high. And it's the same with Ripley. Ripley's got her own problems and her flaws and vulnerabilities, but those are the things that help make them feel well-rounded. Whereas, like, I don't know, with uh, someone like Captain Marvel, what they were really thinking in terms of, all right, well, what's what's uh, what are her problems that she needs to deal with internally? Um, and I think, wasn't it for Captain Marvel basically realizing that she was awesome right from the start? Yeah, yeah, I want to I wanna make it clear to anybody <laughs> listening to this, Fringy's not, like, memeing. That is, that is what happens in the film. She's very strong, she's captured, and then she has a conversation with the villain, and in the middle of this conversation she realizes she's much stronger than she always thought she was. That's, that's her arc. She understands yeah. that she's a Can god. Because her inclusion into the MCU wasn't even, like, organic. They were trying to find a replacement for Iron Man, right? Uh, Am I mistaken? That, well, basically, I think that the plan initially was that she was going to become the new leader of the Avengers, but now it's probably going to be Falcon or Doctor Strange um, because people Damn. don't really care about Captain Marvel as a no. character. And, I mean, I it, is that a surprise? She's not very interesting. She's very <laughs> unlikable, not interesting... There's not uh, many there's layers not to her to approach her. to any situation. But, but I, I guess the, the point would be that it's part of the reason why I don't like the strong female character like meme as a statement because it feels like it's missing the point. It's just like we're, we're trying to write people here. Yeah, we're just trying to yeah, write just write characters. good female like, character. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't need yeah, the they're good. That would character. solve it. It's just like I want characters. I want people I can connect to. Yeah. That's what everybody wants ultimately is people they can connect to. And I mean, yeah. you know, I, it's something I've been thinking about as well in this conversation is I wonder if part of the reason why 
people often default to Ripley and Sarah Connor is because when you're thinking about characters in action movies or science fiction fantasy or anything like that, that um, it might be too focused on a genre that to some extent can skew more towards having male protagonists uh, than you might find in other genres as well. And if that, and if it's a matter of almost like trying to broaden our... Uh, well, yeah, and that's the true scope. progress that needs to be made is well-written female characters. We need more exactly. of them. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, ex and and then and then it's something you mentioned as well. Is that sometimes you default to those ones because they're on the top of your mind, they're good examples. But if you yeah, sat down them. and thought about it for a while, you could get a much more comprehensive list of female characters from action films, science fiction, and uh, you know, fantasy that you could uh, put in a list. Like you know, it, yeah, and it, I genuinely yeah. believe like yeah. Drinker could write you a list of a hundred if he was given the time. Yeah. I'm I'm sure the movies would start to get pretty obscure, but uh, <laughs> maybe. But I'm sure that it is possible. I like you know Evelyn, everything everywhere. That's a good character, right? Absolutely, yeah. And yeah, he would. He, he obviously did a very positive review of that, and he would have praised the hell out of her as a character and her daughter. Good character like Captain Marvel. It's not like it, you know. It's it's not like she's got like an alien or a Terminator trying to get her the whole. Day. It's not like it's a, a fucking horror movie, right? Like these are entirely different genres. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that Captain Marvel was well written. I'm not saying that Captain Marvel, like, it wasn't. It was not. But I'm sure there's examples of Marvel movies that had male characters that did not have as much struggle as, like, Captain Marvel or whatever, you know. If now, you see, unfortunately, yeah. this is, uh, uh, in, the Marvel, in the Marvel movies, this is not true. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. all of the male characters have things that they have to struggle to yeah, rise above. I, I don't think, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was that was just like a, you know, throwing it out to the audience and hoping they'd give me something, and then but, nobody did anything, and I was like, yeah, okay, well, look, I, don't, look, I, don't, I don't watch those Avengers. fucking movies. Iron Man, obviously, in several instances, uh, has obstacles to overcome, both external and internal. Bruce, <laughs> obviously, he's got a, he's got his internal struggles that he has to deal with. Thor's arc in the original movie was that he's too vain and egotistical, and that he needs to become more humble, and in doing so, he becomes more of a hero. When he's stripped of he his uh, god I'll, powers. I'll trust, I'll trust all of you on this yeah. one. I just fucking... Yeah, I'm not watching all this shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, did you think Iron Man was good? Or... Uh... It wasn't bad. Okay. <laughs> That's as yeah, good I'm... of a compliment as we'll get, I think. <laughs> we don't get we'll take it. Maybe maybe I'm full of shit because I've never watched every Marvel movie, but like I'm willing to bet that there's some Marvel movie that exists where there's a male character that also didn't really go through much struggle or suffering no, before they were expected to be a hero. <laughs> um, and just example. people don't talk about that. Nah. The Bright and oh, I love maybe Bill Bill. I maybe love when I said Marvel, I meant studio <laughs> big studio movie. Oh, I mean, at I mean, that point, there's I mean, gotta I'm be sure someone, there's, yeah. There's an example, yes, but in terms of MCU movies, nah. Yeah. This was Bill. years ago. I don't know what I meant. The Bright is a great great example of like a you know strong female character but it's also a dude movie you know it's also a dude movie like and as a you know biological male person with a penis whatever like i gotta accept that a lot of things that i love you know i love a lot of dude movies i love some girl movies too again i would appeal not to the nature of like the action or whatever would qualify as a dude movie just that the discipline behind the writing again for the bride would be another one that's respectable Mm -hmm. No, I'm. Yeah, my point was there was not to discredit those types of films, uh, but to justify why there's people in the industry trying to create uh, films that are more uh, broad in terms of what their goals are. Sorry, not broad, but more uh, varied. It's it's like, to explain why there's a push for you know, girl movies and shit. Um. Sure. I mean, I'd like to believe that a great film. Like doesn't necessarily have to appeal to male or female in and of itself, mm -hmm. but I mean I understand, and I've heard plenty of arguments that relate to it in terms of what men and women, I don't know, typically prefer to see in their stories. I'm not going to say that's not true. It's, I guess it's got to be, but I like to think that some of the greatest movies of all time like can transcend that, and that's what we should be maybe striving toward, not necessarily have to achieve every time. Oh, that everybody's expanding their horizons as viewers, right? That people don't go, oh, well, that's not a genre that I'm interested in, so I won't watch that, and then potentially miss out on a story yeah. that really grip you. I feel like there's I mean, a lot of films that I would naturally be like, nah, but that, that could be my favorite film of all time. Watch yeah. And, yeah, and you like it. Um, and I was going to say as well, when I said earlier, we need more really well-written female characters, I mean... 
all characters. I mean, we need more well-written male characters. We need more yeah. well-written all characters. It's it's something that we desperately need more of, yeah. I need more well-written horse characters, and I will not... Well, we can't always get what we want, I guess. ...making videos. I will be <laughs> Is that going to be your first film? Or? The horse representation in media. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of things. I feel like there's plenty of horses in media. Name Barbie. five. Barbie had good horse rep. There were horses Name in five. Oppenheimer. Uh, there's, Name five there's Roach. Horses. Roach from The Witcher. Uh, oh, Maximus from Tangled. Bojack Horseman. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, there's Bojack Horseman, exactly. There's Spirit and Rain uh, from all of the, Stalin yeah, and Merlin. All of, whatever okay. the ones in it, that. What's that DreamWorks one, the one with the horses? There's that too. Ooh, that I haven't seen. What about Buck <laughs> from Home on the Range? Is, oh, I feel yeah. like we're coming. Here's yeah, the thing. Rock, I feel like we're coming. I feel like we're coming up with horse answers much more quickly and easily than if we were to say <laughs> strong female characters. The, the horse right? from uh, from Ghost I feel. Of I feel like that's what I'm talking about. The true imbalance. <laughs> I feel like we we're like horse. Bam, bam, bam. All these great horse characters. Well, we, well, to be like, fair, we're know, about to run out though. Like we've pretty much named all well, the most famous just, horses. It's, it's, we've had a lot of uh, we've had a lot of recent video games that emphasize mm. your noble steed. That was with you, Red Dead Redemption Two and Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, uh, yeah. Why was to be fair? These are not characters Julio necessarily. Okay, Julio these are horses. Was the guy. The oh, horse was the them, horse. A lot of them are characters. I said necessarily. Yeah, no, Tulio Tull Tull was the guy. Then they had yeah, the Miguel horse. and Tulio. Miguel yeah. and Tulio. Oh fuck! What was the horse's name? I can't uh, remember. It, but well, he was a, he was a noble. He was a noble steed. Don't forget aggro. Now, of course, donkey. Donkey is is part of the donkey's an equine. Donkey TFs into a horse in the second movie temporarily. You don't need to translate. That's true. Yeah, he's a stallion, baby. And the definition, right? Because donkey is a part of the 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 equines. What's the name? It's equines, right? Or equines? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's good that we clarified all of that. And Marty from 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 Madagascar. And aggro from Shadow of the Colossus. Man, I'm actually kind of impressed Bullseye. with how many horse characters we can name. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> well, hey, so if you do, you want to do? Name. We could do the good female characters oh, if you want. Dude, you know, you know what I, you know what I really want to do. What do you want to do? I want to create Americans. a busy video essay on horses and media. <laughs> <laughs> Just do rank them. Post. Yeah, tier list. Yeah. Do it. It's it like a very serious, like out. chill. Because if you soundtrack if you tell Good chat content. start naming all of the great female characters you think exist in movies and tv like you'll get shit tons of and examples video games you know like mm -hmm. you include video games as well in the mix you'll get a lot of answers the thing is is if you ask a bunch of different people yeah you will get more than just ripley and sarah connor for sure i think that if russell said drinker yeah. you fucking feel, like idiot we, we name like more a, than those two he would Mm -hmm. We got like ten horses without even looking at chat. <laughs> I we can do ten female characters without looking at chat, okay? I'm sure you can. Alright, blindfolded. <laughs> I'm I'm looking to see if there's any like All right. Tali or Liara. Let me think. Ripley. They're gonna show up in that list. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll i I'll go second Sarah Cod. <laughs> Are we actually do we're naming right. strong female characters? I don't yeah. know if we're doing it for memes or for a real. Uh Eowyn? Be Lord oh, of the she's Rings. in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Hell yeah, she is. Wait, I mean, I'm just reading people's, and there's a there is a diverse assortment. Don't look of at chat; it's color. cheating. No, oh, I'm not. I'm, oh, well, then I'm not participating because I'm right, already fine. Back to YMS. Oh no, wait, is it my, yeah, yeah. Uh, Elvin, Elvin, El, what is her name again? What? <laughs> <laughs> From everything, everywhere. What's her name again? Oh, what, Evelyn. Evelyn. Yeah. Evelyn. Evelyn. Ele okay. Evelyn. Jesus. Evelyn. The Elephant. Consonants mixed up. All right, wait, is it... We did this awkwardly, so I guess I'm next. Uh, Marion from Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Marion Ravenwood. Uh, so is it me now? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go with... Uh, who is Sandra Bullock from uh, A Time to Kill? Oh, I don't know fucking her name was. I didn't catch that, but yeah, she was pretty good. I forget her name from the to movie. To be fair, I've forgotten all the names of the characters in that. Except Carl Lee, because yes. they said Carl Lee 10,000 times. Carl Lee, because they said him 712 times. And Jake, yeah. as uh, Matthew McConaughey. Are we back to, back to mm. YMS? Yeah, well, it depends on how I define it. Because, you know, when I'm, I'm stuck in this, it, it, it's, it's, again, part of, like, this weird issue where I'm stuck in this mindset of, like, okay, what is a strong female character? And then I think, like, I don't know, like, should I be listing like Emily Blunt from fucking Edge of Tomorrow? Like, but mm. the 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 psychological association with the word strong <laughs> keeps 
leading me down this path of like action and science fiction that I'm not sure I really want to go. And then it's like, okay, well, I haven't seen fucking <laughs> like Amelie in a while. Like <laughs> I got to remember <laughs> everything there is about that character. Would that fit as a strong female character? I don't know. Like I can I name like... a bunch of female main characters, but then it's like, how do we define that at that point? <clears throat> As long as they're well, I mean, very well written. Well, I mean, to be a main character, right? Because, like, Princess Fiona from Shrek, well, she's main character, but not the lead, right? She's one of the co-leads, I'd be like an example. Yeah, I don't know. Like, she's not... Eva she's strong from, in the sense that she Wally. has her own agency, and she's there you not go, just, Eva like... from Wally. She's the uh... strongest character in the film. <clears throat> well, it's unclear. It sounds like YMS wouldn't count <laughs> those as... Very well written well, I'm female characters. To, or? I'm, like, strong female character. I'm trying to when when we when we talk about if we if we talk about the list of like strongest male characters, mm -hmm. like a lot of the examples that we're gonna be coming up with are gonna be like fucking transformative character pieces and shit, right? Of like, wow, what an interesting, strong character. And I feel like a lot of times when we're talking about strong female characters, like if we're gonna list like Fiona, like I think at one <clears> point <throat> Critical Drinker lists Trinity, like I don't know if I they, they, you know, they almost seem like they're kind of just in the story for a checklist for the main character. And sure, they have their own agency. Nah. They're not necessarily like damsel no. in dis distress. But I don't know if they're really like that fleshed out. They have personality. Well, she's supposed to subvert like, that. Fiona, like, nah, I'm not sure. Fiona, absolutely. Like, absolutely. She's got her own concurrent story running. She you know, does, but I, I just, it, it seems like so far off what we would consider to be like a strong male character in a lead. It seems like so incomparable. Well, okay, but what if right? someone named Indiana Jones as part of this election? It's not like that's going to be considered one of the greatest sort of subversions and layered approaches to a great character journey ever. It's more so he's an incredibly entertaining and representative of a fantastic trilogy that everyone really loves. Like, and I think that's a perfectly valid choice for one of the greatest characters ever of cinema because it's just, he's tied mm -hmm. so inherently to entertainment. He's so consistently written and he's so entertaining. Pop culture. Yeah. yeah. So in the same vein, if someone was to pick, let's say, I don't know, you, you mentioned The Bride, right? Could someone not say like The Bride is I love The Bride. Love The Bride. Okay. Great if example. she qualifies, fair enough. But like, I, it does seem like we maybe draw the line in different places. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting thing to think about because like, you know, I don't I don't have this issue thinking about strong male characters where I'm trying to, like, figure out how to selectively define it. Like, what is even, you know, like, what makes a character strong? <laughs> it, it almost seems like it's less of an issue. Well, right? I, I guess the maybe, thing maybe is, that uh, could be from my to... perception. Maybe that's my issue. I don't know. But like, I think I think it's, it's a problem of like it's, it's thinking about let's get broader with the word strong. It doesn't necessarily mean physically right. Emotionally. In some in some other realm of their of their life, they're really competent. You know what? You know what fucking sucks is like there's a lot of movies that I really love where I can I can say like oh that's a strong female character and I have difficulty remember their remembering their names even <laughs> you know like uh, I guess this fucking... is an interesting one for me because in my brain I find it really easy to in particular to remember like characters from animated films and video games. Because yeah. I can very strongly associate them with that character and that design rather than an actress playing them. But even then, when it comes to films, yeah. and I don't find it that. Yeah, like who the what, what was cool. fucking Viola Davis's character in Widows? Like, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah uh, like, I would have uh, the same problem. There's there's plenty of characters I consider amazing that I've forgotten their names, which is unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah, I I <clears throat> I, I think I think that there's some truth in everything that we're all saying about this and that the answer is not a black well, and white uh, I mean, I conclusive say, based on just the fact that how readily chat was able to provide an assortment of characters from films television shows video games books and everything is that i think that people default to the notion that you can't list a bunch of like well-written you know i guess strong female characters we want to use that categorization but like if you just sit mm -hmm. down and think about it it's like there's a lot like it, it's well, kind, of, it's earlier, kind yeah. of frustrating, you know, narrative that gets presented of like, ah, yes, we invented female characters in like action movies. Yeah, that's you know, bullshit. It's, funny. I it's, agree. it's just bullshit. Yeah, it's just bullshit. Like you can, you could just go back through like th for decades and decades and decades, and you have a list of characters See, that you can cite. Why do I not know the names of like most of these female characters unless their names in the title? Like Jackie Brown, obviously, right? That's in the title, right? But like. 
you know, I, I don't remember guess... Francis McDormand's character from Fargo. I'm looking at the things in the chat now. Okay. Oh, Ophelia yeah, was the yeah. name of the girl in Pan's Labyrinth. Like, you... you I, mean, I, I don't know. Do I, have, it, right? I have I have this problem with men and in a lot of movie movies a million as well. times. Because like I don't except well, um, unless they're super iconic, right? Like no no country <coughs> world men isn't called Anton, but you, you know you remember his name. Oh well, yeah, Anton Sugar. It's iconic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I'd say that that like Sarah and Ripley are practically inseparable from the franchises they're attached to as well. Mm -hmm. This does happen for yeah. women too. It's just that. Equally, because we've agreed, I assume, that the vast majority of great characters, it's much more skewed to male than female. I'm totally fine with conceding that, but it doesn't change the fact that there are shit tons of women in there. Yeah. I agree. Fred, a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> we're not all looking for the same thing. I love Kill Bill. I love Kill Bill so fucking much. I think that the Bride is a great character. Um, you know, some people are looking for fucking, I don't know, <laughs> Lady Bird. <laughs> you know? It's not my thing, but you know, some, some people were really, really looking for that. I don't know. And it's not like a, it's not like a poorly written character because it's for girls. You know what? Evie from the Mummy. She was no, oh, that's a good female character. Evelyn. <laughs> Evelyn, yeah. So, uh, so you got Rick O'Connell yeah, and Evelyn, mummy. I guess O'Connell by the time you hit the later ones. Tom yeah. Cruise's The Mummy. What? No. no. Yes, no. the best of the the best of them. It was so good. <laughs> the best. Of... <laughs> Tom Cruise's The Mummy. The finest. He was the best mummy Nobody. of them all. Ah, oh, the beginning of the dark universe. What a great universe that proved to be. Nobody knows the names of did any I... character in those movies. Did Except for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Did a trailer for that movie where yes. it accidentally got uploaded without... Oh, that was so good. That was great. Yes. That, ah. that was ah. weird. Ah! 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 Yeah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> did they, get, they get sucked out of the plane? <laughs> Stop bullying the poor multi-million dollar franchise movie. I think all it does is it kind of highlights that when you remove music from a scene, it's fascinating to see how how few sound effects there may actually be in a scene. It's it, No, it's not only fascinating to see how, like about the layers that go into it, but it's also fascinating just how much of, of movies rely on soundtrack. And when you strip that away, I'm very critical of that in the media it's, that I watch is just like, how much are you relying on the the score right now? You know, like it, it happens all the fucking time, and people don't notice it. It's an interesting topic because something that I've uh, something that I felt is hmm. Now this could be a bias of mine, but I really like video game music. I like it a lot, and I feel like part of the reason why I like it so much and why I can remember so many melodies is because if it's going to be playing over and over and over and over and over again, you got to make sure that it's catchy, interesting, unique. That it it won't sort of uh tire on you right like if you listen to music from like super mario brothers you need to hear it over and over and over again and i wonder if like the sort of the mentality that goes into composing for you know video game soundtracks compared to film soundtracks where there's different sort of a, a, a different role that the music uh may or may not be playing you know in uh in a particular film that was a tangent that led to a dead end let's just keep going oh, all right <laughs> was a bit, i was playing you know Different people like different things, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. There was a little bit of a ramble. But down the line, we see that oh, this character is going to be a revolutionary figure that's met the challenge of knowing that she's carrying perhaps the most sort of significant thing that a character could carry, like the, you know the essence or a symbol for the future. Hey, listen, we're going to come off of YouTube now, and here are the reasons you rumble. Should rumble. We're going to talk about uh, rumble. Of freedom. Why rumble. is this movie causing so much controversy as it appears to be beaten in the? Okay, do I do I dare? Um, I was going to say by the way, you said you were going to join us for four hours. We're hitting five soon, so I want to make sure you feel that you that are free. Was a, that was an approximate. Yeah, I might have to like. Well, that's what I'm saying. I want you to feel like you're free to leave whenever you want, of course. Appreciate all the time you've given today. This is a you lot are not of clarification. A but I'm happy to continue if you are. <laughs> yep. Or continue this on Rumble. <laughs> oh, the link is just to your channel. I can't even like give me the actual interview. How long ago was this? July 14th. All right, we're going July 14th. Met the challenge of. Can I watch Rumble videos on Twitch? It's as long as they're not banned streamers. Yeah. Knowing that. Hey, listen, we're gonna come off of YouTube now, and here are the reasons you should join us on Rumble. We're gonna talk about sound of freedom. I I host some of my content on Rumble, and I don't get paid shit. Their their fucking ad split is so bad. Like I'm looking for a good reason to like even pimp out Rumble at all. By the way, I started uploading my shit on Rumble way before it was like anti-vax conservative shit. It was just an alternative to YouTube. People were uploading cat videos, and I was like, yeah.
I'll do that, and now I'm kind of stuck with it. And why is this movie causing so much controversy as it appears to be beating Indiana Jones in the box office? What does it tell us about film? What oh my god, they're talking about Santa Freedom. I'm so hyped. What does it tell, you, tell us about new funding models? What does it tell us about the appetite of us? This conversation is an hour long. When am I going to bed? What the fuck? Movie audiences. I'm also going to start referring to the critical drinker by his actual human name, and I'm going to ask you to remove the name. Not yet, not while we're still, not while we're still on YouTube. I can't handle him piercing squishy eyes of color. I can't even begin to comprehend until I see something. Watch this on YouTube. Everywhere else, click the link in the description. Join us over on If you are not a member, find and join us on locals. You get to see content live when we're recording the event. It's pre-recorded. You get a taste from me. You get to be a member of our community. This is getting difficult to fully understand. And hopefully everyone can follow. <laughs> He, he sounds like XQC. He does. He's gotten very <laughs> Sargon of the Cod eyes. He does. Actually. He looks very <laughs> much like Sargon. In his gaze. More like in his lesbians. All right, this this is going pretty fast. Just so, are we all are we all good with how fast this is going right now? We can we can do one point two five if it's one point five. Right we now. we might want to slow it down a bit because I it, I'm having a bit a difficulty tracking here. So sure, you can me. put it on one if you need to. But this what this this what? point this point that is being made right now is something that I have things to say about. So all right, all right. So let me, uh, so you might want to rewind it like ten seconds okay. even. No brainer, like yeah, I think you know. Uh, Come to the same conclusion that uh, children being sold into child sex trafficking is, is a terrible thing and should absolutely be stopped at any cost. And so, uh, a movie about trying, uh, you know, a main hero who's trying to prevent and rescue children from the most horrifying situation imaginable. Well, that should be the sort of thing that you should really have no qualms about supporting. And you're saying that what a movie is about is something that you should have no qualms about supporting? That merely the subject matter is something that you should support? That's insane! That's insane! Oh, a movie's about child sex trafficking, therefore, you should have no qualms about supporting it? Because what it's about, not about the filmmaking, you person talking about films. The fact that, uh, some um, I think he would concede that uh, just because the film is about one thing, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to nail it. But obviously, he feels it does. Like does what he feels. What? No, the, the, I know. But like the 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 even bringing up the like, oh, you should have no qualms about supporting it. Like that. That's that's just that, that's like the talking point right now. That that seems so inorganic. And I I'm not trying to say that he's doing that consciously. Like many people subconsciously pick up arguments and talking points from other people and the types of media that you're exposed to. But right now, like that's that's the like the the, the conservative media pundits talking about uh sound of freedom are all essentially just parroting like, "Oh, why would you have an issue with this movie? Because it's about this. You, you it, like, that's such a it, for a guy that that creates this entire persona and this entire like objective of the channel. Not you know the entire objective of the channel, but much of the channel being like, okay, you know, the politics in a movie shouldn't supersede its quality. If that's like a generous and fair way to determine what he often says. And then saying like, oh yeah, you should have no qualms about supporting this movie because of what it's about. I'm sorry, that's kind of fucking cringe. Like, you know, when the Lorax fucking came out, I just watched that movie recently. It was dog shit. Like, I feel the exact same way about him saying that towards this Sound of Freedom movie as I would to anyone saying, you have to watch the Lorax or, or you're not pro-environmental. Like, it's about the environment. We should have no qualms about supporting this movie because of what it's about, right? Like, that has nothing to do with the filmmaking. And even if he enjoyed it because of the filmmaking, he made a video on it. I didn't get to watch the whole thing because very shortly into the video, he started summarizing the plot, and I didn't want it spoiled. Uh, so I wasn't able to finish it. Um, even, if, even if he does, you know, think that it, it's held up on its own merits about uh, the acting, the writing, cinematography, whatever, the fact, the fact that he threw that into the conversation and that was the first thing he said is really... I, I I don't know. It's it's indicative of like the types of uh, things that he consumes, and I think that it, you know, if he took a step back, then maybe he might not say that. Um, I, I I don't know how that's like defensible when when the entire <clears throat> uh, perspective of the channel is like the art should be a focus over the politics for for you to then say 
watch this or you shouldn't have any problems supporting this movie and then only list because it's about this like that's irrelevant to the movie uh, my understanding of uh, my understanding of what he said was uh supporting the message not supporting the movie and going to see it mm, let's rewind <laughs> rewind 10 seconds 10 20 seconds if we want no qualms about that's, some... a, that's a very charitable interpretation. I'm not sure that's a. <laughs> what the issue with that? Well, well, I think we can all uh, come to the same conclusion that uh, children being sold into child sex trafficking is, is a terrible thing and should absolutely stop at any cost. And so, a movie about trying, you know, a main hero who's trying to prevent and sort of rescue children from the most horrifying situation imaginable, well, that's the sort of thing that you should really have no qualms about supporting. And you're saying that what? A movie. He said he starts the sentence saying a movie, and then at the and end he says that, that well, that's start, something you should have no qualms about supporting. That. It's okay, like if if this was his like flub or fuck up, and he didn't mean to say that, or maybe like well, so... maybe he might think about this later and be like, yeah, that was kind of dumb. I don't know, but it just seems to be like it like the, the I I I really don't. This this is one of the biggest issues I have with like the whole interview is is that moment because it just everything else he was saying seems to be contradictory towards that. You know? I, yeah, well, I was going to say, as someone who knows him, I wouldn't buy that he would say, uh, if a movie has a message you agree with, therefore you should support the movie. Like, I don't think yeah, he would ever one of the... agree with that as a sentiment. I think he is he getting... Did, he didn't say those exact words, but he he essentially... like He, he didn't say the he, exact words in the other repeated, way, either. I, he, he repeated the, the common... Uh, perspective being shown in other conservative media, which is why would you have an issue against a, why are you trying to not, not watch why would you make fun of a movie so. when it's about well I actually have no idea uh, what okay. he claims his politics I don't know what are type of, I genuinely don't know I, yeah I don't, I don't know if he's conservative or if he consumes conservative media but it's just I, I don't know where that would come from unless you've seen other people say that exact same sort of thing and or unless you you think that Russell Brand is expecting or wanting you to say that on his program. And again, well, I mean, you're it's aware not it, necessarily right? conscious. Hmm? Well, you're aware of it, right? Of that being a thing that's being talked about. Yeah, I wouldn't right? say it because <laughs> it, because <clears throat> it, like, it, it's not a criticism of like, oh, this is the types of things he's saying. It's the types of things he's repeating, you know? Um, is like, it, it, it just, it seems, it seems like something that's being said without actually critically thinking well, but about you know what how you're saying. Like, if, as soon as you, your um your assessment is at least somewhat uh influenced by surrounding meta, right? Uh yes. So is his. But like it, he's, I, I mean, he's even, saying even this the, in the relation to the fact that the film is getting itself. in so much trouble when he's seen it and believes it shouldn't and get in any trouble at all. Meanwhile, a good connection to this would be a film that claims to be very much against of a particular subject, I'm going to try and make as fucking away from it as possible, but Cuties is a film that someone could say, how could you not support it, considering what it's about? But he would obviously, if he had watched it, been like, I can fully understand why the fuck people wouldn't support this, even if it is about what it's about. Meanwhile, this film, he's genuinely baffled that this film has gotten to the point that it is, in terms of everyone hating it, when it's, it, like, it's, I think it's him, she won ahead, and someone else's reviews I've seen, I haven't seen the film yet, but apparently there's very little in it that is like incendiary. A lot of it is the the plot of a man trying yes. to rescue children from child trafficking. It looks like trafficking. a boring fucking movie. Okay, <laughs> it looks like in any case, that's where he's coming at it from. He's baffled that people would want to shill over it because obviously the, we know in the meta there's a lot of other things. It's a culture war film. It's barely get, it barely gets to be considered a film. I, I respect that interpretation, but what he the, the words that he spoke <laughs> in this interview are you know this film is about that i and therefore i don't see why anybody should have any qualms about supporting it right well, if, he says the, the the, film's if he if he meant something else and he just phrased himself improperly then so be it but i think like, so i'm reacting well to at the very saying. least he would say no, no 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 that's not what i meant i didn't mean you should support it no matter what because it has a message i, I agree with i will if he wants to say that's not what he meant i will take him at his word if he wants to correct that but like i just i yeah, I, I I get bad vibes from from that justification. <laughs> you know, I I that, I do not agree with that. What a movie is about is something that you should have no qualms about supporting. That merely the subject matter is something that you should support. That's insane. That's insane. Oh, a movie's about child sex trafficking. Therefore, you should have no qualms about supporting it. Because what it's about, not about the filmmaking, you person talking about films. 
the fact that uh, so many people in mainstream media are, are against this, uh, wow, it really makes me question what their values are. I, I do not understand it at all. Yeah, I See, <laughs> like he he's just not, said it again. He, he, specifically, he's so talking about people, are he's talking it about people who haven't seen it. what their values are. Like, I, I already know. He's talking about people who he... haven't seen it. They, they're talking about the film uh, in a meta sense. None of them are talking about the actual film's events or the filmmaking. What? That's the, and even I, if you go with my interpretation of what he said, then that lends itself to that as well. Like I, I already what know what what he's talking about is the people who are shitting all over the film, pushing it down without having seen it. They don't they don't talk about like the events, of the film itself, or the filmmaking. They talk about the film as a whole is something you should stay the fuck away from. Yeah, and he's he's saying that 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 he's questioning their morals because of what the subject matter of the film is. Yeah, he's questioning the morals of people who don't want to see the movie or who don't like the movie. It is. I, I don't blame it at all for finding that strange. The but the thing that uh, obviously I don't know if they're gonna. Uh, Russell's already mentioned it, right? That the connection people make is something to do with QAnon, one of the actors slash producers, something like that. Yeah. So that's but, like the matter of like, that uh, film. It dep It depends on what. I guess I guess what you're exposed to because I haven't read every single article of people saying like don't watch this movie or whatever the, whatever they're actually saying it seems like it's probably overblown. I think that there's a lot of people clowning on this movie and talking about its success. I think that there's a lot of people that are mentioning that, you know, some of the filmmakers are related to, you know, at least QAnon sympathizing sort of things because it's fucking internet media and of course articles are going to mention that because it's you know, <laughs> like Jim Cav Caviezel, right? So Jesus himself. I'm not surprised that hmm? Jesus himself. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm not, I'm not surprised that like articles are going to mention that or dunk on it. But I'm not, I'm not convinced that like I, I, I think that it's a very uh, dishonest framing to look at you know, the amount of people that are making fun of it, not watching it, or even articles saying like, oh, this is dumb, don't watch it, and it might be related to QAnon or whatever. I think that it's that it's dishonest to take that and then be like, oh, I'm I'm concerned about your morality now because this movie is about child sex trafficking. Like, that's what, that's what he's saying in this interview. If that's not what he meant, then we'll have to determine that later, I guess, but that's what he's saying here, and that's, I take a I take issue with that. I, like I said, would seriously doubt that he wouldn't let you know if you were to ask him. But it, not yeah. at all. It doesn't mean that. He's, he's, and I think he's specifically talking about the people who are condemning it without seeing it. Um, but like, like for for reasons that relate to stuff that has nothing to do with the film. So even if uh, he would find it bizarre to stay away from it for reasons that have nothing to do with the film necessarily. But maybe not. I don't actually know what his perspective is on it entirely. I'm just... I'm just like, okay, so we're in this conversation right now in this Discord chat, right? Mm -hmm. The conversation is about my reaction to what he's saying, right? But be like, and I feel like, especially in this sense right here, like particularly here, like I I'm coming away with like a pretty literal interpretation of the words that he's saying. Um, and your disagreements or your charitability in terms of like what he might be saying you're adding these other things of like, oh, he's talking about those other people and all this stuff that he didn't say. And so it's like, well, I, at the very least, if let's say I misinterpreted him, I don't think it's <clears throat> unreasonable for me to have walked away with the perspective that I did because I'm basing it on what he said, not like not these extra no, I, things I, I that get didn't you... get mentioned in the conversation, right? Yeah, I get why you said that, but I'm also basing my interpretation off of literally what he said didn't, as um, well. I thought Russell introduced it as uh, a lot of mainstream media outlets are... Uh shitting on the film why is this happening and yeah and then he and then he says this is a movie uh and then then drinker says this is a movie about child sex trafficking uh i don't see why anyone would have any qualms with supporting it based on that and i question the morals of the people that are you know tr either shitting on it or trying to get people not to see it and it's 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 a very emotionally based argument of just saying like oh this is about a series like the fucking marketing for this movie. Did you know that at the end of the movie, there's the, like they have this little uh, countdown uh, uh, timer to a QR code that essentially they they go like, "Hey, uh, we need to stop child sex trafficking. 
do the QR code, you can buy more tickets to the movie. It's not to a charity. It's not, it's not to like any kind of organization where anybody would actually be helping anything. It's literally to buy more tickets for the movie. And they're like, and you can buy tickets for people who can't attend too. So like there are theaters that, that are selling out that have like empty seats of just nobody in them. Cause people are just like buying it, thinking that they're saving kids. The entire marketing of this movie <clears throat> is essentially like send this to 10 people or your mom will die. It's a fucking like, I'm going to watch it. Don't worry. And I've got close friends that have seen it in theaters and like, you know, uh, but it, it, regardless of what the quality of the movie is, it could be the best acted, best directed fucking thing in the world. It's just very, the, the, the conversation surrounding it. It's not just, Oh, a movie existed. And then all of a sudden these uh, journalists that are trying to make people not realize that child sex trafficking is a thing like, Oh, we're trying to shine a light on this issue because not enough people know that child sex trafficking is bad or not enough people. They, they don't want you to know that ch children are being sex trafficked and that you can stop it by buying more tickets to this movie. Like the whole thing surrounding this thing just stinks to high heaven, honestly, like to the point where it's not even about the movie anymore. And as critical drinker is being interviewed here, the, the conversation is not even about the movie. It's about, well, it's about this. And I question the moral of people's, people uh arguing against the movie because this is what it's about i just i take a big issue with that i can't wait to see the fucking movie i would have watched it before today for this conversation but i couldn't find a torrent there was a torrent that turned out to be the wrong movie <laughs> okay uh and i couldn't i couldn't find anything other than a cam rip like yeah, i'm fucking is... hyped to watch it but I'm, I'm i'm not trapping myself in a theater for this shit i'm doing a watch along for it so yeah i i've got no context on a lot of Everything. I don't even. I barely have context on what people have been saying about the movie surrounding it, so I can't do much for this one. Most, most, the overwhelming majority of the people promoting this film don't say anything about the movie and just talk about how it's an important movie to see because that's what the movie literally tells you, <laughs> and it's it's like a fuck. It's it's so weird. I'm not saying that Critical Drinker uh, does that. I'm positive that he talks about what he liked in the film in his video. I just I couldn't finish the video because he started summarizing the plot, and I don't want to watch. I don't want to spoil the movie. So we're all familiar now with like Jeffrey Epstein. You're you're parroting the shit. You're just parroting what other right wing people are saying. This is so, this is so or he believes it himself. Well, I mean, if he does, if he genuinely does believe what he said, then it's still contradictory to like his whole channel, right? So, so if, I'm I'm giving him an out by saying that he's parroting what other people are saying, like that's that's me giving him an out. <laughs> like I said, I think if you would speak with him, he would never say you should see films and support them based on whatever message they have that agrees with you. He would he would want to appeal to the filmmaking or the execution, which I believe he would. With Sound of Freedom, he'd yeah, say absolutely. it's about the execution of that message. Okay. Such That's why it would be contradictory to everything else that, you yeah. know, that would be why. NPC shit. Oh my god. Like, holy fuck! Were you just, like, waiting for the queue? Oh my god. So, I'm, I'm, as an RM Brown subscriber who subscribes to his Patreon, I'm going to Good share channel. a bit of his Patreon exclusive. Do you mind if we skip over this part? Yes. Yeah. As in, go for it. I don't okay. Care. It's, we just talk about QAnon shit. We talk about the people who have Which I agree, never by seen the way, a movie the, that's not in the main theater. <laughs> so the like, people who say like no, they're trying to prevent me from seeing agree? Sound of Freedom. No, I'm, I'm agreeing with you that it's the silly. The filmmakers agree. Oh, do they? No, the, the filmmakers have, yeah, they've released like a statement being like, yeah, AMC is not trying to prevent people from watching the movie. AMC is the only reason why it's, it's, it's successful is because they're fucking playing our movie. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, no, I'm with you It's a very that. funny conspiracy theory. And you know what's funny? I actually have like an updated, uh, I, I mean, I have my own conspiracy theory about it that I think is at least fun to think about. It would be funny if it turned out that AMC was like fucking with people and making their experiences uncomfortable. It would only be because they discovered that that's free marketing <laughs> and that every time they do that, some some nut job is going to come out of the theater being like, you have to watch Sound of Freedom because they're trying to stop you. That would be funny. I don't think that that's the case, but that's a fun thing to think about. That would be funny. Also, also, I would say that if there is a higher prevalence, if there's a measurably higher prevalence of uh, theater mishaps or, um, you know, like AC not working or the lights went out or blah, 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 like all this like dumb shit, it's not, it's, it's not because of the subject of the movie. It's because it's not like the fucking 
D box ultra AVX 3D. Like it's a the, theater chains organize their theaters by priority of like, okay, the big movies playing in this one, the fucking Disney movies playing in this one. And then you get like some smaller theaters to the side that probably don't, they, you know, when they have money to spend on maintenance, they probably don't check those ones or maintain those ones as well. So there might actually be a higher prevalence of mishaps and just like, you know, oh, the AC doesn't work. There might be a higher prevalence of that for this movie because it's not like a fucking Disney movie. <laughs> and a lot of these people, a lot of the people watching this because it's being shared in such a political, hyper-political way, a lot of the people watching this, like this might be the first fucking indie movie they've ever seen, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, that I could only access through RM Brand yeah, because maybe. I didn't know where to access it otherwise because i had heard that on iron brand but story and it does appear that Peter Fieri is so more popular than i imagined it was as a young man blessedly um, but it's odd that a film like this i will watch the sound of freedom at some point swear, as far as i can understand it the only roots for saying there's an extension to qanon conspiracy theories is as soon as it's on digital i'll say his name right the lead actor yeah Kavizu, Kavizu, Kavizu. he commented on that slightly wacky wardrobe manufacturing story where they're saying in front of people he made a comment on it maybe the lead actor commented on it and i know it's funny by the same people that made the chosen only the guy that played jesus in that he bought it the guy that played jesus in the chosen will body double for me i think in ballers an hbo show that I do. <laughs> jesus is my body double that's my new catchphrase man i'm taking that down my stigma so um, yeah, do you think this is a question i put you as an expert in movies or in a, an authority on movies. Do you think you're an expert in movies, or at least an authority in movies? What actually... True. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go on. <laughs> if you want, he's definitely an sure. authority, right? You'd have to concede that with the yeah authority. I would, I would, or I would agree with the word authority for sure. You wouldn't agree with expert, and that's okay. I mean, that's subject. I wouldn't even. I don't even know that he would call himself an expert. expert yeah, I, I don't know that. It's, yeah, yeah. I, Film I would, expert. I would is consider myself to, an authority yeah. on movies, but not expert. Um, it depends on what you know, genre or year. You know, I don't pretend to be knowledgeable of you know fucking pre nineteen fifties movies. Not like I haven't seen any, but I don't pretend to be an expert on those. But mm -hmm. I feel like I'm very knowledgeable on contemporary foreign independent uh, indie films. Oh yeah. You know, of course, there's the idea that, well, wow, is there actually is something tied around all this P5 network stuff? Uh, let me know in the comments, guys, and that's a subject you've got into. Um, or is it, or, or additionally, is it because of, this is a funding model, a and a not necessarily a distribution model, but a PR model that's bypassing a lot of the gatekeepers? You know, they're going on podcasts, they're, you're promoting it, they're Tim Pool, I've seen talking about it, but, you know, it doesn't seem to have to go through the, I don't know, green tomato, red tomato, fresh, or whatever stuff. What, what do you think about that? I mean, it's twofold, really. Like, for... It's crazy because, like, the fact that they're supporting this, like, grassroots film. You know, like, I would love to see them support indie movies in general. Like, it seems like they would get what they want if they were just aware of more indie movies. First of all, um, the, the movie doesn't try to make any connections to some... I mean, just, yeah, he does, and he, he's making one, which would be really cool. Well, short film, but mm -hmm. still, Dapid Stones. Should I grab a drink? Uh, it... I'd be the only one. <laughs> You're okay if you want to do that, yeah. You can, you can, you have our permission to drink. I've been hearing those sodas pop open. I so mean, they're I not. Understand well, why they're, you're... they're uh, water. They're like carbonated water things. Ugh. Ew. What are they called? They're called bubblies. I used to be a Lacroix boy, <laughs> but uh, wow, you yeah, are bubblies. Kidding. Bubblies might be replacing them. B u b b l y. Uh, yeah, B U B L Y. B U B L Y. Boobly? Right, yeah. Their pineapple, pineapple one's good. Oh, that's Boobly better than. I mean, it's like. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, because people... yeah, flavorless is nasty. Uh, I don't know how. I don't see how people drink sparkling water just by itself. Oh, I hate it. It's I so that you can like spend it. more than poor people. Oh my god. I don't know. I feel like I feel like water when you're at a restaurant, like, figured out pretty early on, like in the in the game. I feel like it wasn't didn't need a patch. Water, yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, water, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like I, I like I, really class... don't like sparkling water. I, I, like I just classic like water. It yeah, classic water. I... Water 1.0. Yeah, I genuinely think I have like some sort of ADHD because like everything I do is just for some for so form of stimulation. <laughs> and I'm like, I just want the stimulating water. I need my, my <laughs> tongue needs stimulation when I'm drinking this water. I want a, I want a crackly water. <laughs> crackly. I don't know how I get fucking diagnosed at this point. <laughs> Impossible. Uh, you know, ring that's like operating at the top levels of american society or anything like that it's very much like this is stuff that's going on in um, colombia mexico that sort of thing it's just a, a guy trying to rescue kids from a, a hostile situation you know and that's that's really the limit of it so it's not trying to make that connection at all which is so weird that people seem to be getting so defensive about that I, and two it's a cheap 
Okay, well, what I described was not necessarily that the movie was uh, trying to implicate top-level people as orchestrating the child abduction or pedophilia, but I know he's not arguing against me, but I'm, I'm just clarifying. I would say as well that that gives me more of the impression that he really is trying to say that the film itself isn't it's not proportional, like the reaction to it, to the film mm -hmm. itself, but it's worth considering there's loads of matter around it, of course. What I'm saying. Yes. Um, and also, you can necessary. probably up the speed by well, 0.25. Everyone uh, was saying say they couldn't understand. Decreased... <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but in the video, it, I decreased not... the, sp the speed from Oh, okay, that's why. Okay. That's why. Okay, yeah, go for it. Early the, I was uh... curious why it seemed so fast all of a sudden, and I was like, oh, no, fuck yeah. Isn't that political? Though? I mean, it is very political. This movie that he's promoting is very political. But uh, yeah, the... Uh, I mean, I assume you agree. The conversation surrounding the movie. Yeah, because the dichotomy between, like, it, it pertains to policy in relation to different governments and countries, but the, the film itself isn't necessarily taking any shots at any particular person outside of... I haven't seen it, right? So granted, but that's what I've heard exactly. from him. Yeah, the conversation surrounding the movie is... Yeah like inherently political and it's just like it's one of those things where it's like fucking no like it seems like nobody would have seen this movie if it wasn't this big weird drama <laughs> you know yeah like, i mean there's, that so, happens, many, right? there's like... so many indie movies that exist like as a guy that that's seen like there's i i've seen a lot of let's say like spanish movies where it just it clones this exact same type of or at least from what i can tell from the trailer of like yeah we're doing this like uh like action stereotypical thing and it's like kind of low budget like there's movies like this from what i can tell and i haven't seen it yet but from my understanding of what it is it feels like there's movies like this all the time and then this one just gets like thrust into the mainstream and just hugely successful because there was a huge political drama about it you know it's it we we live in such a weird contrarian culture where it's like well no we don't if you <laughs> if we if you if you present the idea of like this is bad then someone's gonna be like i want to do that or like this is good like i fucking hate that like everybody's just trying to be a contrarian it's so annoying yeah things, there's certainly things those are out there that's that annoying. in this it, it, it's it's so corporate corporately exploitative at this point in time although i guess it was an independent film and not a corporation but mm-hmm People are explaining the, the issues with the movie are coming with the uh, unreliable narrator narrator aspect. I'm getting more intoxicated as the night goes on. FYI, Deep movie like it was made for like well under twenty million dollars. This isn't like an Indiana Jones job where it's like three hundred million plus. God knows how much on marketing and stuff. And so they, they don't have the budget to to do TV commercials or all the fancy advertising that you can ask for. They do this grassroots stuff where they're they're just making themselves available to talk to podcasters and stuff um, and and sell the, the movie on its own merits. Imagine that. Imagine a movie. That's the movie on its own merits, like. <sighs> I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Don't get me wrong. I have a tough time believing based on the trailer and based on the movie that I've the, the, the bits that I've seen. Like, I have a tough time believing that the movie based on its own merits is why people are like talking about it. Right. It's very clearly. Well, they're talking about the um, the the movie makers themselves and how they've marketed it. And I haven't seen any of the interviews or anything like that for it. So but it's neat if they're going on well, podcasts I mean, part and of the... about it and stuff. That is true. I wish part, more people part of the that. marketing is that fucking QR code at the end being like, if you want to fucking, it's like Coney 2012 shit. Like, you got to share this movie. Except even, even in Coney 2012, they pretended to have like a, ooh, here's a Coney little kit and this money is going towards stopping him. Whereas like this movie is just like, no, this movie, if you just buy more tickets, then they'll, we'll get the message out. Was well, that people part of will the know. Uh, interviews and stuff? Or is that playing after the end that's that's after, literally in the end the credits of the movie well that's the movie itself we're talking about he's talking about the way that they're going on the podcast and the the grassroots sort of advertising that they're doing yeah Which i would just say that that's, right? that's included the that's oh, yeah. part of the marketing is how they put that in the film um i mean sure but like i just for some reason it feels like you you're trying to find a way to disagree when Surely what he just said is perfectly agreeable, right? We would want more indie directors to be more willing to talk to different podcasters, maybe to celebrate and promote the movies. Uh, I don't disagree with that part. I yeah. was just, I disagree with the idea that it's a uh, film that uh, is successful because of its own merits. <laughs> well, you said they're trying to advertise it based on its own merits. Uh, okay. Which I couldn't, 
I, I don't know because I haven't seen these interviews and these uh, these sit downs they're having with podcasters and YouTubers and things. Yeah, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's the exact words he said, but it, it's fine. And I, it's not anything that I need to politically based, right? Anything. People are like, oh, if you don't like the movie, you're a pedophile. It's just actually good. People watch it because, hey, it's actually a really rewarding experience. And it's uh, tackling an important issue. That we should I don't know. Out. Imagine that. That's, that, that. It's almost like, OK, hold on. You're kind of contradicting yourself when you say it's actually good. But then you say it's actually an important issue, right? And it's all merits. Imagine that. Imagine a movie that's just actually good. And people watch it because, hey, it's actually a really rewarding experience. And it's uh, tackling an important issue that we should learn more about. Is that not is that not exactly like what you were complaining about earlier when you're like, oh, it shouldn't be about like the race or gender of the character? Well, so that would be something that's worthwhile, right? Like if they actually did bring in maybe a very controversially chosen character or, or background, but it's actually executed really well. If you had like two characters to promote, one of them was standard, one of them was unusual, and they were both great, you might choose the unusual one just to try and promote a slightly different experience, like you said, about different cultural sort of things, right? And I guess he's saying mm -hmm. that one of the aspects that's celebratory is the fact that they've nailed a very important and good message. But that it's not it's it's necessary to full praise, but not sufficient. I just I I if I mean I, I so I feel I, the same way, by the way, I, about I, a lot of movies that are my favorites. If they've got like really good writing, but also a really solid bit of like philosophy or messaging in them that feels like i'm more encouraged to promote it there's there okay so the film is like a based on a true story and it's argued you know just how much of it is like embellished or how much of it is like accurate um i could imagine people being like share this because it's about an important issue if it were like an actual credible documentary or something right as soon as you like bring it into this like fictionalized retelling of like who the fuck knows right like it i've seen a lot of documentaries like where they tackle subjects that are lesser known or like nobody's talking about this or it exposes something or it helps people wake up to like holy shit what the fuck is going on like and everybody's like damn i wish i knew about this earlier and in that sense i could imagine people saying like yes it's important to spread this message but like it's as far as everybody's just talking about how the movie is just about child sex trafficking with, with like, I don't know if most people believe that that's not a bad thing. Like, I don't know if people's minds need to be changed Would about you... that or if people don't think that it's a thing that happens. Like, I think that that's kind of like, so it would be as if fucking Derek Savage released Cool Cat Stops a School Shooting and is like, well, this is an important issue. Like, it feels just but... as cringe, you know, like the, I don't know. the well... movie itself should be. If like it were really, about, really like, good, or, though, or the Lorax, you know, like if it were really, really good, I wouldn't blame you at all for including in your review that it is an important message that we need to be more aware of how these like horrors and stuff. The thing is, a lot of people would probably tell you, yes, of course, I know that there's uh, child trafficking throughout the world and stuff, but they might watch the film and come away with like, I didn't know it was like that. And I didn't know it was that that, you know, sure. there's, there's obviously yes. going to be a shock of and seeing it. And I and I completely agree. If you want to include that as a phrase in your review about how like it's an important issue or whatever, great. But I mean, like that was his opening statement, and it's most of what he's talked about here. Well, like to give you an example, <laughs> um... see, it, and even if, if even if we don't have the critical drinker as an example, like the overwhelming majority of the conversation on the internet about this movie is just. They're trying to stop you from seeing this because it's an important issue and you have to see it. Otherwise, they win. Like, that's it's not about the art. Right. And I'm not saying that that's what critical drinkers experience is, But like the the overwhelming conversation about this <laughs> is that that's why I'm taking an issue with with uh, him phrasing it in this way and, and making these. uh with um, him having that focus, it seems. I feel right? like the seems the like, pundits I, you do. I wish that he went against the grain on this. Well, but like the 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 actual like quotes that are clearly influencing how you feel about his quotes. Like, uh, I just we gotta try and treat them uh, as their own sort of thing as best we can, right? Like, if he said something yes. yeah. that crossed further lines, I'd be with you completely. But so far, he's mostly apparently talking about how he's shocked that this film is getting so controversial and so hated despite the fact that it regards a pretty agreeable message and it does it in a very strong way. He thinks it's executed well. Mm -hmm. Is that not, is that not like contradictory to the movie's own merits in your opinion when you say like it's an important issue that people should know about? Right? This is the exact same reason why it was critical against Precious. 
you know i'm like okay it's like kind of a sloppy movie it might be about like oh you know like overweight you know impoverished uh you know black person you know struggling in society she was sexually abused or whatever like the subject matter isn't a reason to think the movie is good is it is this not exactly what you argue against in the rest of your videos you know Imagine that. That's that, that. It's almost like that's foreign now to us. Yeah. Therefore, it's an example, isn't it, of a, 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 it's quite guerrilla and quite radical because it doesn't have to go through the processes that typically a movie would do. The amount, as you described, that's typically spent on advertising. And uh, you know, you work in independent media. I work in independent media. And sometimes what I start to feel, and I wonder if you feel the same, is they're attacking the content. They don't agree with my ideology. But actually, I'm starting to think what they don't agree with is us existing at all. There's more like an economic problem. Oh no, this is where people are going to spend advertising. Shit. We can't keep up with this. Do you think? Shit. You, uh, well, I mean, put it this way: like when I work here, making my videos, that I do. It's me in my office at home. I got zero percent overheads. I spent zero dollars on anything. And so, but I get millions of views because people are interested. To hear what I've got to say. And that's you know this this is kind of why I don't hate the critical drinker is like he's not he's not funded by billionaires he's that literally just of. a guy that's expressing his own opinions on movies he's expressing how he feels the industry is and even though I might take a lot of disagreements with that and you know come out with a completely different perspective it's not like it's not like he's fucking like being astroturfed you know like say what you will about him appearing on Russell Brand, but, like, I think it's interesting to understand why people gravitate towards this. I think that it's very important. If we if we are to make, like... Uh, I shouldn't include... <laughs> make <sh> Olivia, make sure you, you get... Oh, wait. You can't see the URL. Never mind, my webcam's in front of it. I was about to say, block the URL so no one can see that video. Um, I think it's important to understand why he has 1.77 million subscribers with less videos than me. He's very clearly connected with people. He's very clearly connected with, like, a large portion of the population. He's very clearly connected with some people in the industry, like Russell Crowe. He had an interview with Russell Crowe. If you want my genuine opinion on why that is, I think he makes very bite-sized, easy-to-understand, very dense 10-minute videos that cover and recommend or tell people to stay away from in a way that they can easily associate with as to the quality of current film industry. It's very, very uh connectable a lot of what he says remember goes well beyond whether or not things like appealing to a particular political perspective he talks a lot about writing mm -hmm. in a very easy to understand way in a very quick way and um one of the powers i feel like he has that i certainly don't <laughs> is uh he could do it quickly he could have like a thousand points stuffed mm -hmm. into like 10 minutes um would you, would you call him short man maybe I don't think he take, <laughs> didn't take that well, but you know, he's, what is it when you're short but you make loads? I don't know. Fucking machine gun man. I don't know. That's nuts. Uh, the yeah. fact that he, he had an interview with Ru Russell Crowe, right? I think that it's important not to just completely dismiss and be like, oh yeah, you know, like no one cares what you have to say. Like try to try to understand what he has to say. Try to understand what he has to say. Like uh, engage with it. Um, I, I disagree with a good amount of it. I agree with some of it. I don't think that he's completely wrong in everything that he says, but, like, you know, I think that there's a bit of nuance that he's missing. And, and that's the thing that they hate, where you've got, like... Uh... But I'm also a person that consumes art movies and goes to film festivals where he just kind of watches Marvel movies and... Mm. Everything was so great up until then, but that's okay. Indiana it's, Jones and it's it depends on how you define it. Sure, depends on how you define it. Jurassic Park and occasionally something like the whale. Uh, news networks and you've got studios with like dozens and hundreds of employees. They've got huge expenses that they go to, and they get like a fraction of the, the viewership that people like us get because people just don't care about them anymore because they know how fake they are. I, I've heard it said before. Like, it was a very smart man named uh, Robert Marburnett who said the currency of our current age is authenticity, and it's so fucking true. People care about uh, presenters, whoever it is, who care about the, the subject matter they're talking about, who actually are authentic. They might not be as polished. They might not have the big production. I understand someone who's as angry as him at the current state of media and i i think about people that watch russell brand i think about that you know the my friend's sister whose boyfriend watches him i think about that sort of person but i don't understand like making your career based off of like the media that you're watching if you're that person i don't understand that part because it, it seems like you, you don't really must inherently have like a very limited with, perspective with on media. the understand with, with the misconception that he wasn't seeking out many other films which I well, even even if um, I mean, even if you only care about, you know, the MCU and Star Wars and more you know stuff like that, you know, wanting to preserve their quality or get those back on track should be you know, pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, you know, because someone exclusively myself. covered Disney yeah, remakes, Star Wars and Marvel, sure. and they said that they're doing it because they're going to keep pounding at the, the how shit they've gotten until times change sort of thing. 
you could argue it's like why are you doing that move on to something else but they could say like this is what matters getting the the, the voice out there you know they believe in it sort of thing mm -hmm. values it doesn't matter they're talking about things that they care about and that they're invested in that's what people want honestly yeah in a sense, that's it seems like it seems like inherently you must have like an interest that suits you more right like something more that you might want to do in your life other than movies power isn't it will like whether he's talking i mean i will say like he's got a shit ton of stuff going on with his life yeah. um, mm -hmm. but obviously movies is just like i think what he would argue is his main hobby that's turned now into his full career about mixed martial arts or whether he's talking about politics or psychedelics or hunting or diet or supplements or whatever outside of writing of course and short film making you get the impression because it's, in my opinion it's true that he's saying what he believes and he's saying what he cares about and that seems sufficient to stand up against you know clear attempts to take him out around the either making horse paste time which again similarly like, I did he well, say man. horse paste Yum. To stand up against, you know, clear attempts to take him out around the either making horse pace time, which again, similarly, like I reckon as well, there they just don't want that. You know, Carlin famous, George Carlin says it's like a, you know, if you don't need conspiracy, where convergent, where interests naturally converge. And the mainstream media don't want powerful, independent voices that are able to just bypass their models because, like you say, you have got zero overhead, you can operate on your own. And plainly, you're in a position where if you like a movie, you say you do, and if you don't like a movie, you say that even more. And yet, you're using your platform to recommend Free Guy. Like fuck. Like I, I don't understand this. Like. What's wrong with recommending Free Guy if you think it's good? Uh, it, it is, again, based on the misconception that he wasn't really okay. sharing a bunch of other lesser-known artists. Like, I... Damn. I wish that I saw someone as critical of mainstream media where, like, your videos... Let's see if I can search the word recommends. Sound of Freedom, The Menu, The Whale, Boiling Point, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Expanse, Ford v. Ferrari, All Quiet on the Western Front, Arcane, 1917, Event Horizon, Dread, Fight Club. I will say, even without... Say, that's a diverse set of films. Even without the, the other ones that he's done, that's not I, bad. We all, we all have different thresholds for what we but would like, consider to be... Compared to what, I imagine you went to recommends and it was just like big mainstream studio movies that, you know, like he recommends fucking Infinity War and then he recommends Star Wars Rogue One or something. Uh, I'm Well, I mean, like in terms of like how, I, I don't know how to c categorize them other than by saying like that they're almost exclusively just movies that everybody's already heard of. Well, I mean, except Boiling um, Point, which I, which I misattributed as hard-boiled which i uh, i would yeah. be curious to know Can't a percentage see, yeah. of people who have either seen the menu the whale or boiling point in chat right now i know the whale's been yeah. talked about but how many here, people have actually seen well, it here, here's the thing here's the thing in your chat there wouldn't be a lot of people in my chat there would be a lot of people and that's not to say that i'm better i think that we all have different thresholds for uh what types of media that we're exposed to and the types of media that our audiences expect us to cover a lot of people watch me because i cover uh foreign independent films and do film festival things and because they want to you know not only just want to be exposed to more uh films outside of the uh mainstream purview or whatever the word is not just because they want to be exposed to more but because they're already actively engaged in it a lot of the films that I wind up discovering are from people in my community that post on my subreddit being like, oh, shit, I just saw this thing at this film festival. You should check it out. And because I've cultivated an audience that is familiar with that and is interested and genuinely loves and pursues all of these smaller films, it helps me to discover them, too. It's it's just oh. a part of my thing. So um, That's I would essentially say with my the point. audience that Critical... With, yeah, exactly. With with the audience that Critical Drinker has, I will agree. Yeah, that's that's that why he has that like, audience. Sorry? That's the, the, it's all circular. That's why he has the audience in the first place. Recommending I, things I, like this I is think, what I think you interrupted me without me saying something that you were going to disagree. Well, with. But, I, I was saying, even if even if he's recommending something like the whale, right? That's a good thing uh, to his audience because it generally um, the types of people in his audience are going to be less aware of a film like that than if they were in my audience. So that's a good thing that he is exposing them to those things. And so, yeah, at the beginning of this conversation, I completely conceded that point, and that seems to make up a lot of like this. this well, screen, but it sounded like you were unfortunately, but uh, sounds like you disagree, though. Yeah, like, I thought I thought you said because we were saying even with this selection, not including all of his other recommendations. <sighs> wow! Well, and then you said which ones the are we talking about? just just uh, the menu boiling point in the whale. Well, the nature of them, that those choices, because what I'm trying to get at is that. Okay, I'm gonna go through the list here on my desktop. 
if he was so to uh, recommend a lot of indie films that he doesn't actually know whether or not they appeal versus peppering them in with lots of because didn't you say you want to you want to make sure you cover a lot of mainstream stuff as well yeah I don't to, I don't disagree with that and I don't criticize him for well I'm saying that um, I think he's yeah. pretty much cracked a really good ratio uh, I'm not sure that he should push too hard and start like focusing too hard on a lot of indie stuff as opposed to I, I don't uh, yeah I I, I thought i conceded on this earlier but yeah i don't i don't expect him to uh cover the uh you know diverse area of films that i do i don't expect him to do that and i don't uh even think it would be beneficial for his channel and i think that there's a lot of things that i might be interested in that he might not be that would be completely inaccessible for his audience um do you know about i kind of think about this in the same way that you know you know the argument of like uh people will say like, oh, you're a pipeline to like the alt-right or you're uh -huh. a pipeline to yeah. like fucking socialism. Everybody, every major um, person communicating on the internet is a pipeline to somewhere in some direction in mm -hmm. the same sense that we're having a conversation right now. You could argue that there's people pipelining from your audience into mine right now, right? And vice so, versa, yeah. Um, it, exactly. So I, I like, like every, ev there's, there's different thresholds and there's different focal points. Um, and so what might be a movie that nobody has heard about in my audience is entirely different from a movie that nobody's heard about in Critical Drinker's audience. And I'm saying that that is not a bad thing uh, that he is recommending those types of movies for his audience. I'm just saying that I would categorize a lot of the movies in that specific search when I search recommends on his channel. And I've since learned that that is not the entirety of everything he's recommended. I'm just saying that most of those are just movies that, like, you know, you don't need his channel to discover, is all I'm saying. But theoretically, the people he draws to his channel would need his channel to discover them. Yeah, depending on what type of media diet you have. So, yeah, it's not incorrect that he's recommending them. It's not incorrect that he's not recommending more, uh, you know, there uh, are hard to find monster. movies. The the I'm, just, I'm just making an observation, which is, you know, like the, the, the same as just what I said two sentences ago, I think. It sounded like uh, you were saying Does that, that make sense? upon discovering that he recommended more, it made it better to you. But what we were trying to say was just this list alone is pretty solid for his channel. But now it sounds like you agree and you chill with uh, it. Let's see. So we get to the bottom of the word recommends. One, two, three, four. I'm like I'm looking at purely based on the word recommends. I... There's a few. There's a few in there. Uh, I would. I mean, yeah. I I, I would still agree that it's not better than zero. Like certain yeah. channels that only cover like yes big budget franchise I mean, IP I movies. Yes, I agree with that. I'm having uh, a little bit of uh, mental difficulty right now uh, differentiating between my personal feelings on the list and how I would consider them personally versus uh, what it would average, mean to his audience. Like the role he plays. So, but... so like, what, what I'm saying, like, oh, is this, like, a good list of movies? Like, I can't really... It's, okay. A lot of it is just stuff I'm either not interested in or jaded by or have seen and you know love or have seen and is bad but uh it's difficult to to quantify exactly how many people in his audience know of event horizon you know <laughs> well he, he obviously uh, the, well, the, the context for recommending that is it's it's one of his like he loves that film like that's why he wanted even, to throw that in yeah. there even just the desire to go back to look at older films and recommend them instead of just doing things that are coming out right now isn't that worth anything uh yeah, it, but it, it I would say that I would say that the catalog of over, older films uh featured on this channel is a little bit like borderline tropey. In the same way and it's not to say, you know, the conversation we were having earlier Sarah Connor and Ripley are not bad characters because they're everyone's answer, but I I always just kind of get like, you know, fuck, you know, when I see a lot of the same thing, I wish for something different. I that's just me, you know. Um, granted, but of course, like, keep your eye open, right? Because he'll come up with some examples here and there. You'll be like, oh shit, for example, Boiling Point, which 100%. I will be curious to hear what you think about life. it when you see it. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it. I might watch it tomorrow, actually. Wait.
everything everywhere all at once. The Expanse, Ford v. Ferrari, All Quiet on the Western Front, Arcane, 1917, Event Horizon, Dread, Fight Club, Blade Runner, Top Gun, Maverick, Predator, Jaws, Invincible, Falling Down. Like, oh man, like, you have two million subscribers. I can't be that upset at, at somebody, like, that just doesn't have the same peripheral, the same purview. Like, I don't know. It just, it just seems like everything that you've ever recommended is something that, like, you have, to, like, inherently to have known about it, someone has to have thrown it at you rather than you discovering it. And I think I'm not that really... that's a waste <laughs> of a Yeah, this yeah, is bizarre I, I guess to I don't, me. Because uh, the reason why I saw the menu was just because I had time to kill, and I was like, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll check that one out. And, I mean, I don't know why there's any reason to assume that that couldn't be the case for Drinker for one of these movies. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hear about these movies in such a variety of ways, and I don't, I don't mm. see why it's bad, especially if you're a drinker and you know a lot of people, and a lot of people are communicating with you and you to them. Oh yeah, that I mean, you at, get a lot at, of your recommendations through there. That's true, right? At some point, if you're immersed enough in, uh, like, like it's it's hard to be surprised by a film that comes out. Like, it's not going to ambush you. as like, oh, I'd never heard of that at all. Like, it becomes harder and harder because you're just more. Well, uh, sort of think about uh, what's happening think about how we buy video games i think that probably over 90 percent of all the video games i buy i heard about or was encouraged to buy because a friend told me about them because i have so many people talking mm. about games around me recommending me games people telling me about games posting pictures of games that they're playing that i just absorb it all from them and that then I can, you know, like, oh, what's everybody playing? What are they recommending me to play? What does a friend want to play with me? Um, I mean, yesterday, the billiards, right? What we played, what was it? Pool Nation. Because Molly was like, hey, let's play Pool Nation. And I was like, <laughs> all right, let's play Pool Nation. Well, and so we started I mean, playing Pool yeah, Nation, so. The reason why I got Pikmin 4 was, I mean, I was aware of it, but when I booted up my Switch, I got an ad for it. So, like, that's an ad actually working. I'm like, oh, yeah, Pikmin 4, I might play that. Which, uh, so, I don't know if that's a good thing. Well, and, and <laughs> to clarify, <laughs> myself, Rags, and like Fringy all consider ourselves pretty into video games, but yet we don't tend to browse the actual, like, libraries and see what takes our fancy, if you know what I mean. No, well, no yeah, I get too many recommendations. I already know I'm interested in, so I know when it's coming out, and I'm keeping it, like, Dead Space didn't surprise me, right? That was one that I'd keep, I was keeping my eye yeah. on. Um... Or, uh, well, I guess Baldur's Gate 3, which I, that kind of snuck up, because I wasn't really paying much attention to, uh, to, to that game, but now that one's sort of, but that would be another instance of word of mouth, because all you hear is people talking about how much they're enjoying it, like, in large numbers. Yes. It's kind of interesting to see how, like you said, Rags, the way that a game can sort of organically, or a film, I mean, everything ever all at once, right, is, like, the most recent obvious example of word of mouth serving to advertise a film dramatically yeah um when i look at some of the the games that i play or have played somewhat recently and how i got into them i'm like oh i do you, someone wanted to play deep rock galactic with me so i downloaded it and now it's one of my favorite games or oh i saw a youtuber playing Rimworld, and that looked fun so i downloaded that and that that's one of my favorite games you know it just happens you know and plus, it's not someone's fault either, the way that they receive information, especially if people are talking well, uh, to you about it. And you have to consider Drinker's backlog is going to be enormous. Like, uh, yeah. he's not going to want so you... like any kind of... He's, he doesn't need to discover when he's got so many things that he needs to see because they've been highly recommended by people he trusts. Yeah, well, yeah and that's I, it's like a yeah. way of curation or like a, a litmus test <laughs> of a yeah, sense, that's, right? It, you have, that's kind of a if, thing that we haven't talked about much, right? It's just finite time. <laughs> Like, yeah, a, if I have, a, if, if I'm curious to see a movie, and you know, I have a backlog of thirty movies and five hundred games, and I get a recommendation from three people that I, you know, trust and whose opinions I value on something, that's gonna skyrocket it to the, you know, near the top of the list. Because of course, duh, of course it would. That's kind of how Boiling Point spread. I caught it. That's kind of funny, actually. I caught that randomly on Netflix. I was just like, huh, I don't know what this is. All right. I remember hearing about it because of Jason Fleming. There's an interview that I was actually there for with him. And I was like, all right, I, sh I did say I wouldn't mind checking it out. So probably see it now. And then I watched it. was so blown away by it. I showed Fringin' Rags immediately and hyper-recommended it to Drinker. 
Uh, that, oh, yeah. film is, uh, that film didn't come out this year. It came out last year, right? I think so. I think so. Dude, that film was so good. <laughs> like, I was just <laughs> thinking about where it's it was. 2021, like, it says. Ah, right. Because I was going to say, like, I wonder where I'd put it on, like, a list if it came out this year. But mm. damn, it'd be really high. That film would be yeah. really, really, really high up on the list. Everyone see Boiling Point. It's very good. It's rated G for good. Um, why am I saying? Is he dead? It's rated R for restaurant. He said he had to go pee. Maybe he's have. Maybe this one's a big one. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe that turned into, you know, maybe he had a a waterfall. Maybe his objective change along the way. Maybe his side quest became the main quest, so to speak. Maybe he's shitting. Who knows? Are we doing... Oh, are we wait? Are we waiting then? I don't know. Should we wait? Should I we mean, move on? I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, we could wait. We could press forward. It depends. I guess it would. The, well, you know, the determining factor would be. He's kicking the can down the road because he doesn't know Fringy. <laughs> there is there is no can and there is no road. What I'm trying to say here is that Wait, it would depend you, mostly on I am in my chair. I'm sitting up what, in my not, chair not doing this in the middle on of my the little street? my <laughs> little my little <laughs> doggy <laughs> feet are up on the chair. Look at me, I'm having some fun. And I'm trying to explain that we should consider whether or not we have something to say to Adam relating to this point. That should probably be the determination. Uh, what about if discovery? We if we like in, yeah. What that, I mean, the that's fundamental like, just... thing is it's okay if you don't go looking when you have this many forms of films being thrown at you, I think. In a way, it's like a luxury. I don't have to hunt down things or look and find things and maybe take my chances. I feel I fortunate that I have people who can recommend me things that are like really good cons uh, consistently. You know, I think that's that's very really worth mentioning. Nice. By the way, I don't actually know for sure that he doesn't uh, go looking. Yeah, well, and I, yeah, I have I no mean, idea. It's know. very possible. This is all operating under the assumption that he only does take recommendations. Which, I mean, like with me and my like the video games that I get is it really is like over ninety percent. I can't remember the last time I just like randomly found a game. And it was like, oh, I'll play this when I know that I have all of these recommendations already in a wish list already that's built from those recommendations and people constantly saying, hey, Rags, have you played this, that, and the other? And you're like, oh, no. I feel like if he was peeing, he'd be back, I know. Maybe we should just carry on. Maybe he has a lot of pee. With almost 2 million subscribers, right? I don't know. I'm trying not to be, like, super pretentious about this, but, like, if you care about harder. film, if you care about art, right? Like, like showcase showcase some people like that's not the determinant though and whether or not you care about art right and you he care does. about art and express that in a wide amount of ways yeah he also if does anything, and i don't i don't think you... um Wynas is even aware of his second channel uh he does a lot of promotion of all kinds of different things there and then obviously podcast stuff as well and if you're his size and you really do care about art it makes a lot of sense to focus on a, a, a huge amount of your attention let's say let, let's say potentially all of your attention on the most influential and biggest media in popular culture at the moment right if you do care about art makes tactical sense that that would be what you go after uh most because that's what's most uh, that's what most people are watching and uh ingesting introduce people to new artists I'm not saying that those aren't good films, Night of the World. I'm not saying that there aren't good films within what he recommended there. I'm saying that they're all just films that you can't possibly have known about without them being thrown at you is the problem. Like, I think you might be surprised. What is the purpose of being a film recommended? I feel like I just... I, I, just, I struggle to buy it. Like, it, it, you can have a really good diet even if you're only getting things thrown at you. Because that's kind of the point of... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm subscribed to YMS to help me catch movies I might have missed otherwise. You know what I mean? They're thrown I mean, at me by him. I mean, you recommend in, in movies to me, and we watch those constantly, you know, based on your recommendations or your curiosity or things that you've been recommended, and then we end up watching together. And I feel like I have a pretty healthy film diet. We watch a, a good variety of things. We don't really rule much out in terms of what mm -hmm. we watch. So, I mean, what, what were the last three movies we watched? Casablanca. It was Casablanca, A Time to Kill... And, and uh, <laughs> ooh, what was the one before that? Oh, I'd have to check out. Uh, 
We watch a lot yeah, of movies. I would have to, like, we do. I forget what the third, their last one was. But oh, just bri- like going by those. I think it was. Two, was it a bridge know? too far? Yeah. Ooh, yes. yeah. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. So it was a bridge too far, Casablanca, and a time to kill were the last three movies we watched, all on recommendations to some degree. So all mainstream in their time, <laughs> not so much mainstream, I guess, right now. I don't know how you'd put that. Adam, you back? I am. Great. We're talking about your discoverability point. What did I say? That uh, you you thought that for a person who cares about the art and for a person with two million subscribers, you should be going out to discover movies rather than just having them all thrown at him. Uh, yeah. Again, conceded point based off of me searching the word recommends and not realizing that he recommended far more than you know the videos with just that word in the title. Okie dokie. Mender, right? Like, I'm pissed at myself for being so far behind on my yearly list reviews. Like, I feel like that's part of where I shine. I'm trying to reorganize myself in a way where, like, I can continue doing 2016, 2017, all those things. Like, I got to cut back on how many things I include in a year. Um, My biggest problem is, you know, like, I started including, like, miniseries and shit like that. Like, don't worry, it'll come. I've been figuring it out, but, like, I find a lot of value in like introducing people to things that they wouldn't have heard about without me. Where, as I don't know if such a thing exists on this guy's channel, and I'm not trying to feel like, oh, I'm such a better person because my film taste is more unique or abstract. You know, like I don't know. I just I just feel like if you're touting yourself as like I know what types of things that people should be watching, if you're touting yourself as like mainstream things are bad and i know what people should be doing like i would kind of expect that you would like you know two million subscribers almost i would kind of like hope that you're introducing people to new things and not just saying like the menu <laughs> you know like just do you not like the menu or do you think it's just too mainstream um yeah i i explained earlier uh you know, di- different uh, channels and different audiences will have di- different thresholds for what they consider to be a movie that they've never heard of or, you know, being exposed to different things. And him recommending the menu is not a bad thing. Uh, that is a, uh, yeah. Just things that, that just like, like everybody else. First impression, sort of like. I think, you know, I think everybody kind of has this in them. Uh, everybody that talks about like media. There's always kind of like this, um, like, I guess, judginess in everybody about like the types of media that other people consume or the types of media that other people would consider to be like a hidden gem, you know, like that gets made fun of on on Reddit. Someone would be like, oh, I just heard of this like hidden gem called Fight Club. Wow, okay. People people will say like, like, no, but everybody, everybody that cares about art has this to some extent. I should assume that to some degree you have it to some degree the critical drinker has it like maybe um, um, and I, I i don't know if it's something it's something that you know just being self reflective uh that i'm trying to keep in check um because i've seen that uh appear in toxic ways uh you know from a variety of different people you know like criterion heads will uh criticize people for you know not watching enough like foreign films or something like that um but yeah i I mean like yeah it's a i don't i don't really stand by that point it was just a yeah fair me Um, genuine question like an eight hour stream and uh yeah how do you feel about like the percentage of the coverage you've given is remains solid it depends if we're talking runtime or points. Runtime. Runtime. Well, runtime and point. Uh, whatever the answer is for both, I'd be curious what your answer is for both. Runtime. Somewhere in the sixties. Um, a huge amount of uh the video is uh the, um you know with with the misconception of him not. Uh, recommending enough of other things to his audience. Uh, you know, it's one point, but it makes up a huge amount of the video because I get hung up on it. Um, in terms of points, I don't know how many get brought up in the video. 
what are there like so far like less than 10 um because it all seems to be under the same like repeated points um and again i should mention uh when doing this reaction stream i didn't you know i didn't come up with a premise and then start streaming um i didn't i didn't go like oh here's what i want to get out of the video i kind of just saw where it took me um i provided some context as to what uh you know my limited perspective with his channel was before reacting to it and also like it, as much as much as it is um an exploration of trying to see how much of it conforms to those predisposed uh uh assumptions or or I guess predispositions is a better word. As as much of it is uh, a way of me seeing how much it conforms to that, it's also a way of me seeing um, how much of uh, other people's criticisms feel unwarranted. Because as I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, beginning of the video, um, I feel like he has gotten a bunch of criticism online that has been unwarranted. Um, and I feel like a lot of the times when people are just like mad at someone because they're conservative or something, uh, they kind of stretch to find uh, reasons to dislike someone, which I don't think I was doing here. Like my my any misinterpretations that I've made were not like because I was operating in bad faith. Uh, they were just like, oh, OK, I didn't realize that he had uh, other videos where he didn't include recommends in the title, uh, which made up <laughs> for like, I don't know, 40 percent of the whole video, uh, you know, so I, I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't, I don't know what the overall number is, because at the same time, like some of these are a little interpretable. Some of these we seem to have a bit of a disagreement over uh, what the intention of both the question and answer of some of the things he's being asked are. Um, but either way, you know, it, it's less about making a claim definitively of like, oh, here's here's this thing that he said and here's how I'm judging him over it. And more just like me, you know, having an experience with this video and being like, you know, this, this is, this is me discovering more about him or this is me uh, trying to engage with what he's saying and trying to uh, understand the popularity of his channel and understand the, uh, you know, the, the, I guess, goals or worldview that he has and why why he upsets so many people i find i find it to be like an interesting subject so i kind of wanted to just you know dive in but not not in like a fucking kimba way obviously because this was the night before a flight and i just wanted to do a reaction thing um but yeah you know i didn't i didn't make a fucking what's it called what do they even call them Pierogi? like an attack what? video or something like i don't know oh, I, didn't, uh, yeah. I didn't like hit piece thank you um you know i didn't i don't think that i made that and i don't think i definitely didn't set out to make it some people you know whenever there's any kind of disagreement on the internet especially if it, it's disagreement between like political or worldviews or even perceived political or worldviews there's going to be people that fucking they, they just kind of want to see the more dramatic version of that you know you opened up this conversation saying that somebody had sent uh a message to you being like oh he just destroyed him yeah. it's like i don't know if that's what i was doing <laughs> i kind of just i kind of just disagreed with some things and me yeah sure there are moments where i'm like that's crazy but that's like the majority of it is just me being like well you're right but there's more to it than that you know so i if if we're including points that i'm making as not just criticisms, but things I'm agreeing with, then I mean, like, yeah, a lot of uh, the overwhelming majority of it stands because we don't half of the video is just me agreeing with him, but providing more context anyway. So, so my perception is that it's um, a lot of the major points that are critical of Drinko lack um, significant context that can completely alter them, and that this is basically the main source of YMS and his opinion on the critical drinker as a YouTuber, which culturally speaking isn't too useful um it's unfortunate mm -hmm. at best and uh we can we can keep going of course i'm just curious if uh do you have any preference beyond that or would you rather just be considered this is a casual stream and that's all it should be treated as what do you mean 
a lot of people could see this and point to this and share it as this is this is one of the most respected film critics breaking down everything that's wrong with Drinker. Um, I don't, but I don't know if I don't know if that's what I did, and I don't even know if that's what the takeaway from the audience is. Like, there's tons of people in the comment section on my video that are just like, "Oh yeah, I I like them both." Um, I understand this or blah, 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 blah. I think, you know, something that I try to be and something that I feel like a lot of people got from it um, is that I came in fair and with an open mind and uh, good faith and, you know, I'm willing to hear people out, even if I misinterpreted some things. I think that that's kind of inevitable, not only from, you know, having limited perspectives on anything but also just the nature inherent nature of it being a live stream format um so i i, I don't know i i i guess i misunderstand your question but yeah like it, it's it, this isn't this isn't like a uh an essay video you know? no i know um i guess i'm lamenting on the fact that i think that the two of you could easily be uh in good communication but that this would be seen as like you're condemning him along with many as as the kind of character that a lot of people assume that he is. I feel like at the very least I'm providing context as to why people assume that he's this way. I feel like at the very, like as much as I have to learn from, uh, you know, your defense of him and these clarifications of things that he said, or maybe he means, but didn't say, um, you know, I can, I can take away a lot from that. I'm hoping that, you know, the broader community or his fans or him or you also take away like, OK, well, you know, the the way that the, the he phrases some of the titles, it's no surprise that people come away with that impression or the way that he responds to some of these questions in the interviews. Like, again, this is one interview. Uh, that's what my video was based on. Um, but it doesn't seem to be like an inconsistent issue in terms of like how he could uh clarify or phrase himself or the types of the types of caricatures that people paint him as i don't think they just came from fucking nowhere they're not like oops like this could just happen to like any youtuber and i'm not saying he deserves it and i'm not saying that he intentionally feeds into it but if he's trying to avoid that sort of caricature i think that this whole conversation can provide at least some food for thought as to you know self reflection of like okay maybe how could i avoid you know, this miscommunication or this uh, misunderstanding happening in the future. Pretty much everything I've ever been heavily criticized over on the internet, I've made some pretty, you know, pretty detailed uh, clarifications for and, you know, in engaged pretty thoroughly with. Um, but again, I haven't seen all of his content. I haven't seen any interview. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll just have to see. But curiosity, will this, go, but yeah, what I we're mean, doing today, will that be going on your Clips channel? Highlights. Why not? No, I, I, Would you I, like it to? I mean, I think it works as clarification, right? I mean, I think that this yeah. coverage would um, supersede this video. I feel like you've been way more detailed yeah, I mean, and uh, definitive. I, yeah, I, I'm comfortable with that, and I was intending on it. Um, at the very least, linking to your video. Um... Yeah, I, I assumed that that would, yeah. Okay, okay, Olivia will highlight this. Already knows about, like, I, no. I don't know. Maybe this is a weird criticism, but, yeah. Well, and nobody pays me to do this as such. Like, I, you know, I, I don't have relationships with studios that I can damage by slagging off their movie, and that's the thing. I can just be honest about it. But I always try to be fair. That's what I always want to be. I don't want to just hate on a movie because like, it's made by a director I don't like, whatever. Uh, be fair. That's all I expect from the, what I do. Uh, and hopefully people people understand that and that's why they, they watch my videos because i'll give an honest opinion about things in the uh, indiana jones one you listed movies where you sort of where you're, you were wrong you sort of said like i thought dungeons and dragons wouldn't be any good and you're wrong about that and i feel like even some of the uh, disney tv shows you've sort of gone oh, actually that's pretty good and you've, you know so you've like i guess to your point about authenticity being the currency and, and in fact this is a broader point we he didn't think dungeons and dragons would be good and then he enjoyed it but the problem is like he's still only seeing movies like dungeons and dragons right <laughs> so continue making on our channels you need principles if you have a principle then sometimes that principle is going to cost you sometimes it's he's not he's not he doesn't really have a healthy media diet he's gonna Stop it. Uh, support you, but it remains consistent. We're just like, oh, when I'm talking about this, you know, when Cluster... Again, it's in the past. Like, when Cluster I know, Boo. it's past Adam. We don't like him. We I like new it. Adam. I can't do anything. Past Adam. Boo, past Adam. The bombs are being Great used by Russia. They're bad. Adam. When Cluster bombs are being used by America, they're good. Or Ukraine, sorry, via America. You know, so
Interesting take. That means, you know, that is the opposite of what you're discussing in terms of sort of veracity. And when you're defending yourself, <laughs> it's not. Not touching this with a fucking 10 foot pole. I'm afraid we're going to move right along. And then when you're attacking no, I love you guys. another country. I love you guys. Those are the same thing. <laughs> Ability to trust. Yeah, he being called cluster bombs like that idea. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like, uh, yeah, I, I, sometimes I'll watch the trailer for a movie, I'll get my thoughts on it and like make some predictions about what the film's going to be like. Sometimes I'm right, or most of the time I am, but sometimes I'm wrong. And like, I'm happy to admit that. If a movie, I go and watch it and it's better than I expected, I'm a happy man because I got to watch a good movie. So that's okay as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, for me, there's nothing wrong with admitting that you occasionally call it wrong. That's cool. Well, I mean, Again, this is the problem. My subjective anecdotal experience with the critical drinker is like people that would otherwise not be subscribed to any channel that talks about movies if it wasn't for them talking about like, oh, things are bad now. Things are bad now because the people are trying to make you be a thing. Okay, as long as you're, you're honest with people. Do that's you, what, they want. what about do you sometimes get a bit, um, let's say, supercharged by the... Like, you know, if something isn't, for want of a better term, woke, do you think, oh my god, do you think it almost gets an extra bit of juice because of that? Some of our films like maybe, um, you know, Maverick or uh, the even and the Mario Brothers movie just... <laughs> Yeah, I find that funny too. Okay. I do find that funny. <laughs> it's it's a, that, that's, that's pretty undeniably funny, right? <laughs> even though like, the Mario no, Bros movie got yeah. fought over as to whether or not it's woke. That's true. Stephen did fight over that one. Uh, I, lo I love the anti-woke crowd gravitating towards the Mario Brothers movie. That was so funny. I love that shit. It's a thing. It's a thing, and I don't know why. They're like, Mario Brothers being successful is is a... is a stab against the woke mob. By virtue of the fact that it's not... See, to me, it's like, I find it... It's just Mario. It's a super popular thing that exists yeah. in the world. Like, I don't know why everyone's like, so surprised. It's a very apolitical movie. Well, I mean, it's it's illumination, right? It's like super duper safe in terms of like what yeah. it's trying to be as a film. Can very conventional from a storytelling standpoint, crowd pleasing. It's just a very normal kind of movie. I think that by not having the kind of, gra the sort of gravitation, even though I mean, you know, Luigi was captured for most of the movie, and Princess Peach wasn't, and she was helping. I get your highlight in how that discussion went down. A lot of people talking about whether or not that makes it woke or not it was that's just a thing that happened mario like you could say that that's just as woke you could say that that's a very feminist movie honestly the mario brothers movie but it seems to have split a lot of conservative commentators because it was successful and they're like oh yeah this was successful because it wasn't woke or lag that wokeness uh, can um apply because it prevents as, to use but one example a character from having a meaningful arc because they're already presented as perfect on the basis of identity which shouldn't be what's presented at the center of a film and if it's free to that it's a little bit better or do you think that you're sort of like, oh thank god bloody mario brothers isn't doing that and you get excited there's the initial emotional reaction of like hey wow this movie doesn't fucking hate me because i'm like a straight white man that's nice It's a pretty bold thing to say about the Mario movie, right? Oh my god! Like it, <laughs> it is funny to say um, it about the Mario movie. And, and that, that, yeah, that seems that seems Mario like kind of out of nowhere, right? Um, again, I guess, it's, I guess it's more. Like it's the, not... the conversation around the film, like he's on Russell Brand. They've been talking about a lot of like culture war <laughs> shit, kind of. You know, I'm and like that jerk from The Simpsons where Homer's like, "TV doesn't laugh at me, but it's Mario pointing at you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, well, it's like... more of a commentary on other movies than the Mario movie, right? Well, yeah, this is obviously said it with is... a lot of baggage that if you're not familiar mm, with, yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, but but I th like the baggage itself kind of speaks towards like again media diet and then like the 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 interpretation of that media, you know? Like how 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 many movies and pieces of media do you think exist in terms of the overall landscape of even studio films where you watch it and you feel like you're hated because you're a st straight white male? The like, correct the answer would be of, like, like studio movie, movies, even. I, I'm, I genuinely wouldn't know how to answer that. I, I assume it's going to be below like fucking 5%, maybe 10, whatever. But the yeah. true answer is too many. Mm -hmm. And so that's obviously what he's appealing to. But I, I would never phrase it that yeah. way. I assume he's trying to be a little just... tongue in cheek because it is Mario. Yeah, I guess so. It's just, you know. It... Someone, if someone sees that, then it just makes it seem like that's, that's like the focus. And if you're saying, like, maybe he might agree with us that it's like under 5% of even studio movies, right? To like be asked about the Mario movie and then like, that's your answer. Like, sure, it could be a joke or something, but it's like, again, we're kind of, we're kind of like learning a bit more and more about like why he might be misinterpreted in certain ways. Um, 
You know how you know how I, I use the word propaganda? You're like, mm, I don't know if you want to say that word. Well, it's because it's going to shut people's like, brains off. I'm that's just, why. Yeah. yeah, exactly. In a certain way, you can kind of you can kind of predict how some people might react to certain things. So, like, I don't know if it, I, I don't know if he cares or if it's a part of his goal at all to not be misre misrepresented in the ways that he's currently been. Um, but that would be something to consider, right? Is like if you're asked about the Mario movie, you don't. <laughs> your first, the first thing you say isn't, "Well, this movie doesn't hate me because I'm a straight white male." <laughs> right? I, but again, uh, could you buy the fact that that's that's the the comedic sort of spin on this that we're actually at that point that he's like, that's the first thing I'm going to highlight. Like he's obviously got more to say on it. He has a whole video on it, and I don't know. If... I I know, but it but it, again, if we, if it represents like less than five percent of the movies that exist, I don't know if. It does seem like kind of a weird thing to be focused on to the point where that's what you're saying about the Mario movie. Like I said, I think but I think it's funny, but uh, there's there's comedic elements to the fact that he he may be doing it on purpose. But if he's not, if he's very sincerely saying that's that was enjoyable about Mario didn't hate me for being a white male, it's funny as fuck because Mario is just such a harmless plumber running through a cartoon world. Like the idea of hating people for their race doesn't really come into it from my perspective. But yeah, you know I mean. I mean he does, it's I, of course he's saying it with like comedic uh sensibilities like of course he's saying it like as part of a joke um it's just a matter of like you can still say a joke and kind of just play into the type of program that you're on and the type of thing that sure you know but he does consider it program might want to he does consider it something worth fighting back on wherever he feels he can uh, make reference to it right like the mm -hmm. noxious attitudes in Hollywood, and I assume that's part of what the broad co the conversation was supposed to be about with Russell as well. Do you feel like that's every movie you criticize? Like, it hates you because you're a straight white man? Like, Jesus Christ. I, under I understand and agree with a lot of the points that you make in terms of, like, damn, like, a lot of these new writers sucks, they should be taking more risks, you know, like, the studio should be funding new ideas instead of gravitating towards new I old IPs, but, like, saying that it hates you for being a straight white man, like, uh, you you could be imagine imagine yourself imagine yourself as a black person who is not a male imagine yourself as a black woman in the 1980s would you feel justified with your same perspective on media as as you have right now would you feel justified in feeling like every movie that you watched was someone saying that they hated you for being a black woman that is going to be a question for him um, to answer, but I don't think he would say yes. I think he would be like, point to the movies back then that had sentiments within them that related to like, the sort of black women are to blame for X, Y, Z. Yeah, um, w when I uh, made that statement, I misattributed his, uh, his response as being that he feels as though he's hated because of uh, the way that things are shifting in terms of representation. In my brain, as a person that's not constantly watching Marvel Studio movies, I was not thinking of whatever, like, I haven't seen it, but like, what, She-Hulk? Is that a movie? Is that an example? Like, I just, I did, that shit's just like not even in my mind, and I just forgot that this was a Marvel-brained, Disney-brained conversation. <laughs> so so just, I, mis just to... I misattributed his, his like, oh, it hates me because I'm white as being a, uh, a, a statement on representation and not a statement on, like, oh, these writers must have had, like, a bad experience with, like, a white guy. Yeah, that's, that's probably more what's being appealed to, but also when you say Disney-brained, Marvel-brained, it's like... The stuff that the vast majority of the world is watching. And I hope to change that. Okie dokie. And I hope you help me it, change that. Of course. Yeah. If everything that you watch Everyone right now is like, you feel as though like it, they hate you because you're a white man. Like how do you, like, oh, uh, it, it, honestly, like today's media landscape. Sure. There's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of nonsense. There's a lot of like, Hey, member berries. And there's a lot of people that aren't talented working on movies that shouldn't be. But, but to say that like, the media landscape is like, oh, I watch a movie and I feel like, I feel like I'm hated for being a white male. Like that's kind of, that's, it's kind of like an exaggerated sort of reactionary feeling towards just seeing more inclusivity or more. He's definitely that's not like why he's saying that. And I think you just said you you understand mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah. 
representation like the same kind of shit that russell brand was talking about like i don't know 20 minutes ago or whatever in the podcast like he was saying he has two daughters he was saying he doesn't want to see like every single main character being a white man he was asking you a genuine question of like how do you reconcile with the fact that like maybe there are people that want to see more of this type of person like i don't know i I don't know I, i can understand that there are some examples of films that you have where it might be like, okay, this specific scene, it's like, okay, this person like writing this obviously hates white people, obviously hates men. But to, to act as though that's the media landscape right now, to act, it, it, it doesn't speak towards media. It speaks towards your media diet. It has, it, you, you. But would you concede that that should never be in any fucking films at all? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't because I, I would have the exact same opinion if it were any gender any race i don't think that we should restrict the type of art that people should make that doesn't mean i'd want government to stop them from creating it i would have a moral condemnation of the message in the film whether the judge i mean uh, yeah i would i would either not watch it or watch it and then be like wow this was fucking dumb yeah i'm not suggesting we clamp down and prevent them from having awful opinions but that we condemn those awful opinions I've I've openly criticized uh, movies for having like fucking weird ass yeah. moral <laughs> conclusions, right? So yeah, you are not making sure. statements about the film industry. You are making statements about the types of films you consume specifically, and that's <laughs> my biggest issue. It's perfect on the basis of identity, which shouldn't be what's presented at the center of a film. And if it's free to that, it's a little bit better. Better or do you, oh bloody Mario Brothers isn't doing that and you get be excited. There's the initial emotional reaction of like, hey, wow, this movie doesn't fucking hate me because I'm like a straight white man. That's nice. Like that's a, that's a change of pace. But you know, a change of pace, like it's the norm. It's when you say it's the change of pace for the Mario Brothers movie to not yeah. hate you because you're a straight white the man. Phrasing here again, it, it um, makes it seem like he he doesn't think it's like a small percentage of. I'm sure he would media. agree he, he, that like, it's when he says change of pace. The implication is that it's like the exception to the norm to not be hated as a straight white male, right? But like, wouldn't you understand a disproportionate um, reaction to it? Like it being present at all is going to fill your head more so because it's absolutely fucking crazy. Like to come across it anyway. Like what I'm saying, yeah, you're uh, right. It is not. In the majority, and I don't even think that he would say it is in the majority. If we actually like laid out the majority of studio films, I doubt he would list them all as like they hate white men. But he would still probably say like it's going to influence his perspective more significantly than it is present. Yeah, but and I wouldn't blame anybody saying. for that of that, any that, race and gender. A, that's a nice that's a nice way to to justify why he said that. But like it it's not what it, he's he said <laughs> right yeah so no that, all i've all i've done is try to explain why he may have said that despite the fact that he probably doesn't sure. believe it to be that way literally okay that doesn't speak towards film culture or films that speaks towards the types of films you consume specifically and your experience with those films that's in, that's an insane thing to say. You try to be um, you, you try to break the movie down like into its component parts and say, well, okay, uh, this one I enjoyed. Why did I enjoy it? Like, was the plot good? Were the characters good? Whatever. So you try to be a bit more objective about it. Um, but it's also possible. With, this is an interesting discussion about. Um, it's possible for something to be woke by the normal standards, but also be good if it's well written. The, the example that I've given before is a TV show called Arcane, which uh, puts forward. A... This is very interesting, and I agree. A lot of what we would consider to be woke politics, like a, a extremely not, cast. not that I finished Arcane. I found it very boring, but um, you know, gay relationships. Uh, really, really? Uh, you that's... did. Damn. Everybody keeps saying, everybody's like, oh, you gotta watch until episode three. I'm sorry. Maybe sometime when I feel like watching how boring oh, ass episode so one and two get, are. You get to? So you well, they're not boring. Oh, so. wait, you stopped well, after two? Well, it was to me. So so if, if I found episode one boring, then clearly the show's not for me. If people who like it didn't find that oh, boring. Oh, such a shame. So I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wanted to like it. Game, you're, uh, you're I went in out. wanting to like it. Didn't happen. I, I tried my best. It just... You know, one day, if you want to try again, watch to episode uh-huh. three. I will say, and, and we, I think we said this on our coverage, episode one and two were the okay. sort of slowest, but in retrospect, once completing the season and doing it over to get notes, yeah. I started to realize how valuable episode one and two were. There's a lot of stuff in there yeah. that I don't think you'd realize at the first time through necessarily how important everything that's getting set up is. They're, they're all like hour-long episodes, right? Like 40 minutes or something? Yep, yeah, something yeah, like that. Reasonably lengthy. Yeah. Um, but it's nine episodes. Yeah, there's so many other things I gotta watch. I th- the one thing I'll say, I, I know you probably watch it anymore. You've probably heard this before, but the one thing I'll say is that I feel like you'd be impressed with the way episode three goes. Um, okay. Like uh, it's relatively subversive. You don't see that often, especially in big productions like that. Um, there's a reason why you everyone says get I to three. Pimp out. Do it. 
I want to pimp out a movie right now. It's called Hundreds of Beavers, and I just watched it a week ago at Fantasia, and it might be at a couple other film festivals before some sort of maybe theatrical run eventually on digital. Maybe it'll be on digital at the end of the year. You never know. But Hundreds of Beavers, based based ass movie. Okay. It's a very very funny slapstick comedy, uh, with modern sensibilities and editing and very self-aware uh yeah all right that's 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 one of those like every film festival i see i see you know a handful of movies where i'm like this isn't even just appealing to like me this is like damn i'm gonna show this to everybody you know it's so funny i'll keep a note Plus struggle at oh god it's woke because there's gay relationships in it god damn holy shit the, the heart of the, the plot that's driving it forwards uh very strong female characters all that stuff uh it's woke because there's gay relationships and strong female characters. Holy fucking Christ. Um, but it might be. Yeah, um, he's got a video called What is Woke? You could probably check out his full paradigm for what he believes qualifies and can doesn't. Um, can you can you curate me a list of videos that I should be watching from the critical drinker if I don't want to watch all of his videos, but I want but you want to um, make a good case for things that he's done? Sure. Uh, I assume you don't mind if I do that maybe tomorrow. <laughs> like, uh, or after we do this, maybe? Because right off the top of my head, I'm not sure what I would choose, you know? Hello? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. yeah, I'd take your time. Be considered woke in other movies because it's badly handled, but it's extremely well integrated into a really good story in that TV show. And so okay, well, you contradicted what you said. You said, it's woke, but it's still good. And then tech 10 seconds later, you said, it might be considered woke in other movies, but it's not in this. Like, what do you be considered woke in other movies because it's badly handled, but it's extremely well integrated into a really good story. So it's not woke if it's well integrated, but you just said it was woke, but still good. Not right. TV show, and so I was happy to say- I feel like that is a little bit tangled up. Um, I'd be curious to know what he would uh -huh. say, straighten this out. Say, hey, this is an example of, say, progressive politics or progressive ideology done well. It can be done, but you've just got to write it well. That's what we look for, a good story. I think that's the part you should take away from all of that. Like, don't use it instead of structure. Yeah, I mean, that's, I feel... the, that's the part we don't disagree on. <laughs> yeah. Like the main yeah, I agree. Don't use it instead of structure. I agree in the sense that if you are pushing a political agenda, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're left or right. Like, if that replaces your characters, if that replaces your script, I agree with a lot of, like, the sentiment of what is being said in a, uh, you know, a principled way. But for, <laughs> for, for the critical drinker to be like, oh, yeah. Sound of freedom. <laughs> and, like, I'm going to watch it. Don't worry. I'm going to watch it. But like, I don't know. I don't know. That's a little, that's a little bit. Uh, it seems like a bit of a contradiction there. Uh, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. We'll see. We'll see what I feel about it when I watch it. But Matrix, yeah, Matrix is a good example to the first one, obviously, of how sort of different ideals and uh, identity transcendent of homogeneity and heterodoxy is presented as aspirational and cool. And then the Wachowskis, of course, like, Wachowskis. Are Wachowskis? Like, uh, like they had a sort of, uh, obviously. The Wachowskis. Gender during Wachowskis. <laughs> Wachowskis. <laughs> Like, you know, the trajectory of those movies. Like, that, maybe that's something for you to touch upon. But also, like, again, with my personal uh, position as a father of girls and also as a person that do, I believe there stories for everyone. There should be stories for everyone. But I think so I this is him as an atheist. Or as a I think thinker. this is him asking the second time. Okay. Uh, you know, to sort of use the uh, phrase from which your name is derived. Like, I want things to reward me and to make sense, I suppose. So, um, would you touch on, like, you know, sort of The Matrix and the Wachowskis, or if I'm saying the name right, and also what films would I direct my girl to? Because I don't even like it. Sometimes I watch an old Simpsons and Bart goes, girls are shit, or whatever. I'm like, oh, I don't want my daughter's watching that. You know what I mean? So, oh, my God. I love that Russell Brand is, like, actually trying to, like, get him to answer the real questions here. I'm, like, actually very impressed with Ru Russell Brand here. Because he's very much saying, like, hey, my girls are growing up and like all this old media is not really reflecting like <laughs> their experience. And so he's like, this is the second time he's asked him this question. He didn't really answer it the first time. To be fair, this is a different question. The first question was, what are we to is do? It? Yeah, because the first question he said, we got all these strong female women. What are we supposed to do? Like, what, uh, how are we to fix this problem? And Drinker, like I said, was talking about we cracked it ages ago, writing dynamics. Now he's asking him, what can they watch that's already out? that isn't something like okay. bad Simpson episodes where they're critical of women or something. By the way, I'd love to know which ones he's talking about. Uh, because even if Bart shits on girls in an episode, he probably doesn't... I don't think the episode supports that sort of stuff. Le like, you Lisa get... is the most relatable character in the show. You think? Yeah, she's the fucking... She, she always, like, she's the brain, she solves everything. I guess so. <laughs> I think some people might pick some other characters, Relati but that's fair. How... Who's who's more relatable uh, in the family? Uh, well, I mean, you could point easily to Bot as being relatable. Like, relatable? I mean, Bot gets an F. He's a fucking F sociopath. 
Lot gets an F. He he captures like a hell a of a lot of relatable. like younger boys. Yeah. As, I mean, I I just again I just point to Bot gets an F. Like, what is that? It's an episode where he becomes really, really, really upset after feeling that he tried his hardest and he still failed at school. Like, I think I think I would imagine there's plenty of people who would feel that that's relatable. And then there's also the Hans general Norman. idea that like Bot does care about his family, and sometimes because he's selfish or self focused or. He just yeah. wants to be cheeky that he ends up hurting the people that he cares about. There's there's more than a few episodes that relate to him disappointing Marge and that being something that he yeah. struggles with. And then of course you've just got I, Homer as like Homer's relatable <laughs> as a as a sort of, you know, middle aged uh American. Homer feels man. like <laughs> indulging your id, which is why he's relatable. Like you, yeah. you, you watch is, him make this decisions. This is a very interesting perspective because I thought it was like pretty unanimous that Lisa was the most relatable character. I mean, I, um, thought, but I, I mean, I, I would say that Lisa obviously. I'd say all, that's one of the strengths of the Simpsons is that all of the characters are relatable in some sense. It's just that she's she's like the most grounded. She's like the the audience member. A lot of people find her annoying. Oh, she, she often um, sees and a buzzkill. You can find her annoying, but she's often the one like being like, "Hey, this is <laughs> what are you doing?" Well, I think like, what we're discovering is uh, that there, you there find her most relatable, they... right? <laughs> which is fine. Hmm? I, was, I assume we're discovering you find her the most relatable, which is totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. Time. All right. So so, so, so rewind rewind a tiny bit, yeah. and let's just reaffirm that he's asking the question now: What movies should my daughter watch if they want to see more representation and see themselves reflected in media? Uh, we agree that that's the question. Oh my god! I love that Russell Brand is like actually trying to like get him to answer the real questions here. I'm like actually very impressed with Ru Russell Brand here because he's very much saying like, hey. My girls are growing up and like all this old media is not really reflecting like <laughs> their experience. And so he's like, this is the second time he's asked him this question. He didn't really answer it the first time. So this is fucking fascinating. And we're going to see if he is able to answer it the second time. So touch on that side as well, if you could. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like, if you're looking for movies with good female role models, like, damn, like, where do I be? Oh, are you going to say, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's just assume that he's going to say Ripley and Sarah Connor again. Let's see if he says anything else. Yeah, like you've got the Terminator movies, I suppose. Like we mentioned before, you've got some, uh, you've got Ripley from the first. <laughs> it is kind of. <laughs> Um, it is the most popular, really well-known examples. And that's yeah, and then we, you know, how many examples is he going to be able to give? And if you only had a cap of, let's say, five, should they be included? I'd probably recommend them. I would. That's the problem. That's not a problem. Is that, there, is that there's not, the no, I mean, that's a, that's a part of the, the, it, the problem isn't that... the movies, and it's the problem is not the characters, but it's it's like the, the, the limited selection, right? Well, if or you could only choose five, limited selection. he would be able to if list you hundreds. Choose... He's not got the time, and he's not got the. Do we have to clarify the familiarity as well? I can name you a lot of characters that, if I go by their first name, second name, you're still going to be like, "Who the fuck are you talking about?" Then I might be able to name the series slash movie they're from. You might be like, "I haven't seen that." It's great. I don't know because I feel like if I'm asked about Obviously, male characters, this I don't is be like. Important. No, I mean, okay, let, it's it's. It's about not having achieved something to even the level of that since the 1980s, right? That's I my think criticism. Drinker would argue we have, but he's going to have to give, it, give him a sec to find a listing of what it would be. Well, so there's also yeah. this. If I were here and on, on like a, a much more like, I guess, main, uh, well, like if I, was on, if I was on somebody else's show and I didn't have a good grasp of what that audience would be familiar with as references. I'm not sure what I would pick. Um, Cause I think part of me would be thinking like, what are some examples I can pick that it's more likely than not somebody is familiar with and that they can latch onto, you know, versus here's something, here's something character. to think about. You might, mm -hmm. you might agree with me on this and you might not. Do you think that perhaps um, there's a bit more of like a selection bias when it comes to, uh, talking about strong female characters versus strong male characters in the sense that, you know, movie in the past year, I love fucking Tar. It's like an amazing, incredible performance, very strong female character, but she's not like a, she's she's not a good person, right? And so it would be weird kind of including it in that, whereas I'm not sure if I would have that same reservation talking about male characters. I feel like I, feel like I could include... Uh, strong male characters on a list of like you know the fucking Daniel Plainview like the guy's a bad guy what what a strong character do you feel like there's a weird selection bias uh, there? 
I think I understand what you're getting at. Um, I think part of the problem is when you're asked role model, it's like, yeah. okay, well, that's a, that's a different conversation to like my favorite yeah, character exactly. necessarily. Yeah. Well, and I think that's you why know, he's that's struggling even it. more because- Makes it more difficult, doesn't it? The uh, Ripley is think. pretty easy to argue as a role model, not past aliens though. It gets complicated after that. Like, I don't know if you want to model yourself after everything she doesn't, especially because <laughs> we get into identity problems too. But um, Sarah, like obviously what you'll be picking is the stalwart sort of nature of defending your own and to stand up against tyranny and oppression or something like that. You can argue role model elements, but I don't blame him at all for resorting to them first. They're obviously going to come to his mind. And the big issue yeah. here is, is it or is it not indicative of his lack of understanding slash experience slash selection of female characters? And is it indicative of a society problem wider? where we don't uh, properly library in our own heads, like female characters. I think not. I think this is easily explained by the fact that they are popular because they are popular and that we resort to them quickly. If you sat him down, do you, do you, he'd be able to list you a shit ton. He already mentioned Arcane. That's got a shit ton of female characters that are great in it. Do you think, it's, do you think it. it's at least partially true, even by like 1%? I feel like it's so easy it at all? to connect it when uh, we have easy explanations alternatively that don't relate to like... I find it so hard to be convinced when there's just countless female characters that I think are great, and I know that he does too. But I would still label Ripley and Sarah. Yeah, like I, I like I'm, you know, I'm trying to be introspective. I might just be hung up on the definition of you're like, far from the only person that role model, and it might makes be, this criticism. You know, it might just be something in my brain where it's difficult to make that connection. Well, um, you know the fact that he, the rag said again, Aowen. Part of the conversation, it's a part of the bias, right? The fact that Rag said Eowyn and then you were like, oh, Lord of the Rings? Yeah, it's like, we don't have that problem with Ripley and Sarah No, that wasn't dismissive. No, no, not dismissive. dismissive. I was just remembering. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Right? So the fact, if I... Oh, no, I mean, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I, I know okay. that name because my roommate's a nerd on Lord yeah, of the Rings. Yeah, no, 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 but that's my point. If, if there's so many we could name that we'll have to do clarifications afterward, and that there are ones he could name that Russell will be like, yeah, yeah, true, and has no fucking clue what, what Drink is talking about. It, there's so many reasons to choose Ripley and Sarah, and the only alternative to convince me otherwise that like it relates to a, a lack of familiarity or understanding of female characters, or even a lack of them yeah. in film, to me, I just so, don't buy it, according to the statistics, so to speak. So, at this point, we agree. I mean, I did agree before that Ripley and Sarah are great examples of strong female characters. And at this point, we both agree uh, we would like to see more of them. Uh, let's listen to the rest of how Mr. Drinker, uh, answers this conversation, which, okay. uh, this question, okay. which is what characters, uh, should my young daughters be watching? <laughs> two aliens films, you've got Marion from, um, from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay, we got one more, we got one more. The first two were the first two that I said, though. Oh my god, we got, we got one more. Mark, uh, you've got Trinity from The Matrix, you've got, um, Jim Okay, we got Matrix. Davis from Long Kiss Goodnight. Like, all these, these are very interesting characters oh. that, that kind of... You know, they got flaws, they got weaknesses, they got problems along the way, but like they they overcome those things. Um, so yeah, like those are, those are, there's been movies. I don't know. Ah, man, I don't know if I like. Okay. Like I do want to clarify, he did give five examples, and then he started moving on to make points. Mm -hmm. Like, is that not fair? But but yeah, that's fair. I I my my hang up is what he says after what I'm done okay. saying here. So Sarah Connor mm -hmm. and Ripley are very much like the go-to for this question. Right, like cause they're they're sci-fi horror women characters that are main characters because it's a horror movie mostly, right? I don't know if I agree that like Trinity from the Matrix is a great female character. Like I don't know if I agree that much. It was written by women, right? It was written by trans women. Um, it's considered to be like a trans allegory or whatever we're gonna call it. Um, maybe retrospectively, maybe not. I don't know. But I don't even know if I agree that, like, Trinity is, like, that great. Like, she literally just, sh she's in the story to be like, oh, I love you. I'm going to kiss you to, like, bring you back. I, I, <laughs> I love you, man, but what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Trinity's a full-fledged character as well. She's not, she's not as uh, tropey or stereotypical as the worst examples of, like, uh, oh, I'm just here for the main character. But essentially, she is that. You could argue like, a lot of characters exist in their proportions to the main character, but she also has character. There's reasons she does everything. I'm not saying she has no character, but for that to be in your top five of... It's not top five, you know, though, is it? Great, it's five. It's the first five he thinks or of. First, first five you think of, yeah. It's just, it's, I, Which I, is I, perfectly fine and reasonable. 
Uh, because we don't con- because <laughs> we don't control the first five that come to our heads, and you know that, right? No, I know that. But if I thought of one that was like that, then I would probably keep searching for another one. Is my problem? I'm sure Trinity's he would have though. I mean, like the fact that he, if choice, you said right. to Drinker, like, "Wow, you don't think you know main characters from Arcane or Everything Everywhere All at Once are worth mentioning?" He'd be like, "No, no, no, of course, yeah, those two, yeah, hundred percent." I'm sure he would say that, hundred percent. It's just because you are going to necessarily exclude many excellent choices if you're just going. If you're on this format, you're just going with the ones that come to your head that do fit and are appropriate answers. Back to life, oh, yeah. like. That's most yeah. of her purpose. That's most of her purpose. I don't know if I even, even if I'm to say like, oh yeah, females, females wrote this film. It's like a great female powered film and, and a trans allegory. I'm not sure if I even agree that Trinity is like a great woman character in any sense. Like she's really kind of a, she's just a side character that's there to prop up the main male character, right? Like oh. a lot of the, the examples that he's giving that aren't Ripley and Sarah Connor are literally just like, I don't know, side characters. Is Marion Ravenwood a side character? Um, Who is she? I mean, she's not the protagonist, but I don't know if it's just a dichotomy of side a, character and protagonist. She's Indiana Jones, she, Raiders uh, of the Lost Ark. Yeah, Indiana Jones. Yeah, I've just, that movie just yeah, was Raiders in and out of the of my Lost Ark. Oh, wait, you have controversial opinions about the Indiana Jones movies, don't you? Hell yeah. That's okay. We accept all based, opinions. I have based opinions. You want on, to let people know again Indiana, what they Indiana are? Indiana Jones movies. Uh, yeah, the only good one is uh, Temple of Doom. The rest are mid. Okay. <laughs> it's a, it's a different right. opinion, and that is welcomed. Wait, did you see Dial yeah. of Destiny? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, that was oh, pretty so bad. That one, that one isn't mid, then. That one, that one is I bad, I mean, it's right? mid to So, okay, the ranking for the series is okay. 5, 6, 5, 4, 4. 5, 6, 5. Wives. You gave Five. Dial of you Destiny a four. Wait, you. Lost Crusade you, is only one point better than the Dial of Destiny. Jesus Christ! Yeah. That's actually okay. insane. Okay. That's actually insane. It's okay, you, that's actually not. To clarify, you okay. think that Shazam Two is significantly better than Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> so how this happened? I mean, for what it's trying to be, yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, I, I don't know, significantly. I gave that a low six, I think. A low six? I don't know if I gave that a solid six. I think I gave that a six closer to a five than a seven. Oh, great. Eight. But All I could right. be wrong. I don't know. Like, he... he d- it's... I agree as a response to Jennifer Lawrence saying, I'm the first female superhero. I agree that that's cringe. And yes, we're going we're gonna to give the examples of... Sarah Connor, we're going to give the examples of Ripley. They're great female heroes. They're great female characters. They exist. But if you're if you're answering the question of not have there been female good characters that have existed, but you're answering the question of, hey, you know, maybe we should see more female characters at some point in time. And you're like, oh, there have been plenty of. So do you really think that's what he's saying or that that's a position he holds? Uh... Wait, wait for him to say the things after I'm done talking, and we'll discuss that. That's that, that, that's an I'm waiting thing for to him say. to say a very particular thing here. Hey, right? Like that's uh, it, it depends on what question you're being asked, right? He's all throughout cinematic history that have given us this stuff. Thanks, some some players. Uh, really, in recent years, in trying to highlight this stuff and in trying to correct a problem that didn't really exist in the first place, they've made it. Infinite. It didn't exist in the. They tried to correct a problem that didn't See, that, exist. See that? That sounds like a weird thing to say, right? When when people are trying to. To include more representation wait, 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 of wait, wait, women wait, wait. in film. So, do you and, think and when he says problem, agreed, we both he's talking Sorry? about that because he's saying a problem that didn't exist in the first place. What he means is how to write women to better represent them in in cinema or whatever. When he's saying we already had women in cinema that were very well written, there's no problem to correct there. How I don't know how that's different okay. than what I'm saying. So, do you see how, like, Captain Marvel, they see that and uh, Ray and all these other characters as examples of, like, haha, now this is an age of women we're doing way better for them when they are categorically doing way worse for women now compared to any other time for writing characters in movies. Maybe if we go all the way back to, like, 40s, 50s or something, I'm not even going to make a claim about that because I'm not as familiar with the films. But my point is, of course, that we cracked so many great female characters and then they start trying to fix that, like, give us better ones. And they make some of the worst in history. So when he says it's a when he says it's a problem that didn't need to be corrected in the first place, what what is the problem that he's referring to? My he's, read would be that 
it would be the the idea that women weren't written with depth because what russell brand is is say, like that would be an answer if russell brand was trying to say hey we need the first we need the first uh, well written female character that would be the answer to that but he's not saying that he's he's asking about more representation and things to show his daughters that aren't just from the 80s which you know they discussed previously and that's why he's kind of asking again maybe not the exact same question but he, he reiterated but surely, the same thing if you believe to, to get examples of things to show his daughters right um, if, if you believe that's what drinker for, thinks for the response to that so how can how can i interpret him saying uh it's a problem that didn't need to be corrected in the first place how can i interpret that as anything other than him saying that the uh, the goals of people trying to make more representation in film is a problem that shouldn't have been corrected, and that he's trying to argue that just because there were these other examples in the past, that that's plenty of representation and that people don't need to be trying to do that, he's right? specifically referencing all of the cringe shit like you brought up with Jennifer Lawrence making her claim. In, uh, in Quantumania, there's like a sequence where Michelle Pfeiffer breaks out of... Uh, uh, you know, whatever capture she's in, and the uh, writer and director say, no damsels in distress here, and, like, there's this growing attitude with the presentation of, like, uh, the, the girl in Secret Invasion, who's now the most powerful Avenger of all time because she's got all of their DNA in her, they would argue that these creators, we're doing so much for women and we're fixing the problem of women not being as present, not being as, Fring mentioned, in depth, not being as layered, not being as prominent, and Drink is trying to say, there was no problem to fix. We were doing fucking great. We had loads of amazing female characters. Not to say that we but had that, the correct that's, amount. That's exactly what I'm saying, though. Yeah, but not to How, say that we don't need any more. He's, he's more than happy to have plenty more great female characters. We know that from all the reviews he's I'm done. I'm not saying that he's upset by their... Necessarily that he's upset by there being more. But it seems like he's arguing against the people that think that it's a worthwhile cause to try and make more. I would right? agree with him like in, he's if he's is, arguing is against the concept against that. that women haven't been served well by character writing. Like, that we, we, we have to look at our past as some kind of, like, horrifying so, mess compared to the current uh, position we're in, which is much worse. I, I'm, I'm trying to reconcile with what you're saying he's saying and what he's saying, or what I, at, least, at the very least what I think he's saying. Because if I were him and I believed, uh, you know, there's this all these great examples of female characters, you know, most of the examples being brought up, being in the past, you have an entire video saying, here's why female characters are improperly written now. How does that translate to you saying, uh, sorry, for to him saying, this is a problem that didn't need correcting in the first place? Because if you look at his, his uh, videos on like, you know, how men are improperly treated in, in or written in films, he doesn't say, oh, this isn't a problem that needs to be addressed. He says, this is something we need to be fixed. It just seems kind of inconsistent, right? Like, it, it, I, I don't know how else to interpret it. If he was presented with the idea that we need to do more deconstructions of male, like, leading heroes to show that they, they can be flawed and depressed and be brought down, he might very well say that's a, a not a problem that needs fixing. We do have deconstructions, we do have great stories about uh, older, retired heroes sort of things doing different things differently and that they've overcorrected and created horrible stories as a result. He may very well say that. Um, obviously, in regards to women, I, as far as I can tell, he's he's having a reflex response to the idea that we need to create better female characters. We always had really good female characters. That's the response to that. Yeah, which which it seems like a weird response to give when Russell Brand is asking what his two daughters could be watching in current day. Well, he gave five <laughs> when, examples, when, and then he when, talked when about the, how it's not a problem. Is just saying like, hmm? he gave five examples, he and then he talked about examples of things that are like before they were born. Why he is gave that bad? Examples of things before they were born. Because that's why Russell Brand asked the question again, is because last Did time Russell he Brand listed... say, Can you give examples from the last five years? I think that was the implication when he talked about the age of his daughter. Well, I Drinker could, you know, like, but I don't like think... He's, he's clearly... He's, he, Russell Brand is very clearly trying to ask about the current landscape of films, right? And, and so it's weird... It's weird to give old examples from before that they're, they're born and then also say... It's a problem that doesn't need to be corrected because of those examples. Like it's it's not okay. really 
But then, Satisfying if that is your position, question, right? and you believe that's the most reasonable interpretation, then you have to have as part of Drinker's position that we don't need any more female characters that are well-written. And he must not think any of them are very good these days, which we know is not true. He's already praised Arcane. I don't... I don't think that that's necessarily part of his... His how can he though. how can you maintain that he thinks that we don't need any more female characters and I can name all of the best ones from ages ago because all of the new ones are shit but simultaneously promotes it's, the ones that are good today? He I didn't I didn't say that he said that there doesn't need to be any more female characters. I said that he's arguing against people that are making those efforts, right? Because a lot of his criticisms is against people making those efforts, whether they're well placed or not. And when he says when when the phrasing is they're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist in the first place. You know, a normal, I don't know if the word normal is correct here, a different person with, a, with the per perspectives that you're saying he has would say the problem does exist, here's how you fix it. But he'd said the problem doesn't exist. No, the right? problem, Which I agree with him, the problem say. doesn't exist. If the problem as stated is women need more re representative characters that are in-depth and detailed, I would say, yeah, sure, we all do. And if they said, well, yeah, but we don't have you, any as women, I'd be like, you have a lot. But that, that's not what they said. Uh, and this is exactly what I was saying in the video, is that if, the, if, the, if we were responding to Jennifer Lawrence saying, there have been none, then yes, this is, this is exactly what he would say, and it's a perfectly acceptable response. But that's, that's not what he was asked. He was asked about the future, about, about the current landscape of films, and how to reconcile that without like, having the whole political woke or whatever issues he's having with how they're being represented. You know, we're, we're it's it's like two different questions and two different answers. And we're kind of like interchanging which ones we think are being uh, asked or answered. So I, I don't do know if we're going to I don't know if we're going to wind up agreeing on this one, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from at the very least. Do you think if Russell Brand didn't, uh, depending on what he was looking for, he wouldn't accept those answers if it wasn't something that he was looking for or approved of? Can you sorry, can you repeat that question? I get if Russell Brand wanted particular examples and Drinker gave his examples, wouldn't Russell Brand say, no, 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 I mean these kinds of examples instead? Wouldn't he say, uh, no, no, because <laughs> no, he's he's a he's one of the least uh, confrontational interviewers ever, first of all. And so, second, it did seem like like the, the extent of his confrontation was him bringing this back because he like. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to agree that he was asking the exact same question earlier, but you know, essentially both times he was trying to get advice on uh, media for his young daughters to watch in this current landscape of films, and trying to reconcile that with his uh, perspectives on wokeness and perspectives on inclusion and all that stuff, right? So that that is him like pushing back in a way because he was unsatisfied with the. Uh, Sarah Connor and Ripley examples. He, I think he was genuinely asking, like, hey, what is something that you would approve of? What is something, you know, like, that that I could show my young daughters? And that's not to say that th something doesn't exist. I don't know the age rating on Arcane, if it would be appropriate for them or whatever. Uh, but, like, it, it it is a weird way to answer that question by ending well, I mean, with, it's a problem that doesn't alien exist in the first place. Because I... Cause I I don't think he would, would say that about male characters, right? I don't think, like, if they were talking about, like, hey, male characters were written well in the 80s and 90s, uh, they're written terribly today, I don't think he's going to go, oh, it's a problem that doesn't need fixing. They're trying to solve a problem that, you know, like, he's, it seems like he's actively asking for the problem to be fixed when it comes so to males. If right? the problem Where, as stated is women need more better written characters, he would want to cross it out and say we need all, not just women, and in fact there's, there's no relevance to say that women need it any more than men need it, any more than any other particular persuasion across, it, fucking I want more alien characters that are grey, or robots. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I seriously think that, that that's the, the tangle here, is that Drinker is not at all implying that like, people who want more female characters who are well written need to shut up because we have plenty already. He's saying like, we need to do great shit for everybody, what do you mean? And we already know how. That's that's a little exaggerative to I, I was trying to be careful with my phrasing i i think that's a little exaggerative what a, what my position was um, um that he's essentially arguing against the people making those efforts not necessarily that you know there shouldn't be any more female characters and they need to shut up but that's the but thing right that, that he's Russell, 
highlights those people with those efforts and Drinker's saying they're using shit tools when we've got the tools already. We know exactly what to do. I wish he said that. But that is what he's but, saying. Uh, with other words. Like he, remember, he's, he, he started talking <laughs> about how um, they don't write characters with flaws, they don't write them defeating adversity, and you were saying, okay, yeah, that's that doesn't that doesn't mean you've got a guaranteed good character, there are other ways to write them, but that that is a broad good way to write characters. That's that's what he followed up with sure, immediately. Sure, but that, that wasn't that wasn't. Hmm. That was all connected. That's what he's talking about with writing good characters, not just females. Okay. I just don't. Um, what question would you ask him if he was here right now to get clarification? Yo, how come I never see you drinking in your videos? What the fuck? It's because he's he's already drunk. Oh. But seriously, in relation well, to this. So, uh, there, uh, yeah, I was genuinely curious about his clarification for why he seems to imply that because uh, there are no stars anymore, if we were to accept that, uh, why that's a bad thing. Because it, it, it seems to come with that implication, and I that was never answered in this video and i've seen other people say it and i, I ne i've never seen like a proper answer for that so that would be one thing i'd ask about um and then also the... in relation to this part in relation to this part i mean like i'm i don't i don't know what i possibly could ask him because it, i i feel like with my criticisms being made whether or not he uh had the intentions of saying what you were saying uh when he said it like it, it's seems like a pretty easy save right so I, I don't know what i don't know if i would trust what uh what the answer would be at that point you understand this so there's nothing that could be done at that point then well i don't have a window into his soul right i'm i can only and no, neither but do you but um obviously i trust the answers you're giving me about your perspective i don't assume that you're probably saying a lot of stuff to look better mm-hmm I mean, like, it. I don't think that it's as... How do I phrase this? I don't think that when people do those sorts of things, I kind of touched on this earlier, that it's uh, necessarily all intentional or conscious. I think that a lot of people do those sorts of things in an, I don't know if unconscious or sub subconscious, I guess, is the right term, in a kind of a subconscious way. You know, people are statistics. People are... You know, we, we're all subject to these weird biases and these weird behaviors, these weird uh, mental phenomenons. Um, and I think that it's very possible that a, a person in his position could give an answer to something and kind of think that it makes sense at the time, but it's not really a strong position or something that he's like actually thought about super strong. Like his whole uh, answer to. Uh, the sound of freedom, like his immediate response is like, I don't, I question the morals of, of people that are uh, saying bad things about this movie that they don't want you to see it because about the subject that, that it is. I feel, I feel like if, if this was, if he was asked that question for the first time, not on Russell Brand, but in this podcast, and I said, and there was someone there to challenge him on that, whether it would be you or me and being like, wait, are you serious? Like you're, I'm sure he would be like, oh, no, yeah, actually, actually, you're right. You know, like whether or not that's like a I'm not trying to say like, ooh, to make people like him better. But I think that there's certain things that normal it's a normal human thing to say something and then be like, OK, yeah, you're right. That didn't make sense. I did it fucking 10 times or however many times during this whole conversation. Right. I'm good faith. I'm open to having my mind changed. I'm open to discussion and I'm introspective. Right. So I would I would hope that the rest of the world is, too. Uh, but that doesn't, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily implying like uh, some sort of uh, malicious, like, ooh, I'm going to hide what my real opinion is, right? I'm just saying what he said was dumb and that he might uh, come, he might also agree it was dumb and it's also a normal human thing to to try and pretend like what you said was not actually what you said. And that doesn't mean you're a bad person. Uh, but, it, you know, I, I would say that's just most people, that that's a thing that people do, so... Who knows? I, I could be over psychoanalyzing. I don't know, but that that's part of how I feel, I guess. Uh, being more familiar with his work, of course, I would just say he's got a big investment of writing male and female well. He's very into it, and the, mm -hmm. 
uh, obviously hates a lot of the dynamics that get promoted as an improvement upon uh, older eras. But, you know, with all of that context, I can't read this any other way. I just think that he's lamenting at the fact that they think they're writing better characters when they've had the tools to do so this whole time and they don't use them. Or rather, they don't feel inspired by them to create the aspects of those characters that really do endear people toward them as opposed to having characters... Like, one of the common ones in, in Captain Marvel, her best friend just walks up to her and says, you are powerful, you're smart, you're funny, you are always the best in the class, you... You achieve so much, and you know what? You 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 are so fucking great. And it's like the fuck. She's like she's looking at the camera. It's that kind of writing where she's like, "What a shame that we can't uh, show it with action yeah. instead." Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if like listing any number of like bad current writing is. It's what's what I'm that. trying to argue is in his head when he's saying these things. That's what he's thinking about. Yeah, that's a very noble interpretation, and I'm glad you're sticking up for your buddy. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm just trying my best to be honest about how I feel and, uh, at the same time trying not to be, you know, shitty, I guess. So. Like, I get it. I get it. I understand your perspective. I understand it. I understand it. But like, man, it's, it's not, it's not that like women existing and being more represented in media it's not an attack on men it's not an attack on men and even though some people write it to be as an attack on men and even though some writers it's clear like oh like this person just had a bad experience with men and they think that like oh, all men are evil because they had three dates with men and they were all shit or whatever like those people exist and those people write movies but like seeing more women in movies is not like this it's it's not it's uh, to to claim that like this is not this is not a thing that anyone should be concerned about. If I were a woman, I would see myself represented all the time. Name five movies in the past twenty years, three of which are side characters. Like if I were a woman growing up in the nineteen nineties, if I was if I was a woman aged one in nineteen ninety one, I would just watch Alien with Ripley. I would just watch the Terminator movie with Sarah Connor, and I would see myself represented. Like okay. I get it. Like, it doesn't have to matter this much to every single person. I'm a fucking gay furry. I don't see myself represented anywhere. I'm the pioneer of seeing myself represented places. I'm doing that shit for other people. I get it. You don't see yourself represented anywhere? Where? Well, anywhere implies anywhere. Like, Where am I, I guess supposed movies to see more specifically. Well, it, that's a. In very like mainstream deep question. culture? Yeah, like, do you, do you not see yourself represented in movies or anything like that? No. No? All right. No, not at all. Actually, one movie I yeah. do. All but right. But I can't tell you which one. Fair enough. I think I what's to. being appealed to is just fundamental characteristics that you find endearing because you consider them important to yourself as well, beyond gay theory. Yes. Oh, I agree, but I'm that. That's a that's a... It's not to say that... Ooh, if there's a gay furry in a movie, then I see myself represented. I was just arguing, you know, in, in on the same terms as people talking about how white people, you know, see themselves represented or black people see themselves represented. I agree that, you know, there are different variations and different arbitrary uh, labels we can give ourselves to categorize how we feel represented. Um, and I wasn't to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh yeah, then therefore I would feel myself represented. If I see a gay furry, I'm just saying, you know, by by those standards that a lot of other people seem to apply, uh, I don't see that. Okay. Right. But to claim that, like, oh, the people that want to see themselves represented in that way, like, oh, yeah, they already had it with Ripley. With Ripley and Sarah Connor, and that's it, and those are the only examples that you're ever going to name, and then some side characters. Like, like that's just harsh in terms of representing his yeah. point of view. That's pretty good. It's yeah. exaggerative, yes. It's hyperbolic. You got to understand at least where they're coming from. Even if you think that that's something that they shouldn't like be concerned about, you should at least say that on their terms, right? You should at least say that on their terms. 
but you're acting as if like they don't even have an argument, which is like crazy. It works. That's the problem. What about that analytic tool? Like I only know because I saw it in Rick and Morty, where they say like an analysis of a feminist, a movie from a feminist perspective is: Are there two female characters that have names that are talking about something other than a man? Bechdel test fucking sucks. Bechdel test is bullshit. I don't even think women talking passes the Bechdel test. The entire movie, they're talking to a dude, and they're 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 talking about what other dudes have done to them. So it doesn't even pass the Bechdel test. Bechdel test is a bunch of bullshit. Discard that shit immediately, even if you're a feminist. And also, like, there is an imbalance between <clears throat> films that, uh, don't you think, do you agree? Like, that, that are sort of built around, like, let's call them, you know, white males or whatever. There is a, do you think there's an imbalance that could be addressed? And what do you think about, like, why is it a critique like that emerged? Like the one I learned on uh, Rick and Morty that's got a proper name. Someone told me the post is a proper technique. It's called the something test. Yeah, the Bechdel test. Bechdel test. Uh, oh. It's funny because the Bechdel test was actually created as a bit of a joke. Uh, but yeah, it's not like... Is it a 4chan thing or something? No, no, they're, they're, it's a... Pre <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love how Russell Brand thinks that the best- he, he thinks that the Bechdel test could have been created by 4chan. I love that. That's so- That literally does sound like something 4chan would do. At this point, but I think it's- I think it's existed a lot longer than that became- Yeah, I think it's from the 80s. People, oh yeah, people. it's- but- Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That 4chan get up to a lot of <laughs> crazy things. Good! Mm -hmm. uh, Russell Brand- I, the Bechdel test was created before he was an actor, right? Before he was even even like popular in movies in 2008 or whatever, right? Why does he think it was a 4chan thing? That's so funny. It was created by a woman, but um, she, she just did it as a bit of a laugh, is. and it was meant to put fun at like the feminist critique of, uh, of movies and stuff, so it was never meant to be taken seriously, but it's become like the benchmark. I just, I just think it's funny that he thinks that, or that he thinks that it's a possibility, as a, like, as, as a person that used to work in filmmaking. <laughs> I find it amusing at how credible it is that he thinks that. I don't, uh, mm. I don't even know when I first heard of it, but uh, I wouldn't have any guess exactly probably, its origin, you know? I've probably heard about it in, like, maybe within the last five years is when I heard about it. And I think it was because, you know, feminism was a big there thing back in, you know, 2013, 2016 kind of years. And that's, I think, when I first heard it. So... Makes sense to me. Someone might think it's something very recent, like you know, an internet troll. Around. I could buy it. Um, yeah, obviously, I could buy that. I know it's not though. For like how movies are read, and so okay, you know, it's, it's more like the reality, Black Bell um, test. Critical doesn't yeah, seem to yeah. even mention animated gross. characters as well, like Millen from 1998 or Matoko <laughs> Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. In terms of um, how do you? That's the thing. He would mention a lot of animated characters if he had his full list, but. He just went with ones that came to his head first, which doesn't surprise me, right? Alien, mm -hmm. Terminator, and Indiana Jones. It's like some of his favorite movies of all time. Mm -hmm. How do you square that up? Uh, I suppose part of the reason is like it depends what genre of movie you want to look at and, and uh, how mainstream you want to go because the, the biggest movies at the box office tend to be action movies. They tend to be superhero movies, all those kind of things, but they're, they're generally very male-oriented movies. And so the natural result is you tend to get a man in the lead because that's what that's what guys look for. But I agree. For, for other stuff, it's just you just have to go into different genres. It could be dramas, it could be uh, it could be romance, it could be historical epics, whatever you want to be. Um, there's plenty of movies with characters like that in it. They're just not the big blockbusters. Get it? Hey, I get it. Because what it is, is it's not like, hey, we really love white men. It's economic. It's economic. They just these movies will sell well. <laughs> I agree to a certain extent in the same way that I said earlier, like, you know, I was kind of being a bit facetious, like women are the majority population. You know, I said anything political you can't complain about because you're voting on it. I don't mean that to a literal degree, but like you can't complain about like women not being in politics if you don't vote for women in politics. Like you're the majority vote. You're the majority vote, like vote for more women. If every woman voted for women, then you'd have women in politics. Like, why? Why? Honestly, why are there mostly men in politics? Why? Women are the majority population. You have the majority vote. It is a slight majority. I literally don't get it. Like, I, like it, you can't blame men for that shit. You got to blame women, women for that shit. Because women are the majority vote. Like, I, I, got I don't him. know. Maybe this got will him. get me canceled or some shit. I don't know. I need but to organize. I'm trying to reconcile. I just, I don't usually like this much women hate on the podcast, but we'll allow it for the guests. It's okay. Yep. Don't worry. This is Thank a safe you. harbor. You can come here and hate Thank on you. women as I much as you it. want. If you need to, oh, he's like, oh, finally, I can go on EFAP, EFAP and drop this charade. I could be myself. Uh, oh, the women don't vote for each other because they all hate each other. Yay. Of it all, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to reconcile <laughs> with the, the population. Um... But to some degree, you have to, like, you know, blame what is popular on what is being consumed, right? So if if there's, you know, a certain amount of things being represented in media, you have to blame who is consuming the media. In the same way, 
in the same way, and I'm going to make an argument against the critical drinker here, in the same way that mm. we saw mostly male, white dominated films in the 80s, in the same way that we are now seeing a bit more representation, we are seeing a bit more less white, less male represented leads in films, and they're doing successful. Fucking Parasite was hugely successful. Everything Everywhere All at Once was an indie film, basically. A24, small production film, you know, maybe not technically indie. Um, but like, you know, it wasn't like a big, gigantic studio movie like Christopher Nolan, Warner Brothers, whatever. Like, everybody fucking saw it. Like, everybody fucking saw it. Like, if you didn't, like, you, what are you even doing talking about movies or even listening to me talking about movies, right? Um, the landscape is changing, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And so you look at films like, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, you, you see Mahler, like, in the background here. Uh, and Mahler has had the critical is. drinker on his podcast. And I think they relate to each other a lot Ooh. in certain ways. I think that people um, treat Mahler as kind of like this weird, like, kind of boogeyman where, like, sure, maybe he agrees with the, the critical drinker on some things. Maybe he agrees with me on certain things. Like, I don't think that he's necessarily, like, this caricature of, like, everything that's wrong with, like, uh, film criticism. Or I appreciate it. I guess. Um, like you say, not necessarily. <laughs> it's like, maybe. There's a small uh, yeah, chance. I, hey, <laughs> I phrase myself very carefully on hey. everything I say. I, I very, if you hear me making like a absolutist statement, that is that is very not uh, not representative of things I usually say. I, I, make, I make sure to add nuance to a lot of things that I say. Or That's like a normal thing. Objectivism or like... Y y well, please don't connect objectivism to me. That's not, we're not objectivists. I, I'm just, not the one who started that. I'm just, I'm saying that it's not. Good. Uh, objectivism <laughs> is just because that's the Ayn Rand thing. Yeah. Just so we're clear. I think that a lot of people like treat him as like this weird kind of boogeyman, right? Um, you look at his perspectives on films, like he loved everything everywhere all at once. Like there are films that break out that like, connect with everybody regardless of like who the race or gender of the main character is because it's like Pootie you know, a great film that connects with people and i can understand you know like being in that perspective or being the critical drinker you know like you're used to this type of thing that has been presented to you your entire life and you're looking for a reason to justify and understand why you don't like this new type of thing and the reason isn't just oh you're racist or you're oh you're sexist it could just be it's new right like that's most old people yeah. that's most people that just grow old you know but like, also because you're young, i'm racist and then you're and old sexist. and you don't like things that are new and that's like that's the definition yeah. of conservative and i wonder really, this is a, a very valid line of understanding for why people may come to their conclusions but i don't know that i, I just don't think it applies to drinker he, he's gonna tell you like he he pursues a lot of uh, all kinds of things. Not he wouldn't he wouldn't like hesitate being like ooh Asian led. I don't know. Maybe I'll watch it. I guess. You, well, but do you do you think that there's any shred of a possibility that like part of him can feel that way? Like, do you feel like it's like an unconscious that it's bias representative of any any? Well, sure. Yeah, I'm 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 rarely talking about conscious biases I, th I think that most of so, people's biases are i guess part of the problem with that one is that i'm just gonna go full all or nothing like i guess maybe it applies to yeah. all of us in some way or that i we should just stick to whatever you know we see people do yeah i i think that it does apply to all of us in some way um and i think that it's important to try and be introspective and try to fight that part of yourself if you do notice it uh influencing you in that way um but yeah, I, I feel I feel like it does exist for a lot of people, and I'm just trying to be more conscious of and spread uh, the message of my perspective that uh, we shouldn't be uh, just scared of things because they're new. And also, like, you know, a lot of people that exist uh, that watched everything everywhere all at once or watched Parasite, like these films were able to exist in this culture because it's getting more normalized. If it was literally just like, there's only been white people in movies that like 100% with no exceptions. And then that movie shows up, like that would be incredibly intimidating for a lot of people. Right. Um, it's because different people being represented is taking up a bit more of the pie that these great films are able to exist in this landscape and people are watching them and they're being successful. 
I I'm think. Trying to think of even when I was super young, if I was like of a position where I'd be like, ooh, non Western film, I don't know about this. Like I've got some kind of aversion mm -hmm. to it. I don't think I've ever felt that way. Not to say I don't you know, there's gonna be people who do, I suppose. A lot in, of people in the can't same do way. Subtitles. Well, yeah, I was gonna say in the same way people can't do subtitles, four by three or black and white. Like but that's because people... of subtitles, right? Not because of well, yeah, these yeah. biases that relate to, like, I don't want to watch a foreign film, those foreign... I'd be like, oh, damn, okay. I, I don't feel like I come across that very much at all, but I guess you're saying it wouldn't be overt. These are things that are, are clicking and moving in the background over time. Yeah, we're all we're all a part of a greater machine, you know, if we want to call it that. We're all, we're all individuals that make up a whole. We're all statistics. And, uh, you know, we live life as individuals, but really we're statistics. And so, yeah. That's the definition of just being somebody who's not progressive. It's like, hey, things were the way I wanted them to be, and I think that that was safe, and I don't like things that are changing, even though that's progress, right? Well, that's all. They don't care. They don't care uh -huh. at all. Like the Bud Light thing. They don't care if you're blue collar. They don't care if you're trans. They don't give a shit. They just want to sell you Bud Light. So it's the same thing with movies. So maybe this is what perhaps, uh, this is a question, like maybe what offends you. It's like they still want their cake of Indiana Jones, Luke Skywalker. I love how he brought up Bud Light. Ladies, I didn't, I didn't also, catch that the first time. They just want to sell you Bud Light. That's a very funny thing for Russell Brand to say. Well, he's just <laughs> talking about like how it doesn't matter what they're at. They're, fundamentally, he... the bottom line is the bottom. Like they just want to make money. I didn't catch exactly oh, what his okay. point was. I don't. I'm not sure. I thought that's what he was saying. He doesn't. The the because there it, it's called pink capitalism, right? Where they pretend to care about issues. They're just trying to sell stuff. Yeah. Attack. Uh, you shouldn't have these figures as the dominant figures. So they sort of live out their own dilemma almost in the movie of attacking and deconstructing the archetypes that they resent but rely on. Is that a good bit of made up analysis? What the, yeah. What they want to do is use them as a springboard to launch their own new characters. But it's like trying to take a character that uh, you know you've bonded with over a period of years, if not decades. That you. I agree that it's kind of lame to try and take these like you know. In Indiana Jones 4, they were trying to, like, be like, oh, Shia LaBeouf is the new guy, and then he got cancelled, and then they were like, he actually died in the next movie. Uh, we have, <laughs> like, Bill and Ted being, like, the two girls. I guess one of them's non-binary. I didn't know when I made re my review. I don't know. Uh, you know, you have the two main characters from that one. Yeah, it was Bill like, and Ted's third movie was fucking awful. I, uh, I watched them all in a big row, the three of them. It was quite a drop in quality yeah. with that third one. Oh, we're continuing the franchise. Did they even have another movie planned? Like, I don't fucking know. Like, there's there's like a bit of a trend to be like, oh, we're passing the torch. I get that. I get understanding that, and I get recognizing that. But let's see where he goes with that. Grew up with and stuff like Indiana Jones being a great example, uh, or Luke Skywalker, for example. Um, characters that you've really come to know and love, and then they, what they'll do is present them as old men who are sad and lonely. They've given up on life. They are broken down, and they're kind of pathetic now. And they... well. What do you want the main actors to do? What, like, do you want Harrison Ford to be like, oh, I'm such a very young, energetic young man, like... What is going on right. here? <laughs> like, what what, what's happening so here? So he's, he's, he's commenting on the representation of beloved character is turning into something that he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. um, my argument is that it's less to do with, like... it. it it's not necessarily to do with like a oh men can't be represented in the, in this way like he has a video where he's like talking about um how they're trying to like destroy your heroes or something right mm -hmm. um i think that it is also very much just a byproduct of the fact that they're keeping they're continuing to use these main actors to the point where they're in their fucking 80s like mm -hmm. i don't know how else you're going to fucking write them right it's more well, it's more of an issue that we're trying to squeeze every last fucking <laughs> piece of meat juice out of their dangles <laughs> the okay, okay. So alive, you, like... you don't think that there's any other way they could write these characters if they're old than humiliating and dragging them down and but, shitting all what? over them there's there's no, no it's no, no. it's either like come on okay so no, hold on hold on so we're there's the example that was talked about before he answered this question was indiana jones 5 yeah that wasn't yeah. really the whole movie that was like the intro to the whole movie it was literally like this i don't know if all of you watched it but oh, it, yeah. he we set did. it up and he was like you dang kids and he just like yelled out the window the rest of the movie he was doing shit like maybe once he complained uh, about his back or something but like he was um he wasn't he, like he, replaced he literally like, didn't he wanted to fucking die he wanted to die yeah he wanted to die by the end of it. You want to, no, 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 no. When, when he talks movie, about wanting to die not... at the end, he's referring to his current state of life. 
like throughout the, the his era in life is that nobody likes him. He has nothing. He to wasn't gain. even necessarily wanting to. I thought he wanted to stay because he like he, it's his life's work to st have studied that period in time. So he, and he was okay with the consequence of dying while he was there, but not necessarily. If you remember when he returns, that he would die. He says like, "Why? Why am I still moment. alive? Who am I alive for?" Like he basically because yeah, he got hit, hurt. Remember. Yeah, he, he he absolutely wanted to die, and he saw that the fact that he was had a bullet wound and he could just watch history unfold is his opportunity to have a death he could actually vaguely enjoy instead of having to be dragged back to life. I mean, I don't... Uh... That was the movie. It was horrible. Yeah. The the majority the majority of the movie is not like presenting him as like a like a piece of shit or anything like that. I, I I don't I don't even know if I'll agree with how we're framing how he's being presented at the beginning and end, but like those are the examples. It's just like well, at the, the beginning opening he of the film and the, and the remember, road, he, right? he's a go ahead. Uh, do you remember how when we get to the school slash the university, like his students find him boring and they don't care about the subject at all? That's the that's Indiana he Jones. Seems to care. Yeah, he. I it's don't, fucking is that depressing. Like a commentary about. Is that I don't that's a that's a very interesting perspective because I don't consider personally I don't consider that to be like a condemnation of him as a character. I just consider that as like an attempt at like I don't know like comedy or like just him showing how people don't relate to him. Like I don't know I don't know if it's I don't know if I agree that it's like a part of a larger cultural issue for when a the first movie to students seem to really like him. Way. One of his students thought he was hot. Yeah, and he's fucking he's 80 years old. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's this is indicative is of like like he he could command an audience. Well, know? so in the he third film, something that he, he has clearly to, had a passion about. He has to sneak out of the university because so many people want to ask him questions about his life and stuff. Yes. But when he's this age, nobody gives a shit. People aren't even showing up and they don't know they haven't paid attention to the course at all to the point where they don't even know the answers to a basic questions. And even Yeah. And so, even the way so he again, describes I'll, the topic is way different than how he describes it in Raiders. I'll I'll say that like even even if I grant you that like his his uh the way he's represented in the film is like insulting to the character. I think it's I think it's more of an issue of just like the fact that they're using old people and they're creatively bankrupt and just being like, OK, well, what what the fuck do we do with this guy? He's old now. Right. Like, what? how do we incorporate that into the story? You know, so, they, so, they fucking they they did that in like Uncharted 4, you know, like people didn't really. Do you remember? Wait, what do you mean? By much of an issue. Wait, hold on, what? Did, were, were they? Did, wasn't he like fucking old and like, oh, I'm, I'm too Nathan? young and old for this shit. Like, yeah, wasn't he? He's Am not I misremembering it? He retired for a couple of years. Okay. Like, there, was, there was not, in Uncharted 4, the central conflict didn't have anything to do with him being old. It mainly had to do with the fact that he was bullshitting Elena about, like, what he wanted from life and lying to her so that he could vicarious, like, he could go off with his brother and go on adventures again. Like, because he was just Did... too insular, too self-focused, too much of a desire to get the treasure, even though he said, well, I'm trying to help Sam, and it's like, yeah, I mean, you like this. Don't don't lie. You know, don't bullshit. It's not about him being old. Do you do you feel like the central conflict of Indiana Jones Five was about him being old? It's about the so the the point the it film wants him. to make is that he feels like, and he's supported throughout the film that the world is done with him. He hasn't got anything else to offer. He can go, but by the end, we're supposed to believe through the events that he's got a hell of a lot more to offer. And culturally speaking, he's incredibly important. I think they failed miserably at making that argument. Yeah. I don't know. I just like that wasn't my main takeaway from the film. Okay, it was but just like a dumb, is, boring action movie. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but did you just say as well that um, what are they going to do considering how old he is, but also that he is he's okay throughout most of the movie. He's still doing stuff. He's not like he's not pathetic or anything. Like, exactly. Those, I, but, I just well, I don't. I, I don't. Uh, those two it's, positions. In some sense, it's the worst of both worlds, isn't it? You're simultaneously well, no, not recognizing his age while also m using his age as a justification for this temperament when there are other possibilities and other options at your disposal. I, what I'm saying is that the small amounts of that, that they included in the film is because they're, they're lazy writers doing the obvious thing of like, well, he's old, I guess we'll make it about him being old. But it even, even with that considered, it doesn't make up like most of the film, right? It's, it's not, I, I didn't walk away from that film feeling like that's what it was about, or that's like the message that I was to get from it. I think even Mangold um, would tell it, you that's what the film is about. The, like, the question of what is Indiana Jones to like, the world. 
as as like one of the themes in the movie, sure, but like the primary most theme. Most of it was just dumb action shit. Okay. Um, so the extended sequences that are about him talking, doing stuff that aren't the action sequences, like those still exist and mm -hmm. it's a huge part of the film. They do. Um as well, like you know, there's so many other options everybody has to do with older characters. I, I, I would never want to restrict it to the point where it's like, if they're 80, then you're gonna have to do a story about how they're too old for this sort of thing, as they're opposed old to and sad and nobody likes them and they're alone. <laughs> loads of people recommend it. Like he's still able to it's walk just, and vaguely run, thing. right? So all you need to do is a Chris Pratt type, a son, anybody. Obviously, short round was suggested. They come in and they do the adventuring portion. He's always advisor, and you'll get involved here and there with a whip. You'll yeah, do this, that, and the other. The, you never, he's the, the theme guy. of like, is he too old for this? What what life is worth living? What you don't have to have those themes. We can talk. There's so many things people go through when they get older, and it's fucking annoying that every time we do this with like mainstream studio projects from Disney, they're like, what if they wanted to kill themselves? Yeah. What if they suck? Here, here's a question: Is this is this something that has happened in movies other than the new Indiana Jones and the Last Jedi? Yes. Or are those like, like Blade Runner? Uh, is we that could. An example, or? Well, I'm not familiar enough with Blade Runner. I'd have to rewatch the new Blade Runner written. to get better arguments. I only watched the one time. I didn't like it, but um, they they kind of. It, well, I mean, there's loads of different examples all over the place, right? Obviously, the new James Bond, he wanted to kill himself, essentially, by the end. He did kill himself by the end, technically. Obviously, he was still saving people, but it's like, okay, uh, Nick Fury can, would be another very we, recent uh, one. Can we hold this thought? I'm just going to piss again, but um, okay. I am interested in this conversation, so don't don't keep playing without me. I'll be I'll be back. Sure. Yep. Because I haven't seen Boy. the Picard season one and two, but obviously I've... I know enough from what people I've, have spoken about it, and uh, from what I've heard, he basically just yeah. goes around apologizing and, <laughs> and like, boohoo, sorry. All, and also, the Federation's terrible, xenophobic, awful people now, and they think he sucks. Um, um but well, so if, we if we're talking about specifically exactly. the desire to be fucking dead, it's going to be a shorter list than the the deconstruction and assassination just of like general, characters. Yeah, yeah, like you think that this character. Was like, you know, based on when last you saw them, you thought that they would be like respected and wiser and better and grown and maybe, you know, they're living, God forbid, like a happy life or they would be doing something that you'd expect. Nah, actually, they suck balls and they're a loser. They kind of suck. Fucking laundry I mean, list I, for Marvel. For Marvel is an extensive list. I mean, even with Star Wars, we haven't exhausted what we've got. And then there's all sorts of options that people don't even really think about or give a lot of credence to. Just fuel to get burned to do this. Because it's definitely not a dichotomy. And I would, I would hate, you know, this, this idea to, to persevere that it's either, you know, in the unbelievable, un, you know, just unfathomable action sequences. Or it's, you know, them being a loser and wanting to die. In fact, I really want this idea for, you know, older characters to, you know, who are still prominent and respectable to be normalized. Oh, yeah. This idea that, oh, yeah, just because you're old, that doesn't mean that, you know, you just can't, like, be in films or you can't be an important character or you can't do good things or impart good advice. I mean, we saw how they, you know, treated Val Kilmer and, you know, Top Gun Maverick. You know, I haven't, I haven't even seen right, the movie. Hello. I know that bit. Hello. Oh, you're, are you aware of that scene? Um, yes, so, I'm aware, I am aware of that okay, scene. Okay, It was, yeah. like, yeah. Because... That's in the yeah, movie. I, I guess, I guess what I'm, uh, this, this, I guess this is, this is a common theme. Um, when I, when I see, uh, certain aspects or issues or elements of, uh, film, and I guess partic particularly character writing, criticized, um, in a particular way that, you know, this might just be because of my own bias and the types of media that I consume. Um, but I see it very like heavily uh, correlating, or at least you know, acting in a symbiotic relationship with with this whole sort of like idea of this agency over um, like we have to make your your male characters uh, unre unrelatable. We have to like disparage them in some sort of way. Like I I think it's less of an issue of like 
recognizing that that's a thing and more of an issue with, I guess, trying to trying to have a conversation about like, okay, what is the intent behind that? I don't think it's nefarious. And I think that a lot of these conversations wind up as being like, they're trying to, you know, there's a they and they're trying to, uh, they're, they're trying to make it, they're, they're trying to brainwash you into believing these characters were never good in the first place, which I think is actually very similar to a quote from a critical drinker video that I watched. He's saying yeah. that they're trying to convince you that those characters were not good in the first place. And I think that that's, I think that that's kind of like pushing it in terms of like, uh, trying, trying to analyze the intent of the writer there. I think that there's other explanations for that, that are probably more reasonable. I think that writers can often be lazy. I don't think when we're talking about, you know, beloved characters of a franchise existing and then growing to the, the actors are 80 years old and we're in the fucking nostalgia generation where they're remaking all these movies and then they do soft reboots and then they want to bring back the old actors because that's the popular thing to do and everybody's doing it. I think it's just lazy writing. I think it's literally just like, oh, what do we do in a way that passes the torch in a lot of these films? Sometimes not. Sometimes they try to end it. I don't know exactly what the fuck they were going for in India and in Joe's Five, but in The Last Jedi, they were definitely trying to do a passing the torch thing there. Like, oh, okay, like, you, you know, this is not the character you should be caring about. I don't know if that's that's a nefarious way to try and make you hate the character that you grew up with. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the goal, and I'm I'm not sure I agree that it's as prevalent as, as a critical drinker, or perhaps you as well are making it out to be. So the desire, as far as I can tell, if it's non-malicious, is a sense of like ego-driven sort of, I'm going to make my mark on the future of this IP, and I'm going to deconstruct. Like, deconstruct is the key word. They want to show you what made this person the way they are in culture, and the good and bad of that, and are they still that person, and what does that person mean for the future? That, I think, as a broad understanding, actually matches a shit ton of the examples. Like, um... Recently with Secret Invasion, they spend a significant amount of time telling us that all of Nick Fury's achievements throughout the MCU were not his. He took them from other people and he claimed responsibility for them. Complete retcon. And it's like, that seems just completely fucked up and changes everything about him. And it's like, can, yeah. Can you, can you say that? Sorry, you need to say what the character did again. I was just hung up on the fact that there's a Marvel show I haven't heard about and I keep getting introduced <laughs> to them and realizing that they exist. They, um, it's like, Secret Invasion? Sorry, I had a thought. I was, I they was argue that... Very secret. All of his, like, he's supposed to, Nick Fury is the super spy. Is that the one supposed with the be, AI uh, yeah. intro? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I've vaguely heard of it. Nick Fury's known, like, primarily character-wise, being incredibly intelligent, shrewd, and st uh, sort of tactical. He's going to be the best. He's like the a Batman sort of thing of the, of the MCU. He's going to be able to defeat and plan. He's got nothing to him except his brain and his gun sort of thing, right? That's the kind of character we got. They managed to maintain that relatively in the MCU, even though he doesn't have a lot of appearances. He's I definitely so. kept up yeah. a sense of... Uh, mm -hmm. You get it, you're like, he's going to be impressive, whatever he ends up doing. In yeah. the new show, they argue a group of aliens needed a place to stay on Earth. They were literally, like, desperate. Um, and he basically said to them, I'll figure out a home for you if you do secret agent stuff for me. And that involves collecting dirt on allies to leverage them, uh, defeating people, maybe even doing hits sort of thing, and getting information on different enemy squads. Mm -hmm. He got all of that, and he rose through all of the ranks until he reached the position we meet him in, in, like, Iron Man. And the, the, they have an explicit speech from one of the characters saying, like, you, you motherfucker, you took credit for everything we did. Don't try and rewrite history. That sort of thing. And it's just another one that fits the mold of, like, holy fuck, you, what, what's the goal here? Like, you've completely rewritten all of his actions to now making him a completely different character. And it's like, I well... Think, I think that it's just bad writing and, and uh, idiots that are chosen for writing projects not based on their talent, but just nepotism and industry uh, shoulder rubbing and shit. I think that's I, I honestly think that that's just most of it is just like we th we I would like to think that writers wouldn't be so clueless to uh, not understand how an audience would like to see their favorite characters being treated. But fuck it. Like, here's an example. Did you watch uh, Glass? Like, yeah. That's M. Night. M. Night wrote those characters, yeah. and that is the. At, I could not think of a more unceremonious way to end those characters. Story. I completely that agree. Was, that entire fucking thing is bullshit. Like you watch that and you think, did you even care? 
about these characters like and that's coming from the guy that wrote them i think that that we shouldn't be so naive as to think that it can't just be because there's a lot of writers that are just really bad and not necessarily like sure i think subconsciously maybe maybe statistically there could be a higher uh, you know some amount of it being like politically motivated or you know maybe maybe uh, ideologically motivated but i i just don't think that that's the answer and i think it i think the uh i think when we're talking about film even even just mainstream film i think i think it's a bit more nuanced than that i i'm happy to i would completely agree that incompetence is absolutely a part of all of these no matter what if we find other motivations mm -hmm. as well as other influences that incompetence will always be a part of it but like when approaching an indiana jones 5 i imagine they sat around thinking like what should we make this film about and someone settled on the idea of like okay so we'll start with like He's going to be kind of, we'll bring him down. He's going to have a couple of things going wrong. And by the end of the movie, he's going to find like a new lease on life and it'll end on a really happy note that Indiana Jones is always going to be needed and necessary. And he'll even pick up his hat to let the audience know, you know what, he's still out there doing his adventures. It's like, okay. And then the incompetence set in and the deconstruction angle of like trying to get more commentary on different things he did in the original films with a new perspective on it, so to speak. And it ends up crashing and burning horrifically and it matches a set, unfortunately. That I wish would fucking go away. Because mm -hmm. it's interesting you said about the 80 years old. I think Christopher Lee was around 80 when he did Count Dooku, right? It's like, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying the prequels are amazing. I'm just saying that what I'll do they do, do one, with him? I'll do one even more recent, right? They brought Christopher Lee back for the Hobbit trilogy. And, you know, the movies aren't good. But, you know, they did. They, they were, were way like, worse on a second watch. Holy shit. They definitely get worse on rewatches. I think that's absolutely. my highest rating jump from a five uh, to a one. Oh, whoa. <laughs> to a one? Whoa, calm down. Like, yeah. they're, they're better the, than Dial. The, they're way better than Dial no, of Destiny. No, the, fuck, no, the, the, <laughs> uh, the third Hobbit movie, Battle of the Five Armies. That was pretty bad, yeah. yeah. It's the worst. Most of the, disrespectful worst of the use of my time ever. Most disrespectful use ever? of my time. Oh, have I'd, you not reviewed? I'd, have you have you got videos on these? I'd way cause... rather watch that than like Dial of Destiny. I got. Easy. I, I had the video of me seeing in theaters where I was way overly charitable about it. Um, wow. And also, the second time I watched it was the extended edition, which was just the most cancerous fucking thing. Well, okay. the the Battle of Five Armies extended edition is the only Lord of the Rings movie that has an R rating. My God. Which is funny. Fun fact. Which is funny, but then you watch the extended edition of those movies and you're like, what the fuck? So. It yeah. was a yeah, bit of a tonal thing. But where I was, what I would say, even though those movie that trilogy is not good, there are legitimately good parts of those movies. Even the third one has legitimately good things in it. I don't know what I could say is good about Dial of Destiny. Eh. It could have been worse. Well, and I thought Dial you were going to say um, could have been worse. You were going yeah. with like how they treated Christopher Lee, uh, despite the fact that that was one of his few remaining acting roles, I think, before he was unable to act anymore. Um, and that's, you know, significantly worse than Harrison Ford, who was still able to run around and shout and do all kinds of things. It's just a, a suggestion that they never had to go down these routes, but they often do with a lot of the most beloved characters of all time culturally, like Luke Skywalker, like Han Solo, like Indiana Jones. Why? 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 How why? How many stop? examples are there, though? Like, cause I, well, like, how many we would like you need four, right? to concede that it's a D pattern? Whether or not it's a recognizable pattern in the sense that you can point out for however many examples in the past, when did Last Jedi come out? 2017? Yeah. Or something? Right? Yes, we're talking so, about the yeah. past like six years. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to see more of those examples in this generation simply because we are in the generation of nostalgia bullshit where we're for like. <laughs> previous generations of movies didn't bring back old characters, right? They didn't, like, there was, this wasn't really as much of a thing in previous generations of movies, so. But considering it, how often they fumble it, like, to where it's a, a, a bizarre consistency with how, can, you know, how badly they do well, it. But don't we have comparisons like, to make, though? I don't know yeah. if I would say it's a consistency. But the previous generation it, of bringing happened. Indiana Jones back didn't do this to him. Like, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, but he wasn't that old. And they, he is. Here, the thing. Age they doesn't also, have anything did, to do with it. To, age doesn't have anything to do with it. They did try to set it up. He was older than. They did try to set it up so that Shia LaBeouf would take over it. Yeah, the but end, they right? also Which ended it with him saying the... no. They took the hat off him. Well, 
Remember at the end of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, he married to Marion. He, you know, was happy. They kind of left him on a high note. Yeah, and it was the anyway, end. Regardless of whether or not there's some examples of he was 66 uh, by the way, being brought, filming that old people being brought back in the 90s, early 2000s, or whatever, right? Like there's exi- the, I'm not saying it never happened, but we are in the generation of it happening consistently of there being old IPs that are revived, revamped, soft reboots, whatever, bring back the old characters. The fact that this is constantly happening and a, and is constantly a thing that is happening means that it's going to be more likely that we're going to see those characters disrespected and mishandled. I don't think that it's necessarily like the goal to do that. I think that it's just like a a um a byproduct of us having these movies in this generation anyway and the writing just being bad. Like we brought up Blade Runner 2049 which was kind of like a passing the torch sort of thing and Harrison Ford is like well did you watch did, I've seen did it but not since it came out it and came I'm out. not a fan. Not a fan. Yeah, I think I remember having a conversation about this on your thing a while ago, but mm-hmm. I really I really love that movie and um I don't know like I don't know if I could I don't know if I could watch that and attribute it as like we're supposed to uh we're supposed to not like this character anymore because they're old and because they're, you know, disheveled. Well, I don't know. Based off I, of I I feel he, here's the thing. I just watched the Lorax was which was a very bad movie. And within the movie, within the singular title, there's a character who grows old and is like, "Ah, oh, I can't do anything anymore." Like I just think that's such a trope already that just writers who are a bunch of Nepo babies in their 20s and 30s just don't know what old people are like. And so they just have to write them in this like, uh, you know, like, I'm old. Okay, but what about like, the ones that like, I think it's, I think it's just successful. a lack of creativity. What about the ones that don't choose Which that direction and the ones that people like? So we could go with like uh, Logan would be one, right? That film's a deconstruction of Wolverine, but people really like it and it doesn't. Yeah, he's old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying people Again, liked it's it. It's like the obvious Yeah. Yeah, like, but I'm saying that the direction for the character to go and the types of ideas that they have they at least feel compelled to bring up as part of the themes of the character. Oh, okay, no, so I'm not shit. They're like, "Oh, the actor's old." The I thought this was a old, given. So I'm could... I'm saying that throughout Logan, he's not like pathetic. He's not uh being told by all of the characters that he's worthless sort of thing and he doesn't want to like uh, give up on people or whatever. The deconstruction think, is what does Wolverine we, represent? I think that we hold different values in terms of uh, the social standings or how beloved characters are treated because I don't see those things as too different personally because I don't really feel generally like attached to any of those characters in like a nostalgic way. But like, you know, even... I'm trying to think a good of a good example of something where I could feel that same way. Um, I just, but like mm, you could imagine what it would it. be to not want these to see these characters well, I mean, you, constantly. Disrespected. You mentioned glass, like that. That is I, close to it, right? I assume. Well, yeah, it's like entirely unceremonious. But yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't watch that and think that they're trying to make me feel disrespected by doing that. I watch that and think, "Wow, M Night's fucking stupid." Yeah, <laughs> like, no, but uh, like that, I, that's I, my I, takeaway is is not like what a, he did to those two characters is so of, beyond like, fucked up, and and I completely agree with you. And that if it were like like if if M Night had quotes related to well I wanted to do it to show people that the characters are blah 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 like like these things are going to play into it as well right like what what the creators mm-hmm. have to say about these sorts of things what ideas they're trying to represent um this whole era of it um there are legacy characters that do return that, as anomalies that are treated well um Logan was one I was trying to bring up that people felt like Logan was respected in that film but you know like uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man. They could have brought him in as a depressed, disheveled, yeah. sad Peter Parker who's lost the will to live, but yeah. they didn't. They made him the mentor. Here, here's here's what I was trying to say earlier. I feel like even if they did do that with Peter Parker Spider Man, which I love, I wouldn't feel like personally slighted by that in any way. It would depend um, for me on and execution. I didn't, feel, I didn't feel that way in in uh, Glass either. I just felt like, wow, this is bad writing, <laughs> right? I didn't feel like my. I, I feel like a lot of people. Uh, very much kind of attach their identities to these characters in in ways, and I feel like it can feel like 
Um, that's an interesting sentence. I feel like it can feel like to a lot of people um, that their experience is being like diminished by having these characters um, being less respected in, in a piece of media. Whereas like, I'm so detached from these characters, like even characters that I love, like, I feel like I, I feel like this might be pointing towards like more of like a generational sort of like parasocial uh, experience with media, right? I feel like it's perfectly reasonable to be upset when characters that inspired you would like shout on. I I wouldn't call it. I don't think I'd describe it as parasocial compared to uh, like any mentor in I, life. I, I get what you're saying. I don't hold that much of an emotional stake in uh, even my favorite characters. Uh, you know, being shat on in later incantations of media or anything like I've always said, I've said this a million times. People can talk about my favorite movies of all time and say that they're shit. I don't care. Right. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, I care about my own experience with it. Um, but yeah, I, 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 th I think that I think we're kind of getting at this here is that I, I think there's a lot of people that uh, relate so closely to these characters and hold them in a such a special place in their heart and i'm not trying to say this in an insulting way but just in, in a way where i'm trying to understand other perspective here uh i think that there's a lot of people that hold these characters to such a an important place in their heart that they feel slighted by how they're represented in in media which which is interesting to me because i i personally just don't feel that way and but now i feel like i'm understanding more about these people anyway okay does that make sense um, sure. The the core of this being that you um you were like I, I'm trying to get back to the video in some way. I think was that was it Drinker brought this up as sure uh, with Indiana Jones and Star Wars, and you said, is it even happening outside of them? And do you feel as though that's been answered? Say that one more time. Uh, so Drinker mentioned Indiana Jones and Star Wars is obviously included. And then you said, is it even happening outside of them? Do you feel you still want examples or? I, I mean, I've been given examples. I, I don't know to what degree I, I would consider it to be like... Valid? A cultural issue. Okay. Is I, I guess what I'm trying to say. Obviously the... It, it can it, be a trend that you're noticing. Like I see... Sometimes I'll see trends that I notice in movies where it's like only four movies have done it, but I watch enough movies where I'm like aware of like the inspirations of enough movies where I'm like, okay, I see what's starting to happen here. Or like trailerisms, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like when the Inception bomb happened, like right after District 9, I was like, this is becoming a thing. That was the second time it happened. And then it became a huge thing, right? Like, I get that. You can notice if, um, trends, but like... If there were five I, I, writers... It's, it's again... Just real quick, if there were five Sorry. writers, the, one of them did it maliciously, one of them did it because he just was skipping through a bunch of character arcs and he landed on old equals, wants to die. Third one did it because they love the character and they feel like it's perfectly representative of where they'd go next. That's kind of like Ryan Johnson with Luke Skywalker. He felt that that was the thing to do. And the fourth guy is like, oh, well, I love it when characters do this, I just in general, so I just want to make this character do it. And then the fifth guy literally didn't even write it. It was AI. It was just that. But if all five happen at the same time, it's almost impossible not to see it as a pattern. I would imagine that's fair, even if we don't fully understand the motivations for everybody. Sure, sure. So, uh, pattern pattern recognition is subjective, and I will give that. Yes, you can see that as a pattern. I will say that that is that is a noticeable pattern that one that one can notice. My issue, I guess, is I guess perhaps I am incorrectly attributing this, but I, I my issue is with it being framed as kind of like a a cultural problem. Which is kind of what seems to be the the takeaway in this interview, right? Um, for me, and I imagine possibly for Fringy and Rags, I'm not one hundred percent sure. We tend to draw all of it back to incompetence, um, because you can almost do anything that people might hate on paper well, uh, and so deconstructing all of these characters, even if that was their goal, which I'm not necessarily saying it is, at the core of it all, it can always be attributed to their ineptitude and watching them struggle to mm -hmm. try and make whatever point they wanted to make. Like, um, people are, like, outraged that Nick Fury has an arc in that season about overcoming his, like, bigotry towards aliens as a black man in the show, which is pissing everybody off. And it's just like, yeah, the director was probably like, well, I'm trying to make a point about how racism is bad. And it's like, yeah, and you've, you've, you've made it in one of the yeah. most, like, awkward and dumbassery ways ever. You know, the incompetence can often explain almost everything. But it doesn't change the fact do you, that... Do you... 
I wish there was more... Res like, I think competence does breed respect for, like, a character you're dealing with. Do you feel like there's any relation between, like, taking an issue with how beloved characters are treated in later um, versions of the uh, franchise versus, uh, like, talking about how, let's say, like, men are treated in film or, like, how male characters are written? Like, do, do you feel like that's kind of, like, in the same vein? Uh... Um, I don't think so. Um, because you could theoretically have... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't see why they would be... No, I don't think there's any real connection between the two, other than maybe the mm -hmm. people who notice one also notice the other. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm just trying to be um I'm trying to be fair in the sense that like um I'm not really the type of person to like care too much about like you know, seeing how I'm represented in a film or like seeing how a particular race or gender like when I'm arguing about like women in film, like I'm more or less just saying like here's what here's what people who are trying to make that change are at least saying, right? Here's their argument and, you know, like, at least engage with it, right? I don't really, I don't really care either way in terms of, you know, uh, the particular demographics, I don't think, but um, I don't know. I feel, I feel like a lot of the conversation surrounding, like, culture and injecting that into film is just so not what I care about in terms of uh, why I love film, right? I love I love film for the craftsmanship. I sorry, the craftsmanship. I love film for the you know, the directing, the meticulous if, um, elements, the details, the because we, we, I feel like we we're, we're similar. We're on we're on adjacent roads because when mm -hmm. uh, these sorts of things happen, it's like the rewrites or the, the a lot of the time like take Black Widow for example, she was very specifically characterized start middle end in the MCU and is dead. Her primary characteristic is that she wanted a family. She got taken away from hers. The newest version of her, they invent a history where she had a family that she completely ditched and then uh, forgot she kind of had and then reconnected during the events of another MCU film. It was like, what how is, did you? What is the newest version of her? Black Widow, the film. It was a. Is it the? Oh God, I didn't even know that got released. That's so <laughs> it's funny. not good. Um, oh, yeah. Point being, the, <laughs> they probably thought, well, she cares about family, 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 family. We'll make stories about that, and then they end up accidentally fucking assassinating her because they gave her a bunch of things that she would never have done if those are the values she had. So I'm sitting there, mm -hmm. frustrated that they've ruined the character, but also like a fundamental appeal to the artistic merits of storytelling. You've completely fucked it. Like it's you have to respect what they are, who they are, and what actions they would take. So like it's it's like two prongs so to speak like a, my investment in the art form and my investment in the character for how much they may or may not mean to me. Okay. What do you mean? What do you what are you expecting? Use that as an excuse to say hey they were never that good in the first place. And then what they'll do is they'll... What? What when was this published? This was you this was this was after the new Indiana Jones, right? Yeah, I didn't get that takeaway but we've already discussed yeah, yeah. it, right? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that, that was that was released June thirtieth. Like, what what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't think that the new Indiana Jones movie or like the new a lot of these movies were saying these characters were never that good in the first place. Like, you're reaching super hard when. You like I said, the, that one yeah, I gave even, you about. Yeah, even if we say that they're disrespected there, like, the the takeaway of them, you know, the, the implied takeaway of they weren't that good in the first place, that's a very, I feel like that's a stretch, even well, if do you we remember were the, to agree that... The Nick Fury example I just gave you, wouldn't that, that would encompass that, right? They literally rewrote his history to be shitter than it used to be. I, I guess so. <laughs> I know, I know you're not as familiar of, with it. It's a lot of stuff I'm, I don't, don't watch and don't care But, like, this is what me. Drink is referencing. This is what's on his mind. I know. I know, and this is where the disconnect comes from. And this is, this is what we're learning female. about each other. Oh, replacement, who is stronger than them, smarter than them, more capable than them, doesn't have any other weaknesses, and it's like they're trying to... Okay, he's coming at this from a very Star Wars-based perspective, which, nope. <laughs> I'm sorry. People who really care about film and people who really care about diversity of film, not diversity of races or genders, but diversity of, like, film, like, the actual, you know, film diet that you could consume. Most people aren't thinking about Star Wars, but it's clear that you're just thinking about Star Wars, right? Like, 
What you're describing is Star Wars. It's one movie. It's one. So he's he's talking about a couple of games, a few series. Obviously, all of them are mainstream, but the nonetheless valid, especially mm -hmm. in the context of mainstream. Movie. Say, hey, see this guy that you really liked. You're also, it happened in Star Wars multiple times. Mm -hmm. well, not just one movie. Talking oh? about Luke Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. Did you see what they did to Obi Wan? I watched them, but they they just like yeah, they did oh, the sorry, Han Solo. And then the Han he... Solo movie. No, Han Solo and the Force Awakens. Oh. <laughs> I think you like. Do you like Force Awakens? I can't remember. You still you. When it came out, I was like impressed by the uh, the practical effects. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't as jaded by the paint by numbers recreation of Episode Four. Uh, that would soon become the standard of, of what soft reboots would become. Uh, so my rating has changed since I've seen it. Uh, but I, I had a positive review when it came out because I was like, oh, this is fine. Let's see where it goes. And then not only did that become like, you know, wind up being just some of the most annoying, tropey, obvious bullshit ever over time, but what the series ultimately leads to detracts from the original movie for sure right like what, i agree if it if that yeah. if, the, if that's where you're going <laughs> you didn't even have a plan you have two directors fucking arguing with each other about what the movies are like go fuck yourself well, and for the record i i enjoyed so. the force awakens when i first saw it but um yeah Me when too. time went on it uh, crumbled yeah. apart yeah what other worse what movie could you possibly be talking about right now? Well, we've got a new and improved version here, so you have to like them even more now. Of course you do, because that's how you- You're talking about Luke Sky- What other movie could you possibly be talking about where it's like, oh yeah, we've created a new female character, and not only have we replaced- So about this, like, are you familiar with the mm. MCU's, um... It's very odd. Like, in Phase 4 and 5, we've had a, like, what, what is, I don't even know what the actual number would be, but to not exaggerate, it's like a 300% increase in female characters, which isn't a problem in and of itself, but uh -oh. when they're all written like <laughs> shit, and a lot of them uh, will... They are all written like shit. A lot of them will introduce themselves in comparison with the established male version of whatever character it is. So, you know, with Thor, we had girl Thor. With Ant-Man, you have his daughter in, in Quantumania. Even though we already had wasps, I don't know, whatever. Black Widow, even Black Widow, her sister is introduced as the replacement Black Widow, and she is a lot better than Black Widow. She didn't make Black Widow's nice. mistakes. Loki, Sylvie is the girl counterpart to him, and she, like, it's better than him in every single way. It, it's embarrassing and weird. Um, obviously, I, I assume you've heard about Hulk and She-Hulk, some of the most famous clips from her explaining her trauma is more something I, that she's dealt with than he has. I... I, I'm definitely aware of it and actively avoided it, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, like, Doctor Strange, he's... You got uh, America is sort of taken over as the... She's the one that takes the final action. She was actions. annoying. She was annoying. Um, yeah. and, and it's unfortunate no. because... Was her name America? Or what, what yeah, Chavez. Um, and they don't give her... America Chavez, yeah. They, they don't give her character. They just give her... She is girl, who by the end of the film, she's scared, and then he says, you can do it, and then she does it. She was. Yeah, she had it all along. Asshole yeah. girl who, yeah. And so many of these fucking characters arc, so they had it all along instead of actually having yeah. to like fight for it. Ridiculous. Would you say? Would you say that the? Uh, would you say that because of how Marvel writes its female characters, that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is sexist against women? Yes. I think you <laughs> could ironically make a pretty. Yeah, you could. I would agree. Yeah, if you, yeah, it, it's really it's really kind of shit because the MCU had good female characters and it invented shit new ones or it ruined the good ones that we had mm -hmm. to the point where I'm struggling to think what good female characters we have left. Why don't you just knock female out of that? What good characters do we have left? What good characters, period. But, but you know, to, to be, I guess to be topical... I'm trying to think of, you know, who are the non-shit female characters we've got. Um, I know. Cosmo. Oh, Cosmo. Yeah, that's true. Cosmo's great. I like Cosmo. There you go. So, yeah. uh, are we, are we in agreement that the Sony Marvel is doing better than Marvel Marvel right now? You mean Venom Venom 2, Morbius, and, <laughs> like, I don't know. Spider-Verse! Oh, yeah, okay. That's, uh, yes, yes. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna, because you yeah. got... You got that, and then you got technically No Way Home belongs more so to Sony than it does Marvel, right? So, and that was like a yeah. far more redeemable entry in the f phase four and five. So yeah, 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 I guess I would concede that. Yeah, isn't that funny? It is kind of yeah. 
but I mean, it is. Yeah, who it, thought that we would get I, there? Well, who's is it more or less funny than DreamWorks taking over Pixar in terms of? I was just about to say that. Content? Damn. I mean, I was hating Pixar before it was cool. So. <laughs> Where did you start hating Pixar? Which movie? Toy Story Three. Ooh, interesting choice. Mm, a little earlier than most. Yeah. Well. Place them with a female, but we're gonna say that the old male version is bad. What other movie could you possibly? Can we? Can I literally? Can I get some suggestions in the chat? I don't want to just be like talking out my ass from my limited perspective of like me watching art house movies, you know, and like me watching some Marvel movies and some uh, Star Wars movies. Like he's talking about this as if this is like mainstream. This is what every movie is doing, and he's literally just talking about Star Wars. Right? Is this not what's happening? Like, he's literally only talking about Star Wars here and he's not saying it? Attacking and deconstructing the archetypes that they resent but rely on. Is that a good bit of made-up analysis? What they, yeah, what they want to do is yeah. use... Please! Uh, somebody prove me wrong! ...new characters, but it's like trying to take a character that, uh, you know, you've bonded with over a period of years, if not decades, like you grew up with and stuff like Indiana Jones being a great example. Uh, or Luke Skywalker, go. for example. Um, characters that you've really come to know and love. He and says, for example... ...present them as old... But he's only talking about that, right? ...men who are... Well, he's sad. not talking about Star Wars, he's talking about Indiana Jones. When he's, as we've said, there's loads. Drinker would give you a list there if you really wanted them. And lonely, yeah. they've given mm -hmm. up on life, they're broken down, and they're kind of pathetic now, and they use that as an excuse to say, hey, they were never that good in the first place. And then what they'll do is they'll bring in a new diverse female replacement who is stronger than them. Like, did you watch, um, Gen, not Genesis, Dark Fate? Uh, Terminator? <laughs> Hell no. So, do you know, <laughs> no. like, Dark Fate opens with, um, another Arnie getting sent back, and he just shotguns John Connor to death. Man, I just... And then every every time you guys talk, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Every time you guys talk about a movie that you've seen that I haven't seen, that you're d like ruined your life. I just feel bad. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, no. This like, this is. I want to make you all sound awful. Like I feel like I'm making the right decisions by just not considering them things but like, that I have to watch. The more I, feel, I, I feel like, like I'm just doing a good job. You know, like think, the reason it came to my head is because of what I feel are going to be good. It's because of what Drinker just said. I feel like if I if I just say this to you, it'll make it, you laugh, right? So. Damn, the, the, like, I this is the thing. New Terminator I could, would want to watch that movie. New Terminator, big budget. Oh my god, James Cameron approves of it. Here we go. So exciting. Opens up. John Connor is immediately killed, and then in the future, Sarah Connor has to defend a new girl who is apparently going to be the the one to hold, you know, to carry the the new savior of humanity. Because yes, Skynet was defeated. Unfortunately, in the ruins of Skynet, uh, Legion rises up, which is another self-aware AI that's going to take over the world with robots mm -hmm. and uh, nukes. And then at the end of the film, they're like, actually, you're not going to have a kid or a son or a girl or whatever that's going to lead the world. You're going to lead it because that's that you know. And, and they make this like big thing about how. Sarah Connor kind of hates that she wasn't valued as an individual, but instead the carrier of John Connor, which is, it's just like, did you surgically do this? Why the hell did you write all of that that way? That sounds like the most annoying so and like, lame kinda, thing you could give Terminator fans. So they're like kind of like disparaging the Sarah Connor character? They, what I'm getting at is like, they actually assassinate literally Mr. Mr. Connor, and then they make her completely alternate oh, wow. to what her character would be. They erase and undo, like, Skynet, but then they replace it with something called Legion that's exactly the fucking same. It's, like, the worst thing ever. And it's like, why? Why did you do all of this? You you told the same story, much worse, but with a girl instead of a guy. What's what's the idea? What are you doing? I think that... I think that a lot of the motivations when it comes to uh, these terrible writing decisions are based on them thinking that they're going to have a successful film that they can uh, make into a franchise, right? Like the mummy was supposed to be the start of the dark universe. Uh, perhaps if the, you know, new Bill and Ted were even more massively successful, then we would have those two other characters continuing to make films right now or whatever. Uh, I think that, I think that a lot of the bad writing comes from them preemptively trying to set things up and being like, well, yeah, why would we care about the old characters? Because we're trying to start this new shit, and the writers are just so stupid and ignorant <laughs> yeah. about why anybody would want to see the, these old characters presented positively, right? So, yeah. Again, I, I'm, I, 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 think, I think I'll concede on it being a thing that happens, but the intention is what I take issue with. Okay smarter than them, more capable than them, doesn't have any other weaknesses, and it's like they're trying to say, hey, see this guy that you really liked? Well, we've got a new and improved version here, so you have to like them even more now. You say Luke Skywalker as an example. What's, what's any other example? 
Of course you do, because that's how human emotions work. <sighs> no, it's not. People don't think that way. And so the more you try and slot these like fake pod people replacements in to, to, to like supplement these classic characters that we loved, uh, the more people reject it. And that's why Indiana Jones is fucking tanking at the box office. This did Indiana Jones do that? Like, it kept the ma same main character. It didn't replace it with a female character and say, Indiana Jones is bad. I don't know if you're aware, but Kathleen Kennedy talked about how uh, Helena Shaw could very well take over for the franchise at this point as a replacement Indiana Jones in her own franchise, but obviously that's not going to happen now because the film tanked. That yeah, it was weird because, like, even, like, the... Even the, I don't even know if I would argue that the film itself implied that, right? Like, like the only reason we're saying that is because Kathleen Kennedy's saying that, right? Um, no, that's to confirm that was a goal. That was a, there was a passing of the torch element to it, right? She's she's friends with basically you said everybody. Potential, she pulls, though, right? Uh, yeah, if they were going to make another movie, if yeah. they were going to make another movie, like if in, if Dial of Destiny did well, then yeah, which I don't is, which think is, that well, we'd see Harrison Ford in it. It would be no. Helena Shaw taking over, which is probably like. How how well did Crystal Skull do? Right, was that it made like a not lot a... of money? It was very financially successful. Yeah, it made like eight hundred million dollars. Damn. Yeah, this one made That's half that, and it cost this more. one. This one, so, I think. Yeah, I think in order to it's at right now, and, it and in order to break even, I think it had to make just shy of six hundred million. So and that, yeah, and, and even then, that ain't great when yeah, you spend three hundred uh, million yeah. dollars to get six. I think it's safe. I think it's safe to say that uh, we will probably not see another Indiana Jones movie, if ever, in uh, decades. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, hopefully okay, okay, somebody clip it, clip it, clip it, clip it, Rags You're, said yeah, we will, I will hey, yeah. wait, 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 you don't even know what you're clipping, Rags said we will probably not see. Oh, we will probably, we will probably clips. not see, absolutely. Got him, exposed. The Nazi. You did it. It came out. It's I. EFAP, it's a Freudian EFAP split. EFAP will probably not see. We'll never recover. <laughs> and probably. You you literally just you literally had this entire tirade saying like, hey, they're trying to do this thing where like they're replacing it with women characters and saying that the male characters are bad. This is why Indiana Jones is tanking at the box office. Indiana Jones didn't do that. This movie cost three hundred billion dollars to make. There's a there's a plethora of reasons why that movie tanked. So much stuff to talk about in terms of like mm -hmm. time of release, yeah. the choice of story to tell, the way it was marketed, uh, the, the fucking general general and how boring it was. It's so boring. It needs to make like nine hundred million dollars. Five hundred million. Wow. No way. There's a, um, a really funny um, She-Hulk. That's a very funny example. I didn't watch that show. <laughs> like, like this line from Seinfeld reminds me of you. There's an episode of Seinfeld where his dentist converts to Judaism. That's that's a that's very much a spin-off made for a uh, streaming service. Um, Seinfeld. Offers. I'm not gonna argue that that's a good show. I've never seen it. It looks like shit. You'd hate it. <laughs> you, 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 I uh, I saw the trailer <laughs> and I was like, nope. Yeah. So that it allowed 14 to make I guess I'm jokes. sexist now. Oh, yeah. Sure. And, uh, he's, and Seinfeld's rabbi says to Seinfeld, no. uh, does this offend you as a Jew? And he says, no, it offends me as a comedian. Like, that's what's offensive about it. So it's almost like that you're offended as a cineast and as a cinephile. Oh, uh, cineast, I love that word. That's on my poster what, over here. Wait, what is, what? is that a word? It's apparently Cine a fucking word. I don't know if it's like... So there, I have a poster that says the ultimate bucket list for the cineast. And it's like... I, I don't know if it's like a German word, like... I don't know what's okay. going on. But... Oh, I've never heard that word before. I know. I'm scratching them off as a as a scratch off poster. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. It's such a. It's so scuffed. It's obviously one of these like, like just made to make money, and like whoever made this doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. There's a Joker two that was listed before there was ever a Joker two announced. <laughs> oh wow! And there's some there's some movies that are there twice in like the wrong year or the wrong director. It's kind of funny. So I'm <laughs> trying to scratch them off as time goes by, but we're going to cross off some movies. But, but, you know, movies that you adore and love are being dismantled and deconstructed in ways that's clumsy and not even artfully done, but they could be a version. And also I think it's important what you're saying about like the kind of hype for their own audience, because I think this has broader social connotations. I think the movie... Critical Drinker, if you're watching this, can you please do like an entire live stream like reacting to what I'm he saying? He doesn't need like... to. <laughs> we did it. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah. He's uh, where is he right now? Anime I, like... Matsuri, I think. Sorry. I think he's he's currently an anime Matsuri. I don't know. It's the the convention of some anime. kind. Anime. I know. Oh yeah. Because so, uh... okay, here here's my question. Did it? So I saw his uh YouTube post, and he had his drink like this. Did did it look to anyone else like he was like like moving his bicep up with his other finger, or was that just in my mind? I have no clue. 
Yeah. No clue. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I also, when know. you said like this, I can't see you either. But oh yeah, I, I'm showing face cam to everybody but you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I just realized that. I don't want you to miss like some of the things that I'm asking you about. Like I, I want you. Like I'm, I'm really hoping like that some of these things will be addressed. You know, in some sort of substantive way. Like I, I'm not trying to start drama. I'm not saying like, oh, you have to respond to me, otherwise you're a pussy. Like I don't, I don't believe in that shit. I don't believe in that. I really don't. I do. You don't have to respond to me. But if you are going to respond to me, like, can you do like a full, you know, like live, you know, it doesn't have to be live. Do you believe uh, that Anna do... Kasparian should debate Vosh? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> got him. No. will <laughs> be an EFAP for the ages. Right. Like a full, like, hey, if I'm saying, I would love to hear your opinion on this, like you, you satisfy that part of my brain or something i don't know like you don't have to movements we've seen like you know, not like... don't no don't send it to critical don't harass anybody about this don't i i am not one of those people where i want you to send people shit about this no i am not one of those people no Find this out like the emergence of trump the emergence of brexit is the sense that people feel like the professional and media class hate them and don't uh, do not represent them whether that's politically or through the cultural content they provide this is something i talked about sort of like for a while with uh, the filmmaker adam curtis who i very much admire but, and it's been something i've learned more and more about over time is that you have Adam yeah, Curtis is a really interesting, or is that another? Thing <laughs> that I want to touch on? Oh what? man, I just don't think we have the hours I'm for just it. Curious, you know, because you, I, I was just, I, 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 if you have like a one sentence review of Brexit, how it went, I just, a I, one hope everyone, I, I don't know, like, what's the first My... word you think of when you think Brexit? Do you think awesome or do you think bad? <laughs> I, when it comes to Brexit, I hope everyone had a good time. Yeah, they should open a theme park. Old Brexit. Okay interesting documentary filmmaker um it's interesting to hear him referenced by russell brand but yeah i'm not surprised i guess a professional class in journalism now that don't speak respectfully of this for one of a phrase working class people working class culture there's a kind of there's a sort of an antipathy i don't know if the critical drinker knows who adam curtis is though and loathing towards them they don't like working class people or in america blue collar people there's a kind of condescension and snobbery and it seems like in a sense this is one of the narratives that's playing out in film um, i also want to mention like in south park when they did and that was with the last indiana jones movie you know like where they went like they had i think kyle coming out of a movie theater puking oh my god what did they do to indy i can't believe what they did to indy you know and like what about the imagination land one where they were like, um, these characters are more real to you, like, you know, whether it's Jesus, and, and, you know, I'm religious, it turns out, I think you might be an atheist, but I, I believe in God and all sorts of stuff. But like, they're saying like, that these characters are more real to you. Luke Skywalker's more Why real to you. Why did he go for that first? I don't know. <laughs> Why did he say <laughs> When you say, like, <laughs> naming fun <laughs> fictional <laughs> characters <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> Like, why would you say that? <laughs> he he nice caught himself and remembered. He he caught himself and remembered that uh, his audience wants to hear that he's not. <laughs> yeah. Or people, you know, these are people that he's you like, know. Uh -oh. like they've been vessels for your own personal development and your own understanding of your own imagination, darkness, and your own aspirations. And to say imagination, imagination. imagination. I'm wearing a Wonder Show shirt this right is our now. Boy. Recommendation to watch Imagination, imagination Land episodes show. one, two, and three. Is it? Uh, oh, there was, there was a ref I was oh, yeah. I was referencing the show Wonder Shows in. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm referencing the Imagination song, the superior media to whatever you were talking about. <laughs> Have you seen? Oh, like oh, okay, hold on. Have you seen what? Wait, wait. Sup? Have you seen Wonder Shows? In? No, I don't think so. Fucking watch Wonder Shows. In. I am recommending that to you all specifically. It's hmm. awesome. Oh. It's wait, is that before or after the hundreds it's of hilarious. beavers? Uh, well, you're not going to be able to watch hundreds of beavers until like maybe winter. So before. It is winter. What are you talking about? Have you seen? Have you seen another PF? <laughs> so PFFR is responsible for Xavier Renegade Angel, which is oh, more po the yeah. most popular one. Uh, they did Wonder Shows and before that, uh, they did uh, the Heart She Holler, which is kind of divisive, and they did the Shivering Truth, which I think is fucking incredible. I love PFFR. Wonder mm. Shows and is their first show, and it's like genuinely the funniest shit. Well, I'm a big Xavier Renegade Angel fan, so that's good. Imagine awesome. Don't even care about identity issues. Imagination. Anyway, it's um insulting. Maybe is that the word to describe it? What a beautiful it's, voice. And it's, uh, I best describe it as like a lot of these franchises yeah. are, are things that have been created by geniuses and inherited by morons, and that's the problem because they don't have a cr this creative skill to be able to make stuff like this. By they're the kind of just rehashing the same shit that they've already said, and they're not really. They're, it, it feels like they're not really having a conversation at this point, you know? Like, you're you're just kind of saying the same shit that you've already said. So, like, if you want to you make a shit movie with shit characters, like, oh, fine, I don't care. Like, you're, maybe you're just not very good at this stuff. I'm not going to get offended by it, though. But if you want to cannibalize these existing characters that were made by... I feel like that's a different point. 
Talking about how it wouldn't yeah. be as bad if not for the fact that it's attached to IPs that we all have a serious stake in culturally. Or a lot of us do. Someone way more intelligent and way more creative than you. I don't agree that just like people in the 80s were like way more intelligent. I don't think that's what he was saying. <laughs> What he's saying? They're like yeah. better writers. Well, he's saying that morons have inherited the work of great people, but how did those great yeah. people get those jobs in the first place? Well, they created great works, right? That's how that would have gone. Like, they got their positions like because of that, but then the next people got their positions because they may be, you know, oh, know the right people at the right time. Like, you said Nepo Babies, right? Yes. And then, like, oh, yeah, everybody, like... I, I get it. Like, a lot of people that are remaking these things are... are doing so based off of characters that were created by people that were more intelligent and more creative than them but like i don't know it feels like he's trying to get it a bit more than that maybe i'll hear him out a bit and uh humiliate them and try to use them to launch the shit things that you've made that's when i've got a problem because you are you're exploiting someone else's work you're uh, yeah it seems like he's got a bit more of a problem with the political angle being launched by the bad writing more than the bad writing itself raping someone else's creativity that's what you're did he say raping i think nice. He would take great issue with really shit writing, whether or not he could um, see any kind of political motivation. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, whenever you assassinate any one of these characters, you're probably going to be giving them, like you're bringing them down every time. And so it always seems like it okay. slots in. I, I have a question before I forget. Um, mm -hmm. So the critical drinker is someone that has almost two million subs. Uh -huh. Um, and we can both agree that there is a type of caricature that is presented of him that may exist, but is not necessarily him. Um, do you feel like that caricature exists creating online media? Uh, I, I'm not, I guess, expecting you to call anybody out, but can you think of like specific examples? You don't need to list them, but like, um, in terms of if let's say uh the criticisms that are being levied against the critical drinker are unfair would you say that those criticisms are fair towards different people in the online media space that exist and create content and have i you think know, a decent audience the people who are like poisoned completely by politics and can't see straight with movies are everywhere yeah, yeah they are definitely on both sides all over the place I think each side should work to clean up its own um, its own sides, uh, crazy people. Because it's just awesome. it just it just really shits all over what could potentially be super well, cool discourse on movies. Like, it's hard to have real conversations about movies sometimes because you have to like wade through a sea of culture war stuff, and I, I would just like to talk about the movies themselves. And yeah, the and it lets bad writing often skirt by, or bigger issues just, like, get overwhelmed by what is ultimately sometimes completely irrelevant, you know, discussions on culture and politics. Well, yeah, one of the most well, controversial... The, the conversation... Oh, go for it. One of the most controversial elements of Secret Invasion was its AI intro. We spent, what, like, five minutes talking about that? And then we were just like, well, that's that, moving on. When yeah. it's like, the whole world is stopped turning to talk about how it's AI-generated and stuff. And it's like, it's not to say that there isn't things worth talking about, it's just that um, we really want to talk about the characters and the events. Um, not mm -hmm. just that Amelia Clark has a Drax on. But to be fair, we spent a long time on that too, because that's pretty bad. I mean, that's, that's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really funny. In someone else's work. You are uh, yeah, raping someone else's creativity. That's raping. what you're doing. Uh, but you're not adding anything productive to it. You're creating something worse to try and replace it. That, as, as a writer, as a storyteller, that really offends me because I hate to see other people's work get taken advantage of. Yeah, nice one, mate. We've got some good, uh, this is some stuff from our community. Donny Jep, question for the drinker. Do you think there'll be a time in the future when Hollywood is making great movies again, or do you think that that time's passed and something else like gaming will take its place? Uh, I think, gaming! Yeah, we're going to see a lot of gaming adaptations. Yo, gaming, the, the Last of Us was a, a real benchmark. Gaming! For that. We're see a lot more, um, Are you a gamer? He's a gamer. Hey, what's Bro, the best of medium? I'm, of course I'm a gamer. Did gamer. you hear my comments about women? Jesus. Yes, my brother. What's the best medium, Adam? Like for art. Oh, like the console? Or oh, sorry, you're asking about like games versus TV shows movies, versus movies versus, versus books. Writing, music, yeah. Yeah. Comics even. Oh, damn. I mean my favorite is movies. I think game gaming has the most potential. Wow, that's my answer as well. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh. I agree.
All right, well, there you go. That was that. <laughs> End of that right. conversation. Yeah, the movie or TV show adaptations right. of video games because it's a massive, massive market. But I think also the time of this sort of mega blockbuster that cost $300 million is coming to an end. And I think we're going to see a lot more of smaller things that they take more risks on. And yeah, they're going to start making better stuff. Otherwise, they will just... Damn, I wish you would just like promote those smaller projects. And like, I wish I would say like... Oh, God, like... Uh, yeah, like, recommends. Smaller projects to you are like Sound of Freedom. The Whale was an Oscar movie. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm 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 not gonna be too shitty about that one. Like that, <laughs> that was a movie that I recommended. You know, like Boiling Point, Everything Everywhere, The Expanse, Ford v Ferrari, All Confused Quiet, Arcane, with 1917, event. Hard Boiled. Mm -hmm. I was about but to say because yeah, if we move yeah. past that Boiling, one, real Boiling quick. Point, yeah, yeah, we were. We were hey, we we've were recommended it so many times. It's one per hour, so I'll recommend it again. Boiling Point, everyone. Go check it yeah, out. Yeah, everyone. You're really it's boiling good. point. Everybody, you really <laughs> should. Yeah. It's a really it's, impressive I should, film. I should be watching it tomorrow. Event Horizon, oh, Bright, Fight good. Club, good. Blade right. Runner, Top Gun, Maverick, right. Predator, Jaws, Invincible, Falling Down. Like, okay, we got your entire... Okay, here's your playlist that you made. Normally, it's... Like, oh, man, like... The Boys, Cobra Kai, Chernobyl, Event Horizon, Falling Down, 1917, 4v Ferrari, Predator... Unforgiven, Blade Runner, Jaws. You didn't even like include the whale in this playlist, by the way. Fight Club, The Expanse, twenty. Whoa! Oh my God! The twenty ten, the year we made contact. Oh, there was a big Sardonicast episode about that one. That was fun. Invi I have not seen it. Is it terrible or something? It's fucking horrendous. Okay. If you, especially if you like, like, uh, man. This is like kind of an interesting one because it, it almost seems like disrespectful towards the original in the same the way that we were talking about like other movies that are <laughs> disrespectful towards the originals, you know? Mm -hmm. Invincible did you Arcane, watch? Like... Did you watch the original 2001? Yes, I've oh, seen yeah. them both. I can't remember much about 2010, though. I don't think I've seen 2010. 2010 is fucking garbo. Spider-Man No Way Home, Whiplash, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Cup Gun Maverick, All Quiet on the Western Front, The Whale, oh, okay, here we are. The Whale, Boiling Point, The Menu, Santa Freedom, like, I, like, you talk, you talk as though you're promoting smaller things. You talk as though you're promoting. Do you know he has a second channel where he promotes movies as well? What is it called? Uh, Critical Drinker After Hours, I think. It's where he puts up all the podcast, podcast clips, and then he has other film reviews on there. I think more often recommendations than not. Promoting anything that's not just like shoved into your fucking face by everybody else. That if I were watching this and I didn't know your content, I would just. I mean, if if I were watching this and I only knew Russell Brand's content, and I've never heard of you before, I would assume that you're like promoting smaller artists or something. You know, like, damn, like it's it's a sad state where you have this gigantic platform, and you're literally just only sharing things that like everybody already knows about. And yeah, they're gonna start making better stuff. Otherwise, they will check all the people who learn yeah, about that's them. That's almost like decentralized, right. localized movie. Well, yeah, and there's gonna be plenty of people who just don't learn about much movies in general in their day to day, and they rely on people like Drinker to expose them to yeah. it. You know, it's the same way that everything is perhaps um, becoming federalized in that way. This is from Barry John Fox. Federalized. Right, Drinker, what are your top five films, and have you seen all of David Lynch's films? I have not seen all of David Lynch's films enough, but he doesn't he doesn't get stuff but like that. He goes down some disturbing roads with his things. Uh, a top five film is definitely not gonna be done in terms of artistic merit or anything, but uh, probably Terminator Two, um, Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, Ah, uh, um, I think probably. The Do you not like Big Trouble in Little China? No, that's okay. Okay, it's all right. Move the menu. On. I really love that. <laughs> that's in your Wait, top did he five. Just... The menu. <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure how the menus five. made it into yeah. his top five. Um, that's fascinating. That's that's why my I'm, I'm reacting that way in the recording. It's so if you'd asked me what's Drinker's top five, I probably would have told you it's Aliens, Predator, Terminator Two. Indiana Jones Raiders and uh, Big Trouble Little China being number one. That's what I've always known about him. I never would have thought he'd put mm -hmm. the menu at number three. I, I have a feeling this is a recency thing that he's he's just trying to give you five movies that are top. I doubt recency he put bias, it. Recency bias, yeah. I, I'm really surprised he mentioned the menu. Happens they came out so people. recently! Um, uh, probably yeah. Nightcrawler and yeah, I'm not sure what my last one would be. I'll come like, to be honest with you, I'm surprised he said Nightcrawler too. Like I know he thinks it's really good, and it is really good, but I just don't I wouldn't have thought it'd be in his top five. Okay, I'm sorry. So are you, I, I when you, uh, on this After Hours channel, you you do a show with him every week? Yep, Open Bar. Yeah, talk open about... Open Bar, okay. It's essentially this week in movies, so to speak. I, I, I held back on criticizing Big Trouble in Little China for being in his top five. Uh, probably yeah. Crawler and... Damn. Terminator 2, Big Trouble in Little China, The Menu... <laughs> 
um big trouble in little china um i think probably the menu i really love that um uh, probably yeah. Nightcrawler and yeah, I'm not sure what my last one would be I'll come back to that one in a minute the, menu, the recent movie The Menu I'm yeah. seeing, I ain't seen that I ain't oh, seen really that. good really interesting uh, it's a very good critique of how we understand art are you gonna do I can't wait to watch The Menu <laughs> have you seen it yet? I, uh, I almost watched it before this recording but uh, I would have thought you'd like busy. it uh, honestly are you sort of you're not expecting uh, it to be very good uh, we'll see okay <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see that a video on my Arthur remake. My Arthur. My Arthur. My Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of avoided the menu for a while because it seemed like normie bullshit, <laughs> which, I mean, is being kind of reaffirmed by this. But I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'm just, uh, I wasn't gonna see it in theaters. When I remade the film Arthur. No, maybe not Arthur. What about Games of the? I want to see a video by you on Games of the Greek or Sarah Marshall. The last thing, <laughs> the last thing I want to see is Arthur. Maybe I don't even want to see the uh, my Arthur. <laughs> no, I don't but like when you were saying that stuff about reboots, I was thinking, oh man, like I loved Dudley Moore. I loved Arthur, the original film. And I see actually, in a way, that's, I've got an inside scoop on how that stuff happens. Like you know, I've done a few successful movies in Hollywood. They recognize that there's a window for me, a moment for me. Do you, like they've got the rights to Arthur. It's cheap to do it. Even if the, the like, if let's say the most recent movie I've ever seen, I thought was like legitimately in my top five there's no way i would say like oh yeah it's in my top five i would want to see it a second time right like i would want to make sure like i would I would want to have like that confidence about like it's it's play it's funny because i've talked to him about the menu i didn't realize he was so passionate about it but he might not be i don't know maybe, <laughs> maybe it's just another one of those things that like kind of like i said earlier where he just says an answer and then if we asked him about it later he would say that it was I think he said answer. before his <laughs> top five picks would change. He's been asked in Super Chats before, right? It'll change every time. But okay. you'll always find Big Trouble Little China will be in there. Ooh. Place in history. <laughs> what if he has one of those, uh, like, bingo machines with the balls? A little bit. I mean, to an extent, mm, I do. Well, that out. implies I, um, a randomness, but... Well, but my... If if the bingo balls go yeah, up to 20... Yeah, but what if they're all good movies that he likes? That's, I was about to say, that's pretty much what my top five often ends up being. They'll switch around, or the top, mm -hmm. at least except top ten. For, except for the prestige, so that's always number one. Yes, it sits it's mm -hmm. there forever. What are what are your top five? What are all your top fives right now? Ooh. Who wants to go first? The, the funny thing is, is that so usually I'd say for the top five, uh, in no particular order, would be like Saving Private Ryan, Hot Fuzz, uh, Terminator Two, uh, and then. The problem is that then when I start to think about like the next ones, it, it could be it could be a lot of different movies. So like whatever well, I if say you have right a definitive now, top three, then that's the fine. As, it'd be the same as Drinker. There'd probably be a couple that would sort of move in and out of the rotation. Yeah, the menu. <laughs> no, um, not the menu. That wouldn't be in the rotation. I like that movie, but no, yeah, I like it too. Man, it's tough. I think Fellowship of the Rings my favorite movie of all time. Um, I might. The more I think about it, the more I feel like I want to put The Last Wish really high up there. Probably Damn. top five. Ooh, that's um, a good one. Yeah, I really like that movie. I uh, I had my uh, my sister uh, visited the other day with her boyfriend, and we, we talked about The Last Wish a bit while we were out eating, and I was like, wow, I really like this. Um, what would I put as my number three? I don't know. Uh, ugh. Do you want to think Jeez, about it? It's I got, really tough. Mine's already set. I don't know. The, the Last menu. Crusade. I'll throw. I, I might throw the Last Crusade in there. I really like that movie. The humor and the pacing, and uh, I, I really, really like it. All right. Because it's a really good movie. It is a really good movie, Rags. It is a really yes. good movie. Um, what yeah, a my... great you know thematics at the end, the characters, and it has Hitler in it, so that's always a plus. My number one's mm -hmm. Prestige. Number two is probably Aliens. Number three probably Hot Fuzz. And then it comes down to a big selection of changes like um, Unforgiven or T2 or Lord of the Rings Fellowship. I'd throw that in there as well. Um, the, Hunt, the Hunt. Crusade. The Hunt is very be. high up. And I'm pretty sure yes. I saw The Hunt thanks to you, Adam. I'm almost certain. Good. Which means that we saw it thanks that's to Molly. So, yeah, that's, yeah a that's a very brilliant good movie. film that more people need to see. Um, yes. Has Critical Drinker seen it? I don't know, but I am trying to get well, him to see... Well, if you show it to the Critical Drinker, then he makes the recommends on his channel, then we... Uh, that is the pipeline. The <laughs> I, uh... I think before yeah. anyone is allowed to make a Twitter account, you need to see The Hunt. Hmm. People are often surprised at how, what it has to say. They, they wouldn't expect it to be about that, especially considering it was uh, 
it was not it was prior to like 20 it was, it was prior to like the advent of the thing that it arguably could be talking about i'm trying to remain very very uh non-spoilery sure yeah. okay um, yeah that's fine yeah and so uh i'm trying to think of anything else i think the gray Probably batman and robin there. oh batman Whiplash and robin easily batman and robin obviously Whiplash. goes without saying whiplash Whiplash. Uh, sure. i got the holy mountain mm -hmm. i got synecdoche new york yep. i got the lion king i got eternal sunshine of the spotless mind good pick and i got kill bill volume one i think mm -hmm. i mean i consider both of them the same movie I, I'm thinking about like I'm gonna rewatch Old Boy soon. Maybe that's in my top five. But I love Kill Bill. I love each. I like it. They're all fucking. To expand on it. animation, since you've got the Lion King up there, Wally -E and The Incredibles are both very, 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 very high in my estimation. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then. They're really great. Yeah. I got I got a fucking IMDb list of favorite movies that hasn't been updated since like 2012, and I'm like. <sighs> I don't know when I'm going to update it. And also their user interface is shit, so it's... What's that, it... uh... There's a yeah. website that you showed me, Mola, where you could... It, it basically would put a movie... Yeah, like, it puts a movie versus a movie, and then versus another one. And then, like, by working through that, it, it sort of creates the list for you based on... You yeah, know, and you can, you um... Above this one or below that one. You can, you can select oh, yeah. ones to put in as well. So if, you, if you're like, I really want to get this one in, it'll pop it in, then it'll just fight it against all the others. Okay... That's I a, like it. It's fun. It's like a little game. You should send me a link to that. Oh, it's just flickchart.com, I think. Gonna... Is, um, what's what's I can called? link it, yeah. Flickchart. Chart. Okay. Uh, Stream gonna... again, again. Okay. Feel free to continue playing the video. Yeah, at least in my brain, right? Then they say, you know, like, There's so many people where, like, you ask them, like, what their top movies are. They're like, oh, this movie from this year. It's like, damn. What? <laughs> is that they were going to make, before Dudley Moore, Dan Arthur, they were going to Of all time? This year? Like... It can happen. It has to be a real good movie, though. Tar well, it's, is it's, fucking... You know, Rags mentioned Puss in Boots, and I really, really like that movie, but I feel like I need to put a couple more years between it <laughs> before I... Would yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it, that's why I feel like every... If I get asked this every week, it might change, because there's so many great movies that yeah. I, you know, really adore. Well, part of it like, is... I could easily see myself putting, like, The Thing up there, or, you know... So I don't like getting asked, because I could just have my mind... <laughs> like, I, there could be a movie that just slips my mind, even though it ranks really high, just because of where I'm at at any given time. Like The Father, right? I, once, you know... Yeah. The second watch two of that, I was like, holy fuck, this is, this is a top tier. And I mean... Incredible. Casablanca is really good, you know. Like having just watched that recently, it's a really good movie. Incredible. I'm gonna give that a ten on the second time I watch it. Probably. I didn't do it the first time I watched it. Even the Lighthouse, I gave a ten the first time I watched it. Maybe I like I had to think about it. I'm not gonna say that was like oh in my top five. Like of all time, you're not gonna let that sink in. Holy shit! I couldn't imagine including something in my top five that I didn't let sink in. Barbie movie is greater than Citizen Kane. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair you enough. See that there? Really? In the chat? What? Barbie movie is okay. Calm down. <laughs> That's insane to me. But you know, teach <laughs> <laughs> me. I assume it's a meme because they say modern versus. I, I uh, hope so. But hey, you know what? All opinions are welcome here. When the damage has been done, I found I was yeah. like, oh, that's the version of Arthur you want to do. Is it 18 or R registered version? Like, that's almost, you can see another take on that. But they, because it's economically motivated, they want it to be PG. It gets softened to the point where you can't even show him drink driving. You know, like, I have yeah. drink driving, very like, British. And also, someone should have told me, don't do that voice. Those two things, <laughs> those two things could have saved us all a lot of time and trouble. Uh, I'm not going to push you to make videos on, on films I've done. That's, that's mental. I can't even believe I pulled that up. I'm crazy. Vulcan Liv says, critical drinker. Uh, I'm more excited about this than Dorsey, Tucker, or RFK. And then TN Base Girl says, uh, his eyes are blue to me, but Russell said brown. Oh, maybe they are blue. Yeah. Yeah, they are blue. Oh, you got the eyes of a husky. <laughs> Killer. He looks like a skinny Sargon of a kind. <laughs> he really does. Uh, oh, but this from Thomas Peter Gibson. He's like fine wine. I never done What film have I been in or done? Are you willing to be nice about? Uh, it might be getting to the Greek actually. It, it, it got a chocolate at me back in the day, so yeah, it's been a good long time since I've seen it, but I do remember quite enjoying it. Well, you better watch it again. Come on, mate. It's trying to build a relationship here. What it's the drinker recommends. <laughs> um, okay. So, what do you think about stuff like um the re-editing of the Roald Dahl books and the sort of conversation around like Life of Brian and changing stuff like? Where do you stand on that, mate? It makes me fucking sick. I hate this idea of uh, we need to like soften and we need to start altering these movies from the past without the permission of the people who made them, uh, just to make them more palatable to modern audience. Okay, I don't even want it with the permission of the people who made it. <laughs> like, once you've made it, it's out there. Leave it alone. Don't edit it. Yep. God forbid. Obviously, releasing additional visions about, is fine. I was about to say, what about, yeah, director's cuts? I'm fine with that, yeah. But don't don't try and, like, once it's out, be like, no, 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 I don't need to see that. One, well, scrub the world of the uh, of the original version. Well, we say scrub the world. It's like, good luck fucking trying when it's the internet, right? Like, it's funny, there's a lot of edited movies that 
you know, on streaming services will now be available in the way that they are, but it's like piracy, my good friend, will be there forever, presumably, well, anyway. It's an interesting aspect of media preservation, especially with less physical copies. Like these these shows on streaming services, it's pretty rare that they get a uh, like a Blu-ray release. Someone might get offended by this. And Marvel somewhere. stuff gets edited after it comes out. Yeah, I know. It's I agree. Crazy, but dude, everyone's it? been going nuts over the um, Across the Spider Verse edits. Like a lot of stuff is lost to time now. Apparently. Um. Yeah, I find that one really strange. I'm not sure that, what happened. Uh, there were different... Yeah, I, I I don't know what to make of that uh, other than. Because what was it just a gimmick, or was it actually because the film wasn't like done completely in Italy? I have no clue. I've seen a lot of theories about why it's ended up that way, but across Spider Verse, of course, um, if it came with deleted or alternate scenes, I think people would be okay with it. But from what I've heard, it's actually like the scenes that they saw in the theater are gone from the releases. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they're doing it. Okay. I'm the fuck alone, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, they should, these are works of art. They should be left alone as they were intended to be shown. Yeah, I agree. Both with, uh, like, in the case of Roald Dahl, and in the case, like, like that people, well, Roald Dahl has in interviews outside of his fiction said some, like, overtly anti Semitic stuff, like, he's said some magic. But, like, I mean, but, like, within the work, he doesn't say that in, like, Matilda or, like, Charlie yeah. in a yeah, chocolate yeah, factory. Sure. But, like, like, and again, it's what people, like, they want, I tell you what, I, I don't know what happened, I think. I think Netflix did a deal and bought the Roald Dahl estate. Netflix was like, oh shit, we live in this sort of territory where those things are monetized and uh, mobilized, i.e., issues around identity. Let's push for the Roald Dahl estate to reissue those books with edits and stuff. And I feel like, I even, like, you know, when I'm, I, I would never use the N word, I would never make a racist joke. I, like, I'm against racist. But. <laughs> Never. But I'm against hatred. Uh, but like, I feel like you know, like Enid Blyton books, and in a sense, these are artifacts of their time. It's, it's interesting because this cannibalism we talked about earlier, like that they have to use IP in order to keep their economic models going, is in a sense what the culture is doing anyway. It's what they, like, the whole culture is pulling itself apart. It's pulling itself apart about recognizing actually what you're going to have to do if you continue down this line is you're going to have to have a totally different set of principles almost around everything. You can't, you know, like the, the whole family, our whole class structure, everything is predicated on colonialism. Colonialism. You like in a sense, you as Kindy Andrews, who's a sort of a professor of black studies, that I've spoken to, is like once you start this conversation, you cannot have Great Britain. It, like it's gone. <laughs> so it's like you, you've got to work out where this, you know, what the deal is. You know. I mean, I'm not a big fan of trying to erase history or trying to uh, alter it to make it more palatable to people because it's like you're trying to pretend that things like mistakes that were made in the past didn't actually exist. And I completely agree. And so it's like you, you can as do I like the good and the bad that comes with it. And I think you should just be honest about this stuff. And it filters through to movies and things like that. Like you, you can look at movies that were made like Gone with the Wind or whatever back in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, they, they don't align with our current standards or our current like um, cultural zeitgeist. But they're not meant to because they were made in a very different time. But we respect the time in which they were made, and we can look back on them now and say, well, yeah, okay, that's, that's changed since then. But it deserves to be shown because it's an artifact from when it was made. Uh, mate, thank you so much. You're quite right. It's really plain that all of your work comes from a place of genuine love of cinema and storytelling, and as you say, the currency of authenticity. Thanks so much, Will, for joining us. I don't disagree with. I, I believe that. I believe that his takes also. I, I literally agree with Rus Russell Brand here. I believe that the critical drinkers' takes come from a love of cinema and authenticity, but what he perceives to be as cinema and authenticity. Not my definition of that, right? I believe I don't believe that he's a bad faith actor. I don't believe that he's like a bad faith, like oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just make my political beliefs for everybody, and like blah 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 blah. Like he's coming from a genuine place. I just think that it's like a very narrow mindset, and that, that again, I think I'm gonna reiterate what I said earlier. Like this guy's got fucking almost two million subscribers. Like I don't think that there's that many people that are just like so bad faith that they're like oh yeah. I want to pretend as if, like, I believe what he's saying. Like, a lot of people really connect with his shit. A, ro a lot of people really connect with it. Do you, um, still feel it's narrow, or just narrow by comparison to your own? Uh, yeah, still in comparison to my own, I would, I would say. But not as narrow as I... Because, like, know. I don't... The, 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 I wouldn't take an issue with The that. argument of, like, he's not, you know, promoting smaller films that or good examples of things that he likes, like, that's not something that I stand by. Um, but I mean, yeah, if, if we're talking comparatively, I don't know. If many well, mine is narrow <laughs> compared to yours. Like you, uh, yeah, 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 it'd be interesting. Yeah. It always you know, there's different goals and different tastes and different sensibilities yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. We have to understand why it's important to understand why it's important to understand why people agree with this. Right. So it's not as simple as just saying like, oh, he's lying. Or, oh, he's, he's you know, just incorrect about so like, really he believes what he's saying. He believes what he's saying. I believe that. To do some more stuff. I'd love to come on your show if you have me. Thank you so much for making time for us. Absolutely. Thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. Stay free with Russell Brand. See you first. Is that it? We can't make our wonderful content. Damn. I saved. <laughs> I saved a good 20 it. minutes here. We yeah, did it. We did it. Hooray. Boy. We conquered. I'm so happy. That Should we stop there? Or is the. Yes. Is the do you want to. There, I think the rest is just Patreon credits. Okay. Um, good job, patrons. We did it. We, we actually did we cover did a it. two and a half hour video. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Transformed and you stayed in a half hours, eight hours and thirty two minutes. I was gonna that's say, not bad for us. That's, that's more than double not bad for us, what yeah. you uh, said you were gonna. So thanks for that. Um, closing, all right. In terms of this whole yeah. subject, my big concern is simply that the world we're currently in on the internet is filled with way too much passion for burning bridges and uh, a jump to it sort of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, whenever I see conflict with any kinds of spheres that I'm even remotely connected to. Uh, stepping on each other because of clips they see or takes they see and they assume the worst because there are so many people who do do it for the worst reasons. Um, I'm always like, damn, that's a missed opportunity because that could have gone a completely different direction. Obviously, I'm biased mm -hmm. in this regard. One of the first episodes of EFAP, we had JX on and uh, since has become one of the closer friends I've had on, on the internet, you know, and that could have gone a completely different direction easily. Could have been really bad. Like, he, he covered my stuff. We brought him on, talked to him, and everything got settled. You know what I mean? Um, and so, like, I, I, I feel like you, as a very, uh, great influence on film as an art form, and Drinker as, uh, someone I'm very much invested in in that way, I feel like this is easy for a connection to be made, and for, um, you know, certain things that need more attention to potentially be filtered through. Um, not to mention, you know, I would love to have you on Open Bar as a guest, obviously I'd have to talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's unfortunate that like this would be the first major interaction, uh, technically speaking, as opposed to something more neutral or rather literally just a conversation where ideas can be shared as opposed to different directions being going down. Because um, like I said, I've got a decent investment in both of you and I just feel like it's uh, there's a lot you guys would agree on as opposed to the opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in the stream that I made, I agreed with like half of it, but you know, my main concerns are more with the nuance and I guess more the intent of where we're trying to attribute these mistakes from whether or not it's, uh, you know, bad writing or like a, a, a cultural, uh, you know, like trying to, to form culture into like a specific way. Um, yeah, we, we have agreements and we have disagreements. Uh, here's my question. So do you feel you asked me how much I felt uh, of my criticisms in this video held up to, you know, like a perfect standard or whatever, or, uh, you know, there, there's some assumptions that were made and uh, some misinterpretations. And, you know, I went in pretty, pretty good faith and, uh, you know, I didn't make an essay video or like an attack video or anything, I don't think, but... Um, do you feel as though any of my criticisms were justified? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things that I think Drinker could word for more clarity. Um, but the problem, of course, is that he's in a relatively quick interview and he doesn't know what should necessarily be explained further or what would be misunderstood. Um, I would still mm -hmm. recommend that if you wanted to do anything of this kind of approach to him on a stream, that the better move would have been to check out, like, three videos from him. About three things you're like familiar with. Give me a list. Oh well. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I will. And and it would be interesting to see you check out his uh, what is woke video as well. See what you think. Okay. Put that on. Uh, put that on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, were we? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were we, what? were we planning on talking about copyright or no? <laughs> <laughs> Did we want to do? No, I don't want to make yeah. you stay for even longer. Holy shit! It's eight and a half hours. If I assume we're on the same team with the the copyright stuff, right? I think so. Yeah. What, I mean, we can, we can have a little blurb if you want. Go uh, for it. Whatever you want. I don't know if. Uh, what, were you planning on it being like an in depth conversation or like watching any XQC stuff? Or? Oh well, we're doing that for the next EFAP. We're gonna watch the H three uh, XQC debate. The that oh, was nice. gonna happen with particular guests, but we're gonna have to move it around. It won't be tomorrow, guys. That's not gonna be happening anymore. Um, be next week, but yeah. Um, <laughs> if you wanted okay. to join us for that, you're welcome to. Oh no, I don't have time. I'm fucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I well, um, move stuff around to do this. So. We seriously uh, uh, appreciate the hell out of you spending this much time with us to talk through all of this stuff, and that uh, I think there's hella toxicity, as someone might say, between different communities clashing hard. Um. But I think the, the this mm -hmm. kind of communication is honestly rare and should be something that we work toward more so than uh, shy away from. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I understand that not everybody is on the same wavelength about everything. Uh, you know, I, mm -hmm. I feel like I make that clear with the type of 
I guess, content that I produce and the type of uh, presence I have on the internet. I feel like I get along with most people uh, to some degree. Um, are you planning on? Uh, uh, are you planning on ending your stream after um, I leave? We're probably going to talk a little bit about the state of everything, dates, there's, there's some uh, shopkeeping, so to speak, to let the FAP community know about. But other than that, yeah, we're probably wrapping up soon. Do you want to? Do you want to uh, spam your chat my uh, Twitch or Kick link? Because I'm going to get some cardio in and I'm going to play Beat Saber. Like Absolutely. Do you want to link, link your preference? Sure. Um, well, uh, which one do I prefer? I guess, I guess I prefer kick right now because, uh, well, I've got your, um, your main channel is in the description. Of course, uh, you can sort of take the opportunity if you I'm want to tell people. I'm not streaming on YouTube, but. No, no, no. Of course. Sorry? I just mean in general, talk to people about what you do and why they should subscribe to you. Of course. Oh, uh, pfft. My main channel is Your Movie Sex. You can find it by going to youtube.com slash at YMS. Uh, I made a pretty good video debunking a 25-year-old animation conspiracy mm -hmm. called YMS Kimba. I made a pretty good video, uh, Lion King Part 1. Uh, I made a pretty good video, YMS The Little Mermaid. Uh, and if you enjoy those, then I hope you... I hope you get hooked enough to listen to me talk about smaller films and... Uh, you know, expand your your media diets, and hopefully, when it means hopefully it means something when I recommend something, and uh, everybody checks it out, uh, or when I strongly recommend something. When I give a six out of ten, you don't have to watch it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't. It, don't. Yeah, that's that's not a strong recommendation. But if I give a fucking eight or above, that means go see it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I do game streams. I do editing streams. I do music. I make music. Ooh, uh, you make, oh wow he's a music maker movie reviewer i am to you to be did you not do or... did you not know that i did music i knew it i did i, I did know it. that you did music he sings he dances mm -hmm. he that was that, the outro beat. for a lot of your uh, older vids older videos yeah 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 it's the outro on the adam and pals uh, what else do you do don't too. stop keep going you write uh, books i have a food channel uh, you did. Wait, um, you do? This is actually news to me. I actually don't What's know you have a food channel. Know. It's literally, you know what? You know what's great about having a food channel? You can write no. off all of your food. That's oh. true. It's a it's a business expense. That's unironically true. Yeah. Any if like if I get anything for my computer, that's a business expense. It's my... everyone should have a food channel. It <laughs> saves you money. Why a best um, eats? Literally, mm. fuck it. Why not? You save money. Nice. Reviewing all them right foods out there. Food. Do you actually review them or you just eat them and that's it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's on camera. Sometimes I give my thoughts about. Sometimes it. Like, yeah, Sometimes like, yeah, it's okay. Try to make it a bit more of a, like a. It's a it's a part of the business. It's mm -hmm. part of the business model, you know. That's right. That's right. Makes sense. Make it's that money. Expense. Chew that food. Calories for cash. Yeah, there's a there's a clips channel. There's the YMS highlights channel, which is where the video we just reacted to came from, and which is where my perspective of this stream will also be i might actually um i might actually uh sh should i show your chat in my upload as well because that could be edited in if um, you think that's something we should also do i don't know how much one would gain if they were a fan of your work to see efap chat on the screen for all of that they were incredibly be, angry <laughs> Okay. Like no, the, it, they weren't like exactly the... doing constructive uh, additions. Not, I mean, a lot of them were, but a lot of them were just very, I, very angry. Do I have permission if we think that it's kind of funny, maybe? I, sure. I wasn't looking. I didn't have the tab open, but... Um, it, it's kind of what I was talking about. It's like people get very uh, sensitive. I think you've talked about it, right? Like taking personal yeah. insult when creators they prefer. It, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yes, I've, I've talked about this many times. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, I would go like ahead. to point out someone in chat, though. Uh, I like this comment. They said, "I'm not a fan of rags, but <laughs> YMS is massively worse." <laughs> nice. There you go, rags. Oh, we could, we could, so there we can we could leave that there and let it simmer. Just let that marinate. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Let me know. By the way, if you've got no company and wouldn't mind it, I'd, I'd happily watch Boiling Point with you tomorrow if you want. 
I do have company. Okay. It's a long Never friend mind. that I haven't I, I haven't seen him in fucking like two years, and I'm debating whether or not to like do a watch along and just have him on mic, or just to have like a normal <laughs> hang out with him. I have this problem where I try to like work no matter what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an issue. I'm about to do my cardio and stream it. Right. I have put it in chat. <laughs> YMS on kick. Go check him out. He's gonna if, do cardio. If I, if I wind up doing a watch along, uh, would you even be a, like? I don't know what your sleeps. Are you essentially like a on demon the person? Same sleep schedule you are on right now. Uh, whatever you like, I'd be able to make room for it because it is Sunday tomorrow. I don't think drink is back, so we won't be doing catch when up. When do you so. sleep? A really good question. Oh, that yeah. Whenever we can, you know, just whenever. <laughs> I don't know how you do this. I wouldn't Did recommend you do, like, it. Twelve hour streams well, when you're like it, you. The, the you got to remember as well like... the convergence of three different drastically different time zones as well. Yeah, you remember yeah, I'm in America, in America, Australia, and Wales. Mm-hmm. So. I, I fit yeah. in like fucking two hours for my podcast of different time zones. Like, it's not twelve hours. That's how far we're willing to go to save storytelling, it. Adam. That's right. Mm-hmm. Where others are. I drink a lot of caffeine? coffee. Yeah, it's a problem, I think. Do you yeah. do you eat yeah. during these also? I left uh, a bunch of times. Some we assume <laughs> that was the pee. I haven't peed yet, uh, and I'm looking to. <laughs> YMS is... and I, we were on a pissing contest. We we were just we were just pissing. And that's good. That's healthy. We should yeah, we should yeah, we can make we should make but a I also drink podcast. A lot, so. I drink a lot too. I drink a I drink whole bunch of water. If we start a podcast called Pisscast, oh Piss-ca- dude, yes, yes, I was just about to say Pisscast, absolutely. We it only goes for as long on, as the first you know, person needs to pee. Tips, tricks, mm-hmm. we're gonna. That we'll sounds, blow, we'll that sounds the, horrendous. Actually. We'll <laughs> lift the lid like on a competition is to hold in your piss because the first person who pisses loses. That sounds hellish. Um, that might be the opposite tried, of ours. They it's actually the first tried person that on a radio piss. station, Did they? and it was also a kind. Con- yeah, and it, you also had to drink water, and a lady died. She was I was to about win, to. I win, think win. I heard about that. Yeah. Somebody gets seriously, yeah. seriously ill from that. I could believe that. You can drink. You can drink so much water that you do kill yourself. It is incredibly difficult, but it Isn't can it like, be done. I I feel like I've seen a video that how much is it? Isn't it like like thirty liters or something in a day? Isn't it like some insane amount of of water that you would need to drink? <laughs> I my understanding is that it it was a, a large part contributed to the fact that she couldn't piss. So um, that you could drink as much water as you want as long as you're pissing. Well, they, no, I, yeah, I think here. you can't get water poisoning, right? You can get poisoned by drinking too much water. It's just that the amount is insanely high. So while yeah. um, this, it says here that while uh, while water is considered one of the least toxic chemical compounds. Uh, it says drinking <laughs> six liters. No, <laughs> drinking six liters. It depends where you live, I suppose. Uh, but drinking six liters in three hours has caused the death of a human. Oh, so water, think, water, yeah, water I, death by water intoxication is possible, but it should probably not be a yeah, concern yeah. of yours. Most people probably just can't do that. Well, I mean, the problem that most people have is they don't drink enough water. That's that's way yes. more of a problem than drink the water, everyone. Don't water drink three liters in six hours. No, no, no. Don't be doing was, that. But, and don't drink sparkling water. Well, you can drink sparkling water if you don't want. Don't drink sparkling um, water. It's nasty. Just we'll make that illegal me. soon. Hmm? We're going to oh, make that illegal well, soon. I mean... Getting the important things I, done. I mean, there's, there's probably something wrong with it, right? Like, it's got to be worse than just regular water in some way. <laughs> well, like nutritionally? I don't know. I don't need air in my water. Well, if I need air, I'll just breathe. Air in your water? Yeah. All the little bubbles. Sparkly. It's like carbon dioxide or something, right? Or nitrogen. What gas do they use? I have Is it no CO2? idea. I've, I've never thought to really look into sparkling water as a as a thing. I hate it. Me neither. I think it's I don't disgusting. like it in my life. I don't like it. <laughs> It's weird. Why? What is it about? All it, all it is is carbonated. It's just. I think it's just CO two, right? So it's just water, and then they add CO two to it to make it all like fizzy. Said, water is How does that make it, it is. terrible? I, yeah, I I don't get it. I don't. Understand. I don't understand. My because my mouth is like, what the fuck is this? What about mineral water? Uh, which mineral? I don't know mineral water. I don't know. Oh, mineral. uh, I don't. I don't know. I assume what it's mineral, probably does mineral water right? have in it. 
I've never thought to look that up. Mineral water, mineral. What about like what about like bismuth, maybe? Or pyrite. What constitutes as a mineral? Uh, Do they have vegetable water? Mineral. Most rocks. They're minerals, Marie. <laughs> it's, <I'm, laughs> it's apparent. Uh, so apparently, uh, because it varies, but mineral water can often have potassium, magnesium sulfate. Calcium carbonate, sodium sulfate. I I don't I don't know what any I don't really I don't know what potassium is, but those other ones. Yum! You can get that from bananas. Yes, which you can get poisoned from eating too many bananas, right? Potassium. It's true. But banana intoxication. But how how many bananas is too much? Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say seven. You reckon that's the cutoff? Seven's too much. Seven, seven is just too many bananas. Yeah, but throughout your life or in a day? Yeah, throughout your life, yes. Okay, all uh, right. Seven, it stop it. Stop Shit, it I think six. I've already capped that out. Right, out. Well, I'm, you're going to die. Fuck. I'm sorry. You should have. If you hadn't said that, I'd probably have lived. That's why uh, you've, you've peeled your last banana is a, is a phrase that was often said back in the olden days, especially out west. You've peeled your last banana. Then they would die, presumably. So anyway, YMS, your movie sucks. Adam, you're, you've, you've been wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, thanks for staying here for so long. <laughs> yeah, you're a real yeah, trooper. Yeah, and, yeah, you should, you should do mean, streaming for Thanks for coming on in general to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. It would be... Be kind of weird if I didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's up to you. Um, yeah, I hope I mean, we see you again for Halloween. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yay. Of course. I'm going to be watching spooky movies. All right. Uh, so what link should I give? Let's see. Uh, kick uh, www. Oh, I've been posting your kick, kick link. .com slash YMS. Oh. Yeah. Well, all right. Thank you. Well, if people are going to join, I'm going to be playing some Beat Saber. Why did I always think it was K-I-K? -K? I always thought it was K-I-K. -K. Why? Why did you think I that? Think you're th I, I just think you're... Because I think that's did. a chat application. Uh, Maybe. That's a but different for thing. Some, yeah, but for some reason, I just thought Kick was K-I-K. -K. Maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe it was the app, but that's just something I... Yeah. See, that's a that's pretty reasonable misconception. <laughs> All right, peace. I'm gonna okay, play bye. Beats, beats. Goodbye. Right, Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Goodbye. See you later. Bye. Bye, bye. bye. bye, bye. Roy. The flick chart is asking whether I, what's better, Dumb and Dumber or Mrs. Doubtfire? Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's I've interesting. I've seen either that's of those tough. films in a very long time, so uh, I can't. Gun to my head. I'm going to go with Mrs. Doubtfire, but I feel like it's close. Yeah, I don't know which one I'm going to go for. I think I'll go with Mrs. Doubtfire. I feel it's got that emotional, you know, resonance to it. Mm hmm True, true, um, true. Man, Dumb and Dumber. There's like three of those movies, right? I think so. Too Dumb, yeah. Too Furious. <laughs> too Dumb, Too Furious. It, that, I think that, yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess first, uh, Rags, if you wanted to say anything about anything you're up to, and then we can talk about the, what's going to be happening I... in the next few weeks. I have no updates. Um, I have no updates. Work carries on. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't want to make Same any here. promises, but work carries on. Yep. So, the current situation, EFAP lads, is that the video, good old Quantumania video, is like a day and a half's work worth away from being 100 billion percent complete. The main thing that's missing is the part at the end where, and I guess this acts as a form of vague pre-announcement that uh, me, me, Rags, and Fringy have uh, set up a good old new thing. It ain't a plushie this time. It's actually, uh, no, it isn't. It's actually a new kind of thing that uh, is Ooh, all but essentially 100% good to go. So I assume you guys are all right with me uh, talking a bit about it, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I think so. You okay, you okay Fringy? You gonna, you, I mean, is there any reason why I wouldn't be? I don't, that's why I'm saying this. I, mean, I, I, I can't think of any, but in case, you know, just let me know. You never know. You never know. Maybe just Fringy be Just, has just a dotting my eyes and crossing my yeah. eyes. Um, <laughs> okay, so 
It's uh, it's vinyl figures is what we've got going. Oh, uh, dun, 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 dun. One for dun, each dun, dun, of us. Dun, dun, dun. They're quite neat. Um, I would show you imagery, but it's not 100% good to go right now. Um, the other problem is that they may not be good to go before. It's literally down to the days that we've almost got it set up, but it's so close it might not be set up in time. And so all that'll mean is the video would be delayed by a week uh, until that, that matches. And so I think that if that, because the original plan is to release the video on the 19th. Meaning, wait, when's the last EFAP supposed to happen? <laughs> Hang on. The next week. Never, next, when we uh, die. That'll be, that will be the 19th. Okay, we're going to have to do the next EFAP a different day. <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. Oh, okay. Because, right. yeah, because of course the plan was originally to do it tomorrow, but we couldn't do it tomorrow because the guests have fallen through and we need to get rescheduled. Yeah. So, ugh, jeez, plans. Okay, so next week the video is supposed to come out on the 19th. That is still in relative stone. Um, I think, from what I've seen, we should be on, 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 we're, we're good for that. That seems to be the case. We should be good for that. Worst case scenario, move forward by a week and it comes out, oh, I guess we'd be on the 25th, because our anniversary is the 26th, right? Is that yes. what I did last year with Doctor Strange? Did that come out on a Friday? Uh, d I thought it came out on... A I want to say like a Wednesday or a Thursday. I don't remember. Hold did on. we do? I double check. Was last year's anniversary? Did we do it on a Sunday? On a Saturday? Uh, no, we would have done it on. I mean, you you gotta stop saying Sunday. I'm always doing it on Saturday. Sunday. Was, yeah, Saturday. Saturday for me as well. But no, your guys Saturday. It's always my Sunday. <laughs> Except for today. Today is Saturday. Yay. It's still Saturday uh, for me. Yeah, so for your Doctor hours. Strange video was... For Friday. Yours was the 27th of August, which was... No, that was... Okay, that was Saturday. Saturday the 27th. So we did do the anniversary on a Sunday, then. I... Are you sure? I well, know. because I, I thought know. we did it the day after the Doctor Strange video came out. Did well, we no, I think... Didn't you... I think you debuted... I think debuted... Debuted the uh, Doctor Strange video, like, hours before we started. Oh, shit, did I? Yeah, Is that, that what... Would, that would, remember, that was down to the wire. It was. Unfortunately, we were there again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do everything we can to avoid that shit. But yes, so that... Okay, well, in any case, that's the plan as... Right now. But I'm trying to let I you guys know... lay it out clearly again, because I feel like it got confused there. Next EFAP episode, we're going to have to do it on, like, Wednesday, 16th, more right. likely. Um, because uh, okay. the 19th is where the video is supposed to come out. Why the fuck would we stream while premiering my, my video? <laughs> I feel like that would be a very silly, silly idea. Um, that would be odd. And then the following week, on the 26th, is the anniversary stream. That is the plan. However... Mm -hmm. If we can't get these vinyls ready to go by the 19th, or rather earlier, to be honest with you, because it needs time to set up, um, the video would be moved forward a week. And, I mean, the, 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 the repercussion of that would likely be that the anniversary would be moved forward a week. And the video would be moved back a week. Forward a week? Back a week? What do you mean? You said forward a week. You mean back a week. Why would we put it back a week? We'd be moving the anniversary... Wait, forward a week. Why would it be back a Wait. week? Wait, well, I've, I'm okay. I'm confused. You guys figure this out and tell me what we're doing. I don't know. What, what are you confused about? What's happening? <laughs> They'd be moving forward a week. So, video nineteenth anniversary twenty sixth. If we can't yes. get the the vinyls in time, video twenty sixth and then anniversary That's the second. Back. That's back. We're moving them backward a week. Forward a week means closer to now. I've never known it to mean that. Moving forward you're, a week. I, I, I understand. Right. I understand what you're saying. I, I understand what Fringy means, and I understand Mahler's misconception. Okay. Or I, I, I know. Okay. I understand I, what's I, happening. I, yeah. I, I, now, at this you're point, not, neither of you are crazy. Neither of you are crazy. Don't worry. Cloverfield's better than forward, 300, right? right? So, what, for, forward a week means forward, forward in time. Later. Forward. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Forward on the calendar means that it's being moved. Yeah. Before. 
but forward temporally means that it's happening further away from where we are now. Forwards to the future. Yeah, so that it, both of I've you, none of you are crazy. As, moving so. it up, as in moving it closer to where you are. Yes, that's, 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 that's my understanding of it as well. Like I someone am said, staring... hey, we're going to move the date forward, so... I am staring at the, the numbers and dates and I'm just looking at it back and forward timeline wise. That's probably why I went with forward there as opposed to I will to say sooner. The the majority of people commenting on who's right or wrong are, are, are saying that I'm saying it correctly, but now I don't know. I understand when Fringy when, when you're both talking Fringy is what I what my understanding of it is and what people mean around here at least. Well, my, okay. That's what I think. So. <laughs> the important but part is, is that it is now understood for chat that it means. I will use later. different words. I will use sooner and later. There you go. Those ones are good. So okay, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So the nineteenth right, is when the video is intended to release, and the anniversary is intended to be on the twenty sixth. However, if the vinyls get delayed long enough that we cannot release them on time. The video will be pushed later to the 26th, and the anniversary will be pushed later to the 2nd. Yes. That is the that plan. Sense, everybody. Relatively yeah. simple. The main issue, of course, is I hate the fact that this ever has to happen, because I know many of you already have made arrangements to be available uh, in whatever. Obviously, it's a Saturday, so hopefully speaking, that you didn't have to do much of anything. It's not ruining anything. That sort of stuff. But um, like I said, we're going to do everything we can to keep it on schedule. Uh, so exactly two weeks from, well, t today, yesterday, <laughs> is uh, the anniversary, like I said. So, it, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully it all works out. Um, obviously oh, plenty of things will be planned. Guys, Guests and videos and stuff. You guys will really like them vinyls, I reckon. I think so, they too. Are looking, they're looking sharp, guys. They're hopefully. Looking, yeah, they look really great. If we do stream an EFAP on Wednesday, hopefully we can show them. Uh, we might have them yeah. by then, we might not. Uh, obviously we'll let we you know. We might, yes. We might. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, oh yeah, of course, if you have any memes and videos or anything you've created that relates to episode 250, um, I'll probably be trying the, uh, the Discord collection uh, for memes to grab them all up in time. Obviously it's that time of year, so uh, all different things happen and uh, it's difficult to get everything in order because I need to start getting everything. The annoying thing is I can't quite invite people to a date yet. Cause it's 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 shifty. It's a shifty date, but um, yeah, I will try and get everything in order. That's 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 the full update essentially. Mm -hmm. um, really looking forward to these things happening, if and when they happen, of course. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I guess that's that. Um, and yeah, we obviously have been incredibly busy with lots of different things. Uh, we are going to be recording and uh, delivering more of the super chat catch ups. It's just that uh. As you have seen, if you're subscribed to Moolah, a lot of random different things popping out here and there that needed editing and participation in streams, all that stuff. Oh, and then, well, of course, guess, getting the video uh, done. Well, I mean, d d might be premature, right? But like Ahsoka, right? EFAP TV, that's... That is going to be oh, happening as well, yes. That's Jesus on the horizon. Because uh, Ahsoka, yeah. Ant-Man's done. Uh, that's, that's the next main thing I'm going to be working on for EFAP, you know, related stuff. Uh, yeah, and two episode premiere, so that makes my life harder. <laughs> harder. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can but, still take yeah. them one at a time. We'll we'll do it one at a time. So. Uh, yeah, we'll do it one at a time. It's just you know, in terms of keeping it weekly, that just makes it harder. But yeah, that's that's on the horizon. Well, that's that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Is there that anything is else that, you guys wanted to say? That is that, I suppose. Yeah. No, I think um, that's about it. <laughs> um. No, Boof. I think we're good. I think we're good. Wonderful. I, I, think, I think we're good. Thank you all so much for joining us. We shall see you in the next EFAP, which won't even be that long, more than likely. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to the company. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye Goodbye, everybody. everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. Ciao.